Oh, it's your boy, PSA Stitch, here with another Sunday Sunday show with everyone's favorite enjoyer of putting jam on Oreos, Adam Friendish. Jam on Oreos? What? Yeah. That's one of the... I Yeah, no, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> of all the of all the horrible things that I like, you pick something yeah. that I would never. Oh man, uh-huh. <laughs> it just sounds well. Awful. See, I decided that you know you mm. criticized my uh, openings for you, so I decided that every week I'm just going to give you something completely random. That just, I just make made up. make something up. Okay, yeah, just make something up. Yeah, cool, cool. You know, it's punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I I instantly regretted <laughs> doing that when I did. That, so. <laughs> Enough of this. Enough about me, okay? Nobody cares. Nobody cares uh, about what I eat or don't eat or hate or, or love. What uh, what that's are we covering true. this week? What's uh... today? We're co- Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Contrapoints, not counterpoints. Contrapoints has graced YouTube with yet another video after a twenty month long hiatus. Right? Yeah. What's going on? Contrapoints this, is d- doing some. What, what's going on? Did she, did she get a job or something? She's working she's no longer a content creator well okay here's my question okay so contrapoints gets monthly payments from patreon from patreon yeah i wonder how long it takes her to make those videos to do no videos yeah i wonder how long it takes to do these videos so she's got a ju- just a giant patreon mm-hmm. to make no content i mean these videos I mean, probably listen be fair these videos probably take a while i mean this is a two-hour video it's got a lot of production value to it. Sure, yeah. You know, I do. Uh, but it in ten like months? A did the video take ten months to make? I don't think so. I don't think it took ten months. I'm just guessing. Right. I'm yeah. just guessing. Right. Uh, but this this mm. video this video is pretty wild because at first I looked at the video title. I'm like, oh my god, really? Another J.K. Rowling video? Right. Come on, come on, Contra. Right. And but then we but then I watched it, and the thing that's very interesting is that this isn't really like a lot of the video is about J.K. Rowling, but it's, this is really more a video of Contra jumping on the whole stop complaining about anti-liberal violent tactics and protest. It's totally fine. Yeah, which <laughs> is weird because that's a a divergent path for Contra. Yeah, this was so sad. Is that Contra used to be like probably the only or more reasonable person in kind of like this space of you know woke lefty bread tube space yeah and i don't know she's just been going on this decline for years i don't know if it's the popularity or some other things <laughs> but it's just she's been getting more crazy more terrible opinions as time goes on and this this video is really awful this video is really awful yeah, I got, you know, four or five messages as soon as this dropped. I didn't even know the ContraPoints video had dropped, and people were sending me links to it asking us if we were going to cover it this weekend. So I know a lot of people are going to be happy that we're covering it. I mm-hmm. I gave it a once through, and yeah, there's a lot of just outright insanity, <laughs> <laughs> which is always good. I mean, that's like our bread and butter, right? Just of course pointing out the insanity. Let's all look at the insanity together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I I do. I feel like Contra what, used to be a person that understood, you know, the uh, multiple perspectives, and we're kind of drifting away from that. The bias, the yeah. the morality mm-hmm. binds and blinds bias is starting to creep into her content. Yeah, if you look at uh, Contra's old videos, uh, you know, even the pre-transition videos that she made. You would see that that she had a, at least it would explain that she had an understanding of the centrist position and the other, whatever other side of the position was, basically. She would understand the validity to it to an extent. And I feel like whenever you understand the other side, you understand like there that there's a valid complaint there, there's a valid concern there, even if you disagree with it. And I feel like that's a moderating influence on you as an individual. Very much it, so, yes. And that's why... You know, it's so easy for us to kind of fall in these traps of basically just demonizing and extremifying, which, you know, we're guilty of doing that too. Uh, the other never, side. Never. What? We're, no, <laughs> we don't. No, we never do that. Look, we understand the other side, so it's harder to demonize. To an extent. To an extent. I mean, we do do it a little bit. but Never. Okay. That's true. We've never done it. We're perfect angels. But anyway, so let's 
jump into the video. This is ContraPoints, The Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling. Now, the first 30 minutes of this is really just poisoning the well. We're going to skip that part, right? Uh, not the whole first 30 minutes. So I wrote down a bunch of time codes. This video okay. is like almost two hours long, so we can jump around a bunch. Um, we can go straight through if you want. I just, the, I'm going to be pointing out how poisoning the well all of this is. And I wanted to talk to you last Tuesday about this this argument that they make, and it's good that we're covering this video because Contra basically makes the argument in here. This, this, um, the trans, the the trans situation is exactly like the gay situation. It's just exactly the same. There's absolutely no difference between yes. the trans situation and the gay situation. That's the argument that's given. Which I, I'm like, I mean that that's bonkers, right? That position is bonkers. <laughs> yeah yeah obviously right. this massive difference so why i think i feel like i i have a counter argument to that that could be helpful and could illustrate oh. exactly how bonkers that position is okay but i need i definitely i need your help refining it okay and if we'll it's a, it. if it's a good argument then you know everyone can go to town with right. it right right okay you want to give it now or do you want to wait till we're in the video we'll just wait till we get into it how about that okay so yeah, so the beginning, like basically the first 30 minutes, I'll be doing a lot of jumping around. And then after that is like a massive chunk. So we're going to, oh, so we're jumping around. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm going to talk about Joe Rowe once again, but first, story time. Chapter one, Anita. The most famous bigot in American LGBT history is a woman called Anita Bryant. This is her story. 1977 was not a good time to be gay. Is it ever really a good time to be gay? In 1969, the Stonewall Riots forced gay rights into national consciousness. The first Pride Parades were held in the summer of 1970, and in 1973, the American Psychiatric Association declassified homosexuality as a mental disorder. But only after gay activists disrupted their conference and shouted, GAY CONVERSION THERAPY IS TORTURE! WE HAVE ABNORMAL URGES AND WE WILL NOT BE SILENCED! Because that's the only way to get anything done in this country. You have to be super annoying about it. They give you so, okay. The entire theme of this video is essentially saying in order to get positive change in society, you have to basically mess stuff up. You have to be, you know, very aggressive in your protesting. You can't be this, you know, oh, this wussy non-violent, non-aggressive, I'm going to sit at the table counter, you know, and get attacked by police dogs protesting of the civil rights movement. No, 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 no. That's for wussies and losers. You got to be aggressive, whether that means, you know, uh, breaking into rooms that you're not supposed to break into and disrupting things, whether it means, you know, attacking people maybe and burning stuff down, whether it means mailing people human fecal matter. There's a whole range of seemingly acceptable protests that, uh, <laughs> that Contra is kind of advocating in this, in this video. And she kind of uses this example right off the bat of how homosexuality was classified as a mental illness for many years. And she's, the way she frames it is, it only went away. It only went away when the gays broke into an APA conference and they started shouting on their megaphones and they started going, ah, freedom. But that's not true no it's complete lies not true and this is kind of the massive problem that contrapoints makes with this whole video is as we all know because we all experience it right now whenever there is a political movement that's being discussed and people are trying to advocate for things there's always going to be people that are like advocating for their issue in a you know moderate way or advocating for it in a way that's non-violent or advocating for it in a way that you know, we all deem socially acceptable and liberal and tolerant. And there's always going to be the extremists who are doing various shades of extreme mm -hmm. behaviors. Right. And so if you look back in history and you say, oh, okay, so you had one group of people, say, advocating for, you know, gay rights, and they were playing by the rules and doing all the right things. And you have one group of one group of people that are advocating for gay rights and they were, you know, burning things down or acting violent. And then eventually something pro-gay rights passes, 
Which movement is the movement that got it passed? Was it the nonviolent people following the rules or was it the violent extremists that, that got you to follow the rules? And the problem is that throughout this whole video, Contra just assumes without evidence, even when there's counter evidence, she ignores it, that it was the violence that got the thing passed that she wants. Yeah. She asserts it. She just asserts it over and over and over again. Yes. And in this example, because I looked it up, what she leaves out is that it's true there were uh, gay activists, or let's just say pro-gay activists, because I'm sure there were non-gay people that were activizing for this, uh, broke into this APA conference, and they started shouting at everyone and disrupting the thing. But that's not when it changed. That's not when it changed. It didn't change for it didn't change until the next couple of years. And what happened the next year, which she kind of, and I'll show you, because she, she brings up a picture of it, and she doesn't explain what's happening here, which is kind of weird. We have this picture of these two people and this guy wearing this very bizarre mask. And it says, the American Psychi Psychiatric Association where sanity thrives. Right. And you're like, what, what is that? What is happening here? So I actually looked this up. This incident, which she's insulting in this picture, is actually the incident that got the APA to drop homosexuality from the DSM as a mental illness. And what's going on is the guy in the mask, this is supposed to be a Richard Nixon mask, but it looks really bizarre. This guy is like a, apparently he's like a six foot tall, 300 pound, super fat guy who was gay, but was also a, a psychiatrist. And he was advocating that, you know, the mental illness label of homosexuality be dropped from the DSM. But he knew that if he did it without hiding his identity, that he would be fired from all of his jobs. Right. And so he puts on this ridiculous mask. And he delivered and he's wearing some kind of voice modifier. There's some voice modifier in the microphone. And he gives some speech that apparently was, you know, so well received by everyone in the audience that it motivated all the doctors to essentially advocate for homosexuality to be removed as a mental illness. Interesting. And so, so the that's speech what, was like burned down City Hall? No, it was just <laughs> that was not the speech. Uh, that's what that my guess speech, is like. Right. We're just like everyone else. We hurt no one. Exactly. So that's what annoys me about this entire video is that Contra keeps leaving out how while she's, you know, kind of raising up all this, you know, more extreme protests, there's less extreme protest, which seems to be getting things done that is actually getting people motivated to be on their side. And she just kind of hand waves it away. Right. Yeah. So let me jump ahead a little bit here. A divine disturbance in her heart. How touching. According to the word of God, it's an abomination uh, to practice homosexuality. As a mother, she... Okay, so this whole section is about this lady named Anita Bryant. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar. I'm assuming you're familiar with her, Adam. I watched the whole intro, yeah. Right. An Anita Bryant was against uh, the gays. Against yes. gay marriage. Gays being openly gay. All of it. Well, I don't know. I meant it's like as you as an old man. I don't know if you remember her existing. I, I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, You're not that old. Well, I yeah. I mean, I I'm not sure I was even alive when this was going on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah she was a very famous anti-gay activist from Florida. Who, right. Uh, she was, was like the citrus queen or something. She yeah, was she a, was basically the face of Florida orange juice. Right. And she wanted to make it illegal for, you know, people to basically be gay in public. Be openly gay. So be openly gay, right? No gay PDA. No gay PDA. If you're openly gay, you couldn't be a school teacher, you know, things of that nature. Right. She would not stand for this. So Anita wrote a letter to the county commissioner saying As a concerned mother of four children, I am most definitely against this ordinance amendment. I have never condoned nor taught my children discrimination against anyone. But if this ordinance amendment is allowed to become law, you will, in fact, be infringing upon my rights and discriminating against me as a citizen and a mother to teach my children God's moral code as stated in the Holy Scriptures. So the ordinance she's talking about is its actually kind of interesting. Before all this happened in Florida, they were trying to pass an ordinance that was adding sexual orientation as a protected class. Okay. As and that's in for like employment and, and Yeah, whatnot. for, you know, employment and just general, you know, discrimination. Apartments, jobs, that kind of right. thing. So before 
1977, if you found out your tenant was gay, you could throw him out on the street? Sure. Wow. Sure. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty lame. <laughs> That's, That's pretty... pretty bad. That's pretty bad, yeah. Wow. Anita, kill your shitty child. When the amendment <laughs> passed, Anita created a campaign for its repeal, the Save Our Children Coalition, which sponsored provocative TV ads implying that gay people are degenerates who ruin communities and seduce children. See, this is what is driving me crazy because she's setting up the gay rights movement, which I believe, you know, obviously the progressives were correct about mm -hmm. because homosexuality hurts no one, basically. But then they want to do this thing where, oh, you know, the trans rights movement is exactly the same because I've showed you all this footage of the gay rights movement when they were correct. But it's substantively completely different. I mean, you can make an argument that the, you know, the, the various trans surgeries and whatnot don't hurt no one. I mean, you can make an argument that they hurt the people who, who uh, do them. Or that right. there, there could potentially be false positives that are are being hurt by this. So everything yeah. is set up as in, you know, uh, save the children from hom homosexuality, but it's a completely different context today. So it's just, you know, this, this idea that they were right um, back in the 1970s with homosexuality, and therefore they are just categorically right today in the same way. I mean, that just strikes me as ridiculous. It's a completely different situation. Yeah, you're right. You're 100% right. It's completely ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, back in those days, the anti-gay argument was primarily a religious argument. Um, and I'm sure there are people that are anti-trans for religious reasons too. But as you said, there are there's a legitimate concern since it requires uh, medical procedures. Right. And, you know, medication and changing your body so that you're like, well... You know, and I said this a million times, if someone, ex you know, experiments with, you know, some kind of same-sex relationship and then they realize, oh, this isn't for me, you know, it's not such like, you know, that's not going to ruin their life, right? It's not that big of a deal. Of but course. if you transition and then you realize that you made a mistake, I mean, that's going to have a significant impact <laughs> on your future. That's not going to be, you know, great for you. Yes. Yeah. And that's a giant difference, which... Yeah. I mean, I know I realize that they would argue that it's not going to be a sign that well, they're arguing that transitioning is harmless. I mean, that's part of the calculation that they're making. They want to say uh, right. homosexuality is harmless and transitioning is just as harmless. The debate is really over whether or not that's true. Yes. Well, I, they say. I don't think it's true. Right. Well, they say two things, which is that. They try to make being trans an identity, and I don't think it should be. I think gender dysphoria is a medical condition, and once you transition, you should try to get on with your life. <laughs> it shouldn't be like the identity that everything about you kind of is wrapped up in, this, this biological part of yourself. I think that we should try to be more than that. Um, and once you once you label something as an identity, it changes the way people act around it. People become incredibly protective of it. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is what what the argument that they always say is: Oh, regret rates are very low. Why are you worried, Adam? Regret rates are very low. And then it's like, well, first of all, we've never done long term studies for regret for the current cohort of children that are now on the affirmative care model, and you can't just pretend that the massive increase in people identifying as trans now is to be expected, especially when before the numbers were something like four to six times as many boys identified as trans than girls. And now that those numbers have almost completely, you know, girls have, have actually gone beyond, cis girls have now actually gone beyond boys in identifying as trans and transitioning to be trans men. And the desistance rate ever since people started using puberty blockers has dropped like 60 points. Yeah. Which is astronomically scary. In the, in the time to think book about the Tavistock uh, mm -hmm. gender service, they aren't even keeping decent records. 
So they have no idea how what the trans regret rate is. They right. asked them about compiling some sort of record of all the patients that had gone through the service and gone on to puberty blockers to find out what what the regret rate is. And they said they couldn't even do it, that it would it would be too expensive for them to do because there's like, you know, two to 3,000 people they would have to track down. Right. Which, I mean, how are they saying, we know specifically that regret rates are so low when they don't even know. They have like, th that's, that would be a giant survey right there. They had two to 3,000 people that went into this gender service in, in Great Britain. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even follow up on the people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of the people involved in the field don't want to know. Well, they, they also the regret rates that they always, you know, they always pull out the 1% regret rates. Those are from studies that were done before, you know, the wide scale use of puberty blockers to actually right, stop puberty, transitioning before puberty. These were adults. Right. So obviously, yeah. if they were adults that had gone through months and months of talking to therapists and, you know, years of living as the sex they want to transition into, the regret rates are going to be low. They've, yeah. you know, they've gone through the gauntlet of tests and whatnot. Now, where, you know, we have people that are openly detransitioners online, I just, you can't look at those old studies and say, oh, the regret rates are 1%. Yeah. When also back in those days, there wasn't a social contagion element. Yes, because there wasn't uh, social yeah, media. So Right. Well, also, you know, being trans was not, was still, you know, very much not sought after <laughs> or celebrated back in those days. Right. So yeah. That was a big issue, too. It's been vicious. With television commercials, the Save Our Children group is appealing to parental anxieties, saying gays will flaunt their homosexuality before impressionable children. The Orange Bowl Parade, Miami's gift to the nation, wholesome entertainment. But in San Francisco, when they take to the streets, it's a parade of homosexuals, men hugging other men, cavorting with little boys. Save Our Children sparked the first organized backlash to gay rights in the United States, escalating the conflict into a national controversy. On one side were the gay rights activists, who argued that non-discrimination was a matter of human rights. On the opposing side, Anita Bryant argued that the non-discrimination ordinance would give special privileges to homosexuals. We all believe in human rights, but we don't believe uh, human rights that would corrupt our children or for individuals who have special privileges that would go against the constitutional rights of uh, normal America. As long as they don't want to flaunt their homosexuality, they have equal rights the same as anyone else. In other words... So, I do think this is important to acknowledge. Um, this is... This is the rights problem. And I've talked about this before in this country. The right has cried wolf about non-existent issues for years. You know, socialism would be the big one. And this, because you're listening to what she's saying right now, or what Anita Bryant was saying in those videos, and you hear very similar arguments nowadays about transitioning arguments. When people talk about why gender identity shouldn't be taught in school, why kids shouldn't be taught about transitioning and things of that nature. Now, I think I agree that gender identity shouldn't be taught in school because I think it's a completely unproven idea. And I do think tr uh, trans gender ideas have a strong social contagious element to them. And so, yeah, I don't think that stuff should be taught in school. But this is the problem is this is what gets so many people on the left and so many people who are even like moderate lefties, it gets them all defensive is because they've basically heard all of this language before. It's very similar language. They've all heard it in relation to anti-gay activists. Yeah. And so it's very easy for people on the left to point to this and say, oh, look, the right's just doing what they did with the gays. The right's just playing the exact same playbook. It's all the same rhetoric. Even though now I agree with it, and then I didn't disagree. Even, and back then I wouldn't have agreed with it, with the gay stuff. Right, because it's substantively different. Because yes. of the, this is the thing. Is is transgenderism like is gender dysphoria always going to be a mental illness? I mean, I don't know how you can not classify it as a mental illness because you are literally in a situation where there's potential bodily harm. 
if it's if there's a misdiagnosis well anything that makes you want to minecraft yourself is a mental illness definitionally <laughs> yeah 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 i mean a, a mental illness mental illnesses are generally classified as um something that harms as, you or others yeah um, some kind of uh mental condition when i say mental it doesn't mean like you made it up like you know it could be biological but something impacting your cognition or your mental abilities that causes severe uh, problems in your life and is not considered uh, average or normal, right? It's something that's considered outside the, st the statistical norm for the average individual. So yeah, having gender dysphoria is not normal or average. The average person doesn't have gender dysphoria. And the fact that it makes you feel horrible feelings that can make you want to Minecraft yourself means it has a severe impact on your life. So obviously, it completely fits the mental illness label. Uh, people will say that the only adverse effects are the non-acceptance by society. Which is not true. Yeah. Right. Completely not true. Is it, anyone that says that is just, they're just making that up. There well, I just... Been, uh, Right. Yeah, there's all these studies about like bone density and like how it just completely screws up your body. So, well, you know, there have been lots of studies that show if a person with gender dysphoria exists in an environment where people are accepting of them, obviously that makes them feel better psychologically, which that's a big duh, right? If you, if any person for any reason lives in an environment where everyone's nice to them or accepts them for who they are, they're going to feel better, obviously. But that doesn't, we all know, obviously that doesn't cure the dysphoria because if that cured the dysphoria, then you wouldn't have to change your body. Right. And changing your body is the, where the harm is. Well, the harm would be if you change your body and then realize you don't actually have gender dysphoria, right? Sure. Or even you could have gender dysphoria and change your body, but depending on what surgeries you get, you can, there's lots of potential complications that one can get from these surgeries. Yeah, lots of them. All sorts of, uh, why well, just normally, you know, you grow up and go through life trying to avoid surgery as much as yeah. possible. <laughs> like that's, yeah, right. Exactly. That's generally yeah. the thing that happens. Sure. So, sure. a life of medicalization, I would say, is not necessarily normal. Yeah, Which she's every... completely absent from the the gay issue, the homosexuality issue. Like if you yes. decide you're going to be, if if you are same sex attracted, like you don't have to live a life of medicalization to 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 deal with that. No, it has no impact. It has no significant impact on your life except who you want to be in a relationship with. That's the only difference. Right. There's no other impact on your life. Gay people already have equal rights, just as long as they stay in the closet and don't do anything gay. That's very helpful. Thank you so much, Anita, for standing up for our right to be gay in secret. See, this is not anything like what is going on here. Nobody right. is saying trans people need to get back in the closet. <laughs> like, everybody is generally is genuinely worried about harm coming to people through misdiagnosis. It's a completely different situation. Anita Bryant is talking about societal harm, which is a completely different thing. Well, yeah, and she's, I mean, she's very religious. And so she's like, oh, I have to save people's souls because they'll burn in hell if they're, you know, gay. Yeah. And if... You know, I mean, there was, you know, to be fair, there was this fear of social contagion with the gays back in the day. Now, I don't think that really, it didn't really manifest, um, you know, very strongly because yeah. I think for most people, it's pretty easy to understand what you're attracted to. <laughs> I don't think that's like a confusing question for people. Well, and I don't think we were at the level of societal celebration there we weren't no people weren't getting shows because they were right gay. right well and also i mean you could just test it very easily like if you're growing up you know and you go through puberty and you're like oh am i gay and you're like let me uh you know kiss the same sex person as me hmm that doesn't feel right i guess i'm not gay like it's very simple to test that theory 
yes. you know, for yourself if you were in that position. It's not so simple to necessarily test that with gender dysphoria because, you know, you have to take puberty blockers and you have to take cross-sex hormones and you have to get surgery. And you kind of have these people telling you like, oh, if it doesn't, you know, it doesn't feel better, maybe it'll feel better if you keep going, right? This is why we have the term queer now. Yes. So you can, if you test it out, if you want to be gay and you test it out and you're like, hmm, that didn't feel right. You can still be queer <laughs> because you can be like, well, I'm not gay, but I am queer, which is basically heterosexual, but pro LGBT. Well, no, listen, you know, as a, as a, as, as a, a white queer male, individual, as a white male, Adam, I'm tired of being at the bottom of the oppression hierarchy. Okay. You're at the top. What are you talking about? You're the no, oppressor. Of the, oppre of the oppression hierarchy. The I'm oppressor. The most the oppressor I'm the most hierarchy. oppressive, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You're at the top of the oppressor right. hierarchy. Well, not anymore. Not anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm officially identifying as queer. Are you? Yes. It's nice. I'm officially a queer YouTuber. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want anyone to ask me how that queer manifests <laughs> because that's my business. Okay? Right, yeah. That's my business. It would also be deeply homophobic to ask, so... It would be deeply queerphobic to ask such a oh, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, queerphobic. Right? So uh, I'm officially queer, everybody. I can talk on any issues relating to queer people. And uh, you straights and you sissies, you know, you can't. Because you don't know what it's like. You don't know the struggles I've gone through as a queer YouTuber, okay? Can you be queer and cis? Of course. Okay. Of course you can, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Cis is just not trans, right? Cis is just not trans. Okay. Right. I am Queer, not trans. Cis I'm still a cis. Yes. So do you agree that this whole first 30 minutes is basically poisoning the well? Like, look at these bigots. Yes, the whole look at part, these the whole homophobic bigots. Yes. The whole point of this is to say, look, here's an instance where the Republicans were wrong in the past. And they use similar language now, so they must be wrong now. That's right. the entire point of this action. It's kind of like when we have a conversation with someone who's trying to tell us America bad. And I go, well, why do you think America is bad now? And they say, well, in 1970. Right. Like, no, no, no. I don't care about what America did in 1970. I want to know what they did now. <laughs> She's making the argument that this woman is the first iteration of jk rowling this is jk yes. rowling the prequel right here yes but i just i don't think so jk jk rowling is gonna win this well and also it's like you know nita bryant she ran a national campaign to make it illegal to basically be gay in public like right. she was the face of this legal camp this legal push this legal campaign J.K. Is JK Rowling's Rowling not doing anything like you know, that? Is J.K. Rowling the face of trying to get legislation passed in, you know, proto-America land? No. No? Like, we, what does J.K. Rowling do? J.K. Rowling tweets and says, oh, think of the Wyman's. Yeah. <laughs> like, to me, this comparison is, a, is it's the perfect example of sort of the privileged softness of today's youth. Like, we have, you know homophobic activists in the 70s who's doing all she can to like make it illegal to be openly gay in public versus jk rowling sending tweets i don't like true yeah <laughs> aren't they the same it's the same thing i see no difference it's the same picture it's the same picture guys not even close yeah and also because the the culture is so overwhelmingly pro-trans right now. We're obviously in the 70s. You know, it wasn't necessarily pro-gay. No, they're beating up on J.K. Rowling. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is, I just, this is not even remotely close. That's why this is completely poisoning the well. Anita also argued that allowing flaunting homosexuals to teach children was tantamount to gay recruitment. Just biologically, that God made mothers so that we could reproduce. Homosexuals cannot reproduce biologically, but they have to reproduce. 
reproduce by recruiting our children. It's the exact same argument that's being used today by right-wing politicians who claim that queer people are groomers. Stop confusing our babies with your groomer gender ideologue. This wicked book, me and Earl and the dying girl, sexually indoctrinated with wicked, vile books. And she believes in traditional marriage between a man and a woman, and in that book it talked about two moms. Stay away from the children creep or you will regret it. People should definitely arm themselves, I agree with that. The Democrats are the party of pedophiles. The Democrats are the party of, of teachers, uh, elementary school teachers trying to trying to transition their elementary school age children and convince them they're a different gender. They're just evil people and they want to groom kids. Yeah. They're recruiting. If you don't know what furries are, it's where school children <laughs> dress up as animals, <laughs> cats or dogs, during the school day. They meow and they bark. What a great country we live in. I love it so much. I mean, listen, you guys didn't have furry day in class where you got to dress up as your favorite animal and, you know, walk around on all fours and bark and meow at each other? We didn't have furry day, no. You didn't have furry day? You oh, had furry so day? Fun. Of course I had furry day. It's oh. once a week. Furry Fur Fridays. Furry Fridays, huh? Yeah. Okay. Good for you. Yeah. You know what animal I was? I was going to ask. An armadillo? No, what? <laughs> I don't know. What, 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 what? That's such a random guess. An no, I was the best an armadillo. Animal. Come on, my favorite animal. They're cool. An armadillos? Aardvark. You just like animals that begin with the letter A that are weird. Armadillos, aardvarks. What is that? Aardvarks are crazy looking. Have you ever seen an aardvark in real life? No, oh, I don't even know goodness. where they live. They're in Texas. Oh, okay. I've never seen an aardvark. They're ad anteaters. Yes, I know, the big, I know what it is. Tongue, yeah. They got the big long snout. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I've never seen one. They're crazy looking. No, I was uh, dressed up as my favorite animal of all, the best animal mm -hmm. in the entire world. Mm -hmm. A water bear. <laughs> oh my God, that a crazy. A tardigrade. I was a little tardigrade. That the only little, problem was. That crazy thing? Yeah, the only problem was I didn't really make a sound. You know, I don't think tardigrades make a sound. So I just kind of like would freeze up and roll around the floor, you oh know? Oh my God. <laughs> but listen, I had to represent. Okay. Everyone was like, I'm going to be a cat or dog. I'm like, nah. Listen, I was a hipster back in those days. I was like, this is fucking cats and dogs. That's lame. I'm going to be something different, something unique. Going full water bear, baby. Water bears are disgusting. <laughs> what? They're cute. What are you talking about? Uh, are, aren't they like a microscopic creature? Yes. Okay. Here's a water bear for you guys. <laughs> I brought up a picture just so you can see. How did you, you do the, how did you do the hole in the middle of your head? <laughs> you just you just put like a little like black spot there. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. I'm I'm still waiting to see what what picture you brought up. I'm sure you found the ugliest water bear. What are you, you talking could find. about? The defining an adorable looking water bear. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, look at that little guy. He's Ugh. cute. He's a little cute little guy. Look at him. He looks like a little alien friend. Look, he looks kind of like an old man. So she, you know that, like he's got the jowls. It's like it's like little Richard Nixon. It is bizarre. I did looking. not. I did not steal that water from that leaf. Anyway. Well, anyway, but the my whole the whole reason that I I wanted to watch that segment was, the Republicans do have to acknowledge, that they have made it very easy for the left to attack them and say, oh, you're just using the old language that you use to be anti-gay because it is very similar. And the, the right does need to acknowledge that. And I mean, they're not going to, but. Yeah, they I never they do. Look, to. the right has a very simple program. Change equal bad. Right. And whatever arguments you have at your command to argue against whatever the the changes that people are advocating for those are the arguments that you use right it just so yeah. happens that they actually have good arguments now because the, the change is actually bad yeah the change is actually bad exactly right well the left has bad arguments because they're just looking at it like oh this is just like last time see their very simple algorithm is change is good always categorically yes. whatever it is always good yes these two forces are in opposition to one another. And, you know, Sitch and I, we just like 
examining them. Because... For like, listen, sometimes change is good. Sometimes change is bad. I know it's a crazy. I know it's a it crazy is. idea. It, you got to look at the details. You got to look at the yes. context of the situation. Right. You have to actually shut off your moral intuitions, which mm. is very difficult, and say, okay, what's actually going on here? What is the objective reality here? Yeah. And I mean, since the conversation is always change is good, change is bad, the change is bad argument will almost always be think of the children, because that's always the fear. It's that there's some new change and you know, kids are more attracted to change than their adults and their parents are. So we need to protect our children from being indoctrinated with whatever this new change is that you're trying to to implement. Right. That's always the argument. So Well, and also change to, you know, whatever the change is could potentially destroy society. So that's right. always where they take it. Of course, of course. Big's initiative in California, which would have forced public schools to fire gay teachers. So Anita Bryant was worse than a bigot. She was an influential bigot, but she may also have helped to unify and galvanize gay activists by providing them with a common enemy. According to historian Lillian Faderman, Anita Bryant created fervent activists out of those who'd previously been content simply to enjoy their newfound freedoms. Faderman cites Eric Hoffer's observation that a mass movement can get along fine without a god, but it won't get along at all without a devil. For gay people all over the country, Anita Bryant became that devil. Isn't that such a great quote? That's a good quote. Yeah, is it true? I think it's 100% true. You need a devil, huh? Yeah, you can get to along turn without God. J.K. Rowling into the devil. Yeah, you can get along without a God, but you you require a devil. That's so true. Everyone, I feel like everyone intrinsically understands this. That there's there's almost nothing more unifying in this world than a common enemy. Right. Yeah. No, that's, <laughs> that is definitely true. And I mean, I'm sure you've all worked in situations where you really don't like one employee, or one of your coworkers, or you don't like one of your bosses or something, and that. The hatred towards them makes everyone else friends, essentially. The reason why I ask if it's correct is because in politics, I really do feel the aspirational vision has an advantage over the, the demonizing of the other. So it, it does make mm -hmm. me wonder if it's right. if it's true. I mean, I, I sure, it feels intuitively correct, but I just, I don't... Right now, our politics really are about, you know, the other side can't win because they're awful. Nobody's coming out with an aspirational, future-oriented message. Right. But I don't think that it's conflicting because what this is talking about is like how to get people that are political activists or cultural activists motivated to right. kind of unify. When you're talking about voting, you're talking about bringing out all those moderates who are not energized by these mass movements. And I think those people need to have the God. They need to have the aspirational force that they're voting in favor of, usually. Right. Well, could Where it just the be... activists don't need that necessarily. Could it be some people are driven by the devil and some people are driven by the aspirational message and you kind of need both to get both parties on board? Well, obviously, having both is going to make a movement more powerful. Right. Um, but I think, I think for everyone, it's just a different devil. I think the devil is always unifying as the devil seems to be always a more powerful force. I mean, look at the way the right and the left act towards each other. And it's kind of funny. This is actually the mistake the left and right is making by isolating itself in the little bubbles. You know, we talk about how there's so much like leftist infighting. The only reason there's so much leftist infighting, you know, beyond the fact that there's no loyalty as a moral foundation, obviously, um, <laughs> it, and that they're very anti-hierarchy, is the fact that they've, the left, on because of the internet and the way social media works and the way internet culture works, it's very easy for the left and right to kind of isolate themselves into their own little corners of things and just discuss amongst themselves the ideas that they like. And the problem is when you do that, you no longer, like, you no longer have as much of a unifying power against like the enemy that you're arguing against. So it becomes very easy then to be, to kind of lose that guiding devil principle that unifies you and kind of to split apart and fracture yourselves among your, all your little differences, you know, like, right. like for example, you could have, um, 
like I don't know if you like Thought Slime and and Vosh right now, like hate each other's guts. Really? Yes. Well, that's good news. Um, I think Thought Slime <laughs> hates Vosh because you know Vosh is so popular, mis- edgy, and misogynistic, oh, okay. and you know an asshole. Popular. Right. Popular. And uh, Vosh hates Thought Slime because he understands that the arguments that he makes are so awful that they make all socialists look stupid including the shoplifting argument. <laughs> I right. don't know if you, the whole um, Thought Slime had a video recently where basically he said, shoplifting is fine and we don't need the profit motive because people oh, will I just see. do yeah. jobs. Yeah, his art, this was like the dumbest argument. Thought Slime literally thinks that we don't need a profit motive because people will still drive trucks even if they're not paid for it because people play trucking simulator on their computer. Right. Yeah. And we don't need to pay farmers a profit because people will play Stardew Valley on their computer. Right. Ridiculous. <laughs> the pro- the profit motive literally is gamifying society to some extent. That's why it I, is. I don't understand. Right. He's like people like gamified things. Well, the yeah. what do you think the profit motive is? You dummy. Right. But the reason I bring this up is so so Vosh and thought and thought crime really don't like each other. Mm-hmm. But that's only because they're able to isolate themselves into kind of these little bubbles. If Vosh and Thought Crime were in constant situations where like they, they were to having together. to debate yeah. against Charlie Kirk and I don't know, uh, some other right wingers or something, you know, Christopher Rufo or something, like if they had to constantly engage with right wing people and debate against them, they wouldn't they would just be they'd be totally on the same team. They, wouldn't they would have just time. Yeah, it's exactly. They wouldn't have time, but they would just say, "Oh, I'm gonna." We've seen this before, so we talk about time. When the teams unify, the strategy is to downplay the faults on your team and upplay the faults on the other team. Yeah, create negative stereotypes of the outsiders. That's the whole point of the bubble. Yes, exactly, exactly. And then you hear them engage, and you're like, "Oh my god!" They just have this crazy idea of what conservatives are. They have this crazy idea of what progressives are. Yes, and I also I think the bubble on the internet is what causes such bad audience captures in these political spaces. Because, you know, I've always said that it's the people that are the most like politically motivated usually, not always, but usually have more extreme political views. And so they're going to be the loudest voices in a a political movement. And they're also going to be the loudest voices in a lot of political audiences. And so I think it's very easy for creators to look at their audience and kind of get a false sense of reality because the loudest voices are going to be the more extreme voices and those their audience essentially pulls them to more extreme positions. Right. People think that creators radicalize their audience. I think I I really think it's the other way around. The audience radicalizes the creator. Yes. Yeah, I think that happens. I think I've seen that happen. <laughs> First hand. Yes. Not yes. with me though. I don't look, not with you. No, I'm not, not with us. I'm a look, I'm a radical, but I'm just a different kind of radical. Well, it's because we have listen, it's because we have a fantastic audience. That's why. Of course. Yeah. And you know why our audience is so fantastic? They're sane. Because they buy sane. free will from us. <laughs> They're sane, rational people. <laughs> Because they buy free will from us. That free will keeps them sane. They know the value of free will. That's right. Exactly. That's there what it's know. all about. Got true. to be free. I think that uh, she is rallying the community together like I have never seen before. There's no way I could have done it on my own. So even though she's... Ex- so there you go. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of interesting. So by this point, Contra... It's weird because it's almost like an, like an admission that even if J.K. Rowling isn't as terrible as everyone makes her out to be, it's it's a metaphorical truth. It's a useful fiction to make J.K. Rowling out to be as bad as you know they want her to be, just to unify the movement against her. It's not going to work, though. I agree. But, it's just, know, they don't it's know not going to work. Right. Not everyone is inside your bubble with your ridiculous stereotypes of jk rowling right and it's also it doesn't work because you know with anita bryant 
she was a political advocate who was advocating for very specific things. You know, Anita Bryant never said, you know, I have no problem with people being gay, right? She would give some, she would say like, oh, I'm a Christian, so I love everyone, even sinners, right? She would give kind of like the bullshit answer. Mm -hmm. But she never said like, oh, I don't have a problem with people being gay. I just think X, Y, Z. It's not like, like J.K. Rowling has literally said multiple times, I have trans friends. I don't have a problem with people transitioning. I just, you know, she just thinks that there should be, you know, cis female spaces that exist only in, in you know, women's sports and shelters and things of that nature. Right. She says, I don't want to give up my rights as a woman. Right. I mean, I think she is also concerned about false positives for transitioning. Two very important things. Right. She's and like, the, the, you got to get the science worked out. And uh, I won't, I, she says, I like my female only spaces. I don't want these, tr I don't want trans women in female prisons. Right. It, and it's so funny because before all this trans stuff blew up, I mean, JK Rowling was like hyper woke. You know, she's a hyper woke, you know, radical feminist, essentially. And now it's like, oh, she's a turf. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. so funny how quickly the lines can shift on some issue. And well, the thing is, it's funny. Turfs are the only feminists that are actually consistent with feminist ideology. Look at that consistency. Someone had to do it, right? Right. Well, because and this is it's funny because and I and I've known about this and I've talked about this for years. Feminist ideology has rooted within it the destruction of transness because the whole point of, of the feminist ideology, I mean, go back to Judith Butler, you know, gender is a performance, right? All these gender, all these things related to gender, according to feminism for many years, were all just socially imposed by some kind of evil patriarchal class onto women. And so you'd say, oh, well, under that ideology, no one should be trans because they could just choose to not engage in that performance, right? Yeah. Or not be or or be not conditioned by society to be in that performance. And then also, if you're a feminist, you would be offended by a, a by a man transitioning into a woman and sort of like adapting all of these female stereotypes that are imposed upon women by some sort of oppressive patriarchy. Yeah, it's just like thumbing a nose at you. Thumbing their yes. nose at you. Yeah. Yes. And it's only the fact that people don't care about principles that allows all these feminists to be like pro-trans. They just don't think about it. They don't think about how the ideologies actually contradict each other. The women are really upset about this. Like Dylan Mulvaney is the, the best example of it because they are just super offended by his uh, female stereotypes. He's basically a walking stereotype. Right. And they're like, this is how I don't want people to view me this way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this person's well, like, ridiculous. Well, it was like when, when Caitlyn Jenner transitioned and she got, you know, women of the year or something, right? <laughs> She's the woman of the year award. Yeah. They were like, you've been a, you've been a woman for one year and you get the woman of the year award. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it's hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah. Media would have us believe that Anita Bryant is a so-called homophobe, some kind of hateful bigot. But isn't this just an authoritarian tactic used to silence valid concerns? Mothers in this country are worried about their children going to school to be taught by perverts. How can we be so sure that the militant homosexuals weren't the real bigots. Isn't it possible that Anita Bryant was the first victim of cancel culture, of, dare I say it, wokeism? Well, no, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. But suppose that you're an idiot, and suppose- Okay. That she- So Anita Bryant was not a victim of wokeism. Now I know why. But do you think Contra knows why? No, because I've seen the video. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Right. So Anita Bryant was not a, a victim of wokeism because wokeism is the idea that liberal solutions cannot fix society and we must adopt illiberal solutions like some form of cultural Marxism to fix our society and right. get along. And in the gay rights movement in the 1970s, gay people were asking for equal rights under liberal society. 
And right. that was it. Yeah. All that was being asked for, right? So that is that is people asking that they be allowed to participate in society and be granted the liberal rights that we all share. Right. This well, completely but they asking, different. Look, they and this is another example of what you're saying about how the right you know use certain terminology that ha didn't serve them well at this point in the argument right at this point in the debate because they framed uh, gay marriage as an infringement of their rights in the yes. same way that women are framing you know, uh, biological males taking over women's only spaces as an infringement on their right. The difference right. is, I mean, one, I think, is a literal infringement on their rights. <laughs> they want sex-segregated <laughs> spaces. And the idea that there's some, you know, category of marriage that if gay people engage in this activity that you somehow are being discriminated against because your marriage somehow means less, I don't think is a real infringement. I think that's like a made up bullshit argument. Yeah. And I know obviously we have conservatives in our audience that'll be like, but Adam, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Actually <laughs> it, it, marriage is the definition goes, but look, I don't, mm -hmm. I just, I don't think you'll be, you will be able to get to sleep tonight, you know, happily married to your spouse or whatever, knowing that, you know, even if even if you understand that gay people are also getting getting are getting married, I think you'll be able to get over it. Right. When, um, when you're actually uh, you know a female swimmer and you've got you know the trans woman walking around shaking his dingling in your <laughs> in your in your uh, locker room, I think that's a, that's kind of a different situation, don't you? I I, I think I disagree with you. Because oh, really? you know, have you have you ever been to a gay wedding? No, I haven't. Okay, so yeah. I've been to a gay wedding, and I'm not. So I guess you don't know this. It's actually a tradition that that after the gay wedding, that the gay couple has to break into the home of a Christian family <laughs> and have sex on their dinner table in front of the children and the whole family. Well, I'm. A, I think that should be made illegal. If that's the case, that should not be happening. And it just completely de it destroys the entire marriage because, you know, the the parents see that and then they start to say, hmm, that looks better than what we're doing. Maybe we should be gay. And then the kids see that and they become interested and then they all become gay. And thus, you know, the gay contagion spreads again. I mean, jokes aside, you you do see a category. No, I agree, with you, yeah. I agree with you. <laughs> yes. Though I feel like the argument has this evolved. is this is totally exactly you said it perfectly. This is like the boy who cried wolf, right? Yes. You cried wolf about gay marriage, and now you got dinglings in the girls' locker room. Okay. <laughs> you fucking cried wolf. Okay. No, right. nobody's coming. You're you're going wolf, right. wolf, wolf. There's a dingling in my daughter's uh, locker room. <laughs> wolf, 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 and everyone's like, "Bitch, <laughs> you cried wolf already." Yeah, ascent. Yeah, exactly. Well, and also as, as as you said, it's important to point out that the left and the right have the same weapon that they will use from now into all eternity, which is change good, change bad. And so you'll always get the same exact arguments. The change bad will say this is degenerate, this is going to destroy our culture, and the change good side will say you're a bigot, you're a whatever a foe, blah blah blah. You're right. right? They're doing and it now. Those... They're saying, listen, you should just get over. It. I saw a rising right. piece, and rising is totally. You know, milk toast centrist outlet, and the guy was basically making an argument to the, the woman. She's like, "I'm an athlete. Look, I don't want dinglings in my <laughs> locker room, okay?" And it's this this uh, other reporter, a guy, is sitting there going, "Well, I mean, what's the big deal? It's just a dick, <laughs> <laughs> right?" <laughs> <laughs> well, what was the big deal before? Right? It's just why, a, why, it's just why a why lady have, dick. Get right. over it. If that was true, why didn't we have shared locker spaces from the beginning? <laughs> that's Look, that's what they're advocating for. They're saying, look, you just need to get over it. I've seen Starship Troopers. Mm -hmm. Okay, why can't we just have that? <laughs> they're like, no ugly people in the military, please. There you go. Everyone, everyone in the locker. See, that should be... 
The actual thing. Okay. This will be, listen, that, we're going to run for president <laughs> and we're going to fix this locker room problem. Be people are talking about it like. segregated spaces. Is that where we're going? Yeah. People are talking about like, we need locker rooms for, you know, men and women and trans people. No, no, no. That's all wrong. Okay. We need to have locker rooms for two the hot locker people. Rooms. Hot people and ugly people. <laughs> Okay. That's so cruel. Can you imagine? And there's going to be, and listen, it's all going to be very scientific. There's going to be a little camera in the front of it that does like a face scan and it has some kind of algorithm and it makes a determination whether you have to go in the hot locker or the ugly locker. It's going to come up ineligible. You I are know. ineligible for the hot space. Well, okay. Okay. Listen, maybe let's, let's be a little nicer. We'll have a You're third You're going to be option. branded ineligible. Okay. We'll have the hot locker. We'll have the medium locker. And then we'll oh have the no! Other right, so you can still be medium, right? Even if you're not, you know. No, no? the mid, the mid, the mid. Room. Yeah, there you go. The mid, the mid room. These ladies, they <laughs> like their sex segregated spaces. I'm just, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. They don't see it as a gay marriage thing. No, no. Though again, you know, I don't know. I, I know, I don't really care about the locker room argument. I know that's. I know you care about that. But I don't care about that. Well, you you're the guy. You're literally the guy on Rising. Yeah. You're like, I don't give a fuck. Look, I'm a dude. I don't care. Yeah. Get That's used true. to I it. I am that guy. Yeah. I don't care. I, the, get used to the other lady arguments dick I care in your about. That's room. not an argument I care about. It's just it's bizarre. Look, the it's categorically different in the gay marriage situation. I mean, you know it exists, but you don't have to participate in it. You don't have right. to go to a gay marriage. You don't have to have gay friends that are gay married. Like you can yeah. completely segregate yourself from that thing that you don't like. When the yeah. when the lady dick shows up in your locker room, what are you going to switch schools? Right. right. How do you how do you segregate yourself from that? You can't. Room? It's completely oh, different. That's the narrative you wanted to promote. Well, what would be your argument? I mean, if someone put a gun to my head and forced me to make that argument, I'd probably say something like this. Anita Bryant lived a difficult life. In 1940, she was born into brutal poverty in rural Oklahoma. Her parents divorced when she was just two years old, the same year she made her singing debut at the Baptist Church. Parts of my childhood, I blocked out because it hurts too much. I guess I was happiest when I was eight years old, and my parents were remarried, and I was baptized and came to know Christ as my personal savior. Her father- They have like one argument. Society did this to him. <laughs> like that's always the argument. Mm -hmm. Society well, did this to him. It is kind of interesting that, you know, when you look into her past, it's very obvious why she became the anti-gay activist. You know, she had this very difficult upbringing and she found salvation through the church. Right. You know, her religion brought her comfort and meaning in her life. And so then when the, her religion says gay bad, obviously that's where she's going to be. You know, she thinks, oh, she thinks she's helping people. So she thinks that she's going to bring people the same salvation that she experienced because, as I've said a million times, everyone assumes everyone else is like a you know, a little copy of them and they yeah. see the world and perceive the world the same way. And thus the same things that help them will help everyone else. When obviously that's completely not true. Ridiculous. Abandoned the family again when she was 12. It was real painful and it just about killed my mother. She was a very submissive wife. She was too submissive and it angered me. She let my dad step all over her because of him. I think I went through life for a long time, hating all men. And he just, I don't know if that's like, um, like a deep fake of her voice or something. It sounds like a deep fake of Hillary Clinton or something. It's really weird. I don't know. But no, I, I also, I wonder too, if Anita, since she had this very bad relationship with her father and she said, she, you know, she hated men for many years. I wouldn't be surprised if she thought that maybe she was gay for many years. Oh, really? And that kind of affected her thinking and all of this stuff. So, a lesbian? Yeah, maybe. Hmm. So. I don't, it's always to me it's a little it's always interesting when you find out why people kind of believe what they believe I believe what I believe because it's true there you go base yeah
people just because she took a stand for something she believed in? Anita Bryant's role as a leader in the campaign against homosexuals may be hurting her campaign to sell orange juice. Are you being blackballed? Well, it's, uh, it's, it looks that way. It's, it's worse than that. We're being threatened, and uh, there's all kinds of harassment, even with my job with Florida Citrus. Her entire life had become a series of catastrophes. She'd been dropped as spokesperson by the orange growers. She had been dropped as a commentator on the Orange Bowl parade. She lost a television show contract. Her bookings dropped drastically. It destroys the dream that I have had since I was a child to entertain and present wholesome subjects to my fellow Americans because I dared to speak out for straight and normal America. No one has paid as dearly as Nita Bryant for taking a public stand on something she believed in. I remember lying in the bed in my, my mother's house in a fetal position and wanting to die. Gay activists in the 1970s it's it, just it, all limit their coke. tactics to polite... Sorry, what? go ahead. That's just, all, that's just all cope. Massive cope. What that's is? That's the beginning of the cope spiral. Because they're, they're trying to say that's J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling is doing oh. fine, man. J.K. Rowling is doing great. This, yeah. <laughs> this podcast is going to catapult her back into the stratosphere, okay? She's not, like, the idea that you think J.K. Rowling is an ex-Anita Bryant just shows how delusional you are. Completely right. delusional. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, J.K. Rowling has so much money that's just... It doesn't matter. Yeah. She's uncancelable. Yeah. Yeah. And I look, I think she has look, Sitch may not care about female only spaces, <laughs> but women vote. And I think women do care about female only spaces. And I don't think you stand a snowball's chance in hell of of those women giving up their female only spaces. Look, you gotta win at the ballot box. You're mm -hmm. right. Their rights are up for uh, uh, up for vote in upcoming elections, and I think they're going to maintain those rights. They're going to keep those rights. Right, right. They um, may say, "Oh, rah rah, go trans people," but when they show up in the ballot box, they're not going to vote for this shit. Well, it's interesting too because you know even back in those days, you know where the country was obviously a lot more anti-LGBT. This lady, Anita Bryant, because she came out so strongly against LGBT stuff, she was blackballed from all, of, like, her entire career was destroyed. So even back in those days, society was like, no, this kind of, you know, outward bigotry is not acceptable. <laughs> yeah, no shit. But, it, the, but uh, J.K. Rowling is not doing any of this kind of bigotry. No. She's basically saying, listen, I have my rights and I want to keep those rights. And you guys do whatever you want. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sacred Entity for 20 pounds. Thanks so much. It says, you guys should look up the Isla Bryson case that ended up being one of the reasons Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon resigned. Uh, Isla Bry Bryson was a 31-year-old Scottish transgender woman who was convicted of raping two women. Um, they occurred prior to transition, and then this controversy caused Bryson. The, the case caused controversy after Bryson was sent to a woman's prison to await sentence and raise questions about the woman's safety. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think that case. Um, which is another thing, I, I do think there's a big, a big concern for trans women in female prisons, especially trans women convicted of sex offenses against women, obviously, <laughs> is a, a big issue, especially if they still have, you know, penis. And this, I think this comes up later in the video. I don't know if it's this case, but there are other cases, especially in, you know, proto-America land, where uh, that J.K. Rowling is very concerned about. So You might want to read Austries, too. Ostracy for twenty dollars. Thank you, Ostracy. Says Adams frustrating the crap out of me all week. I agree with all of his points, but I think all of his arguments are straw man crap. <laughs> That's interesting. It's an interesting position. I feel like you're doing such a bad job of representing the conservative gay marriage position. Well, there's multiple conservative gay marriage positions that we could like 
really want to get into it. The one that Adam talked about now, that was like the original position. Um, that, that position is so weak, I think, that it's kind of evolved into various forms. One of the forms is kind of the Ben Shapiro position, which comes up later in this video. It's the civil unions. <laughs> yeah, where it's like, oh, I think the government should be out of marriage altogether, which I think is a silly argument. There's way too many... I think it's a silly argument for two reasons. One, we want a society that promotes marriage, obviously. Uh, so in order for us as a society to promote marriage, there have to be financial incentives that you right. gain from being married. And if yeah. there are financial incentives involved with being married, then it's going to have to be something that you register with the government, and thus it's going to be some sort of legally recognized thing. Tax breaks, it, exactly. Yeah, we right. want to get those birth rates up too, which right. tax breaks. And this whole idea to me that, oh, like the word marriage should be only applied to religious unions and all other unions should be called, which should be literally the exact same thing, but called a different word. I hate to break it to you, but to me, that's just 100% cope. It's yeah. 100% cope. That's all it is. Well, that's and, all it is. And is that, a, is that a straw man of the position? Because I, I feel like it's a steel man of the position. The definition of marriage is between a man and a woman. That's like the position. Definition of the word. Just well, like it's laid it out. It's kind of like a conflating argument because on one hand, that's what they say, but the other hand, what they're really trying to say is, oh, we're trying to associate marriage to be strictly a religious action. Right. But that's not true. People got married before and outside of religion since all of human history. Yeah, totally. So I don't buy the whole religious argument. You know, anyway. And I mean, couldn't couldn't someone just create some like Unitarian church that recognizes gay people and therefore their religion their marriage becomes a religious you know practice like i don't know to me it's it's a weird cope it's a complete waste of time to to fixate on for people um oh man but then, i hated that argument when i was having that argument yeah. with conservatives over the definition of marriage i was like this this is ridiculous we're literally arguing over the definition of words yes well it's very reminiscent of the whole we want to redefine the term woman so that we win an argument. It's like, well, we want to define marriage in such a way to win an argument. We don't want to actually argue yes. the merits of whatever the situation is. Yeah, I think, yeah. I want to have a, the substance of the debate. And we right. can do that without even using the word marriage. Call it right. whatever you want to call it. The other argument that's becoming more prominent because it's harder to, to fight against is the argument that, oh... You know, everything's a slippery slope. As soon as you have gay rights come into the position, it's just a slippery slope to trans, slippery slope to, you know, whatever horrible thing, you know, is going to come after, right? Yeah, That's, totally. you know, the argument. The, the problem with the slippery slope argument is that everything in the entire world is a slippery slope and nothing in the entire world is a slippery slope. Right. And people don't realize that. Why? Wow. And... Part of it for me is learning where to draw the line. Well, everything in the world is a slippery slope because, like, think of it this way. Say there's a person who is a map, mm -hmm. okay, a, a PDF file individual, right? Mm -hmm. You'll know what a map is, right? Right, yeah. That person in 1950 knows that they cannot go out there and advocate publicly for their position because it's so it's so far away from acceptability that they can't advocate for it. Well, and, and it know literally that, hurts people. Right, and it literally hurts people. Right, but so they know that they, what they have to do in order to get their way, they have to first start chipping away at the concept of, of everything really i mean this is kind of why in the queer movement or in the i guess i should say not the queer movement this is why in queer theory they have such a problem with age of consent questions because the underlying queer theory is everything that exists is oppressive right mm -hmm. and so essentially the reason that slippery slope is everything in the world is slippery slope is because they know that they have to advocate for for lesser things that chip away at greater things first in order to eventually get their end goal. That doesn't mean that everyone that wants gay marriage, obviously, or wants, you know, transitioning 
is in favor of map stuff. Most of them are not. <laughs> but the people that are in favor of it know that they're going to have to try to use those movements to get what they want. Another example would be, like a reverse example would be the people that want a Christian theocracy, right? The people that want to get rid of the First Amendment and have America be a Christian theocracy. Now, most people know that that's an inherently, that's such an unpopular position. That position is so far outside the norm that they have to start somewhere else. So where do they start? Well, maybe we shouldn't teach evolution in school, right? Okay. Maybe we should Intelligent bring prayer design. back. In. Right. Maybe maybe we should teach the controversy, right? We should just teach the controversy. Maybe we should bring prayer back in the school. Like they have to first start chipping away at the various institutions and ideas before they like can. This sounds like you're making the slippery slope argument. No, I am, but that's my point. My point is everything in the entire world is a slippery slope argument. Right. Because of the nature of how extremists have to try to push to get things that they want. Right. Well, I just... And so it, if every single thing in the entire world is a slippery slope argument, we as a society cannot be paralyzed and say, oh my God, we have to just pause everything. We can never change because everything's a slippery slope. No. You say, okay, we have to be fucking rational adults and say some things we accept on arguments we like and some things we think are bad and you just stop you can say oh this is an amount of change we like and this is an amount of change we don't like and we're going to put the brakes here we're going to put the brakes here that's all you do well my conception of it is the argument is you know this thing that we want to do doesn't hurt anyone but the next step is going to hurt people so they're basically saying we can't do this thing because it's a slippery slope to this next thing where people are actually harmed. Right. Why can't so we what, just draw the line at where people are harmed? Right. So what you're saying, you're, what you're saying is that's the argument you use against. Yeah, that's the argument you use against preventing the next step from occurring, which right. I agree with. Right. I'm just saying that the potential for someone to argue the next step always exists but the, because I, that's just how like reality exists. There's right. no way around that. But the clearer way to think is whether or not this ha it harms anyone. Like when I understand that we're making... talking about two different things, right? Okay, what is you're, it? You're talking about the reason. You're talking about the rationale that you would give to prevent someone from going down the slippery slope. Look, the slippery slope argument I, I think is kind of bullshit because it's basically saying, okay, well, this thing isn't really going to hurt anyone. But the next thing is going to destroy society as we know it. So you're only making that argument because you're saying, look, that other thing, if we, if we do this, then that other thing is going to happen. Why can't we just say, well, let's avoid that other thing? Okay, so I understand what the, I understand what the issue is. So there are two elements of the slippery slope. And I understand sort of the, the confusion. Look, one uh, one element, well, let me finish. One element of slippery slope is the slippery slope fallacy okay, is the idea that if something changes, it necessitates that the change continues, right? That's Correct. the fallacy. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm not talking about that. That is the fallacy part of it, right? That that's what I'm not saying that there just because something changes does not necessitate that something changes after it. All I'm saying is that anyone that has an extreme position in society knows that they can't advocate for their extreme position outright because otherwise they get shunned. So they have to advocate for lesser positions to try to soften society up until they can get to a point where they think they can get to their extreme position. That's all I'm saying. Right. And so, so I guess the way, I guess the better way to frame it would be the slippery slope is still a fallacy, but there will always be bad actors who are trying to use the slippery slope to their advantage, if that makes sense. Well, they're trying to get to a position that nobody's in favor of. Yes, exactly. Right. Right. But I but mean, we that's can't kind of allow those extremists to to control our lives. Right. Well, I just I look at it from the person making the slippery slope argument. They're usually making that argument because, you know, whatever people are advocating for is innocuous. So they don't have a good argument for it. So they that's say, true. look, that's a great point. this that's is going to lead to pedophilia. That's why we right. can't do this shit. Right. Right. They're like, this thing is innocuous, but that other thing that could happen several uh, years down the road if we let this thing happen, which I just, why can't we just draw the line and say, listen, 
There are things that are innocuous. They don't hurt anyone. There are things that could potentially hurt you as a person, you know, self-harm, smoking, drinking, right. things like that. There are things that hurt other people like pedophilia, right? That fucking hurts other people. So you got to make a clear designation. You're like, we're not going to let things happen that are going to hurt other people. We're going to have vigorous dialogue about things that are self-harm, right? And I think the trans debate falls into that category because some people are saying, look, this is self-harm. And some people are saying, well, you know, we let people smoke and drink and that's self-harm. What's the difference, right? Mm -hmm. So we're having a vigorous dialogue about those kinds of things. And there are things like gay marriage, which, look, if you can't sleep at night because the definition of marriage was changed microscopically. That's a you problem. That's a you problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, this, this slippery slope argument, when people bring it out, what they're really saying is, I don't have a good argument for this thing, you know? <laughs> so I'm going to scare you with some other thing that might happen because right. of this. Right. Well, I think there's two things. I think that's not, I think that I think there's two things happening. With slope. I think the first thing is what you just said. They don't have a good argument. Like they don't have a good argument against gay marriage. So they have to fear monger about some other pedophilia. Yeah. Thing. Right. What there's no, no, nothing says gay marriage leads to that. Yes. Except but for second... what you're saying is the peop the people who are actually in favor of that. And they're like, well, this is a step closer to what I want. Yeah. Is... They will use gay marriage nefariously to try to get what they want. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which those um, people we just need to, I mean, don't we, <laughs> don't we have a meme for those people? Yeah, exactly. There we go. Yeah. But uh, no, but the second thing I think that happens too, is that there are people who look around at whatever's happening and they get convinced that society has some sort of degeneracy or something in it that they don't like, and it triggers their moral intuition so strongly that they basically are willing to sacrifice freedom for safety. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, this thing that's happening is so bad, I'm willing to sacrifice some element of freedom, especially if the freedom doesn't you know, apply to me, like if you're straight and you're, you know, want to say, oh, I'm so grossed out by you know, the trans movement that I'm suddenly willing to give away, you know, gay rights. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think that is a thing that happens to people. Yeah, definitely. It's unfortunate, but it happens. Right. People are driven by their moral intuitions instead of their, their rationality. Right. Debate in the free marketplace of ideas. <laughs> Homosexuals started fighting back. The gays formed new groups and picketed the performer's public appearances, forcing her to cancel a few. Gay activists routinely compared Anita to Adolf H. They created pastiches of her orange juice slogan. They blamed her for hate crimes. They burned her in effigy. They disrupted events she was involved in. They printed toilet paper with her face on it. Some sent Anita death threats, or they mailed her rotting oranges, dead cockroaches, human excrement. See, this is how you canceled people before phones. Instead of shit posting, you would simply mail actual human shit through the United States Postal Service. Either the thing that stands out to me about this is I knew none of this stuff and I don't think any of this stuff is in the popular consciousness because all of this stuff hurt the gay rights movement more than it helped it. Otherwise, we would be talking about it. That we would be idol. We would be... Um, Idolizing it's a Boston Tea Party. We mailed her human fecal matter. Yes, exactly. We would be right. memorializing this stuff yes. as the thing that got gay marriage passed. Right. You know why we're not memorializing that? It because it didn't work. It didn't work. It kept the gay yes. rights. It it probably set the gay rights movement back years, decades. Look, we right. just we just got gay marriage recently. Well, <laughs> and that's what this is what annoys me about this video. And I don't know if it's some level of dishonesty or just conscious, just subsumed by ideology, probably the latter, which is she keeps bringing up examples of how people in the past acted extreme for movements that I would agree with. But she ignores whether those extreme actions actually helped or hurt. Them. Yes. Um, you know, how does sending a need you, you think sending Anita Bryant, you know, poop or dead bugs that's not going to make her stop. That's going to make her double and triple down. And that's, that's going, going to, to bring people to her side. 
Exactly. That's going to make her say, look at these, look at these degenerates. This justifies everything I think about them. And then when she points out to other people, she can say, look, this is what they're doing to me. This proves everything I'm saying true. Yes. Okay. So how does this help the movement exactly, Contra? And that's what's kind of wild to me about this whole thing. Like there's a massive difference between protesting someone, picketing someone, you know, putting their little face saying that they're Hitler on a sign and, and, and protesting them, right? Trying to organize. But there's so many different, all these actions are very different. And Contra just lumps them in all together and then acts like they were effective when, you know, these, these movement, this movement obviously wasn't that effective because, you know, as you said, we didn't get gay marriage until recently. And it wasn't a law. It was the Supreme Court that, yeah. that had that. You know, we didn't get, I don't believe there's a law. I don't believe there's a federal law that, uh, protect sexual orientation. I think it was, again, the courts interpreted sex protection to include sexual orientation. And that was in like the 80s or 90s or something. So obviously all this activism that Contra is kind of holding up as an example to tell you know people nowadays to shut up about you know when trans people do things that go too far, or trans activists, I should say, do things that, that go too far, or Black Lives Matter, or whatever movement's happening, this is all bullshit because none of this stuff worked. Didn't work then, not working now. And it's kind of odd just to frame it. I mean, it's a complete rewrite of history to say that this stuff was effective. Yes. <laughs> and yes. and just to yes. justify the the noxious shit they're doing now is the the strategy here, which is completely weird. Which is awful. And, yeah. And not yeah. going to work. No, it's not gonna work. It's awful. You know, and you said whenever we talked about this, I mean, this is a well-known fact, you know, one of the most powerful forces that really changed America's mind on the gay question, on the GQ, mm -hmm. was will and grace. Of course. It was, yeah. it was having popular culture, have movies and TV shows where gay individuals were shown in positive lights. I was like, listen, you know, these people are just like you. They're just like anyone else. You know, they're not, you know, these evil, degenerate people, blah, 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 blah. That's what really got people on board. It wasn't sending people poop, right? No. It wasn't throwing pies in people's face. None of these things work. None it, of these actions work. It was Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington in the movie Philadelphia that yes. just made people yes. empathize yes. with them. Exactly. They were like, right. these people have this, are, are suffering. Right. People, it's hard to look at people suffering and not feel, you know, empathy Bad. for them. Yes, yeah. exactly. It but, just, that's yeah. the goal. Show the people that you want to have rights in a positive light, you know, being impacted by some, you know, messed up part of society. This is, this is why you're talking about it. I forget what book you're talking about, where during the civil rights movements, you know, the, the protest leaders would go up to everyone, all the people that are protesting for black rights, and they'd say, okay, you know, you need to, if you have any weapon of any kind, you need to hand it over, right? Yeah. You know, empty your pockets. They make sure no one had any weapon because they understood the game. They understood the tactic. They understood this concept that the way to get people on your side is to show black people wearing suits and ties, sitting at a counter, mm -hmm. just wanting to be served and having police officers with water cannons and dogs and billy clubs, you know, beat the crap out of them. You have that image broadcast around the entire country and everyone goes, wow, that's super fucked up. Totally. Yeah. You know. But instead, uh, the trans activists, they want to be the ones doing the beating. <laughs> it just that's, doesn't work. Yes. <laughs> right. It does. And, you know, this is what, you know, David Shore was talking about with the BLM stuff. He said, listen, during the civil rights movement, areas where... You didn't have the peaceful protesting areas where you did have, you know, people, uh, black people riot and burn down a bunch of shit. Those areas all voted against civil rights legislation and civil rights stuff. Yeah. Because people see that and they get scared. And what happens when people are scared? They say, I'm willing to sacrifice freedom for security. That's what happens when people are scared. And this is and this is what especially when they're sacrificing so your freedom for for their security. Exactly. They're like, "Oh yeah, that's an easy question." Sure. This the sad truth that that so many left refuse to accept is that when there's some kind of a, what they consider to be an oppressive part of society that they want to change, that's really only going to change 
either through massive violence or when people are essentially secure enough in their own safety that they're willing to take a chance yeah. and offer these additional freedoms to other people. Perfect, perfect example, yeah. They're feeling safe themselves. Right. We, can, but, we can do a little change to society now and see how it goes. Right. But th this idea nowadays makes perfect sense because right now so many people, especially on the left, are so consumed with the concept of unfairness and fairness in the world. And yeah, listen, it's unfair. It's completely unfair that black people in the South, in order to gain equal rights, have to essentially allow themselves to be beaten up and sacrificed on television. That's a completely unfair, horrible thing. But that's the reality. I don't know what to tell you. There's no other way to do it besides having Civil War 2.0. And that's going to cause a lot more pain and suffering. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes you have to deal with that unfairness. Yeah. And, and the problem is, and this video is so funny. This video is such a perfect example of everything that's wrong now with the, the modern left. You know, she's talking about how, oh, look, back in these days, you know, they were literally sending her poop in the mail and all this other stuff. And nowadays, you know, what do you do? You get angry tweets. And it shows how privileged and detached these children are nowadays, these activists are nowadays. And they think they're literally acting like, like they're living in the 1900s. <laughs> like, like, the level, like the level of oppression that black people, that gay people, that trans people are facing. They're literally acting like it's, you know, 1869 or something. Right, yeah. And it's like, no, everything is so much better now. And you're just a privileged weakling. Yeah, you got to act like that. Otherwise, you don't get your victimhood points. <laughs> exactly, exactly. When you brought up your definition of woke, I was, I mean, I understand that definition, but I just, it's hard to conceptualize. It's just so much easier to think of victimhood culture, you know, oppression Olympics. These words just, I think that's the root of the woke. Yeah, well, there's, there's, there's two different things, and that should be part of it. There mm -hmm. needs to be the part of the definition that you focus makes on it, illiberal. There needs to no, no no. Let me finish. There needs to be part of the definition that makes it persuasive. And in order to make it persuasive, part of it has to immediately identify with people so they agree. So that should be the the first part of it. Is you know, wokeness is victimhood culture, right? right? And then the second part of the definition is, I'm trying to get embedded within it a way to fight wokeness, and the only way to fight it is to point out to people that it is anti-liberal. Right. So I think both those elements need to be in the definition. Correct. Persuasion and then the tactic. Talking past the sale is what you're trying to do. Yes. Yes. Snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night. Anita's husband pleaded to supporters. How would you men feel if you opened a letter and there was a photo of your wife's head superimposed on some other female nude body in the most lewd and shocking sexual act you can imagine? Can imagine quite a lot see, now see that's the only thing that's worse nowadays now with deep faking and <laughs> being far more than oh my god picture. wow holy shit <laughs> i do think it would be fair to say that a lot of the rhetoric did take on a misogynistic tone lillian you know i just realized that's going to be super messed up you know how easy it's going to be so many people are going to be like oh see, so there's like some random person you don't like okay some random ass person you don't like not even a public figure it wouldn't be that difficult if you had access to, I don't know, if you work with them or something, you secretly record them, to just, to in the future, to get some audio recording of them, get some video recording of them, deep fake a video of it, like them having sex with someone, and then send it to their significant other and say, look, this person's cheating on you. Yeah. Just to fuck with them. Yeah. Sitch, Keep, don't do that. Future's going to be wild. Don't turn to the dark side. I would never do that. That's so immoral but yeah, the, the future is gonna be wild we're gonna need all these algorithms to like determine what is deep fake and what is real yeah we need that kind of behavior though should just be i mean capital punishment we have to bring back for that right <laughs> look you gotta capital you punishment gotta impose, but you know something you gotta uh, impose yes i think uh like swatting should be capital punishment Mm. I don't know why we're just not offing these people. I think it should be significantly severe, but I don't know about mm. capital punishment.
No, lethal injection. Okay. Do so you think uh, you think Ian Miles Chong should be executed? Did it what? Has he? Has he? Uh, did he swat Didn't someone? He, he swatted. Um, what's his name? Oh, okay. Um, uh, but what's the guy's name? The blood sports guy. I mean, I don't. I obviously there's Andy be a, Worski. Obviously, there should be a this? trial. But if he's guilty, yeah. Ian Miles Chong. Not only did he swat Andy, he swatted Andy. War they had some channel together, and then there was some drama. They were fighting mm -hmm. over like who would have like access to the channel or whose channel it really was or something. And so uh, Ian Miles Chong swatted Andy Worski. Not only did he swat Andy Worski, he told the police that Andy had drugs and guns, right? And that he was worried he was gonna like, you know, do a shooting or something. That's awful. That's yeah, terrible. Yeah. yeah. How come this isn't and widely or known? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, nowadays Ian is isn't he like, hanging out with Elon Musk and stuff? Yeah, he's like number one Elon Musk simp. So wow. Okay. People forget that. But. Interesting. There was also a rumor. I don't know if it was ever true. There's this whole story about he swatted someone else and got their dog killed. But I, I'm what? not really clear. It's not really clear whether that was a joke or not. So. Ouch. But the Andy Worsley thing is real. Hmm. Baderman recounts the ends, particularly lesbian feminists, abhorred the sexist terms that were being used to characterize Anita Bryant. Bitch and whore, gay men called her. The harassment escalated to the point where Anita had to cancel her book tour due to demonstrations and bomb threats from gay activists. And of course... And that's why gay marriage didn't get passed until 2020. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How come she's not putting that together? Exactly, yes. There was the pie. So much for the tolerant Mattachine society. It's kind of a deep cut. Well, something to entertain the boomer queers. Gay activists claimed to stand for human rights, but what about Anita's right to free speech? I wish I had some literal pearls to clutch. Civil libertarian Nat Hentoff wrote in his 1992 book, Free Speech for Me, But Not for Thee, that the orange shoes boycott reminded him of a little thing called McCarthyism. Have you ever considered that being pro-gay is quite similar to being anti-gay, and that both are opinions? As Anita tells it, she and her foot- So much of this video is just like these rabid straw mans. Of course, contract. yeah. Because the guy's argument isn't being pro-gay is the same as being anti-gay because they're both positions. The argument is, do you have to be in favor of allowing people to have free speech? Period. Right. That's the argument. Yeah. That's the argument for being able to hold hands with your gay lover in public. Yeah. Freedom of expression. Right? Right. Right. Foot soldiers of God were the victims of sinister gay carpetbaggers. The foot soldiers were housewives and mothers, religious and civic leaders in opposition to a well-organized, highly financed, and politically militant group of homosexual activists. We were cast as bigots, haters, discriminators, and deniers of basic human rights. And all of this happened because we were sincerely concerned for our children and our community. So Anita's version of the story is that she and a handful of well-intentioned Christian mothers were cast as bigots by a highly funded mafia of gay extremists, all because they had a few teensy tiny concerns about the militant homosexual cavorting with little boys. Cavorting with little boys. Is it really fair to call this woman a bigot? Until the Dade County Ordinance, Anita was a registered Democrat and considered herself a liberal. And she never said that she hated gay people or wanted them dead. In fact, she even said that she loves homosexuals. I love homosexuals. Look, it's Joanne. It's yeah. uh, JK. No, course, this is very dishonest. She plays this clip, I think we skipped over earlier, and she says the whole, you know, I love them because I love all sinners. She's not saying like she right. actually loves them as individual people the way jake rowling was saying she she does about individual trans people so i mean this is this is gonna work she's preaching to the choir though this is not well, gonna work in the kind of way that gets actual legislation passed it's funny no. because they keep complaining they're like well it's the republicans that are actually passing legislation they're the ones that are to be feared and I'm like, yeah, they're passing legislation because they have voters on their side. Of course right. they're passing legislation. None of this stuff could be passed because you don't have the you don't have the political will.
Well, I'm sure they do in some areas of the country, right? On a local level. Perhaps. You know. Do you think they have the, you think they could pass a bill that just abolish sex segregated spaces? I mean, maybe where you live. <laughs> I, I don't think they, I don't <laughs> think that stands a snowball's chance in hell. And if they passed it anywhere, the Republicans would be running on, they want to do this everywhere. Oh my God. Of course. Of course. America's yeah. on fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, there's not the political will for that. There's not. Helen Joyce yeah. lays this out in her book. She says, the, the, the big difference between the civil rights movement and the trans activist movement is the civil rights movement was focused on getting, you know, getting their message out to the public and building public support because they had a message that they felt public support would be in favor of. Right. The trans rights activists don't have that advantage they're about passing legislation in the dead of night because nobody wants to give up sex segregated spaces nobody wants uh you know uh trans women in women's prisons nobody wants uh, biological males competing in women's sports they don't want this stuff right if if you ask people if you put it on the ballot it's not going to pass and it's i I don't think it will ever pass because it's patently unfair and and rational people realize that. Mm -hmm. What she's talking about is def, you know defining words and stuff like that. It's a completely different ball game. Right. Yeah. Well, also I mean her whole argument is the the left right now is so completely consumed with this hyper moralism and it's kind of like this is why the argument that that Contra is making is essentially, well, because my side is right, we get to break the rules. Like, yeah, my side is great right. point. We get, we get to do whatever we want, and it's like okay, so like in a moral, in some kind of like moral quandary, right? If we had like a hypothetical moral question, like I'm, just, yeah, we'd all agree that whatever side we agree with morally, we would give more leeway to do certain actions or to defend themselves, right? Like, I don't have a problem. I wouldn't have a problem with, you know, in the past, uh, violent black extremists to like go and kill KKK members. I have no problem with that action, right? right. Because the KKK is attacking them, yeah. uh, you know, violently breaking the law and things of that nature. But that's not the question that matters. And this is why all these people are so... They're just so consumed with their own emotions and they're so consumed with their own moralism and their own irrationality. The question isn't which action is more moral. The question is what is going to actually have a positive change you want in the world? What is going to actually have it manifest? And all these people are just post hoc rationalizing what they want. You know, they know. all want to be angry you know, just tear shit down. They all want these outlets for their, their anger and their emotion. And so then they create these insanely BS, you know, reasons to basically justify that behavior. Right. When in, in reality, what we all know is it's the exact opposite. Totally. Like, yeah, if you go and do and you go act that way, all it's going to do is the exact opposite of what you want. Yeah. You know, the people do have to follow the rules equally because that's the way our society functions. And that's what's gonna get you the positive change you actually want in the world. Yeah, this is why they're constantly gaslighting people about the trans genocide, is because yes. that allows them, gives them the political leeway to break the rules. But yeah. it's, you can't do that if it's not true. Right. And the trans genocide is just, I mean, that's so huge, I, huge overreach. Yes. No, I agree completely. Uh, and calling it a genocide, I think, is very disingenuous. Um, but I will say, I think that the the right will overreach as they always do. Well, both sides always overreach. That's kind of how these movements work. And like right now in Florida, I think they either talking about passing or they passed a bill that essentially bans uh, only you can only use the bathroom that aligns with your sex, right? In any place, even in private areas. People are going to break that rule. It's going to be just like, it's going to be like pot smoking. Right. Though there there is one caveat to it, um, which is that it really, you can only be violating the law if you're like, you're allowed to go into a sex segregated space if you're trans, 
You just have to leave it if someone asks you to leave it. Oh, really? So they have yeah. a caveat in there. So there is a caveat to it. So it's better than just a, a, a flat band. That's great. But yeah, because no. I was thinking like you know, I mean, it's kind of reminds me of like the Chappelle. Look, joke, you don't like, want Blair White walking into the men's room. Okay. Yeah, you don't want Blair White or Taft to walk into the guy's you know, yeah, room or the guy's locker room or something. You'd be like, what the hell's happening here? I think trans people gen genuinely want to go to the bathroom where there is the least conflict, right? Yes, I think that's what everyone wants, right? Yeah, <laughs> of course. Of course that's what everyone wants. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, passing plays into that. But you yes. can't necessarily legislate, oh, you I'm know, passing. passing. How that's you... why I said it's got to be based on hotness level. Yeah, well, good luck on that one. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, yeah, keeping, keeping, keep that. People also want some sort of legislation for the people who are going to, you know, have nefarious intentions. They're going to use this as a subterfuge for something that, that they want to do that's nefarious. So you do need that legislation in place to prosecute those people when that happens. Right. Although a lot of, you know, obviously you, you always say that's a, a giant minority. I think it's a giant. It's a it's a small fraction of any situation that takes place. It's just the fear factor. Even if it's a small factor, you know. Obviously, when serial killers are running around, everyone is scared. Of course, even though, even though it's like yeah, yeah, you're right. more likely to get killed in a car accident. Than yeah, like magnitudes yeah. higher than you know killed by a serial killer. But there's no. I mean. Yeah. This, the psychological damage, I think, is real. So you got to take that well, into yeah. consideration. That's the same well, with the sex segregated spaces. Right. It's like, yeah, you're sure you're not going to see a dangling in every locker room, but you're going to worry about it in every, <laughs> in every locker room. Uh, Val Van Gogh for twenty dollars. Thanks so much. Says I think the steel man slippery slope argument. I think the steel man slippery slope argument is that the harmful effects slowly increase over time, not instantly. Think knocking down fence without knowing why it's there and slowly discovering why over generations. Well, that's a different argument than what we were talking about. Um, that's not really a slippery slope argument. I think that's just an argument of there are certain things in place and you don't understand the repercussions of getting rid of them until later, until it's already gone sort of argument. Because usually when there are cultural things in place, people don't understand, even the people advocating for it don't really understand why it's there. Right. Yeah. Um, because I think that a lot of human culture essentially works the same way machine learning works. There's just a lot of random cultural selections and whatever is successful for whatever reason ends up propagating and thus continuing forward. But we don't, it's like a, but just like machine learning, it's a black box. No one really knows why, these, why these cultural attitudes may have been helpful or successful. So I think that's a concern. I just I wouldn't call that slippery slope. I don't know what I, I don't know what you would call that. I just think that's a different thing. Cultural decay, maybe. Um. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Just some some specific object, some specific thing about there's a there's a fence there, and you don't know why. So if you break it down, you're not sure what will happen. I mean, that's why the whole attitude, the whole leftist attitude of just tear down everything that exists is so idiotic. Right. Because there's going to be all these things that are going to create all these problems. Uh, Tom Harvey for $20 says, did you guys see any of James Lindsay's new stuff about the religious occult foundation of Marxism, feminism, and queer theory? It may help understanding why it all feels like a religion because it totally is. Yeah, I did watch, I did watch one of them. Um, and I was aware of that he kind of goes over how a lot of like new age ideology plays into so much of leftist Marxist thought. And I was aware of all that stuff. I mean, it, it makes sense. You know, if you're familiar with sort of the whole, a lot of the new age ideology, obviously a lot of it has to do with like people having complete creative control over reality. And obviously that will appeal to people on the left that want to restructure all of society according to their moral whims. So it, a, it is interesting. So It's a great way for me personally to conceptualize these different phenomenon, but I know that it's not remotely persuasive in argumentation with other people like categorizing things like wokeness as a religion, that right. kind of thing. But for myself, obviously, I see the religious aspects of all this stuff everywhere. It's yeah. just so obvious. You know, people are rallying around something that, you know, motivates them, gives them the feeling of satisfaction in their lives. So right. 
Yeah. Well, you also get into the trouble with these things where you go, is it where's the chicken and where's the egg in the situation, right? Sure. Like, yeah, great point. Is it the religion, the religious aspects of their philosophy that makes them, you know, believe in all this leftist gobbledygook, or is it the other way around? Is it the left? They believe all this leftist gobbledygook, and then they look for something religious that kind of fits that. Right to to basically motivate them and to give them some sort of social structure in their lives. Right. Uh, just be 1005 for 20 dollars says i think it's helpful to differentiate between slippery slope arguments and fallacies that's a good point i agree with that if there's a logical cause and effect from one to the next it's a sound argument but if one of the steps is a large jump it's fallacious yeah I, well i think that's kind of the problem is that people use i think originally i'm not 100 sure but i think originally the slippery slope term only applied to the fallacy definitionally it didn't apply to a logical next step of progression Right. So. Yeah, if there is some sort of causal connection, you should right. definitely point that out. Right. But usually it's just some vague sense of degeneracy or something. Right, right. Well, everything leads to everything else. Right, yeah. Everything that happens in human history ca happens because something happened before it. That led well, they're to not it. necessarily causally related, though. Depends upon what. No, you're there's just there's multiple. All, they are causally related. It's just that there's so many different factors that you can't necessarily say this one thing led to this one other thing. Right. You know, there's so many things that have to happen at the same time that allow for some political movement or some progression to happen in some way or another. But they, a lot of people want to say that legalizing gay marriage is what led us to right. this social contagion for transgenderism right, right which i don't know that i see any kind of causal connection between those two things yeah i don't know i mean it could be one of many factors right um but just because something is one of a factor doesn't mean that you should get rid of it um it's like saying like oh well you know how many people die in car accidents you know cars are a lead are a factor in people dying so therefore we should get rid of cars and it's like well wait a minute <laughs> There's you, the cars provide, you know, a, a utility that we all enjoy. Right. So I well, just, the, it, as far as the transgender movement, I, I can wrap my head around people contemplating what it would be like to be the opposite sex. I feel like, you know, me and my friends at one time did that. I mean, who doesn't sit around and say, you know, I wonder what it would be like to be a woman or I wonder what it would be like to be a man when you're, you know, the mm -hmm. opposite sex. It seems like that's something people do. Like it, it, the idea that there are a large number of people who have a strong desire to be the opposite sex, I think may have been completely under the radar and i think a lot of it is being driven by society stepping up and saying oh well you can do that and not only that you know there's no downside to really experimenting with it to see if you want to do it which right. i you know i think the jury's out on whether or not that's a true statement um because i i feel like a lot of people are maybe get, given some sort of false hope that it's going to be of you know everything that they dream it's going to be when that's not necessarily the case so right Do well you, I, I mean i sent i sent you a comic along the lines of you can bring it up real quick that's along mm -hmm. the lines of exactly what you're talking about oh really that's pretty relevant i feel like do do you think that a lot of people are i mean i never would have the, f the fact that there are so many people who really just have a desire to be the opposite sex. I don't think there's that many people. Really? I think there's a, a very little amount of people that have that desire. Really? Now, I think there were probably a lot more women that had the desire back in the day because, you know, there would be oppressive you know, things that you were not allowed to do. Yeah, right. things that you were not allowed to do because you're a woman. So obviously then you'd be like, well, I wish I was a man, right? Well, there's. it seems like there's a bunch of movies that follow that trope. The woman being a man so that she can 
do things that men yeah but that was it's not they didn't really want to be a man they just want to have access to areas of society that would require them being a man to access yeah so they wanted access to men's only spaces right so this comic this is a calvin hobbs comic Mm -hmm. calvin is talking to Susie, and he says do you hate being a girl and Susie says it's got to be better than the alternative and he says what's it like is it like being a bug (laughs) And she says, like what? what? And he says, I imagine bugs and girls have a dim perception that nature played a cruel trick on them, but they lack the intelligence to really comprehend the magnitude of it. And then you see he's beat up in the next picture and he says, I must have put my finger on it. Yeah, no. Uh, exactly, Calvin Hobbes was so great. That's exactly what I uh, suspect suspected sitch would think of of what it was like to be a woman exactly that's exactly what i thought yeah <laughs> i just love his little expression where he's like <laughs> he's like trying to perceive you know nature playing a cruel trick that's hilarious but i know you know it was interesting um the kind of the slippery slope fallacy is the entire argument of like the neo-reactionary position because essentially it's, you know, as oh, I yeah, said, like you might course. think like, you might think, oh, it's ridiculous for me to say, oh, you know, cars cause people to die. So we need to eliminate cars, right? That's essentially the same kind of like thinking that is the basis of neo-reactionary. It's freedom brings some bad thing. So we need to eliminate freedom. Yeah. I mean, that's essentially the base argument yeah. for any sort of authoritarian, not just for neo-reactionary, but for any sort of authoritarian philosophy. Is freedom can bring you something bad, so get rid of freedom. Yes. Very simple, very reductive way to look at right. things. Well, it's awesome. But also, it's like, you know, freedom brings you good stuff too, right? <laughs> sure. I like so, freedom. Right. Freedom brings good and bad things, and you got to find the balance. So life is always about finding the balance. Yeah. Uh, Captain Mystery for $40. Thank you so much, Captain Mystery. It's very generous of you. Says anytime you watch a bread tuber, I simply must donate. On R slash moldy bread, I've been working on a post that criticizes contra of hypocrisy and sounding a lot like Lily Orchard by taking anti debate positions. Oh, nice. So check that out. R slash cool. moldy bread. I remember looking into Lily Orchard for a while. We did a video, didn't we? A did we? I'm not sure I that we, we did. did. We either did or we talked about doing it and then, then I don't remember. Right. We might have so. talked about it on a Tuesday stream. She's kind of yeah, crazy, so. I don't remember what video it was, but it was a crazy video, whatever it was. Uh, insensitive for $20 says, hey, guys, hope you're enjoying Dev's Twitter meltdown. <laughs> oh, hey, yes. Dev, I see you in the chat. Hi, I hope you're doing well. Uh, as much as the rest of us, an easy way to spot hidden pedo is to buy their buy their against the, the grain consistent takes, animals, disabled, etc. I'm not sure... I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Are they against in favor the grain of takes bestiality and? I mean, I mean you what does that have, have to be disabled though? Yeah, no, I was gonna say it's not a crime to have sex with a disabled person. Guys. Yeah, like, I, I don't know what you mean by that. I'm sure disabled people like to have sex. Sure, I don't. I don't think there's that many people that advocate openly for sex with animals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, know, you got Shank, and you got that one girl <laughs> that got shamed off the internet. So, oh my God, she was horrible. Yeah, she was. So yeah, I don't think I, it's funny. I think I think the sex with animals crowd is actually more reviled than the map crowd. It seems like there's way more maps than there are animal fuckers. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but yeah, shouldn't use that term map. Mm-hmm. I know you're trying I, to use I it. I wish this had a noise gate so we didn't have to hear his family in the background. I mean, I'm in an empty house, so I'm not sure if you're hearing something. It's not on my end. You're hearing it on my end. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, is that your wife in the background? Yeah. See, well, there you go. You're Listen, you're hearing Adam's domesticated life. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but no, I don't know if Dev's still in the chat, but no, I mean, I saw, I saw Dev has been arguing with lots and lots and lots of people on Twitter. Like, Dev, these people aren't just, let's just ignore these people, Dev. These people aren't important, okay? Just, you know, you can only argue with crazy people on Twitter for so long, right? You just gotta, just just ignore them. Every, everyone on Twitter's goal is to 
twist everything you see. Not everyone. A lot of people on Twitter's goal is to take what you're saying and twist it in the most negative light to attack you with it. And so it's just, it's a waste of time to engage when you realize that's, that's what someone's doing. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see much of the meltdown. I saw it. He tagged us in on something or other, but I it was like a giant long thread, so I didn't read it. So that's that's literally a someone tagged me. It's a massive thread, and I go, oh, this is way too long for me. Yes, yeah, so sorry, Deb, I didn't actually read it, but I'm, we're right. we're good. I mean, if you want right. to fight with people on Twitter, that's your well, you're Canadian, so it's not really your God given American right, but I guess right. it's a right. Uh, Captain Mystery for fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much, Captain Mystery. Says also one more thing. Have you seen the detransition versus trans middle ground episode on Jubilee? I didn't hate it, but I really didn't like when a trans person told a detrans person that that he should have gotten a second opinion on his gender dysphoria. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big oof. I haven't seen that. No, I haven't seen that. But I'll check it out. Hmm. Is that transphobic to say? It seems like anything you say is transphobic these days. So, I mean, it's not transphobic, but it's you know very insensitive oh, right? okay so i'll check it out though that sounds interesting uh max for 20 dollars says hey now i just learned from twitter that there's a subreddit for a woman who had an abortion fetish i i did i did see that yes truly god strays for, from us every day <laughs> a team is alzheimer's team to help us to help me forget these aberrations there you go well that's good right there you go but you don't want alzheimer's you don't yeah uh, Moondoggy for fifty dollars says, "I do believe the quote gays coming for the kids was ridiculous. I do think, th- uh, though, that certain negative behaviors like ultra, hedo- how do you say that word? Hedo- hedonistic. Yeah, hedonistic. Hedonistic behaviors was allowed to go under the radar because of this. So you get weird ideas of what gay is from the LGBT community. No, I agree. I agree one hundred percent. And that's always the difficulties of these movements is that everyone is afraid." to kind of call out the bad actors. It's kind of what I meant when I said that there will always be people with bad ideas that will use good ideas and good movements to kind of like hitch their bad ideas too. And often they can kind of like sneak in under the radar, which is a big problem. So just the, uh, the impreciseness of life. But anyway, let's get back to the video. Uh, here we are. <laughs> I love them enough to tell them the truth because I know that there is hope for the homosexuals that if they're willing to uh, turn from uh, sin the same as any individual, that uh, that they can be ex-homosexuals the same as there can be an ex-murderer, an ex-thief, or ex-anybody. She loves homosexuals. So since we talked for like an hour, the point of that was Contra is trying to say that she's trying to compare Anita saying I love homosexuals to like J.K. Rowling saying she doesn't have a problem with trans people. I never, no, I could be wrong. I've never heard J.K. Rowling say, I love trans people because they can all be convinced to detransition. <laughs> I've never heard that argument ever. So this seems very disingenuous to me. Yeah, it's not a one for one remotely. Because they can change just like murderers. Would a bigot have said that? <laughs> just about McFucking had it. Anita was so kind-hearted, she even said that she related to the homosexual. I can relate to the homosexual because I've had emotional scars in my own life. I really felt the rejection of my father, and that is one of the things that maybe leads someone going into homosexuality. Look, I don't hate homosexuals. That's the truth, no matter what they think of my motives. I've always said I love the sinner, but I hate the sin. Wow. What? It, it is weird that she did an interview for Playboy. <laughs> I don't know. Hypocritical. I don't know. Very interesting. What an empath. You know, I actually think it's really noble how she's able to project all of her own emotional baggage onto the marginalized group whose rights she's trying to take away. Okay. So we've given a fair hearing to both sides, to many sides. We've considered all the evidence. Now, let's suppose there's no longer a gun to my head and ask, did Anita Bryant really deserve that pie to the face? Well, yes, 
Obviously. Look, the point I'm trying to make here is that it's possible to take genuine virtues like nuance, empathy, and impartiality, and to twist them into fucked up apologia for horrible oppressive behavior. If you play this game long enough, you can essentially explain away the entire concept of bigotry and conclude that, in reality, there are no bigots. So before we get into this, Contra asked the wrong question. He's asking the question to satisfy the emotional argument. Who who that who gives a shit? I don't care about your emotional argument. It's irrelevant. You know, does Anita Bryant deserve to get a pie in the face? Probably. <laughs> I don't care. Like, I'm not bothered by the moral action of you taking a pie and hitting Anita Bryant in the face with it. Okay. That's not the question. The question is, is that going to further your actual cause or is it just something that makes you feel good? Yeah, no, you're right on the money. Is it is it going to help what you want to accomplish? I would argue right. no. It's gonna look. You probably set. You probably cost gay marriage a decade with that pie. Right. It was it worth it? Was it, would be a better question. I'm gonna say here's the my framing: violent activism or disruptive activism that feels good but actually hurts your movement is essentially the same thing as using heroin. It feels good at the moment, but it's worsening your life overall. Yeah. That's what it is. It's just giving yourself a shot of heroin. That's all it is. Oh, it feels, yeah, it felt really good. I'm sure it felt really good for the person that hit her with the pie. I'm sure all the gay people looked at that video and they cheered and it brought them joy right. in the moment. But did it help the movement? No. Right. Yeah. No, it didn't help the movement. Yeah, in two thousands when they were voting against gay marriage in California. <laughs> they were thinking about that they pie. They remembered that pie from forty years ago. They're like, Remember remember thirty, forty years ago when that lady got hit with the pie in Florida? Yeah. Like exactly. fuck those pie throwers. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. There's only tragically misunderstood people with difficult childhoods and valid concerns cruelly demonized by militant activists defaming and silencing them with such reputation ruining slurs as homophobe. Now, because you, viewers, are smart, media literate people, you understand framing. So you already know that I'm about to compare Anita Bryant to JK Rowling. In case you didn't well, the interesting thing too here is it's like, why can't, well, I understand why. It's because of, you know, how we evolved in tribalism. It's like, yeah, we can acknowledge that most people, even the people that, that probably have the worst ideologies that you don't like. So, you know, you know, I'm sure people like Nick Fuentes or Vosh or Pyramid Lady or Olay or any of these fucking people that, you know, you don't like, they all have reasons for why they believe what they believe. And some of those reasons you could be empathetic to, whether it be just that was the kind of moral foundations that they were born with, or they had some like screwed up childhood that made them think all these things. And you just, as I think part of being an adult or part of being a mature individual in the world is understanding the concept that you can empathize with an individual and the struggles they've went through and understand how those struggles have made them essentially have really bad toxic positions, but still acknowledge that those positions are bad and toxic and that they should not be implemented in society. Right. And we just kind of have to like grow up and accept that instead of just, you know, demonizing everyone. And not not everyone you disagree with is a literal demon that just hates you for no reason. Right? Right. Yeah. There's going to be people who have toxic positions in the world. Thank goodness right. that those positions don't have any, you know, realistic chance of being implemented. Right. And I say this all the time when I argue with people. I'm like, you, can, you know, I, I can empathize with your position, but I disagree with it. Or I can empathize with you. So, right. Anyway, I'm going to skip a big chunk of this because it's just her going over all the J.K. Rowling crap that we've heard of before. So, a lot of times people are just happy when you don't straw man their position, when you actually right. understand their position. Of course. Yeah. That's it. I'm going full Slytherin. <laughs>
In episode five of the witch trials of JK Rowling, Joe Rowe compared- Oh, so the thing I skipped was she talks about how, uh, what's her name? You know the uh, the Westboro Church? Yeah. If you're not familiar, West, the West, West, Westboro Baptist Church, yes. Yes, if you're not familiar, there was something called the Westboro Baptist Church. They're kind of not a thing anymore, mm -hmm. or they're not popular anymore, um, which was a, a very small church that was essentially just one big family. 20 members. Of, of now, yeah. I think it started at like 100, and then it kept shrinking over time. Really? Uh, I don't think they ever got more than like 20, 25 members. No, they, they, just... there was one part where they got at least up to 50, I think. Really? Because it was a big family, essentially. Okay. Uh, but it's been shrinking ever since. And it's the Phelps family, not Michael Phelps, but they're the Phelpses. <laughs> it would be funny if it was Michael Phelps. It would be funny, yeah. Um, Ouch. It's the Phelps family. And essentially, if you were politically conscious in the 2000s, they would go around with these very colorful signs that said, God hates F slurs. And... This was very controversial because not only were they very against gay people, but the way that they would protest was they would literally go to the funerals of soldiers that died in Iraq and Afghanistan. They would go outside of the funeral and they would protest uh, anti-gay stuff. And they would say, the reason your child, your soldier child who was serving this country was killed in action was because God was smiting them. Because we allow gay stuff in America. Yep. How terrible. Right. So pretty horribly uh, despicable people in despicable protesting, I should say. But relating to what I said earlier about demonizing people, uh, there's some very interesting documentaries about Westboro Church that made me completely change my opinion on them, which was watching Louis Thoreau's doc fantastic documentaries on them, where you kind of realize that essentially you have one massive bigot who was the father who was basically the, the pastor kind of creating all this and the rest of the family was basically being gaslit emotionally manipulated into going along with all this stuff and you would see kind of how sad it was that all these children that they had were basically being cult groomed into following this insane ideology right by a and, dickhead patriarch yes and, um, but one of the, but so a lot of the, the people that are part of this church would end up leaving the church and leaving the family. And, uh, one of the famous people that led it, left the family was a woman named Megan Phelps. She essentially left the church and she has a podcast now. And there was some big controversy that I cut out cause it's not really relevant to anything where she had a podcast where she, it was called The Witch Trial of J.K. Rowling, and, eventually, and essentially, she's de even though she left the church, she's defending J.K. Rowling and thinks that J.K. Rowling is getting a lot of unnecessary hate, and she asked ContraPoints to come on, and ContraPoints originally agreed to come on the podcast, but then when she found out that it was called The Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling, Contra dropped out of doing so. Do you remember about it. last time we covered Contra doing going after J.K. Rowling, me saying that Contra was trying to get a sit down with J.K. Rowling to increase her status? You and that's exactly what that? happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, another A-team win. There you go. You did say that. And yeah. uh, part, of, part of the element was that Megan Phelps, I believe, was supposed to to have a sit down between Contra and J.K. Rowling. Right, yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know if that ever materialized. J.K. No, Rowling J was probably like, no, nah, this is, I'm not sitting down with this person. Well, we don't know. I, first of all, I would be surprised if J.K. Rowling would agree to that. Why would um, you? Right. But from Contra's explanation, we don't know. What All we know is that Contra is the one that dropped out of it. Right. Which seems really stupid. If that was like, if J.K. Rowling was willing to sit down and have a mediated conversation with Contra and Contra backed out of it just because she thought Megan Phelps was going to be an impartial moderator, that's really dumb. That's really dumb. That's like ultra mega dumb. Right. What she could have done was she could have said, I will have this conversation, but there you either have to put the whole conversation up unedited or allow me to record it unedited so I can put it up myself because she was concerned that, you know, Megan would edit it or something. Hmm. 
And so, I don't know. The whole thing seems stupid, but... Well, I'm sure her audience would give her a hard time just for talking to J.K. Rowling after they've made her out to be, you know, the devil incarnate. Yeah, but to get the chance to talk to the devil incarnate, right? To try to flush out her positions. Well, here's the problem. It depends where you're at. If you're just a cynical person and you just want this person to be the devil, then you're right. You don't want to talk to them. Yeah, unless she's going to come just... off totally reasonable. Right. Unless you're just going to beat them with a stick verbally, you don't want to talk to them. Because if you talk to them, there's a chance that you'll flush out their positions and they'll say things that humanizes them or makes them not seem so extreme. What if Contra went for the pie? <laughs> well, how does that change things? Uh, how does that change things if Contra gives gives JK a JK pie? rolling a pie in the face? Yeah. I don't think that's going to look too good for Contra. That's horrible. <laughs> it's going to look too good for Contra. So. Yeah. There's trans activists to Death Eaters, the fictionalized fascists in Harry Potter. My position is that this activist movement in the form that it's currently taking, echoes the very thing that I was warning against in Harry Potter. The That's so based. <laughs> well, it's it's That's funny. That's so based. I, I don't like J.K. Rowling at uh, all. Oh, really? I like Harry Potter. I've never liked J.K. Rowling. Well, I mean, okay. look, before this, she's like a radical She's a, I, Totally, yeah. No, super what am woke. I thinking? Yeah. What am but, I thinking? <laughs> but like the way she just said what she said, it was so filled with like self-importance like just like listen to her tone of voice here. oh it's, yeah it's so self-important look at this that i never which trials of jk rowling i was never into harry potter i think harry potter right. is like a middling fa fantasy novel it's fine yeah. i like it's, it's a fine kids book you know i don't think it's a great I, I think people are like way too into it it's like it's a fine kids book you know whatever yeah totally but she's like this is the bible of our time yes. it Harry Potter had the potential to be significantly better than it was. But... She, she sees herself as the next Tolkien. And you're right. like, wow, that's well, a little ambitious. The sad thing is, I think the fact that it's middling is what makes it popular. That's what gives it broad oh, of course. appeal, is that it is middling. Of course. Joe Rowe compares trans activists to Death Eaters. Just listen to her the, voice. This is, this is so, look, you don't think that's based? I think it's ridiculous. Trans <laughs> activists are death eaters. I mean, it's kind of silly, but just the, the self-importance. She's like, oh, they're death eaters. They're after me. Look, why, why does oh. Joe Rowe want to sit down with a death eater? Oh, the air. I'm so, oh my God. The fictionalized fascists in Harry Potter. My position is that this activist movement, in the form that it's currently taking, echoes the very thing that I was warning against in Harry Potter. <laughs> the she's like at the, she's warning, like at the verge of tears. Warning. I was warning the world about yes. the fascist takeover of the trans activist movement. There's like this pause, and then it's like, oh, oh I have tried to warn you. These people are literally Hitler. <laughs> Thank God. Come on. I that's... mean, I, I feel like I feel like she's like like five seconds away from going, how dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, uh, but I mean, please. I just from a from a political perspective, that's just she's playing the part, man. Yeah, how's no, she I not mean, playing? This is like victimhood right. culture one hundred and one. Yeah, she's like, it listen, could... I am the victim here. <laughs> Look, she's literally the witch being burned at the witch yes, trials. Of course, of course. She's like, you want a victimhood culture, me, bitch? I'll show you how it's done. I'm JK fucking rolling. <laughs> it might be politically effective, but uh, to me, it's just so like eye rolling. I'm like, oh my God. These people are the death eaters yes. that I tried to warn you all about. Yes. It is claimed made to live in secret. And now is our time. I am fighting what I see as a powerful, insidious, misogynistic movement. When an article then claimed she had equated trans people to Death Eaters, the podcast's PR firm reached out demanding a correction because she only equated the movement to Death Eaters, not trans people in general. Yeah, I don't hate marginalized people. I just hate it when they advocate for themselves. So 
it's so annoying that Contra just this whole video is just Contra straw manning. The I crap, know, I know, right? drives me crazy. Because there is a advocating massive... advocating for themselves. No, they're trying to take your fucking rights away. <laughs> yeah, because in, unless you're a child, right, you can say I can agree with the concept. I can agree with some like idea, but I don't necessarily agree with that. Like elements of an activist movement. Like, yeah, I'm I'm in favor of you know black people not being having racism against them by police officers. That right. doesn't mean I support um, the BLM organization, which is a scam. It doesn't mean I support riots where people burn down their own communities. And so I can say, well, I think the movement was shitty, but I can still support some parts of the cause. Sure. Totally. Just be right. But this is why this is so insane. Because essentially, essentially, Contra is saying, if you're against BLM, you're against black people. That's what J that's what Contra just said. Right. And it's it's insane. It's preposterous. And she knows she's better than this. She if you're against the movement, you're against trans people. Yeah. Look, Contra's you, better if, than this. Contra against, knows this is not true. If you're against the movement taking away your rights to women's only spaces, then you're a, you're a transphobe. You're against trans people. Right. How dare they advocate for for taking your rights away? Well, and it's funny because later in this video, Contra acknowledges that she thinks that there are some sports where trans women should not be able to compete. I know. I can't with believe cis women it. In, in sports. And I'm like, Contra, so many people in your audience and in the trans activist space are would call that. you yeah. a bigot for uttering that opinion. Of course. Yeah. So, I don't know. Have some charity maybe for other people. So I do have to be very careful with my wording here, lest a defamation letter arrive by Owl. J.K. Rowling's bigotry is exhausting to argue with, because she expresses it as an endless series of what are called Mott and Bailey arguments. A Mott and Bailey argument is named after a type of castle consisting of a Mott, that is, a tower atop a mound or a hill, easy to defend, and a Bailey, a fenced courtyard that's much more vulnerable to attack, difficult to defend. The moral Mott and the bullshit Bailey. So a Mott and Bailey argument is when someone makes a provocative claim that's difficult to defend, the Bailey. And then, when confronted with counter arguments, they walk it back to a much less controversial and easy to defend version of the claim, the Mott. For example, Rowling will make an ambiguous claim like sex is real. What does she mean by that? What are the implications? Well, in the podcast, she explains that she thinks it's very sinister that in the Associated Press style guide, it says that instead of referring to a trans woman as a man who identifies as a woman, journalists should simply say a trans woman is a woman. That from the Associated Press is hugely powerful. They've edged from identifies as a woman, so a man identifies as a woman, which, I, and I think we all understand what that means, into is a woman, and that's precisely the creep that I'm talking about. We are using language to make accurate definition of sex difference unspeakable. Which is, of course, false, because the words trans and cis exist precisely to make it easy to talk about sex difference. Thanks a lot, Tumblr. God, there's this whole sex- Well, okay, so this is so weird, because it doesn't- she didn't even address the point. If, first of all, lots of people mop and bucket. We all right. know this. That's why we literally have this emoji. We have an okay, emoji. So, the mop right. and bucket emoji. Mop and bucket, yes. Thank you, Sean. Lots of people mop and bucket. That doesn't mean every argument in all of existence is a mop and bucket. <laughs> Sometimes people do just tell you whatever their argument is. Right. So you can't just assume that J.K. Rowling is mop and bucketing when she talks about the whole sex isn't real thing. She's not, she's not right. at all. She's basically saying this language makes it impossible for us to speak about the controversy. Right, and to me, it is insane if the AP is telling, is putting out some guideline where it says, don't say trans woman, don't say woman that identifies as a man, just call them, a, or a man that identifies as a woman, just say woman. Right, that that's would be bullshit. Wild. Right, that's to yeah, that's wild. Right, just say. Tra I, I agree. You shouldn't say man that identifies as a woman. Right, just say trans woman. Right? Who's mopping and bucketing here? Right. Well, <laughs> that's the irony here. The whole argument that trans women are women is, is a, a mop, mop and bucket. bucket. Totally. Yes, because the act, the bucket here, 
is well if we just read if we just redefine trans women to being woman we automatically win the argument that trans women have to be allowed in all the spaces that cis women are allowed in locker rooms prisons bathrooms sports blah 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 and are suddenly granted all the same uh, protection under the law that exists for sex discrimination lawsuits right. that's the whole that's the the whole thing is a mop and bucket so it's so ironic for Contra to bring this up and not realize that's literally what her position and yeah. what her side is doing. She's the one mopping bucketing. Yes. Yes. Big time. And not even addressing the argument. What do you think yes. about changing language like that? What do you why of course she doesn't bring it up because she's in favor of changing language like that because she wants to win the argument. Yes. Right. Like if if Contra and, and trans activists want to argue these things. They should have to argue these things. You don't get to win an argument by simply redefining a word and saying, aha, I win now. Right. Yahtzee. Yeah. Section of the podcast that sort of implies that transgender people were invented on Tumblr, which I'm not even going to get into because we don't have time. Rowling has also tweeted that she thinks that all people who menstruate must be referred to as women. Or was it Wumbin? I'm pretty sure it was Wump Mud. So trans men and trans masculine people, they're all women and must be referred to as women because JK Rowling demands it. This is controversial, right? Calling trans women men who identify as women calling trans men women. This is the Bailey in her Ma and Bailey argument. Trans women are men, trans men are women. That's the controversial interpretation of sex is real. Now, when accused of transphobia and facing backlash, rolling what? That wouldn't be, so that's not even correct. That's not even the correct thing. There are some people that are using sex is real as a Ma and Bailey. The, the Ma would be I want to, you know, you're trying to, like the argument that I just said, right? About how they're mm -hmm. just trying to win an argument automatically. Mm -hmm. Now, some people don't care about that. Some people's, ba now that's that's actually my position, but some people could use sex as real and their Bailey position, their bucket position is just, I don't think people should be able to transition. Mm -hmm. Right? That would be the Mont Bailey for that argument. Sure. Do you think that Matt Walsh and Michael Knowles believe that transitioning should be allowed by law? No, they would ban it immediately if they had the of ability. Course. Right. That's the mop and bucket, not this argument. Right. Walks the argument back and says, I'm being persecuted just for saying that women should be allowed to discuss how being female has shaped our lives. Women should be allowed to discuss how being female has shaped our lives. This is the obvious and <laughs> utterly uncontroversial <laughs> interpretation of. That's so just, oh God, that's so offensive to women. <laughs> that is so offensive to women. Well, it's so hilarious Imagine because. Imagine a biological male coming up and let me tell you <laughs> women about how f being a woman has shaped our lives. Yes, right, right. Talk about mansplaining shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking I just I don't I don't think there's any perception for uh trans women about how offensive that is for women. Of course. God, it's just so like I just I feel it. I'm like, maybe it's because I'm married. I just feel like that. Right. Look, once you become married, you know, well, I guess women don't feel this because they're married to men. They feel something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> but once you're a man married to a woman, you start s sensing how women are going to react to certain statements. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just natural. <laughs> you're like, okay, right. that's going to cause a fight. Right. And when I hear this, I just think, man, you're going to war with the with the women race. Well, listen, how are you doing this? Listen, as a as a, a queer bachelor, <laughs> okay, as a queer bachelor, I understand everything you're saying, Adam. Uh huh. But I think it's fucking hilarious, and I have no sympathy <laughs> because. This thing that Contra's making fun of, women should be allowed to discuss how being female has shaped our lives. Mm -hmm. That has been the feminist ideology for 30, 40 years. Right. That they've been leaning on the crutch to, you know, hit us over the head with feminism for, 
for it's decades. It's true. It's true. And now suddenly, it's com- that idea is completely at odds with the new lefty idea of the trans stuff. And so there's like this complete meltdown about it. So I'm just sitting here like Ken Watanabe, like, let them fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, it is true, right? And it, yeah, it's just like, oh, I'm so sorry that the thing that I'm so sorry that you got the thing you wanted and now right. it's causing problems for you. Right. Look, you shot yourself in the in the foot. Yeah. But you loaded the fucking gun. <laughs> what the yes. Thing? It's it's the you classic aimed left it at your foot. <laughs> it's the classic left meme of the way to get leftists to be against the left is to give them exactly what they want. It's true. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, I guess. Well, this is this is kind of why we're covering it. It's kind of yep. this is let them fight. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's this cool. is the I'm so sorry for fight. you. Yeah. <laughs> I guess my uh, actions do have consequences. I know. I know. Oh man. That's what we should do. You know so how they good. say like you know how they say there isn't um there's no such thing as cancel culture, there's consequence culture. Oh I know, yeah. Accountability yeah. culture. Accountability, there you go. Yeah. There's no such thing as transphobia, it's just accountability. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so rich. Israel, the Mott, and virtually every argument sophisticated transphobes make about trans people so, follows this pattern. So J.K. Cool. Rowling's friend and ally, Maya Forstadter, will tweet inflammatory things like, men cannot change into women. But then when she's criticized, she'll say that she's being attacked for gender critical belief. Gender critical belief, which is the absolutely ordinary belief about sex, that you're mother and your grandmother are women, that being female is a thing. Your mother and grandmother are women. Being female is a thing. That's literally all I'm saying. But if that's literally all she was saying, then no one would be mad, would they? First of all, that's not true. Everyone would still be mad at her. Totally, <laughs> totally, <laughs> of course. I can think of okay. some people who would be mad. Right. Yeah, lots of people would still be mad, so that's, that's BS. But secondly, like, all like half of this video in the cre- the complaints against JK Rowling it's all just guilt by association totally it's, JK Rowling likes this person now JK Rowling didn't say this thing but this other person said this thing and that's bad so therefore JK Rowling is bad right yeah how dare she didn't police her friendship i know right nine nar men cannot change into women is the bailey your mom is a woman is the mod. Your mom's a woman. <laughs> this is why arguing with these people is infuriating. They'll insinuate that trans women are dangerous rapists, exhibitionists, and voyeurs. Then when trans people understandably get mad, they'll say, look, I'm being attacked just for saying that being female is part of my experience. It's dishonest. They talk a bunch of trash about trans people, and then when trans people talk trash back, they pretend that they're being victimized for making totally innocuous statements. Who else does that, Sitch? Who? Hmm. Who? Uh, Whom else is guilty of that same tactic? Could it be the entire woke movement and everything (laughs) that they stand for? Of course. Of course. Oh, the irony. She doesn't even know what she said. Excuse me. She doesn't even know. Excuse me, can you uh, not be racist against white people? <gasps> racist against white people? I just want to treat I just want to teach the true American history about the oppression of black people in this country. By white people. I don't want to be racist. What are you talking about? I know. Oh my god. I mean, it's like it's why are so, you oppressing me? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Well, that's why it's so funny. Like they can't see it. I talked to so many people on the left who like this is a big thing. They if you don't they watch, they can't see it. You just said it. It's they perfect. can't see it, right? Yeah. But if you watch a lot of MSNBC or CNN, um, or like left wing media, read a lot yeah. of left wing articles, you're in the bubble. Yeah. There's this the, the talking point that's been a talking point for the last year or two has been that, and this will blow your mind if you're not aware of this. The, the left wing talking point right now is that the right wing in America is consumed by victimhood culture. <laughs> I and I, I'm not even joking. That's literally their argument. I know. I they know. Say, it's, oh. it's so projection. It's like they say, "Oh, all these right wingers. All I do is complain about being the victims." And I'm like, "You understand that that they're complaining about being victims because they're copying the left's tactics of complaining about being victims, right? That have been very effective for the last decade." They're like, "Wow, this works." <laughs> yes. 
if I just cry and and tell everyone how I'm being victimized, everyone comes to my aid. Right. In every conversation I have with someone on the left, it's the exact same conversation. They bring up this, oh, the rights of victims. And I say, well, what do you mean? That's like the entire, that's the entire brand of the left is that they're victims and they're fighting for the victims, you know, the oppressed, marginalized victims. And they look at me and they say, yeah, but that's real, Sitch. Right. Those people really are victims. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Haven't you heard about the trans genocide? <laughs> right, right. Oh, okay. You know, neg negating the fact that whether they're true victims or not has nothing to do with the fact that they're using victimhood to leverage political change, but that goes without saying. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. We could name the, the birthday boy argument. I dated a 5A guy who'd taunt every jacked 6'3 bro he met until they'd pull their fist back to beat him up, whereupon my ex would go, hey, 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 come on, I'm a little guy. I'm just a little guy, no. It's also my birthday. I'm a little birthday boy. And somehow it always worked. On a scale of one to 10, mm -hmm. one being a steaming pile of bullshit in 10 being this happened in reality. Mm. Do you think this is real? What? No, it's a zero. This is like such bullshit. <laughs> it's funny because I listened to this the first time through. Yes. I wasn't watching. So yes. I didn't realize this isn't even Contra's It's joke. a tweet, yeah. It's like stolen from somebody else. Yes. Like why, if you're going to, if you're just going to crib from some other person, why crib something so... Well, it's not supposed Mid. to be a joke. This is supposed to be an argument. Mm -hmm. This is not a real story, Contra. I don't know if you know this. This is not a thing that happened in mm -hmm. reality. This is fake. Yeah. You know how I know this is fake? Well, first of all, you'd say, here's my birthday present for you. Bitch! <laughs> exactly. That's how we all know it's fake. This would never work. This would never all fucking right. work in reality. Well, guess what? I got something for you. Right. How do you like knuckle sandwiches? Yes. And also, you'd have here to you go, birthday boy. <laughs> like, what kind of weird fetish? Like, would, this is like someone's weird fetish. Like, I'm uh -huh. gonna go around and like try to get people into a fight with me and see if I can then defuse the situation. Right. That's like a mentally unhinged person. Who's doing this? Well, I this isn't do, real. I, look, I do know a guy who used to do stuff like this, though. <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> well, he would always he would like kind of start shit with people. Mm -hmm. He was Argentinian, and he would okay. pretend like he didn't speak English. <laughs> yeah, but how would he... Yeah, but is there a difference between, like, if he got in trouble, he would pretend like he didn't speak English? Look, I only, saw, I around, only saw this take place once. So he would go I around know. and annoy people and then try to... I saw him get yeah. co come close to an altercation, and mm -hmm. I was like, dude, what are you doing? This guy's gonna getting super pissed. He's gonna be, He's going to beat you up. And I was like... He basically said, no, nah, I, I, he said something to the effect, I do this all the time. Nothing will become, nothing will But what did he it. do to get the guy pissed off? Well? I don't know. It was like in a totally loud nightclub. Right. And I could just see the guy getting visibly. Um, yeah, but it's, it sounds like what you're describing is mm -hmm. there was some altercation. And then in order to escape it, he's like, uh, no, I'll blame less. You know, <laughs> like that's very different than like, I'm going to go intentionally. Well, no, he tried did. to rile people up. He did escalate it further than I thought it needed to go. And I was like, this guy's well, going to get you me killed. Well, I asked you you didn't know. Well, that's because I couldn't hear what the back and forth was. Well, then how do you know he was escalating? Because the guy kept getting angrier and angrier. I could see it on the guy's face. I was like, listen, when there's an exchange that goes back and forth, and that exchange ends up with the guy getting you know, progressively more and more angry, I think, well, what the fuck is he saying? <laughs> Well, I thought, wait, I thought you said your friend was pretending like he didn't speak English. How could they have a back and forth? I'm not, uh, because they were talking. Look, I, I'm telling you, it's a, it's okay. a loud There's not club. enough information here for me to make a determination. All, like I, all, I, all, I, could, all I could see right. from my perspective yeah. was, let, think of, I'm in a loud nightclub. I, know, I can't listen, hear anything that's I, going I on. I see two guys talking to one another. One guy is getting progressively angrier and angrier. And my friend is just like playing dumb. And when they're going back and forth, like, like I'm saying, listen, that guy's getting totally pissed. What are you saying to him? And he's like, oh, no, I just, I'm just uh, talking to him. Look, I okay. don't know what he was saying to him. He didn't tell me. Right. 
No, listen, I've I've been I've been in similar situations where I've seen a friend talking to someone and they're like the other guy's like trying to get ready to fight them, but I don't hear because it's in a loud place or whatever, they're mm-hmm. too far away. Where I don't understand exactly what's going on. Mm-hmm. And until like afterwards, I'm like, well, what? Like, I'll be like, wait, what happened? What the hell was that about? Maybe the guy was trying so, to extract an apology out of him. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, so, but at least in my experience, usually when that happens, it's, I've never, it's never the person like I'm intentionally trying to piss them off. It's more like, oh, they, there was some miscommunication. And there are some people out there who are just looking for a fight. I know. And it doesn't matter what you say. They're just going to keep, they're just going to get in that aggressive mindset and they're going to want to attack you. Right. No. So. I only hung out with that guy maybe three or four times and I just thought this guy's going to get me killed and <laughs> I probably shouldn't like okay. I probably shouldn't hang out with him. So well, there you much, go. So. Adam, Adam knows the one five eight Argentinian guy look, who used the birthday boy defense. I don't know. I mean, I would say he was more about five seven. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That was the, uh, that was a guy that we got super stoned one night and he ended up hopping in a taxi and just ditching all of us because he couldn't, he couldn't hang. Nice. Sounds like a nice gentleman. Yeah. It's, yeah, no, it was cool. But anyway. So a birthday that, boy argument is when you... What? Does that destroy the story that I actually know somebody that seemed to get off on fucking with somebody in this way? Well, first of all... <laughs> From what you described, you don't even know if that's what happened. I don't know that he pulled the birthday, but no, he did. I mean, you're you're sort did. of adding a lot of context. You're you're adding a lot of assumptions here that it doesn't seem like we. Can. He did say something to the effect, and this is what scared me. This was like I should. Yeah, you said he, did, he does this all the time, right? Right. He said right. nothing will come of it. I do this all the time, and I was like, "What? <laughs> you no, but that could what? just mean that he gets in bad situations and then talks the way out of it all the time. It doesn't mean that he's looking for those bad situations." Look, if you're if you're constantly getting in bad situations, you're looking for those situations. Well, maybe on some sort of like weird unconscious level. I I listen, he I'm sure there's was some funny. Listen, he listen. was he did he was getting listen. off on it. So I'm sure that extent. there are He thought it was hilarious. I'm sure there's some people out there. This the world is a very vast and large place. Of course. Okay? Yeah. Billions of people around. There's someone out there that's doing the birthday boy argument in right. reality. Okay? Sure. I don't believe that this Twitter person, what they're t- discussing is real. I think this is a completely made up story or more likely this happened one time and they created this like ridiculous hyperbolic joke out of it. And now Contra is going to use this as some kind of stupid argument to to levy against you know the entire anti-trans activist movement. Look, I don't believe anything I see online, so. Okay. Yeah make aggressive inflammatory assertions followed by teacher teacher look what he's doing to me when the target reacts with anything less than extreme politeness another common tactic you'll see anytime rowling's transphobia is discussed is you'll see someone jump in to say show me one thing she's said that's transphobic for example here's someone on twitter called large gamete producer it's funny isn't it how these people will insist that awkward inclusive language like people who menstruate is horribly oppressive and degrading, but then they'll just straight up call themselves large gamete producer. Which, by- That is called a joke, and it's hilarious. Yeah. Well, well, there's two elements. One is it's probably a joke. But two, the left keeps doing this thing where they put the right in, or they put people against them in some like weird spot to do something, and then when they do it, they criticize them for doing it and call them hypocrites. Like- hmm. The only reason people are bringing up the large gamete producer argument is because the left did this thing where they tried to deconstruct what it meant to be a woman mm-hmm. and to say, ha, you can't define what a woman is in a single sense. Therefore, a woman doesn't exist. Therefore, trans women are women. Checkmate. And so the whole large gamete producer thing was just a response to that stupid argument. Yeah. They're coming, there's a hundred funny ones that you can do. Right. Yeah. But it's it's the same thing with like the Matt Watt is a woman document uh, documentary where people were criticizing saying it's not fair to ask uh, leftists and trans activists what is a woman because it's a complicated question. It's like you understand he's asking that question 
only because the left was asking that question to people that were not buying into the trans activists. They're the ones that started the whole what is a woman bullshit argument right. in the first place. Yeah. And all he did was just turn it back on them. Sure. And finished. Right. Finished and, and, them off. And exposed that like, yeah, it is difficult to to define, you know, these categories and these things simply. That's what I've always said. I mean, you could do the same thing for like what is a door? <clears throat> You know, what is a chair? You have like this fucking hour long conversation on trying to come up with a definition of a door or a chair that encompasses every possible permutation of doors and chairs, but doesn't include things that are similar to doors and chairs. And it's like, because that's not the way that human c categories work whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that large gamut producer joke killed, to be honest. It's a with funny, you. it's a funny joke. I think it's hilarious. And to, to I'm laughing on the inside. I'm to dying make it, with laughter. It, it, to make it into like, you're such a hypocrite because you <laughs> made a fucking joke on your Twitter page. Right. It's just, oh, <laughs> cope spiral. That's what that is. That's True. called a cope spiral. True. Look, that ends in a nosedive crash. You don't want to go there. Contra, pull up, pull up. It's a joke. That wallpaper is so distracting to me. The background? You don't- that a you, unicorn with like the horn that's like the size of its whole body. Can you imagine? <laughs> I hope she credits the candle lighter in her movie. In her, in her. Yeah, videos. there you go. Look, a lot of candles to light. Candle lighter. And look, there's like, there's no wax anywhere. I keep looking for the mirror because I would. Well, I guess you might. Uh, yeah, because if you will, have, look, you could double your candle amount with some mirrors in there. If no, you're going for are, a lot of candles. Are, no, no, no. Those are real. Yeah. They're not that many candles. It's like what? Four, eight. Too many. 12, 16, 24, 24, yeah. 24 ish, 28 ish candles. Not that many. Yeah. Hope they're I mean, you know, LED. she's got like a, you know, she's got like a set designer and a director and a cinematographer and all this <laughs> crap. Doesn't even know what a joke on Twitter is. Has a set designer. She doesn't have How's a joke. That for irony? She doesn't have a joke designer at. Look, that one line, I just, I can't believe she wrote it and was like, oh my God, this is exactly what we do. Mm -hmm. Is Rowling's definition of a woman. The woman is um, the producer of the large gametes. Oh, I like it. It's very brood mother. That Rowling's words regularly appear in gender critical arguments shows the massive influence that she has in the anti-trans movement. She's like their queen. They're, they're, they're leader, they're, they're headmistress. She's the best thing that ever happened to them. Cause she legit- It's not the anti-trans movement. It's the pro-women's movement. Like nothing's changed. She's a feminist. How dare you, Adam? What? It's true. It's not the pro, listen, it's not, it's not, it's not a, they're not the baby killer movement. They're the pro-choice movement. Right? Look, they want. They're not the take rights away <laughs> from women movement. They're the pro-life movement. The trans, the trans women want to take away women's rights. They're like my rights, bitch. <laughs> there's a, there's literally a fight I going on. For I, these. I don't think the rights argument is. It's not to me. It's not a persuasive argument. I know, because you're not a woman. Well, no, it's not because you're not losing your rights. It's that's the why. same. No, it, that's not why. Someone losing some amount of rights is not an argument for why something should or should not change on its own. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a, a better, there needs to be an additional argument on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's easy you, for someone who's not losing their rights to say. You No, you agree with that argument. I don't. What yes, do you, you do. We've talked about this. By... By saying that you cannot discriminate oh, against here, black people, look, here he goes. Again. You're he infringing goes. on someone's right of association. Here he goes again. He's like, are you? Are you, so? There you go. So what? So, so bad faith. How is that bad faith? Because it's completely different than a race argument. Argument. It's completely different. No, 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 no. You're not. You're not Sex not segregated saying. spaces are different than that's not race what I'm segregated spaces. I, I agree. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that simply saying that you, a person losing some amount of rights. Mm -hmm. That cannot be the only argument. That can be a piece of an argument, but you have to make additional arguments. Mm -hmm. It's not a checkmate just saying, you're taking away my rights, checkmate. Because he, like, well, people take away other people's rights all the time. And we're persuasive, in favor Persuasive. Persuasive wise though. Well, people I agree with you. don't like good. losing rights. Right. And that is persuasive. There's a cognitive bias towards losing something that you already have. 
Yeah. So yeah, women I agree. are going to win this. I'm just women are going to win this accurate. argument because they're like, listen, this is my right. I've had the right to sex segregated spaces. I've had the right to sex segregated sports. I mean, they fought for the right for to sex segregated sports. So they are literally losing that well, right. I think they fought for the right to play sports. I don't know if they fought for the right for sex segregated sports. Look, and in the in the race situation, they're fighting for. Or, well, you're saying you're basically siding with the racist. You're basically saying that the I'm not racist said. So- <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, you are. This, no, this is the problem. No, this is the problem with the way you're saying. You're it. saying you're saying that the racist said, "Look, we've always had the right to be racist pieces of shit, so we should maintain that right." Right? No, I'm. I'm not saying they should. I'm just saying that is an that is an argument about rights, and there's, it, there's some, there is truth to the idea that it is an infringement on someone's right to associate. If you say you you cannot discriminate against people, that's true. That is a fact. I'm not saying I agree right. with that. It should be that way. I'm just descriptively saying, not making any prescription. I'm just saying it is descriptively true that you are infringing on the right to association by saying that you cannot, you know, prevent a black person from entering your business or to give them housing or whatever. That is an infringement on someone's right to association. And my response is, yeah, so what? It's better that way. Society's better that way. I don't think that that right of association trumps your, you know, having everyone allowed to just be fucking racist to everyone else in society. I don't think that's true. And you, if you do think that's true, you need to make an actual argument for it. You can't just say, but my rights, because as I talked about, and I don't, I guess you forgot or weren't listening. (laughs) We talked about this streams ago. I don't know. I said I made this whole long argument about how no one fucking except for insane people agree in these absolutist positions for rights. Remember, I said no one believes in absolute position of freedom of speech because everyone agrees that there should be copyright. No one thinks you should be able to steal whatever the fuck you want. No one thinks you should be able to just defame whoever you want or you know be libelous against anyone you want. No one thinks you should be able to put up board up. Uh, you know, billboards with lollipop on it across from schools, right? And all that stuff is all infringement of freedom of speech to be against it. But we all agree that it's a good thing to infringe on speech to a degree. Right? Let's go back so to the sex. People make these spaces. absolutist positions about my rights, and that's those are dumb arguments. Those are fallacious arguments. So you're you've compared sex segregated spaces to race segregated spaces. Was there a moral component to keeping uh, various races out of out of spaces, out of whites only spaces. Was there ever a moral component to that? Sitch, did I lose you? I'm just contemplating Minecrafting myself. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Why did you? Why are you asking this question? It has nothing to do with what I said. Well, just the the. Well, well, you're, you're like incapable well, of separating the prescription from the from the, the description from no, the I understand. Moral claim. But I, okay, there's so a wh- there's a there's a giant difference. A huge obviously, difference. there's a big difference between a sex segregated space and a race segregated space. Right. Obviously, there yes, was there's never there was never any moral component to sex segregated spaces. Well, no, there was. The moral component is women. Well, there's multiple. Yeah, but you weren't would be, keeping women men would be out to discriminate about. against men. Wait, there was a moral components. The, the the moral components was number one: women were afraid of their safety and dressing around men, and being sexually assaulted or something to that degree. Number two, there was a moral component about oh, in a civilized society, men and women should not see each other naked unless they're married, and you know it's based on some kind of like moral claim there. So there were moral claims built into sex segregated spaces from the beginning but not discriminating against certain individuals you weren't of course discriminating it was discriminating against men there wasn't like it, i'm going to discriminate against men therefore it was discriminate men can't be trusted around naked women that's discrimination mm-hmm. against men this i just the fundamentally women yeah. have had the right to sex segregated spaces and there has been no problem with that i agree yeah right. they are I'm losing not... that right I understand that. I'm just saying that, and that's fine, and that's Mm. fine to be a part of an argument. I'm just saying that can't Mm. not be the full argument. And what's the other part of the argument? I don't know. I'm not the one that makes these arguments because I don't care Mm. about these fucking sex segregated spaces the way that (laughs) that women and you do. This, so I'm just, there's there's a political fight here that's going on. And I'm weighing in. I'm saying, listen, I think the women are going to destroy the 
the trans women that want. I think you're probably right. Yeah, I think you're probably right. In the in the person, is it a persuasive argument? Yes. Do I think it will win out? Probably. So I don't disagree with that. Well, people don't like losing their rights. Sure. This is I'm I'm the framing that I am completely against is this framing that the trans people are being discriminated against. Right. When well, they women, are. when women have a right that's being taken away from them, and people are just ignoring that. So, almost everything in society and in life is when you give someone something, you're taking away from someone else. Everything doesn't work like this, but lots of things work like this. No. And so, it is true that if you say we have, have a, have to be a it does not everything zero sum, but lots of things are sort of zero sum, and this is an example of it. If you say that trans women are not allowed into the cis woman locker room, you are discriminating against trans women. Now, you can argue that that's good and that there should be a reason to do that, and that's fine. I'm just saying you can't say it's not discriminating against them because it is by definition. It's just that the, the word discrimination has embedded within it such a negative moral connotation that no one wants to admit to it, essentially. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, listen. This would all be fixed if we just adopted my standard how, how is it not of having locker rooms be based on physical attractiveness. How is this not discriminating against the women, though? It could be. That's what I'm saying. You could say, "Oh, well, we don't want to discriminate against trans women, so we're going to let them in the cis woman locker room." But that could discriminate against trans women. That's well, what I'm saying. It is disc- sort of a no, it's discriminating thing. against women. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, women. discriminate against cis women. Yeah, right. yeah. So it is sort of a zero sum in the situation because there's some discriminatory process against some group of people. And the right. question is who? Yeah. Who's going to have to suck it up in this in right. this battle? Right. Yeah. Jeffries certainly wasn't persuading a lot of people. If you know, you know. Large gamete producers says. JK isn't anti-trans. Give me just one direct quote that she has said which is anti-trans. Oh, what's that? You can't find one? Well, color me shocked. Imagine. Before we waste our time trying to provide examples, let's take a look at large gamete producers' profile. Trans women are not women. They are men. Trans men are not men. They are women. Nothing can change that. Sex is binary. Like, if this person doesn't think that trans women are men, trans men are women, is a transphobic statement, then what would they consider a transphobic statement? So, is that transphobia? Well, there's two things here. That statement on its own could or could not be transphobic, depending on the context and meaning that the sure, person totally. can use it with, right? Yeah. So, because if you, if you use that word, if you use that term, in a like, if I were to say that in a conversation with someone, I'm arguing with someone that's saying trans women are women, right? And I and I say that exact line, right? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mean it in some sort of transphobic way, of sort of saying that you know trans women shouldn't exist, they shouldn't have access to certain things, blah 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 blah. But you could use that frame, of, you could use that sentence to mean all those things. You would have to understand whatever the context of it, the meaning of it is. But then the second thing about it is. The question that Contra started with was how, you know, give me an example of J.K. Rowling being transphobic. Now, maybe the person asking that is transphobic, but that doesn't negate the question of give me an example of J.K. Rowling being transphobic. Like that's kind of irrelevant to the conversation. It feels like a total deflection. Dodge, total dodge. Yes. This is why the question you should always ask such people is, Do you believe that transphobia is a legitimate concept? What are some examples of statements that you would consider transphobic? Because many of them don't believe that transphobia is a valid concept because they don't think that trans people are a legitimate minority. There's no such thing as a trans woman. There's no such thing as a trans person. There is no such thing. There are people that call themselves these things that may have other issues manifesting that then make them think they're this. But no, we have to stop using any words. Yeah, like... (laughs) I'm pretty sure that that's not J.K. Rowling's position from what J.K. Rowling has said. Of course, like, yeah. At least in the past. I don't know, maybe she's become more extreme as time goes on, but when she first came out with sort of her position against the trans activist movement, that was not her position at all. And it just, 
it seems so disingenuous to keep saying that this is J.K. Rowling's position through guilt by association. Yeah, no, it's co completely dishonest. She's zooming in on the, she has a sign up in her office that says, I love J.K. Rowling. Or her, Next to the adult human female sign, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Which, I mean, <laughs> I mean, she's entitled to love J.K. Rowling. This is like the ugliest backdrop, too. This is, is the, it? uh, it's like the bumper sticker backdrop. You know the person that's got like a thousand bumper stickers on oh, their yeah. car? <laughs> that's what this is. Like, I just have a bunch of garbage like behind me. It's a bunch of clutter. Oh, man, I had like a thousand bumper stickers on my car. <laughs> hmm. Listen, I, I went through a phase in my life where I, I would like that, but then I grew out of it. Yeah, it's it's like my the car that I had when I was 20, so obviously, mm -hmm. yeah. It's I like don't drive that car anymore. There may be more words that we have to say in order to say that. We may call it transgender ideology, uh, but when it comes to a person, they may be following transgender ideology, but they are not transgender. There is no such thing as a man or a woman being anything other than a man or a woman. So when they say, show me an example of something transphobic J.K. Rowling has said, this is a trap. They're just messing with you. There's nothing that she could have said that they would acknowledge as transphobic. Now, if you're someone who believes... I mean, th this is like BS too. I mean, I'm sure when some people say it, they don't care. But part of my problem with this whole conversation is that, you know, we watched and I think we covered Contra's entire video on accusing J.K. Rowling of being a horrible transphobe. Right. And I got to tell you, it's not a convincing argument. <laughs> right. Yeah. At least at the time, it was not a convincing argument. I don't know. I don't follow J.K. Rowling, so maybe she's maybe she's become more extreme as time goes on. But you know, two years ago when that video came out, her, Contra's arguments were pretty terrible. I would say not allowing people to transition would be transphobic. If you said, "Listen, we need to make all transitioning illegal," I would say that is transphobic. Right. But I, yeah. I don't like I don't know what the line is for you. I mean, I was just trying to think of it because she's doing the thought experiment. But if I heard J.K. Rowling say, you know, all transitioning should be made illegal, I would say, okay, that's right. transphobic. Yeah, I think saying um I th I agree. I think saying all transitioning should be illegal is transphobic. I think saying that gender dysphoria isn't real. Or usually when people say that they, when they say it says like being trans isn't real, I think that'd be a transphobic statement. Sure. Or I guess anti-trans. Some people get like pissy when you say phobia because they're like, I'm not afraid of them. I just think it's disgusting. You know, it's like, okay. Well, there, it's, what's her name? Parker Posey? It's not Parker Posey. I don't That's know. The, the, the person that was just talking, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. But. I mean, we're getting into a question of philosophy here because if you don't like if you have the belief that no matter how much society endorses your transition or you do medical procedures to yourself there are some people that are just going to say look you're a biological male like they're just they don't buy into it at a philosophical uh, at a philosophical level, so I don't I don't necessarily know how you can say that is transphobic. Well, it depends what they mean by that. It's like yeah, there's no you can do all the surgeries in the world and you'll still be a biological male, um, but you are a trans woman. Right, if you yeah. believe that gender dysphoria is a real thing that people have, and that our only known treatment for it is to transition. Right, but. I think the Posey woman is saying that she doesn't like, believe it. She thinks that she thinks gender dysphoria. She probably thinks gender dysphoria isn't real. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm right. saying she probably acknowledges that people can, that, you know, there are trans women. She's just saying that those trans women aren't, no matter what they do are never going to overcome the hurdle of being a biological male. I think you can That's make that argument. That's what she's saying. Right. Here's the thing. I, I, I don't follow this, that person. Mm -hmm. um, but I get a sense that like if that's all she was saying you could say yeah that, that's not necessarily transphobic on its face but I, as I, again I get a sense that she doesn't believe gender dysphoria is like a thing that, right. that's my sense from what she's talking about right So, but you don't think that philosophical difference is transphobic right 
it again it depends on the context of, of the usage on its face it doesn't have to be necessarily it's not automatically transphobic right so you're saying if it's done in a menacing way towards a trans person it could be transphobic well like it, if it, you're if you're rubbing salt i don't mean menacing i mean of a... it depends on what the underlying implications and the reasons for you making a statement are look i don't believe in like the a lot of the stories of christianity i don't buy into but i don't that doesn't make me anti-christian just i have a philosophical disagreement okay that's that's the thing that bugs me about this is that they're constantly they're well, conflating okay. a philosophical I, disagreement with transphobia you hate trans people i'm just sure you don't okay, buy I into our ideology it's the same I, as right. it's the same pressure christians used to be. i understand what you're trying to get at i'm sure there's some group of people i think it's an extreme minority mm -hmm. i think there's some group of libertarians out there who think that gender dysphoria is completely fake but they don't care because they're libertarian and think that if someone as an adult wants to transition they should be able to do that right mm -hmm. i think that group of people is so tiny it's not even worth talking about i think the majority of people that make the argument that gender dysphoria and transness are not real are not libertarians and they're making that argument in order to say that no one should transition and that transition should be illegal right that would be my guess so it's a transphobic at its base because like it's there's ulterior motives for making the argument yes right. okay right yeah believe that transphobia is a valid concept and you believe that trans people are a legitimate minority but you just genuinely are unaware of what jk rowling has said on the topic then i will refer you to my past video on jk rowling's transphobia rather than re look she had the candles back then yeah we covered this video <laughs> all, the, we, all the candles we covered this video and we were like jk rowling innocent of transphobia right right yeah capping it all here just keep in mind that she's gotten significantly worse since i made that video i oh, mean just uh -oh. look at her twitter feed true so oh, i no. look so she, she doesn't read any of these tweets she just puts them on screen just look at the twitter feed and i was like so i paused it and i and i was like reading through all these tweets and i still didn't see the transphobia <laughs> mm -hmm. i was like i i'm just i'm sitting here waiting i'm like where is the transphobia, Contra? You can't just flash on and say, look, she tweeted things, transphobia. It's like, well, wait a minute. Where is it? Explain it to me. This is like the hundred things make up to actually something of value when you yes. don't. Yeah. This is the the list fallacy argument. Let me give you a hundred bad reasons. If I take all the bad reasons and combine them, it'll trick you into thinking it's actually one good reason. Right. But it's not. True, she never says the phrase, I hate trans people, because she's not a complete idiot. But Anita Bryant never said, I hate gay people. She said, save our children. I love homosexuals. For that this is This is BS like, too, because... I like homosexuals. This is bullshit too, because Anita Bryant was very clear in saying that she thought homosexuality was degeneracy and would bring about all these negative outcomes in society. Of course, and yeah. It was against God's will and, you know, blah, 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 She blah, wasn't blah. hiding the ball at all, man. Yeah, there was, exactly. There was no, there was no mask slipping. We all knew what Anita Bryant was about, yeah. right? <laughs> like, she had no mask on. <laughs> yes. And it's weird because Contra's about to give, like, an example that's so bafflingly, stupidly wrong. I, I don't understand why this is the example she gave. Nice matter i'm pretty sure david duke doesn't say i hate black people yes he does what are you talking about david oh. duke former grand wizard of the kkk and you think you can't find him publicly saying he doesn't like black people in the statement somewhere <laughs> why and of all the examples you could have used why would you use the dumbest one ever contra right i all, i literally googled like racist things david duke says <laughs> no. it's just like this massive list of him like throwing the n-word out there say that black people are like you know prone to criminality and, sp and are all yeah. stupid like it's just like low just a plethora IQ. of like yeah like, there's a know, million of them super racist shit saying that he thinks that they should have a white ethnos state it's like there's no no one is confused about what david duke is like no one is like david duke isn't racist can you produce one statement he gave that is racist like no one has fucking said that this is the bad faith part of it because she's only saying this to compare J.K. Rowling to 
David Duke. Yes, of course. Of course. Right. This is so stupid. Mm. But he will shot us statistics about anti-white crime. So this is not really a very good criterion for deciding who's a bigot, is it? What J.K. Rowling does do is tweet again and again about transgender rapists, about the danger trans women pose to cis women. She implies that trans-inclusive language is equivalent to the dystopia of Orwell's 1984. True! <laughs> All that's true, though. Right. And not only that, she's talking about these trans women that are put into women's prisons that are right. literal rapists. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to call out the trans women rapists, please do. That would look good for your side instead of trying to hide them. It's, 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 a, class, it's a classic leftist example of this isn't happening, but if it is, it's good. Right. Thing. Oh, yeah. Are you saying Contra supports trans women race, rapists? Well, no, it's the whole like, oh, that's not a big deal. But if, well, just the idea of like, you know, putting trans women in. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not a big deal, yeah. Right, it's not a big deal. But if it is <laughs> happening, they should be in those prisons. I don't care if they're raping people. Right? It's so not, bad. Not that they're in favor, not that that's, she's in favor of like raping That's so, so bad. That's so bad. Right. It's at length about the vague, nefarious cabal of endocrinologists and ideologues that is supposedly persuading confused wait i saw lisa Littman's name in there <laughs> well lisa Littman, she's based <laughs> look at this contra is not even going to look at the science now. that's the uh rapid onset genus for you lady right? yeah yeah look contra is totally off the reservations when it comes to the the, the science or the reality of the situation well they all are right? yeah personally gaslighting themselves Remember we were talking about the religion, the, how the religion stuff is not persuasive. Mm -hmm. It's not, but I mean, I see it everywhere. Like <laughs> this gaslighting of themselves. The reason why it's not persuasive, like I think it came up in a super chat. The reason why I, I, it's a good way to conceptualize it yourself personally, but it's not persuasive is because everybody's kind of in some religion, right? Yes. Yes. Everybody has some kind of ideology that they use to structure their lives and they don't want to think, oh, my, I'm not gaslighting myself. Right. I just believe in the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vulnerable girls to transition. To quote Washington Post opinion writer Monica Hess, I do not know what is in Rowling's heart, but reading her Twitter feed, this is the overall effect. Her Twitter feed does not ask its readers to think. It asks them to fear. It creates phobias of trans people. It creates trans phobias, if you will. Rowling has also attacked pro-trans politician Nicola Sturgeon, calling her destroyer of women's rights via a t-shirt she got from anti-trans hate monger Posey Parker. I wonder what rights she's talking about being destroyed, Such. Yeah. But can again, you, this can whole... you think of any? Right. This whole thing is just... Guilt by association, guilt by association, guilt by your words. It doesn't matter what you said. It's just all guilt by association or me reading into, you know, mind reading you and assuming a bunch of things in your words that you've never actually said. Is she ever going to address the fact that there's a zero sum game when it comes to no. female only spaces? No. <laughs> That's not going to be addressed. Her. There's no such thing as a trans woman. There's no such thing as a trans person. There is no such thing. If there's one thing that I want people to I would sure like to know the context of that. Because I have a feeling it has to do with... I think her uh, position is that no matter what you do, no matter what surgeries you, you engage in, you're still going to ultimately be a biological male. That's not the question. The question is what is that... What function is that argument serving? That's the question. Well, there is a question of the factual reality of that, though. For you, you can look Outside. at it from a scientific perspective. I know. I'm just saying it depends what what is the point of making that argument, right? It's like it's like someone bringing up like you know black crime statistics. Mm -hmm. It's like is that a racist thing on its face? Not necessarily. It depends on what is the point that you're trying to make by bringing up the argument. Well, well I think she's making trying to bring up the argument to keep biological males out of sex segregated out of women's only spaces i think that's the that reason why may, she's i'm sure that's argument. i'm sure that's part of it yeah but i that doesn't necessarily mean that she doesn't have some other motive underneath it 
But I, I don't I don't think that's bigoted. I don't think it's bigoted for women to want to keep biological males out of their spaces. I know. You think it is bigoted though. I don't think it's bigoted. Oh okay. I just don't care. I just don't care. Hmm. Well, that's probably a better position to have. That was the always my position. The I, I don't, don't think care it, position. Right. I don't care. It's not something that it's something that completely doesn't interest me on any level, or morally mm-hmm. or intellectually. Look, it's a fight, Sitch. Don't you understand? Okay. Right. I keep you have have you seen Friday? No. God, you have to see that movie. It's amazing. Right. There's this guy that goes around and he keeps stealing this guy's bike. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the guy's bike, but he keeps stealing it from him. And he's like, that's my bike, bitch. <laughs> whenever I, whenever there's this thing going on, I always think that's exactly what's going on. They're like, those are my rights, bitch. <laughs> right. It's so obnoxious. It's so obnoxious. Well, regard well, going away from Friday for a second. Oh. You should be careful, and mm-hmm. anyone should be careful, to not think the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mm-hmm. Okay. The, well, obviously, the feminists, okay. they're not, yeah. That's the thing. All these TERFs are not your friends. Of course All not. these TERFs are insane, woke feminists. They're of just course. anti-woke on this trans question, because it's, it's basically like, I'm so oh, glad you said this. It, it's kind of like, oh... The wokeness hurts me now. I'm right. against it in this one very narrow specific area where wokeness finally hurts me. Right. That's like, no, bitch, this is your fault. <laughs> okay. This is this is exactly what you advocated for. It's so true. Like as soon as all this is settled, it's gonna be right back to the patriarchy. Yes. It's like, you know, you open the, the door wage with this gap. Whole- Exactly. You open the door. All the the feminists open the door for this, but they they literally laid the philosophical grounding for this by making the non scientific arguments right. about blank slateism, genders of performance, genders all this, of performance, yeah, all this bullshit, and that everything is some kind of oppressive patriarchy. Right it's now, like, you oh, want to go okay. back to the science. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, now all of a sudden science matters, right? No one gives a shit about science when it's against them, but suddenly when oh well, it's of on course. my side, I'm the most scientific person in the world. Pass me the fucking it's you know, so test true. tubes in the lab coat. I love science now. You motherfuckers are ch- are quoting Judith Butler right and left. Now look where it got you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so so funny to understand about Rowling's transphobia, it's that this is not a case of someone posting a couple insensitive tweets that got blown out of proportion. Rowling is an extremely outspoken opponent of trans rights. This has been her main issue for several years now. (laughs) It's so, it is, it's like the abortion debate all over again. It's like, no, you're pro-abortion. No, we're pro-choice. I know. No, you're pro-abortion. No, we're pro-choice. You're anti-trans. No, we're pro women. <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's all just everyone trying to win by defining the other side is totally you know, evil, so. trying to uh, trying to set the narrative. Right. <laughs> Those are my rights, bitch. <laughs> oh, it's such it's such glorious framing. And because she's so famous, She's become the de facto global champion of backlash to trans rights. Truly, the Anita Bryant of transphobia. Except worse, because she's way more famous. So, this is a good example of Contra being caught in her own political bubble. Oh, okay. Anita Bryant. I asked my parents about this. Nobody I, knows Anita Bryant, yeah. Well, no. So, I asked my parents about this. Because, um, obviously, Anita Bryant was before I existed. Right. And I said, do you know who Anita Bryant is? And they said, of course we do. Really? Of course. If, yeah, of course. It was oh, a big okay. deal. And Anita Bryant was like really out there. The news was talking about her constantly. Um, she was trying to advocate for all this political change. If you go and ask an average person on the street, do you know J.K. Rowling's views on women? No, they're, they're Nobody not knows what the know. fuck. Yeah. yeah. They're like, you mean the Harry Potter lady? That's all. They, they're <laughs> like, oh, that's the person that made Harry Potter. They don't know what the fuck political positions J.K. Rowling fucking stands for. They don't. Yeah. No. Yeah, you're right. This isn't on the nightly news. People are yeah. not talking about this. Right. Yeah. And wait, that Anita Bryant ever was. Rowling has also praised self described theocratic fascist Matt Walsh for his transphobic propaganda film. She refers to trans women as trans identified males, known as Tims, among people for whom this has become an unhealthy obsession. She retweets images of the trans colors being erased from the progress flag, also, the colors representing queer people of color, so, you know 
Great, love that. Often Rowling pretends that she's being transphobic for the principled and valiant purpose of defending lesbians. It's something of a fixation for her. I find this particularly gross because it plays into the lesbophobic trope that gay women are especially anti-trans, when in fact they're the least transphobic demographic of cis people. According to a survey of young adults in the UK, lesbians were most likely to know a trans person and also most likely at 96% to say that they're supportive or very supportive of trans people. So I think it's fair to- So this is a very annoying thing that people do. Everyone mm -hmm. does this, not just the left, right? Everyone does this and it's very annoying. Mm -hmm. Where if you're in a political argument and you think the other side is lying, you then justify in your mind why it's so it's totally okay for you to lie about them or to be as bad faith as possible against them. Oh yeah, we talked about that. We try not to do that, but Sitch, I guess, slipped up a little bit. But <laughs> you, no, you, I you said, said this. no, 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 no. I said I only, I only do that to people that are knowingly lying about me. Right. And that yeah. was, and I brought up the example of punished mother, of punished mother yeah. and Jangles knowingly lying and accusing me of being a pedophile when they know that they're lying. Right. They hundred percent know they're lying, but since they think I'm lying. They justified in their head. Right, yeah. Okay. And so I'm like, what the fuck is this? It's bullshit. Um, right. It's just all bullshit. So, and I did, and I did, unlike them, I did say, you, I did completely spell out what was happening and acknowledge exactly what's happening and said, hey, you know, we can either, you know, move past this and enter the realm of reality or, you know, you can keep lying. And obviously they did not take that. They're know, like, oh, well, we'll just keep lying. But um, politics no, so, 2023, like, because this is what's happening with Contra points here is that because Contra thinks that J.K. Rowling is hiding her power level, she just gets to straw man the shit out of all these arguments and doesn't feel any moral guilt for basically being dishonest. Because the argument with the lesbian thing isn't that lesbians don't like trans people or there's some anti lesbian trans trope or, or whatever. The argument that J.K. Rowling has made repeatedly which I believe her because she's been making it forever and it's something personal to her is that she feels that, you know, she was a tomboy growing up and she feels like that if she grew up nowadays, she would have wrongly thought she was a man and transitioned. Yep. That's the argument that she's making. And, she, and the common argument for the trans hesitancy is that there's a fear that a lot of people who are just gay are essentially transitioning because they're being confused about what their gender identity is. Yeah, we've clashed over that, but I mean, the more I read that book on the Tavistock, uh, homophobia is something that continually comes up. So that's not, okay, yeah. so that's not what I said. We're not talking about mm -hmm. that argument. I'm talking about the, the idea that someone is gay and then they get confused about their sexuality and they think it means that they're trans not that they make a decision to avoid homophobia to transition that's a completely different situation okay so good di good distinction but that's jk rowling's argument is that that she thinks and a lot of people think they're gay people that are confused and they accidentally transition because they're just confused about their sexuality mm -hmm. but there is a su substantial amount of people who can't fathom their lives as a gay person yeah Supposedly. Well, it, I mean, it comes up in the Tavistock book all the time. I know. So. <laughs> but you don't, you don't buy that? I don't buy it, no. Okay. Why is, Why don't you buy it? We've talked about it. I don't want to. Okay. It's entire gotcha. If you have some, that if most... you have a study on it or research on it, send it to me. I will look at it. Maybe I'll change my opinion. Well, it's just in the book. They, they give so many examples of it. So, okay. I mean. I guess you would have to have a survey questionnaire. Ask, I, I would, I'd want to see you'd some. You'd have 500, you'd want to find 500 trans people that said, yes, I was afraid of being a gay person and therefore I transitioned. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that one, the one girl, uh, I think her name's Chloe, who went on mm -hmm. Jordan Peterson's channel, she said that. She was attracted, right. she's same sex attracted to women. So. Okay. But yeah. did she, she said, so wait. I don't, actually, never mind. I don't want to rehash this argument. Yeah, okay. So I'm not even going to say, I'm not even respond, but okay. Let's move on. Most gay I win. women <laughs> are probably not super thrilled. Now, wait just a minute. <laughs> 
Whenever Joe Rowe, the lesbian defender, logs on. My own partner is a cis lesbian, and I asked her if she enjoys JK Rowling defending her from the transsexuals, and she said, It makes me want to gouge out my eyes like Oedipus. By the way, here is JK. Was, is that her, her partner, her romantic her partner? I guess her girlfriend, yeah. Well, I'm um, so confused. So she's saying, my romantic partner is a cis lesbian, lesbian. right? Yeah. Just say girlfriend. Could you say girlfriend? It's a girl who's they're in a relationship with. It's okay. Contra's Girl girlfriend. Okay. Contra's girlfriend. Right. It's um, just so confusing. Well, see, now we know <laughs> why Contra s spurred philosophy to. Contra's like, listen, I'm not into the transes. <laughs> She, Contra is super straight. You didn't know that? Contra, Contra is super straight. You're right. The, uh, <laughs> the irony. The, I just, oh the, my God. So many, so many of the lesbians, I mean, they're disgruntled because they don't want to be shamed into, into dating trans women. And it's just, it's interesting that right. Contra has a cis girlfriend who evidently, is not one of those lesbians. Yeah, it's it's weird. There's the same thing with Riley Dennis. Riley Dennis had a cis lesbian girlfriend. Right. And it's like, and this was, I mean, I don't, listen, I don't know what the fuck, I don't know what's going on with Contra. I know with Riley, I don't think Riley did not have bottom surgery. I'm like, did, that's got to be- Did you know Riley is competing in sports now? I did see that article, yes. <laughs> okay. Riley is competing in like women's soccer or something. Yeah. And kicking ass. Right. Riley doesn't believe in gender dysphoria. Really? Interesting. Yes. Riley had, you know, the philosophy tubes position? That was All Riley's these, position yeah. like five years ago. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, it's got to be super weird. It's got to be super weird for lesbians. It's just like, hey, do you want to date a trans woman? Especially if the trans woman has a penis. Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a lesbian, so... Maybe they're yeah. cool with it. I mean, I don't know. Word on the street is lesbians have <laughs> genital preference. I mean, that's I would I've think heard so. So much in their videos that they're like right. anti dick. I would think that would be part of being a lesbian. But listen, I if if they're into that, you know, there's no problem with it. I just think it's, I just think it's interesting. Yeah, no, I just we just need better labels. Seriously. There, now there needs to be two types of lesbians. There has lesbians to be a, who like dick and lesbians who don't like yeah. dick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if we're gonna have these conversations, we gotta know what's going on, right? I, okay, there you go. What should we call them? Look, I'm I'm not in a position. Dick to dick beans. I'm not really. Cock beans. <laughs> I like cock beans. Okay. What about? We'll say les 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 cop les copters. There you go, les copters. Hmm. Les copters. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. There you go. K. Rowling enjoying a bit of banter with her friend Baroness Emma Nicholson, the co-founder of Rowling's charity Lumos. Baroness Nicholson is a conservative member of the House of Lords who voted against same-sex marriage in 2013. In 2020, she tweeted in defense of her vote, claiming that gay marriage would lead to degrading the status of women and girls. Truly, one of the great lesbian allies. And in 2022, here is J.K. Rowling joking around with Lady Nicholson. Excellent question, Emma. Defining lesbians as same-sex attracted women excludes and depresses the most marginalized of all groups, i.e. people with penises and beards who want to shag women. And before you say, but aren't they straight men? They're wearing eyeliner, bigot. Try for a moment. So, that's hilarious. This is weird because at least you know listen i try to not follow the politics of any other country that's not america as much as possible because good i mean america is really all that matters guys i don't know to tell you but um so i don't know what what emma here thinks uh saying emma was against gay marriage or something but at least in this tweet emma says dear jk rowling why did i think lesbians parentheses great people 
were females of that ilk. How did I go wrong in not understanding they were actually men? So in the tweet that she's responding to, there's, she's not being anti-gay in that tweet. She's literally calling lesbians great people. So yeah. all this guilt by association crap is just, it's just not an argument. It's just not an argument, Adam. I can't believe J.K. Rowling is doing this kind of banter on Twitter. This is so based. I can't stop. Uh, <laughs> a little cringy, but okay. It's it's one of those things where it's like... They're wearing eyeliner bigot. <laughs> it's like... It's kind of funny, but I feel like it's there's a, there's a there's a line where it's just too much. Like you need to log off and touch grass a little bit, right? I guess. I mean, <laughs> there's a level of I just don't give a fuck that I kind of admire. Sure. Well, but it's the opposite. If if that's all you tweet about, then you do give a fuck, right? She doesn't give a fuck about the optics of it. I see. I see. That is true. She doesn't give a fuck about the optics of it, so. Penises. Put aside any nostalgia you may have for the Gryffindor common room and just look at this interaction for what it is. Two straight women, one of whom is a homophobic peer of the realm, having a nice little chuckle together about how trans women are men wearing eyeliner. So that's it, right? It's over. Case closed. I still like hammering things. So the, the entire it's argument. so delusional. Yes. The entire argument against J.K. Rowling is sh she had guilt by association. She retweet other people that say others. She doesn't retweet them saying the bad thing. She retweeted a person who said something else in the past that was bad. So therefore, J.K. Rowling is also bad. That's the argument. Crazy. This is so pathetically lame. I'm not going to argue anymore about whether JK Rowling is transphobic because anyone who believes in transphobia can see that obviously she is. The question now is whether transphobia is the sort of thing that progressives can denounce, the way we at least aspire to denounce racism, misogyny, and homophobia. That's usually what we're talking about when we talk about JK Rowling, right? Whether it's fair to cancel her. That's what the witch trials of J.K. Rowling is about. The Rowling debate is a proxy for a larger question. Is transphobia a legitimate viewpoint worthy of polite consideration and respect in liberal humane society? Or is it just an ugly prejudice that we can justifiably react to with scorn? Oh my god. So oh Solodos just sent me something. Uh-oh. Uh, so Amazing Atheist, who we talked to, in the past, and we'll probably talk to you in the future. Uh, Maybe, tweeted, uh, depending upon what this interaction is. Uh, I think, though, yeah. I think TJ is like, may not come on again. So, oh, okay, interesting. FYI. Interesting. I mean, the first time he came on, we were ragging on him pretty hard. So, I give him a lot of credit for coming on after we were ragging on him. Well, he said he would come back. Right. And I have that in writing. Okay. And we might be able to put the thumbs. I mean, if he doesn't want to, I, I don't care. Yeah, I'm I don't just, like. I don't. Not a big deal. But I mean, but, but anyway. So TJ tweeted out at some point. He tweeted out, "Pregnant men, girl dicks. Pregnant men, girl dicks." And he just he just copy pasted that like a hundred times. And he just tweeted it out. So. Uh, and J.K. Rowling saw this. No way. <laughs> it took a screenshot. And posted it and said, say what you oh. like about gender, gender identity ideology. You can't deny it's attracted some of the world's greatest thinkers. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Yes. Oh. So. Send me a link. Come on. We got to bring this up. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? So, J.K. Rowling uh, going after TJ. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> oh, shit. So, it, to, I mean, I got to admit, J.K. Rowling is based. <laughs> she went after Vosh, too. How can you not love this? Well, she did, her, she did go after Vosh, and Vosh was very stupid to go after her. 
in the way that he did. And uh, that's actually that comes up in this video. This video is also Contra burning officially forever burning the bridge with Vosh and calling him out. <laughs> oh, I know. We haven't got to that part. We yet. haven't got to the Vosh part of the video. Yeah. Which is but pretty that good. part is also great. That part is pretty good. Everyone was talking about that. Yes. Like, yes. oh my God, Vosh, all the smoke he's blown up Contra's ass never worked. He's always, nope. always simping for Contra. And I, look, I Not don't, anymore. I don't think Contra would have anything to do with him, to be honest with you. No. Well, he, <laughs> listen, Vosh is a straight cis white male. He can't, he can't attack Contra. Queen of bread tube, it's not allowed. TJ loves this though. This TJ I'm sure he does, yeah. is just a bomb thrower. He is. He is. So, so the amazing go. atheist. Look at this. Pregnant men, girl dicks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the point. He he tweeted out knowing it would get, you know Attention. The yeah, attention he, he's and playing people, the game. The anti trans people riled up. So yeah. I mean it worked. It worked. So is this is so this a new term? I mean, look, Doomer. She says gender identity ideology. <laughs> is that is that right wing? Is it's that, probably better is that than gender right ideology. Terminology? It's probably better because it's more specific of what you're talking about. Gender identity. Well, some people call it self ID right. as well. I've heard transgender ideology. We're all talking about the same thing. I just, you know, obviously these politically correct types they want to make sure they use the right terminology so that actually isn't the tweet that soldo sent me mm -hmm. this that is just what uh precipitated this so uh, underneath this someone says i scrolled back earlier on his timeline i scrolled back on his likes earlier this evening and it was a big mistake and then jk rowling responds to that saying people keep telling me about the banana <laughs> i have no need or wish to know about the banana <laughs> No, no. So oh my goodness. So then Dev retweeted it saying, JK Rowling knows amazing atheists, uh, banana story, what a timeline. So there you go. Oh, this is crazy. I mean, it is. <laughs> you know, if you were to ask me things that would happen in 2023, I would not have guessed this. Look, she this doesn't want to see my list. She's, she doesn't want to see the video, guys. <laughs> Stop sending it to her. Please. So, Hilarious. Interesting. So, hey, listen. Times are fun right now, okay? Times are fun right now. Do you, do you think J.K. Rowling is going to win in the J.K. Rowling versus ContraPoints um, struggle? Uh, well, I don't know if, if that particular... I don't think the J.K. Rowling versus Contra is a real struggle because J.K. Rowling will probably never acknowledge it. <laughs> And J.K. Rowling will be infinitely more famous in Contra forever. Um, right. But I do think that the that the trans skeptical, if that's what we're going to call it, the trans skeptical side of the argument will end up gender being, critical. Well, no, gender critical. I think implies doesn't imply that you're a feminist. Well, they're critical of gender ideology. Okay, maybe. I don't know exactly what gender critical implies, but I think the trans skeptical side will win out because, of, as I've always said. I think trans regret rates will explode in the future and will lead to a massive backlash, essentially. What about women's only spaces? Are they going to be called big old bigots for wanting men out of their spaces? Uh, they will be, but once the backlash occurs, I think all that will change. Is any of or, that going to take? I mean, that's or, the thing. Right. So, I don't know. We'll see. Is it going to take? Are they going to think, oh, man, you're such a bigot? No, they're not. I don't think the bigotry... I don't think it's going to stick. Right. ...in condemnation. And there's an even broader question here about whether we can justifiably react to anything with scorn and condemnation. Is canceling ever warranted? Is it right to condemn racism, homophobia, and misogyny? Or should we allow spokespeople for these prejudices a respected position in the free marketplace of ideas? Where we can all sit around debating the legitimacy of gay marriage or the possible merits of a white ethnostate? Is the final solution a myth promulgated by the international Jew? Are yoga pants to blame for sexual violence? See, this is all just complete bad faith in my, 
in my yes, estimation. Of course. Yeah. Of course. None of this applies to the the trans debate. None well, of it does. Yeah, none of it applies to trans debate. None of it <laughs> applies to any of the woke debate. Because the whole thing is like, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of free speech. You know, I think if you know Nick Fuentes or Richard Spencer want to advocate for their wackadoodle, you know, white nationalism, mm -hmm. you know, we live in a free country, they can do that thing. Now, does that mean that Richard's that people are not allowed to say, listen, if you know, Kraft Macaroni and Cheese wants to sponsor Nick Fuentes, <laughs> that you can get mad about it and boycott them. Well, that's your right as an American uh, to boycott, you know, a company. The problem isn't, and people kind of forget this, there's nothing inherently wrong with the concept of boycotting a company for some political purpose. It's that it's like, what is the purpose? That's what matters. Because I feel like we used to live in a world where products were mostly viewed as apolitical things. You know, companies and pro like companies and products tried to not be involved in politics as much as possible, and I think that's the way it should remain. So that's the number one problem. The number two problem is that because of the way woke cancel culture works, number one, they're advocating for anti-liberal things, which was not the, the thing in the past, and number two, they're using dishonesty to basically label everything as offensive. Everything is racist. Everything is sexist. Everything is bigoted. Right. And so they want to leverage that power against, you know, the most mildest of critiques. And that's the problem. The problem isn't the concept of people boycotting. The problem is that they're basically using that weapon inappropriately. And they have been since the beginning of the woke movement. Right. Just as far as, like the political skirmish. Obviously, there was a big political debate over gay marriage. And we know how that played out, right? People were against it. And then eventually, people gave in and gay marriage became legal. Right. Gay marriage will probably continue to be legal. Uh, despite the machinations of the theocrats who want to make it illegal once again, right? Right. What... What is, what does it look like for trans women in women's sports? Is that is there going to be like machinations back and forth, and then sooner or later, trans women are going to be allowed to compete in women's sports, and everyone's just going to accept? No, it? I don't. I I don't. There's no way, in my opinion, that that will be the future. Right. I don't think that will be the future. Yes. Yeah. Wow. It's not anything like the gay movement. Right. The gay rights movement. It's nothing no. like that gay rights movement at all. Are well, people going to be called bigots because they they forever uh, take that position on trans women and women's sports? They'll go away. Yeah. They'll go away, yeah. But regarding the boycott thing, it's kind of, a, I guess, an analogy I would use would be, it's kind of like a gun control analogy. It's like, the weapon itself, the boycott, you know, compare that to a gun. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have a gun and that's fine. It all depends on how you use it and what you shoot at. We all we all agree that if a person pulls into your driveway by mistake, mm -hmm. you do not have a right to shoot at them in the fucking car out your window and kill somebody just because they pulled into your driveway by mistake. What state? <laughs> Any state. <laughs> I feel like Any there are state. some states where you can do right. that, but no, you probably there's no shouldn't state. There's literally to. no state in the country that you can do that at all. Really, it's not allowed. Yeah, that's not allowed okay. in any state whatsoever. Good. There has to be an actually posing of a threat, pulling to someone's driveway. You know why? You know why pulling to someone's driveway is not a threat? Mm -hmm. Because why? that's the whole point of a driveway. Is to pull <laughs> for in. people to pull into it. Right. Right. Like <laughs> if you don't want anyone to pull in your driveway, you mm -hmm. build a giant wall around your house so that you can, you can't get in. There's no public oh, yeah. access to your, your, your oh, house. Oh, yeah, I know. I know about the gated driveway. Right. That's you how you... Stay out of my driveway. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So that's, that's the, how the woke leverages boycotting and cancel culture. They are basically the person who shoot, who, when you pull into their driveway by mistake, they shoot you. That's mm. what, that's what woke is. That's what cancel culture is. Yeah. Wouldn't the tax save a lot of money? 
if there weren't so many disabled people? Who knows? These are open questions. Let's sit down with people on both sides, on many sides, and have calm, civil conversations about it for the rest of our goddamn lives. Chapter 5. Debate. Sar, I know I did this look before and it's like not related to the video topic at all, but it just makes me feel sliving. The boy who slived. So Megan Phelps Roper's viewpoint seems to be that scorn and condemnation are never appropriate. That we should approach every conflict with empathy and compassion, even when dealing with the worst, most destructive people in the world. Hi, my name is Megan, and my heretical belief is that even the people who seem to be the worst, most destructive people in the world are human beings who deserve compassion and empathy if we want to find a way to change their minds. In her book, in her TED talk, in her public appearances, Megan expresses the idea that society has recently become polarized in some unprecedented way, that we've all become extremists, that in some sense, we've all become the Westboro Baptist Church. I can't help but see in our public discourse so many of the same destructive impulses that ruled my former church. She identifies things like Based. certainty, vilification of compromise, us versus them thinking, suppression of empathy, and celebration of death and misfortune as Westboro-like elements in public discourse. And this really bothers Megan because she claims that a decade ago, when she went on Twitter to tweet about how f marriage is abominable to God, it was people who engaged her in a civil, rational way that eventually led her to renouncing Westboro's ideology. And like, I don't entirely disagree with Megan about this. She's totally right that if you want to change people's minds, then approaching them with compassion and empathy is usually the best way to do that. But Megan reaches another conclusion that I don't agree with, which is that because compassion and civil conversation are most likely to persuade people, we should never cancel anyone, even the most horrible bigots. And canceling is a pretty meaningless term at this point, but what Megan means is we shouldn't say mean things to bigots. We shouldn't boycott or counter protest or raise our voices. We shouldn't shun or exclude anyone because that's just not how you change minds. And I get why Megan thinks this, right? De-radicalization was a really important part of her life experience. She's also clearly holding out hope that other members of her family will leave Westboro and and have a life on the outside. She has a quote from her mom in her Twitter bio. The last lines of her book address her family. I want to tell them that- Has this tactic ever worked? Has there ever been a point in American society where a, a minority of people- mm -hmm. Shame say, the majority into- fall. Sh yes. Yes, shame the majority into just accepting something they didn't accept. Hell no. Has it ever worked? No. Of course not. Get the fuck out of here is the response you get. Yeah, because like this is what Contra totally neglects to understand. Mm -hmm. Like, because she goes on this whole tirade about how you shouldn't waste your time trying to change the bigots' minds. Sure, it's nice that Megan Phelps changed her mind. Sure, it's nice that Daryl Davis is running around, you know, changing KKK mind, people's minds. But you know, not everyone should do that. And it's like, okay, that's not the argument. That's not the argument. The argument is not to change the bigot's mind. The argument is the mo the majority of people are not politically activated moderates somewhere. Center left, center right people. Of course. And those are the people that you need to get on your side in order to mm -hmm. get fucking political change in this country. Yeah, you gotta that's get sis to care, which is, yes. you know, that's hard. <laughs> it is very hard to get me to care about anything. Right. That's true. That's true. Um, that's the argument. And, and Contra just completely doesn't understand this. And it's like when you have these people who don't have strong opinions one way or the other, right? Some random person doesn't have strong opinions about, you know, Black Lives Matter. And they turn on the news and they see, oh, there's a Black Lives Matter protest and they burn down the fucking city. How are they going to feel about that? Mm -hmm. Are they going to have a very nuanced opinion? They're like, well, I think that maybe there is a problem with police violence. However, I think that these protesters are simply acting out the language of the unheard and are just reached to boiling no they're gonna say fuck those people fuck this cause this shit is crazy burn my motherfucking house down 
Exactly. How dare you? That's what they're going to say. Like, this is so, it's so funny because Contra's are like, oh, I hate all this, you know, high-minded intellectualizing. It's like your entire argument relies on people engaging in high-minded intellectualizing where you think they're going to somehow separate like bad actions from the movements. That's not how people operate. No. They're going to say, there's the pie lady, get her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Calvin Pafford for $20 says, I've said this before, but it's hard. To, it's harder to understand the trans thing. Gays can be like, quote, you know how you like chicks? I'm like with that. I'm like that with guys and I get it. But trans people go, you know how you feel like a man? And I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> oh, look, every time I bring up the Tavistock book, you seem to push back in ways that I just think are unproductive. I don't know what that has to do with what Calvin just said. I think what Calvin just said is true. Yes, but in the Tavistock book, right. they label that as transphobic. The people who worked at the Tavistock clinic, if you came out and said, look, I don't have a gender identity, which many people did come out and say that, they <laughs> said, you're being transphobic. Well, How is I that transphobic? It's, well, it's not, but I wouldn't even, I don't, I don't think that's correct framing. Like, I understand why someone would say, I don't have a gender identity. You do. You just don't realize it because you don't, you haven't experienced It's like invisible to you. Else. Yeah. It's invisible, right. Totally. You know, we only understand what it's like to breathe air because we've not breathed air, right? Underwater. Like, we understand what it, what it's like. Yeah. But, you know, you, you don't know what it's like to be dead because you've never been dead. Right. You know? So, yeah, you don't know what it's like to, to have a different gender identity because... You've never experienced the other way. So, and that's true. And it's true. It is, it is difficult to conceptualize. And I think that's a good point. That is why it's harder for people to empathize or understand what's happening there. Uh, what's your first thoughts for 55 Canadian? Thank you so much. It says big up to Dave Landu, his interview with Michael Malice talking about the hypocrisy of Steven Crowder, bad contracts. I guess there's only one thing that has your back. That sweet, 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 sour beef jerky. <laughs> Sitchin Adam, what beef jerky are you having today? I actually read the package today. Oh, I nice. This might look, you've trained me. I thought there this might go. come up. And the the brand literally made me laugh out loud. See, there you go. It's a good thing. What was yeah. it? It's old trapper. <laughs> so you I see. So Adam decided. <laughs> That since we're watching a ContraPoints video and talking about trans issues, he was going to eat official Trap brand jerky. Old, old Trapper. What there is that? Go. Look, I was like, I've eaten this beef jerky for years. Never looked there at the go. label. Never looked what it's called. Yeah. It's called Old Trapper. You've been eating. <laughs> listen, you've been eating. Uh, what, what kind of animal is it? It's beef. Beef? You've been yeah. eating trans cow beef this whole time. Look, you I, hold on. How... Look, what kind of old trapper goes out and traps a fucking cow? Don't you raise them? <laughs> you're not trapping the cow. You're oh, buying I thought the you're cow. making a trap. I thought you're making a trans joke. No. Oh. But I did look, I do know what the I know the trap. What well, a trap I'm assuming is, okay. I'm assuming that do they only old make beef trapper? Or <laughs> well, the back in the day they had to trap the animals, right? Old trapper. Actually, I guess they never trapped beef, right? You would just yeah, raise it. Yeah, the hell, you raise a beef. Well, don't trap it, huh? Old trapper. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Maybe they started as something else. No, our famous old-fashioned beef jerky was born fifty years ago. Can we? Do you think we can get a a that's spot weird. for old trapper? You think we could get only like if a, they explain their name? Old trapper. <laughs> Old Trapper Jerky. Okay. Yeah. Go. So I'm, eat, I'm eating some Old Trapper today. I'm eating nice. some Old Trapper. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, God. I knew. Uh, it's so bizarre. Old Trapper. Uh, but anyway, regarding the David Landau thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we did. We did watch it. Yeah. Oh, you didn't watch the whole thing? No, I, I watched two. I watched uh, Anthony... It's Anthea Cumia, I believe. I watched his show on it, him mm -hmm. reacting to it, which was hilarious. And I watched the show itself with Michael Malice. Michael Ma uh, 
like I tweeted it out. Michael Malice actually responded to my tweet, which I was like, oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. I told him great job. I mean, <laughs> Ma Michael Malice did an amazing job because Michael Malice asked all the questions that you would want to want to know, which was perfect. I mean, yeah, he did an amazing job. So gotta yeah, check I would, it out. Michael Malice did do a fantastic job. I would... If you're interested at all in the Steven Crowder Daily Wire contract drama, um, you can check it out. David Landu, Landau was yeah, talking David to Michael. Landa. Or Dave talk, Landau. Dave. Dave Landau was talking to Michael Malice. And a majority of it was about how he was on Crowder and about him leaving Crowder. Now, obviously, obviously, it's one-sided, right? We're just hearing Dave's perspe uh, perspective. We don't know what the defense is or the counter to mm -hmm. any of this is. But... If half of what David says is true about how he was treated and how his contracts worked and how Stephen Crowder behaved, it makes Stephen Crowder look like a horrible person. Yeah, Stephen Crowder. a total hypocrite. So. It looks as though Stephen Crowder is terrified of other comedians being around him that are funnier than him. That is the, uh, yeah, that is what Dave is which leading is us just, to believe. Yeah. Which is just, I mean... Oh, it's so sad. The, it's a twisted tale of backstabbing and betrayal, right. Right. which I thought was great. But the the Anthony Kuma show is mm -hmm. it, is it Anthony? I hope I'm getting his name right. Let me know. Right. Opie Anthony, Opie and Anthony guy. Right. Yeah. He evidently Dave Landau was on his show, and Dave Landau left the show to go to Crowder and kind of screwed over Anthony Cumia, mm -hmm. which, and he said, you know, I want to say that this is like karma, but I love. Oh, really? Guy, so. That's hilarious. Anthony yeah, totally. That? That's yes. so funny. See, but that's important. Why, you know, Dave on Michael mouse should be one sided. is like a one sided thing because whenever Michael asked him about Opie, Opie Anthony show, he makes it seem like they left on good terms. Okay, they're saying Kumia in the chat, so Anthony right. Kumia. No, but so Dave Landau is going to be on Anthony Kumia's show on Monday. Interesting. So maybe yeah. we'll hash so out. So we'll have that. to see that. Yeah. Right. Maybe we'll hash out that. Interesting. Okay. Anonymous Cow for twenty dollars says TJ is literally fighting with J.K. Rowling Twitter right now over the banana thing. L O L. No there way. Oh man. There you go. <laughs> That's crazy. Crazy world we're living in. Okay. Uh, Red473 for $50. Thanks so much, Red. Says, I have to do some tattling. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Tattling on who? I hope it's Sitch. Uh, Stephen Michael Davis remarked that both of you were wrong about the New Deal in his last video. I did I did see that. Someone sent to me. Yes. Did you? Yeah. I was yes. like, what the hell? How, how, how am I getting through? How the bus? dare you, Stephen Michael Davis? You libertarian, I never would have guessed that a libertarian would be against the New Deal economic policy. What a shock. I think he called FDR a fascist, too. Yes. That's your favorite president, man. He's That's the best president fired. that ever lived. There you go. Right, yeah. I feel like I say that just to trigger people. <laughs> My favorite president. I just, uh -huh. I don't know that I have one. Wow. You're, you're un-American if you don't have a favorite president. Yeah tough george washington i think is the one that i said what a just basic like, bitch answer i know it is totally basic bitch but uh, yeah no i'm not surprised to see michael davis obviously disagrees about the new deal having a positive effect in america so i'm not really bothered by it he but in the video he says <laughs> that <laughs> poverty causes crime which yes. i've you and i have gone round and round on that on the show i was like why well, i agree I with that i just think it's i think it's simplistic to say poverty causes crime and crime doesn't cause poverty Right. I think it's, you think I think they're, they're both factors. You, yeah, right. It's back and forth, obviously. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it doesn't bother me. I don't, I mean, he didn't say like, such an Adam or fucking idiots, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like he wasn't like super, you know, at least the part I saw, I didn't see him super insulting about it. So. You know, oh, you didn't fine. watch the whole video. Interesting. I didn't watch. I just watched the part where I was mentioned. Cause that's oh, all okay. I, care about, so. I watched the whole video. And I look, I watched it before I even know there knew there was a mention in there. There you go. I was thrilled that he mentioned why nations fail. I was like, yes, right. based. Right. 
And then I got mentioned, and I was like, well, dude, why are you throwing me under the bus? <laughs> look, this is Sitch is the FDR guy. I don't, you know. Okay. I tried to look up the book that he references in there. The um, He references the F, some book, the FDR myth. And I went and looked at the book, and it's written by some, looks like some radical libertarian. Just, hmm. yeah, it looked completely biased. And I was like, Interesting. Mm, I yeah. don't know. So. So yeah, no, I'm a but thank you for tattling red, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm not bothered by it. So doesn't sound. It sounds like he's bothered by it to me, but very yeah. bothered by it. Yeah, you sound uh, a little depressed, but also Chud said Snitch was smarter. Oh, Sitch, Chud said that Sitch was the smarter of the two of you. <laughs> oh really? Let them fight. There you go. Chud said that. Chud said, I mean, that's, I mean, we all acknowledge that that's true. So, you know, Chud told me I was the nicer of the two, though. So, yeah, you could be nicer, but what is nice got anyone, right? A lot, really. <laughs> you know, Chud actually, I should tweet about this. Chud had a fantastic video where he, oh, I know, annihilates from orbit Pyramid Head, aka Bill Cipher that you have at home, aka Illuminati who was on the leftist media podcast that we covered leftist she, mafia smart yes guy. she uh, <laughs> very very stupidly uh went after legal eagle who's kind of a darling of the left oh yeah and um i mean i don't think he's like a socialist or anything but uh she went after him and accused him and his editor of stealing from her in like the dumbest fucking way imaginable that was very obviously not stealing and she was just having some kind of weird emotional breakdown or something about it. And it was so bad. And her accusation was so stupid that even H bomber guy wow. attacked her publicly on Twitter for, for, for the call out. So. H bomber guy is insane. That guy is nuts. Yeah. If H bomber guy is calling anything you out, he says. <laughs> if you're on the left and H bomber guy is calling you out, you know, that's a bad sign. That guy's totally bad faith too. He is. Completely yeah. bad faith. So I'd recommend you guys check that out at some point. It's on Chud Logic's channel. We're gonna good. cover one of her videos maybe next week. I don't I don't know. She made some insane video about the woke stuff. So Yeah, she did a bad video on defining woke and who knows, maybe she'll get mad at us for covering the video. That'd be pretty mm -hmm. funny. Oh yeah. I'm so, down. We'll find out. Oh my god. The squirrel, the Twitter squirrel uh sent us money. Really? Yeah, did you know I that? don't believe it. Uh, Z Squirrel, the Twitter squirrel for $2. Can't believe it. This is the official real Twitter squirrel. It says, uh, interesting that the one week these supposed centrists start their stream on time is the week they criticize a trans woman. Why are you so anxious to defame and straw man LGBTQ plus folks? Hmm? Were we that, on time? It's That's like I didn't even notice. thing. I didn't even notice if we were on time. We weren't late, huh? Oh I God. feel like we were a few minutes late. God, how terrible of us. Hmm. Anyway. But I love them. I'll just have to find another way. This is touching and human and also kind of a conflict of interest. The problem is Megan's views about this only make sense if you assume that Megan is the main character of reality. If you assume that the moral improvement of bigots is more important than protecting the people they target. Or if you assume that changing bigots' minds is the only way to make social progress which it isn't. As far as I know, Anita Bryant is 83 years old and she's still homophobic. But even without Anita's blessing, gay rights have still somehow managed to progress since the 1970s because gay activists didn't need to persuade Anita Bryant. They needed to defeat her and that's what they did. We have this, is, this is so stupid. Defeating Anita Bryant didn't do anything. You don't need to defeat her, you need to persuade the electorate. Yeah. You need to persuade other people. Well, which, people by the way, they never fucking mind. accomplished. Yeah. They literally never accomplished. All these rights were granted through the court system. <laughs> That's true, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And the pro right. now, and now they're afraid because that means the court system can revoke them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? 
You have to accept that realistically, persuading all the bigots is just not an option. Yes, we should convince as many people as possible, but there will always be bigots. And mocking them, shaming them, or boycotting them is, I think, a perfectly valid strategy. Does that mean that when we cancel bigots, we're acting kind of like the Westboro Baptist Church? Nar. You would only think that if you're a total moral relativist. I guess controversial opinion, but bigotry is shameful. And it so, first of all, it's the left. That's the moral relativist. So that's kind of funny. She brings it up. But um, no, again, it's like you have a right to own a gun and defend yourself. That doesn't mean you have a right to shoot the person that drives into your driveway by mistake. Okay. That's the problem. You guys and the trans activists and the woke movement is canceling anyone for any fucking reason, any because you have this idea that you're number one, you don't believe in free speech. You don't believe in any of the liberal principles whatsoever about free speech at all. You think it's all bullshit. You think it's all power games and bullshit. So you don't believe in it. And so the kind of it, it's really the woke side that has this absolutist view on everything. And it's like this weird gaslighting to pretend like it's, you know, the anti woke side that has the absolutist position on this stuff. Yeah, I don't. The. I just. The war that you call these people bigots. I just, you know, citation needed. I don't, I don't buy it. I don't think they're going to come off. I don't think they're going to, history is going to remember these people as bigots. I just, hmm. I fundamentally see the conflict completely differently. I think the conflict over women's only spaces and sports, which seems to be the only thing that there is conflict over. I don't know. I think there's a bigger conflict over children transitioning. I think that's the bigger motivation here. Sure, yeah. Well, even in that situation, I think right. I think that's going to become illegal. I don't I just fundamentally from a philosophical perspective, I don't see how someone can consent to to some sort of treatment that they have like zero awareness of. How can you consent to a treatment before you even have gone through puberty? Right. That just seems well, ridiculous to me. Yeah. Well, but I mean, this is the problem that, that Contra, Contra refuses to acknowledge, which is that any, like from the beginning, we are all, we're not stupid. Okay. I remember what it was like in 2015. Mm -hmm. I remember what it was like in 2016. Th anyone that had any problem with anything that was woke was instantly called a bigot. Of course. Instantly. Yeah. Didn't matter what. That's why it's so fucking ironic that later in the video, Contra is all like, I think that trans women shouldn't participate in some cis women's sports. Well, guess what? A huge swath of your audience, huge swath of the trans activist Calls community will call you a yeah. bigot for that Contra. Yeah. And in fact, and that's why it's kind of bullshit too. Contra has been attacked by the left constantly over positions she held that were not extreme enough. So for her to, to, like, to pretend like that doesn't exist and to just be like, oh, well, all these people that are against it, they're all just bigots. It's like, what are you talking? You know that's not true. Because you've been attacked that way. They're attempting to make this bigot label stick as a political strategy. Of course. And y you bring up the children transitioning. Obviously, that's a big deal. You know, I think you can set that aside and just focus on women's only spaces, uh, trans or sports, sports and women's only spaces. And I don't think those people are, I don't think history is going to remember those people as bigots. I think they're going to win ultimately yeah. this conflict and um i don't know maybe I, I don't i don't know how they're going to accommodate trans people i'm certain it'll be very generous and giving yeah i don't know we'll see but the big label is not going to stick no should be shamed. I'll say it. You know, if you're testing out some racist ideas in your head, you might feel afraid to express them publicly. For Look, and she has to say, she has to equate it to racism because she knows that's persuasive. <laughs> right. I don't think she could come out and say, like, if you have transphobic ideas, like if she was making the same argument with transphobic instead of racist, people would be like, well, what is transphobia? Because nobody right. knows. It's like, you don't want women, you don't want biological males competing in women's sports. Transphobe. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's, that's why she doesn't do it here.
or fear of being shamed or judged. Is that because we live in an Orwellian dystopia that punishes people for wrong think? No, it's because racism is dangerous and shameful and you should be ashamed of it and the people judging you are right to do so. And sure, there are some very patient people who devote their lives to de-radicalizing bigots, which I think is a perfectly noble thing to do. There's a guy named Daryl Davis who's befriended members of the Ku Klux Klan for over 30 years, and he claims he's convinced more than 200 of them to leave. And good for him. De-radicalization is a valid strategy, but it cannot be the only strategy, and it must not be the primary strategy. Because we're not going to defeat racism by telling black people to be a little nicer to racists. Again, she focuses on racism because racism is a battle that everyone agrees with, that everyone's on the same page with. Well, most you, people. You right. can't make this argument with transphobia. You just can't. Right. You're yeah, on I know. shaky fucking. Well, ground. you know what's funny? Someone actually makes this point rather well, and it mm. comes from a place you'd never expect. Uh oh, is it TJ? No, they make it in this video. You heard it. Oh, it's Michelle Goldberg. Oh, she does. Yes. Oh, interesting. You don't remember that part? I don't know. Okay, well, we'll get to it. Feminists would be wasting their time trying to convince Andrew Tate to respect women. In general, I think that the massive effort that it takes to maybe persuade bigots is better spent persuading other people not to listen to them. And it's also worth cautioning that de-radicalization is often a messy and incomplete process. 20-year-old white nationalist Peter Saitanovic became the face of the fascist Unite the Right rally in 2017 when a photo of him mid-scream, tiki torch in hand, was published in news outlets all over the country. Peter was unrepentant in interviews he gave immediately after the rally, but he began to question his beliefs after befriending a Muslim woman who, according to Charlotte McDonald Gibson, challenged his views without insulting him, allowing him to understand the hurt he had caused. Peter is no longer a white nationalist, but that doesn't mean he's flushed out every trace of bigotry. In a 2019 interview with the London School of Economics student paper, Peter said, I don't like the whole transgender thing. You're born either a man or a woman. <sighs> So he maybe still has a little bit of work to do. When I did de I mean, listen, I think that's a, a bit of progress from going from a white nationalist. <laughs> okay. I'm fine with that. That's hilarious, though. So a guy goes from a fucking Charlottesville white nationalist to like, well, you know, maybe they don't like trans people. I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a massive improvement. Okay, I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'll take it. And like... There's something that's not being addressed here, which is there's a big difference between so there's a big difference between if if you boycott, say, you know, as I, I said, say Kraft Cheese was putting ads directly on like Nick Nick Fuentes's content, right? Mm -hmm. So you boycott Kraft Cheese, right? And you're like, okay, that's fine, right? They're directly supporting, you know, this person who has this very extreme radical ideology, and they're giving them money for it. You know, I don't problem with that. But that's not really what's happening. What's what's happening is they'll say, "Oh, you know, like Kiwi Farms is a good example." They're not saying, "Oh, well, this, you know, these people advertise on Kiwi Farms website, so we're going to attack them." They're like, "No, no, no, we're going to attack the service that allows Kiwi Farms to even exist, the apolitical service that's just like a fucking DDoS protection service, or you know, the service that allows websites to just even exist. We're going to attack those people." And that's where people get all freaky about the cancel culture stuff. Because if it was up to the cancel culture woke mob people, the woke mind virus people, they would 100% believe that all of us should not be able to use banks. True. Yeah, true. Scary and true. Yeah. Yeah. They, of course it would. And so that's why this feels incredibly disingenuous for Contra to be making this point. It's not like, oh, I don't think, you know, Coca-Cola Coca should be, you know, having ads it's like no 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 you don't think these people should even be allowed to be on youtube if it yeah. was up to these people none of us would be allowed to be on youtube no dissenting voice would be allowed to be on youtube so don't give me this kind of like bs argument about oh you know we're you know we just think you should shame them or boycott them blah 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 we've done this in the past like no no, no we haven't done this in the past this is entirely a new phenomenon okay 
Yeah, and on top of that, they claim the moral high ground, which, uh Right. How can, you, how can you claim the moral high ground when you don't even want your political interlocutors to be able to have a fucking bank account? Yes, yes, exactly. You've lost the moral high ground. Right. You think these people should be depanked, debanked and basically removed from society, which is very different than saying, oh, you know, some specific person is sponsoring them and, you know, I don't like that. Yeah. Radicalization work on YouTube, I used to get some criticism from people of color who were not thrilled that I was bringing a bunch of semi reformed racists over to the left. A frustration that I totally. This is the. This is a. This lie is like grown out of control. Yeah, it's laughable. ContraPoints is. De -radi ContraPoints used to de radicalize all these extreme right wingers. Who. This is like. No. There was one fucking person. There was one person. And we talked to that person. Well, and it was Caleb. Caleb. He was the only one. Well, also, uh, it, Xander Hall claims to be one of these people, too. Okay, sure. Yeah. No, but from Contra? Yeah. Okay. So there's two people. Right. There's Xander and Caleb. Okay. Grifters. Both, both of them. Who, both who, unfortunately, became insane. <laughs> well, and, and, and I mean, I, I question the whole narrative. They seem like right. tepid, you know conservatives not i don't neo nazis know. i don't know oh yeah right they did they they were yeah they did not seem they seem to be like conservative but not you know alt riders so that seemed to be bullshit yeah. in the first place but then the second thing is and then with Caleb he was quote unquote de-radicalized by destiny but that always gets left out of the fucking article cuz destiny is a cis white male yeah of course so oh no it's Contra. Yes, Contra. All these alt writers who are so activated by degeneracy are like, oh, this trans woman really changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ludicrous. It's I do, so stupid. I do think she could probably produce a, a boatload of emails from people who were like, oh my God, I was so close to being radicalized and you completely yeah. saved me from that. Yeah. But I think if you actually dug in, and look what they, you know, what they actually meant by radicalized. You'd find right. uh, night they were, and day. Yeah, I, I believe that there was a bunch of people that were anti woke, that were big into this the skeptic movement right. in the 2015s and 2016s, and then, you know, when the skeptic movement kind of fell apart and it kind of uh, broke into all the various you know movements that it is now, you know, some of those movements could become more extreme. And then some of those people became socialist and all those people that became socialists like to give themselves a pat on the back and say, well, because some of those people became extremists. That could have been me. I was saved. I was saved by ContraPoints. It's like, no, yeah. bitch, you were never saved. You were never going to be that. Okay. Yeah. And the people who were going to be that are that right now we're arguing exactly. with them. They're near reactionaries. Jesus. Right. Right. We understand. To paraphrase YouTuber Ian Danskin, oh, diverse no. leftist communities or maybe not the best holding space for someone who's a bit of a Nazi, but working on it. And oh, that guy. When I hear that voice, I just want to <laughs> cringe yeah, out of my chair. That, yeah. oh, we've covered so many of that guy's videos. Uh, that He's one of the worst. If he not is the worst. the worst. Oh, my God. His videos yeah. are so bad. That he, he is like the perfect example of armchair psychologist who's never met or understood anyone who's disagreed with him in his entire life, and yet he's going to sit here and create every fucking psychological, philosophical theory about reading your fucking mind. Of course. And he knows yeah. your thoughts better than you do. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's all straw man, you know, stereotypes. Yep. In the case of Megan Phelps Roper, I don't know if she has lingering bigoted sentiments, but what she does have is a kind of hypervigilant skepticism about anything she perceives as ideology. This is pretty common with people who used to be religious fundamentalists. They were so certain they were right, only to realize that everything they believed about the world is wrong. So they become- ContraPoints is a, fundam a fundamentalist. She has a fundamentalist ideology. 100 percent we're looking at a fundamentalist right now i'm distrustful of any strong moral convictions because it reminds them of their former fanaticism coming from westboro where i believed so strongly that i was doing the right thing and then to leave and come to believe that it, it was so destructive and harmful i had this this moment in time and it lasted for for many months where 
I was like, how can I ever trust my own mind again? This kind of skepticism is in some ways a good impulse, but valuing dispassionate intellectualism above all else can cause problems, especially where topics of social justice are concerned. Because it can lead you to this kind of toxic centrism that asks, why are marginalized people so unwilling to have calm, philosophical debates about whether they should have rights? Are they afraid of dangerous ideas? Atheists- Okay, this is so disingenuous. That's not, that's not the argument. The argument is, I understand why people are emotional. Everyone's emotional. That doesn't mean you don't get to play by the rules. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if your mommy and daddy never told you this. Okay. When you were a little bitty baby, just because you're upset, even if you have a good reason to be upset, doesn't mean you get to throw a fucking temper tantrum in the middle of the supermarket and act like a fucking asshole. Yeah. I don't care what happened. It doesn't matter. You have to play by the rules that everyone has to play by. Yeah. Morally and not only is that a moral prescription that should be true, but also if you actually don't want to look like an asshole to everyone and you want to enact positive change in your world. This is this is why all this woke stuff just seems like this BS performance. They don't I don't think any of these people actually care. They don't act like they care about actually enacting any positive change in the world. They don't? No. I mean, they want what they want. The, uh, the, the baby analogy is good. It's just, it is a tantrum. It's like, they care I more, want my rights. I want my rights. Yeah, they care more about just letting their emotions out. Their primary concern is not getting what they want in the world, It getting what their political change in the world is. Their primary concern is virtue signaling, getting status points, and just letting their emotions run wild. That That's what's driving them. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah, There's they no want the, that's why they want the pie in the face over political change. Yes, like if you ask exactly. them straight up, right. listen, you're going to get the pie in the face, but you're it's going to take 20 years off of gay rights. <laughs> They're like, okay, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Set up the pie. <laughs> right. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then the, the other argument is the fact that all these people and the arguments that are going on this side are being used to try to, to chip away at allowing violence. That's all oh, this yeah. is, is. It's allowing, trying to get the allow violence. And, you know, you might say, listen, I'm fine with violence against, you know, unironic literal Nazis. You know, maybe you're fine with violence against unironic, you know, Stalinists or whoever the fuck, you know, would be the equivalent of that on their side. But, you know, especially with the woke people, the issue is... First of all, you know, I'm not in favor of violence for speech reasons, but beyond that, they call everyone a Nazi. They call everyone a racist. Everyone and we a bigot. All, everyone a and everyone a bigot. And we all know where this road goes because we've seen it before. This was literally the tactic they use in the USSR. It's literally the tactic they use in Mao's Russia. I mean, in Mao's China. Yeah. We're just, you know, to problematize everything and to use this hyperbolic language to call everyone that disagrees with some form of bigot and must be eliminated from our society. As soon as you start to erode the bound the boundaries of the liberal discourse and say, no, violence is actually fine and based. Yeah. It's not gonna happen though. This philosopher Sam Harris, in his podcast about Megan's podcast, can we talk about how there are too many podcasts? I'm calling for a complete and total shutdown of podcasts until we can figure out what's going on. Sam Harris, in his podcast about Megan's podcast, complained that trans activism and activism in general is plagued by mental illness and hysteria. I frankly think there, there's a fair degree of of mental instability and, and even frank mental illness in the activist community. I mean, in, in, all, in really in all activist communities, the level of viciousness and hysteria is, um, you know, it's, it's hard to know what to compare it to. Diversity when man accuses trans women of being hysterical. So first of all, <laughs> this is so based. Based Sam Harris there. <laughs> this is so based. Secondly, this is like straight up slander mm -hmm. sam harris said that there's lots of mental illness in all activist communities right 
Okay. He didn't say left-wing activist communities. He didn't say trans activist communities. He said in all activist communities. And then Contra strawmans the fuck out of him saying, you're calling trans women mentally unbalanced. Right. Well, fuck you, Contra. That's not what he fucking said. And you know that's not what he fucking said. Right. Yeah. But she doesn't care and her audience doesn't care. Yeah. It's it's so gross that these people get caught up in this mob mentality and they're just, they know that they're perpetuating a lie and they just don't care because they think it serves some greater good. The lie is politically effective. That's yes. why they go with it. Yes. It's disgusting. Well, he didn't say that, but that's what he secretly meant. I don't like I know, the like lying. I Cool. Is it really hysteria to react with strong emotions when your basic inclusion and in society is up for debate? Aren't there certain situations? You know, we can't take every single medal from women, so our 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 inclusion in society is up for debate. Listen up, contrapoints, you privileged fucking whiny baby. I'm mm -hmm. going to say this to every other uh, activist on the left. Who's, who agrees with this dumb fuck whiny argument, okay? Let me listen real close. If black people who were literally fucking enslaved in this country, and then when they weren't, had second class, literal, not your bullshit trans genocide, oh my God, uh, you know, stuff, were literally treated as second class citizens for decades and didn't have basic rights in this country, didn't have basic access to basic services in this country for decades. If black people could say, hey, let's non-violently protest, <laughs> okay? Let's be productive in our protests. Let's follow the rules of a liberal society. Let's advocate for liberal solutions to these problems. If black people can do it after everything they've been through, then you should shut the fuck up and you can do it too. Because the plight of trans people or the plight of gay people in, in American society is but a fraction. It's a fucking minuscule, insignificant fraction to the plight of the black population in America. So shut the fuck up. True, true. Shut the fuck up with this whiny bullshit. Oh, we can't possibly... You, you expect me as a trans person to maintain my emotional stability and not lose my fucking mind when there's a trans genocide happening right now oh i'm clutching my pearls i'm swooning somebody get the fainting couch yeah great point excellent point oh. yeah fuck off where strong emotions are warranted. It reminds me of this awful episode of Joe Rogan feat Ben Shapiro, where Lil Benny argues that gay marriage is immoral with his usual whining sophistry, and Joe gently raises objections for Ben to talk circles around. The human sex drive was made to procreate within a stable relationship in order to progenerate and have future generations of people. Misuse of that sex drive in any way, whether you're talking about from masturbation to homosexual activity is therefore a diminishment of the use of that drive. That's the natural law case against, against homosexual activity. All of the top comments on this video are like this. Imagine talking about different beliefs while still having a productive conversation. Things progress when you don't demonize people. The discussion here was excellent. Two guys with opposing opinions, speaking calmly and intellectually without cursing, shouting and making disparaging comments about each other. This is how it should be done. Kudos to both of them. Joe is a great interviewer. He can totally disagree with someone and still have a calm, collective conversation. This is how it should be. Just two people sharing ideas, learning different point of views from each other. This is why Joe is the number one podcast. Joe Rogan beautifully asks the tough questions. And Ben answers honestly. He is strong in his faith. I love this debate because it's two so contrasting views and they have a civil conversation great learning. And like, yeah, it's easy for two straight men to have a dispassionate theoretical conversation about the ethics of homosexuality because it's not their lives and their relationships that are up for debate. Okay. Nobody's debating their relationships, so. First of all, her own point here is stupid and wrong because if someone has strong religious convictions, you are literally debating against their entire moral identity. 
you talk about LGBT issues. That's a great point. Yeah. Right. So you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Secondly, if you go back, as I did, and you watch that Joe Rogan, Ben Shapiro conversation, and you don't clip it out of context dishonestly, Ben Shapiro, in the beginning of the conversation, acknowledges that he's not talking about anything legal. And he's not advocating for the government to make gay marriage illegal. Now, he does make the kind of bullshit, I don't think the, there should be marriage in the government, blah, blah, blah argument. But he says, repeatedly in the conversation, I'm not talking about legal frameworks. I don't believe in making gay marriage illegal. The conversation is only a religious conversation and in the religious framework of why he personally, by following his religion, is against gay marriage. And to me... That's a boring, stupid conversation because all you do is you point to the Bible and you say, it says gay bad, so gay bad. <laughs> and that's right. the end of the conversation. And that's all that happened in that conversation, Contra, if you'd actually you know, showed it in context. It's just Ben Shapiro saying, from a religious perspective, it says it's bad, so it's bad. And, you know, that's fine. I disagree with that. But if, that's your, if you're just going to talk about it from that perspective, that's what's going on there. Yeah. Very simple. These people don't understand the emotional burden placed on marginalized people who are asked to defend their rights. Like if you're straight, do you want to publicly debate whether your marriage is valid? Andrew Dworkin claimed that penetrative heterosexual intercourse is inherently an act of violence. I've noticed that most straight men don't want to have a calm, civil conversation about that. So imagine how they'd react if there was a powerful political movement to criminalize penetration or revoke their right to marry. Add in a lifetime of ostracism, family rejection, bullying, and discrimination, and maybe then you'll begin to understand the hysteria of a lot of queer people. It is you know, it's funny because she had this whole section earlier in the video where she goes over the lifetime of fucked upness that Anita Bryant suffered. Right. And says, well, just because she suffered all these bad things doesn't mean that we have to empathize or excuse her behavior. And now she's using the exact opposite argument. Well, you know, queer people suffered a lifetime of bad things that happened to them. So right. they do deserve your empathy and your pity, right? Sure. Yeah. All of this yeah. is just hiding the ball on the real debate right. though for me like it I is. just it is. like this is about specifically very specific rights that trans people are asking for that there's really only conflict over those rights like i don't well, think there's a lot of conflict over trans people should be able to you know get an apartment not be discriminated get against an employment like i don't right. society doesn't seem to have a conflict there well this is hiding the ball on a far more dangerous argument. All this trans stuff in this video is really a veneer for the larger argument mm -hmm. that she's making, which is, hey, if I'm advocating for a good cause, I should get to break the law. Right. Political I should violence. get to break liberal um, the liberal etiquette that guides our culture. Mm -hmm. That's the real argument and the really dangerous argument here. Yeah, because you that's could bullshit. be wrong. Yeah. Well, and they are you wrong, could be so. wrong, right? You could be A, you could be wrong morally, okay? B, it's going to lead to a backlash. There's a multitude of reasons why we're against that shit. Yeah. That's the whole, the whole point of our system is set up in a way that we can solve conflicts, deep peacefully. rooted yeah. ideological conflicts peacefully, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's the entire point of this system. And for you to say, well, but I have a really good cause. I don't give a shit. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. If she has a really good cause, though, why is she talking about all of these other things like racism, gay marriage, like all these things that we have reached oh. some kind of conclusion on? Why isn't she talking about the actual fucking cause? <laughs> you know why she's not talking about the actual cause? Because it's not great. Because she's on shaky crown. Look, she's yes. basically taking away the rights of women. You keep wanting to talk about your rights. You're like, your rights? What about their rights? 
your your <laughs> you're the one infringing on people's rights, babe. Sorry. It is my right to raise my child with the moral precepts that I find to be beneficial for my child. Beto O'Rourke does not get to raise my child. And if he tries, I will meet him at the door with a gun. That is insane. Wow. Ben Shapiro threatening violence because he can't handle the debate. Sounds like a classic case of hysteria to me. Why can't Ben Shapiro just have a polite conversation about Beto O'Rourke transing his children? I now have two choices. One is to leave the country utterly. Two is to pick up a gun. Those are the only choices that you have left me. Dave Rubin is a gay conservative whose career requires that he convince his right-wing audience that he's one of the good ones. Do you, I mean, it's an interesting juxtaposition that she makes. The question With is, what? well, between obviously Ben Shapiro losing no. his mind because he's right. going to get his kids tranced versus the... Uh, trans people losing their mind because they're not going to be able to compete in women's sports. I mean, what what are we talking about? Well, here? so so the clip that Ben was losing his mind about was Beto O'Rourke made a comment. He made two comments. The first comment he made was he thought that religious institutions should lose their tax exemption status if they're anti LGBT. Mm -hmm. And then he sort of insinuated without directly saying it, though it, I think it was intentional, that like maybe religious institutions that are anti-LGBT shouldn't even be allowed to exist in America. Wow, that's kind of crazy. Which, right, which would be a massive violation of obviously the First Amendment. Yeah. And so there are two different questions here, which again, Contra doesn't address because this video is disingenuous, which is that I think it's morally fine for people that are having, who are actually having their liberal human rights violated to be angry and to even use violence to some extent. You know, I, I'm not, I don't, I See, don't think it would be. What, ex that's exactly what I'm getting at. Right. Like, I don't think it would be immoral for people, like, I don't think it's immoral for black slaves to use violence against their slave masters, yeah. right? To escape and run to the north, right? I don't think that's an immoral yeah. action. Slave right? revolts. Sure. 100% but, in favor of. Right. So, but there's a second question, which is, okay, throw the moral question away. What is a politically effective thing to do? And is it politically effective? Is, are having, you know, and this is the problem. People are all stupid. Everyone is stupid. Even oppressed people are very stupid. Everyone is stupid. Oppressors and oppressees are all stupid. So it's not like you have the situation where the oppressed people rise up, they destroy the slave masters, and then they say, oh, well, we killed the people oppressing us. We're, we're going to be cool now. No, it's like, let's just kill everyone, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Let's kill everyone that shares some sort of distinct feature with our oppressor because that's human nature. Human nature is just to lump everyone together and to let your rage out. And so you can have sla – this happened. You'd have slave revolts. This happened more so not in America – but it happened in like uh, you know the the island colonies where there'd be a slave revolt and they wouldn't just kill the slave masters they would literally kill fucking everyone that was white right on the island you know or there's something crazy like that you know and you're seeing probably like this in South take Africa it too far oh my right God. and it's like that doesn't help your movement <laughs> no that's right? not good it's not moral and it doesn't help your movement yeah and and so but the problem is like Contra wants to distill everything into this dumbed down overly simplified like Oh, it's just like race issues. It's just like gay rights issues. It's like, no, we have complicated questions. We have complicated moral questions, which I think you're on the wrong side of. And then also on the side of trying to get things actually passed in our society, I know you're on the wrong side of it. And all the examples you bring up kind of prove that point. Look, aside from this being a J.K. Rowling hit piece, she basically signs off on getting trans women out of women's sports. In the video it's like a very right. small section but she basically says yeah you know that's fine what is she Bigot. even arguing for what are we fucking talking about i know probably why, bathroom why? stuff probably kids transition stuff would probably be my guess okay so that's that's the thing that's the hill they want to die on is the kids being able to transition i mean that's the big issue right now it's so oh it's just so unrealistic 
You're going to ask a five-year-old fucking, what gender do you think you are? So, well, the problem is like, so if I had any confidence in the medical community right now to accurately diagnose gender dysphoria, you know, I'd be like, uh, I'd be a little bit more permissive of it, but I have zero confidence. Totally. Zero well, confidence. Not only that. Everyone should have zero confidence in them right now. They're completely controlled by uh, gender I gender identity ideology. She's she's comparing this to like this Anita Bryant lady who was trying to make sure her gays couldn't get married. Now society's bending over backwards to give these people what they want. Oh, you want to transition here? Let's give get you some puberty blockers. Let's get you some cross sex hormones. Well, the the question of gay marriage wasn't even on the table. It was. She didn't even want gay people to be able to be employed if they yeah. were openly gay. It's just such a different environment. Right. How who is who's trying to stop trans people from doing anything? I mean, some people are, but I don't think they're part of the majority of the yeah, discourse. I'm right? talking at, at the level of society. Right. Society is bending over backwards to help these people. They are. Yeah. To yeah. some degree. To some degree. To so. some degree? What degree are well, they As I said, not? like, you know, Florida, the, you know, I don't think it's, you know, the whole no one who's trans can go in the, the bathroom. That well, the, make, you know, we're officially in backlash land. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So right. it's a different. But that's the problem is that this is, this is always what happens. One side of the argument takes things too far. And part of their method part of their persuasive method for taking things too far is to accuse the other side of the backlash before the backlash has even occurred correct yeah and right. then after they've already been accused of it they're like well shit they're already saying we're doing it might as well we do might it. as well do it yeah, exactly <laughs> right and then the backlash occurs and they go see we called it we told you and you're like what the like what like come on what are we, what's happening here yeah overreach backlash yep but we always find that healthy balance. We always keep on trucking. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the backlash is coming. Like you said, did you see the Ron DeSantis ad about much more? The women, the brave trans women in sports ad. No. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> no. It's like a. I assume it's like a parody ad or something. It's like a no. I think it. Ron DeSantis actually came out with it, but it's just, no. I mean, but it's parodying the concept. Of, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay. The brave. It's like the. There's a narrator talking about the brave trans women in women's sports. <laughs> yep. We should watch it. It's good. Sure. It's so. I. I get. I hate. The way everyone discusses presidential politics is the dumbest, most annoying shit ever. Mm -hmm. Everyone has like fucking amnesia. Because it's like, you know, when DeSantis was up in the polls, everyone's like, oh my God, Trump is totally out of the race. DeSantis is totally going to be the pick. Trump is BTFO'd. And it's like, as soon as DeSantis' poll numbers go back up because he's out of the news and Trump is in the news all the time and his numbers go back up, oh my God, Trump's going to be the candidate. DeSantis BTFO'd out of the race. And just like, it just and this just continues forever until we finally have the election. It's great. It's so it's <laughs> so annoying. Stupid. It's not annoying. All these commentators, if you hear a single person who's like, "Oh my God, DeSantis is totally done for," or who said, "Oh, Trump is totally done for," these people are fucking idiots. They don't know any fucking clue what they're talking about. This is the yeah. dumbest. These are the dumbest takes of all time. These are people that are just starved for content. They have to like try to trick people into think they're saying something of relevancy and respond to every poll that happens every day. So much shit happens between now and the election it is fucking impossible for anyone to conceive of what's going to happen when donald trump came out and said he was running every single person on the face of this planet was like this is a joke he has no shot and they were saying that for for months and months and months not and months me. and months I was until betting. he did not until me. he fucking did not me i was putting car caught hard cold cash down saying look this yeah, guy's gonna win the right. nomination because you you saw something there that you understood not everyone said that but i'm just saying there were so many people on the left and right that were like oh Donald Trump, no chance so many people were saying on the left and right oh hillary clinton's got a shoe in here it's oh like, i know oh my God. yeah it's just so annoying they just repeat what other people say like everyone's saying it it's got to be true yeah. so much of life is the right. everyone saying it it's got to be true true True, true, true. Which is so sad because most of the time everyone's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Way yeah. more everyone's wrong. Than... Well, what happens is 
the original arguments are not based off of something objective. They're based no. on like an intuition or something, some sort of moral foundational claim. And then people just repeat it. Of course. A yeah. And then they think, well, since everyone's repeating it, it must be based on something objective. Well, it's not. Everyone's saying it has to be true. Right. Wrong. <laughs> when is this? When is she actually going to talk about the the actual topic? Is that is that coming up soon? I hope so. He's willing to sit across from his so-called friend, homophobe Ben Shapiro, and listen to Ben say he would never attend his anniversary party because it would be tantamount to endorsing sin. There's a difference between me just being friends with Dave and me actively participating in an event that I feel is religiously sinful. The two of them then congratulate themselves about how they can still be great friends. Why is it that we're able to do this? And most people can't do this. Because That's what I'm curious about. We go about. home at night and we can have our own lives. And here's Dave having a civil conversation. Listen, as long as, you know, I think Ben Shapiro's beliefs are stupid, but as long as, if it's true, and he's not hiding his power level, as long as he has a libertarian attitude about it, that's totally fine. If he doesn't want gay people, you know, and he doesn't want to support gay marriage personally, that's his fucking choice. And that's fine. As long as it's a very private libertarian attitude, I commend him for being able to not want to prescribe that onto the rest of the country. Okay. Yeah. Good for him. That's what gets under my skin more than anything is when people trot out their beliefs and they want to force them on me. That's when I really right. start getting pissed. Right. Conversation with conservative Glenn Beck, who compares homosexuality to alcoholism and then congratulates himself on having the conversation. I am a deeply religious man, and my religion says man and a woman, uh, that is the basic building block of family. And that's what I believe, but I also am... I also, I also know God created you just like he created me, flaws and all. Uh, you know, um, I believe I have a gene, they've never found it, that makes me very susceptible to alcoholism because it runs in my family. So does craziness, but it runs in my family. Well, Dave smiles and nods, probably because he's thinking about how much he enjoys the taste of boots. Usually. How, how many people... Dick. Dave, Dave is completely fucking actually moving the needle on this. And that's exactly like what I was going to say. Contrapoints right. is not even aware of it. Right. Th this is, you know, this is like these fucking, these people are so stupid. It was like when we covered the um, Blair White. Um, oh, yeah. Totally. Lauren, w w Lauren Witzke debate yep. conversation. Yeah. Where all leftists are like, oh, my God, I can't believe that Blair just stood there and took Lauren Witzke's abuse. She's a total bootlicker. She's a total doormat. And I'm like, you, you guys are insane. You have no, go read the comments of that video. You have no clue what you're talking about. And you go read the comments and all these people were like, you know what? I was, you know, I'm pretty religious, but I think Lauren was like a totally unhinged individual and I commend Blair White. Right. Like, that was like every fucking comment in that video were people that were on the right, you know, feeling bad for Blair White and sympathizing with her against Lauren's insanity. Yep. And she moved the needle in that conversation. She did. She she gained, you know, she opened the door for people that maybe didn't accept trans women to say, okay, listen, you know, maybe I have some reservations about trans people, but I don't think being this unhinged fucking insane person is the way to go. And it's the exact same thing with Dave Rubin, the situation, you know, yeah. you listen, we may find Dave Rubin a lot and that's fine. I think his comedy sucks. <laughs> You had to I, go there. Let's I think, well, he's about to play so I'm like, you know, bit if I'm doing this. But um, I think that, um, you know, his opinions seem very shallow, right? But I do have to commend him. He's doing because the hard work. Because, I, I, yeah, I think it's hard work to go into a space where someone is basically criticizing your existence and to be the face of like, listen, I'm just a normal person like you. We have some commonalities. And to show that the people, and to show the people in Ben Shapiro's audience, to show that the people in uh, Glenn Beck's audience does have an impact. That's what changes hearts and minds. You s screaming that they're a bigot and think that they should be eliminated from society isn't changing fucking anyone's mind on anything. And calling them a bootlicker. Yeah. Yes. When they're the ones doing the hard work and you're the one, you know, 
sitting, sitting on the sidelines and right. you know castigating them for doing the hard work. Right. Yeah, that's even worse. You're ca you're attacking them for doing something productive. Yeah. Right. Sad. I mean, I don't I don't listen. I don't follow Dave Rubin often, but I don't think he's he's not like the Uncle Tom of gays. I don't believe David Rubin's going out here saying, I think gay marriage should be illegal. That's not the position. He he's is gay married. For. Jeez. He's I know. Like... That's what I'm saying. You know, he's not, he's not like an Uncle Tom or something. Yeah. And he's showing gay marriage as traditional marriage, which is probably yeah. like better than anything you could do. Right. He's married. They have kids. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think they both have <laughs> I just take out a picture. Kids. Uh, yeah, each, yeah, they had two kids. Each one is, one of them is theirs. Yeah. Yeah. Of me and DeSantis. And then we're good because they get it. They get it. That's my governor. Yeah. I think a lot of straight people look at Dave Rubin and they see finally a reasonable gay person who doesn't scream bigot at everyone who disagrees and can actually have a civil conversation. Yes. But that's not what I see. I look at Dave Rubin and I see a sabineless bootlicking doormat who won't even defend his own family from the most fundamental disrespect. I also can't help but notice that- And that's, and, and while that is true on some level, because like, listen, I'm, I don't have that ability. Like I couldn't be friends with someone who was attacking, you know, my humanity and say like, Sitch, I don't think you should be able to get married and have children. I don't know if I could be friends with someone like that. Hmm. But if someone can be someone friends with someone like that and move the needle, I, I'm going to commend them for doing that because I understand what's happening there. And the problem is Contra and the other people in this movement can't get out of their own headspace they just want to all have justifications for being angry. That's the whole thing. I want to have a justification for being air angry. So I have a justification for tearing shit down. Because that's all this video yeah. is. This is a two hour cope of I'm justified to tear shit down. Yeah. That's all this is. Yeah. Yeah. And when does it end? When does it? It never ends. You know, it will never end. If we woke up tomorrow and every child by law could go transition without seeing a doctor with all these you know and in every locker room had a requirement to have a trans woman with a penis inside of it okay every locker if if this was passing the law do you think all the lgbt activists you think all the woke leftist activists would they all just say oh we got what we want we're all just going to dissipate no all this revolutionary that, energy that that Mandatory trans woman in the locker room would put up a sign that said trans genocide. <laughs> That's exactly what would happen. Of course not. No, the revolutionary energy wouldn't dissipate because that's the point that these people don't get. Totally. It's not the issue. It's the energy. It's the desire to tear shit down. Totally. To fuck shit up. And totally. that will continue because there's always fucking something. Because if the, if the trans activists got everything they want, then they just switch to being about race activism, right? And if the race activists got everything they want, well, you know what's next? Oh, we still have capitalism. Capitalism is the most oppressive system. Oh my God, guys, people are dying. There's a, there's a genocide. Late stage capitalism. <laughs> yes, there's a genocide on the working and poor people. How dare, how fucking dare you tell me, okay? Someone who suffered being poor. How dare you tell me to participate calmly in society and play by the rules? It never fucking ends. It never ends. There's always something. Yeah, a lot of it loops back to victimhood culture. I don't know if victimhood culture is going to to go away. It Victimhood culture won't go away, but it ebbs and flows in terms of the power it has. Yeah. You know, well, people no. have been using uh, victimhood status for thousands of years. You know, the Romans would say, oh, you attacked us first. We're the victim. We can justify, in you know, burning your city down. Right? I don't, so, I don't know about that. They did it, do that. It was, that uh, was like a very common Roman tactic was to always justify their war by saying they were attacked first and they were the victim. But there was honor culture and then dignity culture and then victim right. culture. So honor culture. Right you know oh had i see. Dis yeah, right. had disdain right. for being the i understand what you're saying yeah. yeah right right i mean they might say you dishonored us and now we're gonna come fucking kill you but i don't know that they'd say oh we're victims help us right we're just right. little old innocent victims here 
come to our aid. Right. Like victim and culture combines dignity culture and honor culture. But I, could we ever go back to honor culture? I don't know. No. I mean, well, maybe. I mean, if everything falls apart. I think honor culture is like, that's like the base. That's like base culture. And you have to kind of evolve beyond honor right. culture. Right. Honor culture still exists. Like, yes. in their, yeah. you know, when there's a bar fight, it's probably over honor culture. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. But victimhood culture is the new, the new thing. Yeah. Well, I, I think victimhood, people leveraging victimhood to get things will never go away. But I think we can move beyond victimhood culture and back Where you to gain, culture. Yeah. The, the yeah. thing about victimhood culture is you actually gain status. Right. By being a victim. Yes. Where in an honor culture, you lose status by being a victim. Right. Yeah. Right. That none of these civil conversations seem to change anyone's mind. Persuasion is more complicated and less rational than people think. Megan often says that she was de-radicalized on Twitter, but if you read her book carefully, you'll notice that that's not exactly true. The major precipitating event for Megan's crisis of faith was her mother's mistreatment at the hands of an increasingly misogynistic church leadership that made Megan feel like she was the victim of the church for once. She says of the church discipline, for the first time in my life, the accused were people I lived with and knew most intimately, and I knew that the judgments leveled by the elders were wrong. I could no longer blindly trust the judgment of these men. So she finally experienced firsthand what it's like to be the victim of her family. She stopped voting for the leopards eating people's faces party only when the leopards ate her face. It also seems- You know, you, you can criticize that and that's fine, but uh, that's like the way that 99% of everyone changes their mind about their ideology. Of course, yeah. They realize it's fundamentally flawed in some way. Yeah. Once the gun gets pointed at them, they're like, oh, no. And right. but see, this is why this is so obnoxious, because Contra's using this as like a bad thing. And I'm like, you know, that's why we're centrist, right? It's because we understand this truth of reality. And yep. you should. And here's what's like why this is so stupid. Contra, you're part of the leopards eating face people party. And you've had your face mauled several times by that leopard but you still want to keep it around. Right, <laughs> okay. yeah. Because you think, you're like, well, Contra's like, well, sure, the leopard has mauled my face time and time again, but it's mauled a lot more right-winger's face, a lot more than it's mauled my face, so it's still beneficial to me. Right. Like, that's essentially Contra's argument. It's a pragmatic argument there. Yeah. yeah. If you uh, don't mind getting your face mauled every now and then. <laughs> I, I prefer not to myself. <laughs> right. Uh, Right. I'm anti mauling. Yes. Yeah. Free mauling. relevant <laughs> <laughs> to notice that the people who had calm, civil conversations with Megan on Twitter were generally not gay people, the people most affected by her family's violent rhetoric. They were mostly straight men, like director Kevin Smith, who started hashtag save Megan because, quote, she's hot. There's often a neurotic component to persuasion, and that certainly seems to be the case with Megan, because one of the people who helped de-radicalize her is now her husband. And I feel like- What's, What's going on? on with that guy's face? What's the matter? What's going on with that guy's face? He's got a real Bart Simpson vibe. I don't know, man. He's got a weird face. Hmm. It's not so bad. I don't know. I can hear the cat. <laughs> Wormy. Wormy. <laughs> See, but this proves what I always said. Uh, feminists are completely wrong about everything. Objectification is completely wrong. If someone is hot, you're more likely to empathize with them. <laughs> if they're not hot. But literally, <laughs> feminists have it completely fucking backwards. Completely backwards. Of course. Yeah. Yep. Their whole you see goal a hot is to make and you're you... like, let me empathize with them. I can fix them. <laughs> I can fix her. Their whole goal is to make you empathize with people who are unattractive. Right. Yeah. And I feel like that's a relevant detail if we're trying to understand the role of reason and emotion. Listen, we should applaud that guy. He literally fucked the bigotry out of her. Okay. He's he's hitting way out of his league, too. I mean, she's, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's like, look, she's got a little bit of a bigotry backstory, but look at her. Yeah, you, listen, when when people say fuck bigots, I didn't know that's what they meant. <laughs> right. 
and de-radicalizing I bet that would de-radicalize a lot of big <laughs> Some good stuff. They just, listen, they just need to get laid, okay? A lot of these bigots, they just need to get laid. That's very, some sort of phobia. No, it's not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not very, saying it's just guys or women. I'm saying for both. A lot of these bigots just need to get a that's good. That's uh, very cis normative of you. Need to get some good, uh, some good game in their life. That's that very heteronormative of you. That's why. Why do you think they're so angry? They're so angry because they're backed up. Oh, ouch. <laughs> experiences. I think this experience is usually more akin to religious conversion than it is to logical reasoning. There's also a world of difference between the mostly private conversations that actually lead people to reflect on their beliefs and the spectacle of public debate. Ben Shapiro is never going to become less homophobic because he live streamed a civil conversation with Dave Rubin. So who is this conversation even for? Well, obviously it's for the audience. I think these civil conversations basically function to reassure a homophobic audience that just because they disagree with the lifestyle doesn't mean that they hate gay people. Look at Ben Shapiro. He is friends with a gay. Public debate is one way that we define the limits of the Overton window, the range of beliefs that are socially acceptable to hold. So often people who want to promote bigotry will use debate as a foot in the door. It's a way of establishing that their prejudices are within the realm of reasonable and socially accepted opinion. Here's obsession. She totally changed the topic. Like, why are we talking about the Overton window? Because um, because this is, she's going to make a whole argument about why she's anti-debating. This is, I mean, this video is incredibly radical because she's basically arguing that these concepts shouldn't even be allowed to be talked about in the public square. Well, this isn't, I mean, first of all, she says, you know, well, how does the, how does this talk function? And admits that there's probably homophobes in the audience that are going to be at least tolerant of homosexuals because of this conversation. That's not how and she, isn't she that a good that. thing? Well, no, because she, she frames it only negatively. She frames it only one-sided like, oh, Dave, Ru she's, she's saying Dave Rubin is essentially Uncle Ruckus. He mm -hmm. is this clown. He's the gay clown that the homophobes wheel out to say, listen, we're not, we don't hate gays. Here's our gay friend. Right. Right. That's what she's saying. She's not seeing it as well, I think. Maybe some people view Dave Rubin that way, but I think that Dave Rubin's presence there does empathize uh, gay people in an audience that would not necessarily have that empathy for gay people. Right, yeah. It makes them at least tolerant of homosexuals. And, right. You know, it takes a little, a little uh, wind out of their homophobic sails. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, and it's just obvious. That's the point of it. <laughs> right. It's just obvious. And, and actually, you know, she should be happy because she actually really thought about this. You know, we've always talked about the Sitch and Adam law of politics mm -hmm. is that you look at the extremists on the other side and you use a broad brush to paint everyone on that side as that extremist. Correct. Right. That's just, that's like the number one rule of political discourse. So if you're, you know, in the right, you're going to gain a lot of political power or a lot of political, say, sway by every time you talk about LGBT issues, you point to the most extreme radical fucking assholes who are you know, trans or gay or whatever. Right. And so to have, so if you're like, you know, watching Glenn Beck's program and all he has is, you know, drag queen story hour and crazy trans people and Dylan Mulvaney, all this bullshit, right? It's like, that's all you get. And if you don't actually know anyone who's trans or gay in your, in your real life, you're like, wow, all these trans people, all these gay people are fucking crazy. Yeah. But then if you have Dave Rubin come on, every he once totally in a while, blows that whole thing. Exactly. He completely destroys that stereotype. You're like, no, this is just some fucking normal guy who has, you know, conservative moral uh, philosophy. Supposedly. Right. Right. So. Yeah. So that's, a good, that's a good thing. But Contra right. wants to make that impossible to happen. She she wants Dave Rubin not to be allowed on there. Right. Only the crazy gay people can go on there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Obsessive anti-trans bigot Graham Linehan in a fury that a drag queen is on Doctor Who without the British public 
having a proper debate about these issues. Now, why do we need to have a proper debate about whether drag queens should be allowed on television? When so wait, I want to go back. Mm -hmm. There's something that happens here that's so bizarre. I'm well, kind she, of shocked it made she, like, it into this video. She completely changed topics. She didn't. She instantly disproved herself and didn't realize it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me go back a second. We'll use debate and the limits of style. Doesn't mean that they hate gay people. Look at Ben Shapiro. He is friends with a gay. Public debate is one way that we define the limits of the Overton window. Okay, this is the, this is the claim. Public debate is how we define the Overton window, right? Because if something is allowed in the public square, that moves the Overton window, right? Right. That's her claim. If something is allowed in the public square, that's moving the needle of the Overton window. Right. Point one. The range of beliefs that are socially acceptable to hold. So often people who want to promote bigotry will use debate as a foot in the door. It's a way of establishing that their prejudices are within the realm of reasonable and socially accepted opinion. Here's obsessive anti-trans bigot Graham Linehan in a fury that a drag queen is on Doctor Who without the British public having a proper debate about these issues. Okay, okay I see what happened. Contra just accidentally made Graham's point. Because Graham's point is, you putting a trans uh, woman actress, if she's even trans, it just said she's a, on RuPaul's Drag Race. I don't know if that means she's gay or trans, or just likes fucking drag, but or whatever. a drag queen, yeah. Right, or just a drag queen. Um, by putting a supposedly trans person or a drag queen on Doctor Who, is skipping the debate process and, and sticking it right in the middle of acceptable Overton window culture. Right. That's his complaint. Right. That Contra was just made, so Contra just made his point and didn't even realize it. <laughs> well, yeah. Because her, Contra's- Her, her have, point is that, you know, people who want to talk about things that are outside the Overton window want to have a debate about it uh, before, well, to to drag them inside the Overton window, but this is right, already see, inside the Overton window. If the if the drag queen can literally be on the show without a debate, obviously. Yeah, but that's but see, but that's what no, but what Graham is pointing out is that they skipped the, the fucking debate phase. Right. Yeah. With with the trans issue, it completely skipped over. It was just like, oh, it's just acceptable, and you just have to deal with it. Otherwise, you're a bigot. And he's like, wait a minute, we skipped a couple steps here, right? right? That's his argument. Yes. But I'm saying this to someone who fucking hates Graham. I think Graham is a fucking piece of shit. But that's a fair point that he's making there. Yeah. It'd be like kind of, it'd be like putting a pedophile on a sitcom and being right. like, oh, what do you mean? It's just like, look, he's a pedophile. <laughs> You're like, maybe we should have the <laughs> public debate about that before Seinfeld's best friend is a pedophile now. Oh my god! I, 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 I look. You know, this is this is how steep this is. I looked up um, that person, Jinx Monsoon. Uh -huh. I looked up their Wikipedia. Are they are they trans? Are they are they are they are a guy or a girl? It does even the Wikipedia doesn't fucking know. It's Nobody so knows. Nobody. Look, fucking it's a mystery, knows. right? Right. I mean, they, they said they're non-binary, which is the bullshit, you know. Looks like what they pass. Is, are you t is this the woman that's like bending over in the picture? They do not pass, but yes. Oh, okay. What's well, a small picture? I think, and it's very. I think you're looking at a small right picture. Now. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna protect you here. So. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Anyway. Anyway. Now why? This whole idea that people are trying to drag use public debate to drag things unacceptable things inside the Overton window is completely correct. Yeah. But right. at the same time... That's what they did. I don't see how pushing Dave Rubin outside of the Overton window by saying he's not allowed to be on conservative talk shows is... Doesn't help. Doesn't yeah. Admit. Yeah. Doesn't that hurt things? Doesn't that I push so. being normal and gay outside the Overton window? 
Why do we yes. need to have a proper debate about whether drag queens should be allowed on television when drag performance has been a staple of British entertainment since at least the time of Shakespeare? Life is a joke, that's just being on. Well, the context was completely different, though. That's the thing. This, this, is, this is the perfect example of what I said when I said, you have these people that are in a political movement and they just fucking lie and everyone in their audience knows they're lying, but they all go along with it. Yeah. This is a lie. This is a lie. Contra knows it's a lie. Um, uh, Matt Binder, I assume, knows it's a lie. Maybe Lance doesn't because he's not very smart. <laughs> These people are just lying. They right. know that there's a difference between someone in a Monty Python sketch putting on a dress so people can laugh at the man in the dress is completely different than celebrating a drag queen. Okay. You didn't know Benny Hill was trans? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you had no idea. Exactly. Like, it, this is such a stupidly preposterous argument. These people are fucking insane. Like this is the dumbest argument, and they know it's they. Know, this is just a lie, and they know it's a lie. No one could be this stupid to not understand the difference here. Are you saying Benny Hill is not trans? It I'm like... saying Benny Hill and the guys at Monty Python were not trans. Okay, when they put a dress on. What? In Shakespeare's day, when the guy put on a dress to be a woman on stage, he wasn't trans. He wasn't trans. That's not why he was putting on the dress. And he wasn't a fucking drag queen. He wasn't like, yes, queen, I feel powerful dressed as a woman. Cheer me on. That was not the thought process. There wasn't a little autogynophilia going on? Nothing? I don't think so. Maybe. <laughs> maybe for some of the actors. But uh, it wa that wasn't why it was happening. It was mm. happening because it was illegal for women to be in these performances. So they kind of had to do it. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wow. You actually know the true history. Everyone knows that. I thought like that's like common knowledge. Everyone's in everyone's high school uh, English class. Oh, the woman couldn't perform, so they had guys in dresses. Boo, 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 boo. And then everyone, world. everyone goes, "That seems kind of more gay." <laughs> it's kind of like more bizarre than just allowing women to perform on stage. This is what uh, feminists used to bring up. Oh, how yes. sexist it is! We can't right. even be in plays. Right. Women were oppressed. Now it's not women were oppressed. It's like trans people were always in place. Yeah. <laughs> it's no yes. longer women were oppressed. Right. Well, it's just another example of how trans ideology completely contradicts and clashes with feminist ideology. Yeah. Fishy, 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 fish. As I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just listen. Just be gone. So look, isn't this, this is really our trans representation, right? Like you look at this person in this outfit and you're like, this is, this person is really trying to, you know, bring acceptance to drag queens. Mm -hmm. That's what this says in this sketch, right? Right. <laughs> sure. I like those uh, faucets. Yeah, the faucets on the, on the nipples on the milkers, are good touch. Yeah. The faucet, the faucet milkers. Are good touch, yeah. yeah. Now we know where Lady Gaga gets half of her style from. Oh yeah. That is that isn't Lady Gaga? <laughs> How dare you? I thought it was. How dare you, sir? Fishy fish. As I am man. My state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman. Now alas the day. Bigots like Graham want a perpetual debate on their own terms because this is how they dignify their pearl clutching. It's how they convince the public that their moral panic about drag queens on TV is actually a valid concern, rather than the tedious, small-minded whining about nothing that it really is. Having the debate on a bigot's terms is not a good way to win people over, unless you're really skilled in the art of humiliating people, which most of the time is what public debate is actually about. This is something that JK Rowling doesn't seem to understand. In the witch trials of JK Rowling, 
Joe Rowe takes a contradictory stance on deplatforming. She brings up right-wing provocateur Milo Yiannopoulos, saying that activists are making a strategic error and giving Milo power by protesting his events, making him look dangerous and sexy. But when trans people try to deplatform TERFs, Roland characterizes this as silencing. So is deplatforming a strategic error that gives power to your opponent? Or is it a powerful tactic of silencing? I find Rowling's- uh. Okay. That was a dangerous sigh you had there. It was just, this is just such a dumb point. Can we acknowledge, can we live in the real world? Can we take out the baby brain and throw it in the trash and put it in an adult brain in our head? Oh, please do. Say like, listen, I understand that different people exist differently in our society and responses have different effects on them, right? Like a bunch of people, you know, for whatever reason, because Milo ended up putting, you know, being the kind of person he was, people losing their shit and protesting at him, you know, and movements did help him gain power. It's the same thing with Donald Trump. All the negative press for Donald Trump just helps him. It feeds him. It gives him more power. Yep. But that doesn't stronger. mean that negative press gives everyone more power, right? We acknowledge that there are different personalities in the world that are able to leverage things in different ways yeah. that will either help them or hurt them. Sometimes yeah. negative press can destroy someone, and sometimes it can make someone's fucking career. It depends on the situation. It depends on the context. It depends on the person. Yeah. And it depends on the person. Right. Right. You know, Scott Adams... I don't think his canceling, maybe it helped him personally because he doesn't, you know, he feels more free, but it didn't help his career. I don't think Scott Adams will ever make as much money as he was making when he was had Dilbert in, in national syndication. All he wanted to do was get to a million followers and he's almost there now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, he'll, he'll get more followers. Is he going to ever make more money than he was making? No. He'll never recoup that loss, right? Yeah, of course not. But someone like Donald Trump, he gets canceled all over the world and it makes him fucking president. True. Okay. Yeah. It's just this, this idiotic, like, well, are you saying that it's good or bad to cancel people? Yeah. Some people it helps them and some people it doesn't contra. This isn't like, this is so stupid. But she made a contradiction. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's a, it's a law of non-contradiction. Who now who's <sighs> the debate, bro? I know. I know conviction that we ought to debate Milo Yiannopoulos really out of touch. Milo Yiannopoulos doesn't have reasons for the things he does. He has strategies for humiliating people. I've taken some time out of my busy schedule, being fabulous and doing my hair, to prepare a speech for you. Well, a few remarks, really. Feminism is cancer. Thank you very much. To again... So, and also, so again, it is very, first of all, Milo's always been great. Yes, Milo's very cringe. But, um, to use Milo as an example here, when Milo is like a super ultra grifter, <laughs> a super ultra grifter, he's not, I don't think he's indicative of everyone in any of these movements. No. You can't say that Milo and Ben Shapiro are like on the same, you know, place of and that you should not. interact with Milo and Ben Shapiro in the same way. No. Completely ridiculous. And, and listen, Milo has now self-imploded. He was canceled by the right. And his last performance, he looked so awful that even people that were on his side were, were like, criticizing we're done. Him. We're done with yeah. Milo. Right. Right. Because he apparently couldn't get over his substance abuse problems. And, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> him hitching his wagon to Kanye blew up in his face. Yeah. Because that was not good. Quote Ian Danskin, you can't Not really Ian reason Danskin. with someone who thinks that feminism is cancer. Because you don't reason with cancer, you eradicate it. Rowling objects to the slogan, no debate, in the strongest possible terms. And then we come to the famous two-word slogan, the stock phrase, no debate, no debate, no debate. We hear it all the time. That alarms me, really alarms me. 
I can't think of a purer instance of authoritarianism than no debate. It's kind of amazing to me that someone could think angry trans people on Twitter are the purest example of authoritarianism. I truly hope that one day I am privileged enough to be capable of such a perspective. <laughs> Before I move on, I do want to clarify that I do think there are trans issues that are legitimately debatable by people who are not bigots. In my opinion, trans women and women's sports is one of those issues. But it's a complicated issue. Like, first of all, which sport are we talking about? Are we talking about figure skating? Boxing. Middle school field hockey? I see no reason why trans girls should be excluded from that. But if we're talking about professional weightlifting, well, then it seems plausible that trans women who have been through male puberty may still retain some kind of group advantage. Big it! There you go, listen. Contra points will be the judge. Contra will be the trans judge. She will sit upon her throne, self-appointed throne, and she will dictate what is proper criticism and proper debate that can be had about trans issues and what is bigotry. No one else can have a thought on that matter. Well, that's good. I feel like I'm in good hands now, but it go. sounds like she's conceding on the trans sports thing, which, okay, one down, yeah. one to go. But this completely, this completely destroys her entire argument because, as I said, there's so many people that her would call her argument transphobic. Of course. We've all heard these conversations. Look, she's a bigot. We already know. She's a transphobic bigot for even saying that you can have a debate on this. Look, she's literally contributing to the trans genocide here. Yes. I mean, wasn't this wasn't this like, a, like part of why Destiny got kicked off of Twitch? Yeah, because this is this trans sports thing. Yeah, yeah, because it's trying the trans all these trans sports. Because he had that opinion right there that you can right. only have if you're a trans, evidently. So. Right. Oh, but so you know we have uh, Contra over here mm -hmm. that's saying, oh, you know she she's mocking the idea that the that the trans activists have any sort of authoritarian power, right? Mm -hmm. And yet, Destiny was banned off of the largest game streaming platform in the entire world just for advocating that maybe trans women shouldn't be able to participate in cis women yeah, sports. For and having he didn't, the wrong and I, opinion. Right, and I listened to those debates. He wasn't throwing slurs around. He didn't seem to be doing it in any particularly hateful manner. Yeah. Of course. Look, that's that's how they roll. As long as they're making the decisions, who's right, who gets rights and who do doesn't get rights, then everything's cool. Right. What's up? Hit the button. I'll hit it. I'll hit okay. it when I feel like it. Okay. I'm not feeling it quite yet. Okay. But not all trans women have experienced male puberty. People are transitioning younger now, and that's another thing you have to consider. Well, that's going to change. So I'm not against debating this issue. I just want people to approach it with nuance and good faith. And currently, a lot of the people who are vocally against trans women and women's sports sound like this and we will keep men out of women's sports how ridiculous that will take place on day one and i don't want to debate those people i want to serve them a banana cream pie chapter six illiberal methods one of J.K. Rowling's core complaints about the trans rights movement is she sees it as illiberal in its methods so when I first became interested and then deeply troubled by what I saw as a cultural movement that was illiberal in its methods. So what are these illiberal methods? If you are saying this person is cancelled, that is the language of a dictator. It's true. Cancel culture is exactly how the Third Reich started. First, they cancelled the socialists, and I did not speak out because the hashtag was trending. But maybe we should- It's weird that Contra's like joking about this, because that's literally true. But that's how the, the Third Reich began. That's how all these movements begin. Of course they, they, they do. They can't, they say, you cannot dissent. You know, we'll, we're going to prevent you from being able to voice your opinion. We're going to cancel you. That was on the, the 10 steps of genocide that we read the other day. That's one of them. Yeah. And the Contra's making fun of it. And her audience 
is just lapping it up because they're stupid and they can't think of anything critically. Of course. <laughs> Look, Contra does the thinking for her audience. We all oh, know okay. that. Okay. Well, she's not doing a very good job. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Right. If you think too much, you actually will move away from these positions. It's very mm -hmm. important that we end up at these positions. Everyone that I disagree with is a bigot. Okay, so Putin should here be is canceled. Putin here is complaining that the Anglican Church is considering the idea of a gender neutral God. I'm sorry, do, do Christians think God is like literally male? Of course, he's God the Father. Okay. You guys, you guys don't have a Well, God you don't is have a he him God. So God is referred to in masculine pronouns in the Bible, obviously. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's ridiculous to think some sort of intangible, infinite being has a literal gender to them. I would think they'd be beyond, you know, such things. Well, that's heady of you. Oh, okay, I guess. I mean, I would. To me, I don't have a problem with people calling God He, just because it's like. You know, that's the way it's been written in the Bible, but I, I don't think God is a literal guy. <laughs> I don't think God has like a penis. I don't know. <laughs> the testicles. I don't think God needed to reproduce through se I don't think God needed to I don't think God evolved through natural selection, you know, and had um uh okay, you know yeah. sexual reproduction or something of that nature, of that effect. Being very mean right now. I guess. I don't know. It's it's a All weird the religious people. It's a weird, it's a weird thing to get, you know, twisted about. Now, I think it'd be super cringe if like some church wanted to use, you know, non-binary pronouns like Zer for God. Now that would be very cringe. I'd be against that. So, or gender neutral pronouns, just call him him or, or he, but, you know, acknowledge that it's God, right? Do you think we were created in God's image? Uh, well, I don't, I mean, I believe in evolution, so I don't think God pointed his finger into the ground and you know adam and eve's you know popped out mm -hmm. so well how, how if evolution is the process it's still do modern are modern humans made in the image of god i don't think god looks i think god could look like a person if god wanted to i don't think god i don't think god by nature is a human form if that's what you're asking me. right yeah is no a, i don't think so is it like a cloud of i don't know what it is gas i don't know some sort of 10th dimensional shape that our brains mm -hmm. can't comprehend. Is it just like a beam of light? God, it's, it's just, it's like, it's like, you know, the biblically accurate angels that are like these fucking insane looking things. Does That's God, God have tangible like. form? Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. Hmm. God could, ha God could have tangible form. I don't think God naturally has a tangible form, hmm. at least in our physical reality. So, but you do believe God is non-binary, it sounds like. That's what I'm saying, yes. Right. Yes. God cool. is infinite gendered, okay? Cool, yeah. We should see what an actual dictator thinks. Пресловутая культура отмены превратилась в отмену культуры. Не так давно отменили детского писателя Джонса. We got, look, we got people listening who... So we have very, very rude for Contra. To... Well, we don't need to read the, what is it? An actual dictator thinks. The notorious cancel culture has become a cancellation of culture. Thank what? you. Thank you, Vladimir. That's very. Uh... The notorious cancel culture has become a cancellation of culture. What the fuck? Not so long ago. The children's writer Joanne Rowling was canceled because she отменили детского писателя Джон Роулинг за то, что она автор книг. The author of the books that have sold hundreds of millions of copies around the world, которые разошлись по миру сотнями миллионов экземпляров, не угодила. Did not please fans of the so-called gender freedoms. That's, I've never heard it described as gender freedoms. You know, I can't help. <laughs> you know, you know. Here's interesting. I've never. Have you heard that gender freedoms? Well, I can. I understand what he's getting at. Well, I'm wondering if the reason that he labels it gender freedoms is because they're anti-freedom. Well, therefore, strict gender roles. So. No, but I'm saying no, no. I'm saying as an authoritarian dictator, he's against the concept of freedom, so it behooves him 
to use the word freedom to associate things you don't like. Like in America, we would never label, you know, people on the right would not label, you know, trans people gender free because free has a positive connotation to it. Right. But in Russia, maybe he wants freedom to have a negative connotation to it. Sure. So they hate us for our freedoms. I remember hearing somebody say that once. No, of course, like this is a total bullshit, dishonest tactic. Like Vladimir Putin brought up JK Rowling. That must mean she's wrong. Yeah, of course. Guilt by association is the right. whole the whole game here. Did you know What's Hitler that? liked his dog? What's that? What's Contra drink in there? What's going on? A Bud Light. <laughs> there you go. Did you notice that? I didn't until you pointed it out. <laughs> but I wonder why she's drinking Bud Light. I wonder why. Who drank that piss water? <laughs> Seriously. To be fair, I never liked Bud Light. Who did? Who likes Bud Light? My dad, actually, which is kind of funny. Really? Your dad I always drinks... give him... Sh no Whenever way. we were at a place and he'd order it, I'd always give him shit for it. I'd be like, oh my God, can you try something else, please? He would order a Bud Light? Yeah. <laughs> that is... Yep. That's something I never dreamed of. Yep. That's crazy. Okay. Yep. Not a Guinness? Not a Newcastle? Nope, nope, nope. A Bud Light. That piss. Can you bring me one of them piss waters? My, my dad's the kind of person who, like, I think at some point in his life, I'm going to guess in college, he had, like, a bunch of preferences, and then they just never changed. <laughs> it's, like, very against, like, trying new things. Really? Oh, man. That's I my love, guess. I love That's trying my new guess. things. That's my guess, yes. I love. Yes, I, I always love to try new beers and new alcohols and things. Yeah. You know, love that nature. Of course. Oh. New dishes, new restaurants, all kinds of sure, new things. Sure, sure. Yeah. Right, exactly, yeah. As soon as you try something else, you're done with Bud Light. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure, like, if that's all you drink, you know, but, like, you know, whatever. Well, he, he actually, to be fair, he used to drink Coors. <laughs> Coors Light. <laughs> Um, and then he didn't oh, like them because they had, there was some political thing about Coors, so he decided not to drink Coors anymore. I don't remember what it was. He changed beers because of politics? And then, um, yeah, I don't remember what it was. And then actually then he started drinking Bud Light. And I was like, well, I was like, this is, it's gotta be some light beer that doesn't taste like piss. I'm like, I don't know because I don't drink light beer, but I'm sure there's some light beer that doesn't taste like piss somewhere. I try not <laughs> to drink beer now just because. Yeah. It it really is poison. Shouldn't, it is not great for you. Yeah. Shouldn't drink any alcohol. You can have it occasionally. I'll drink an occasional Newcastle, yeah. but I'm not gonna. Right. Look, I'd rather kill myself than drink a Bud Light. <laughs> well, let's not go that far. I'm telling you, death is death is not preferable to a Bud Light. Okay, I disagree with that. Statement. It's like torture, though. <laughs> oh God, it's so disgusting it's, to me. I mean, they're not great, but it's not that bad. It's not death. Not death. Level, I but. guess if I was super thirsty, if I was like dying of thirst, you know, it's Death Valley and I'm on a run. Uh huh. Okay. If I, I was like, at, listen, if I was at a party mm -hmm. and they're like, do you want some, some beer? And I said, sure. And all they have is Bud Light. Mm -hmm. I will drink it. I would tell them to fuck off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would say your party sucks. <laughs> and then Adam. <laughs> Kills everyone in the house. He burns the house down. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to go to the car, honey. You come with Drives me. the car through the <laughs> entire party. Just crashes in the window. <laughs> this is what I think of your bad light. Like, Adam, I didn't know you felt so strong about Dylan Mulvaney. And you go, who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't give I a... used to want to drink this piss water. I don't give a fuck about Dylan Mulvaney. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate Bud Light. Yeah, that's there right. There you go. There you go. Tell my wife to stand off to the side. Hey, stand off to the side. <laughs> can, you stand, can you stand right here? <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. Is this video almost it, over? What's going on here? We got 40 minutes left, Adam. Oh, my God. All right. We're like two-thirds of the way through. Okay. I'm going to run to the bathroom while this, you go to the bathroom. this bit plays. Oh, but wonder what counts as acceptable activist methods to an author for whom Hermione protesting slavery was taking things too far. I am fighting what I see as a power.
powerful, insidious, misogynistic movement. I do not see this particular movement as either benign or powerless. Rowling seems to think that the trans rights movement is dangerous and authoritarian in some unprecedented way that makes it different from all past liberation movements. But how? What are these illiberal methods that distinguish trans rights activism from similar past movements? Canceling? So wait, 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 wait. JK's position is not, obviously, I'm assuming that JK Rowling isn't an idiot, right? Isn't a brain dead moron and understands that different political movements through all, throughout all of time, space, and earth human history have used illiberal practices to get things that they want. I assume JK Rowling understands that contra. Okay. That's not the point. The point that JK Rowling is making is it seemed like broadly the left was against people using these anti-liberal tactics mainstream and the mainstream left appeal. And that's what JK Rowling is, is criticizing saying, why are we allowing these anti-liberal tactics to be acceptable in the Overton window? That's the actual argument, Contra. Why are we allowing them? Yes. Because it's fun, right? There you go. It's fun to tear shit down. Oh. This Anita Bryant was... Weird. Yes. Way more cancelled than J.K. Rowling ever will be. Boycotts? Boycotts have been a staple of every progressive movement in modern history. Disrupting feminist meetings? Disrupting feminist meetings is a feminist tradition. Haven't you heard of the Lavender Menace? In 1969... This is like saying like, oh... Listen, it was totally fine for that guy to shoot those people in the driveway because they mm. pulled into the wrong house because people have had guns and protected their property for all of, you know, human history. Right. That's essentially the argument that Contra is making here. Hmm. That's not a good argument. No, it's not a good argument. Betty Friedan, author of The Feminine Mystique and founder of the National Organization for Women and Second Wave Feminism in general, coined the phrase Lavender Menace to describe the threat she believed that lesbians posed to the women's movement. None, she never makes the argument that any of this stuff was effective or worked or yes. any, has any sort of causal connection to actually yep. achieving some sort of legislation or anything. That's it's just like people did this. Yes, I'm so and glad nobody that. died. <laughs> that that is the ruse of this video. That is the trick of this video. She just keeps pointing to people using illiberal protest methods and just saying, "Well, they did it, so I guess we get to do it too." It's like, "Wait a Isn't minute." Isn't that the conservative <laughs> argument though? Well, they did it. Yeah. Look, we've always done this. <laughs> right. This is the way it's always been done. But she's making the Yes, she's making a conservative argument. This is the way my ancestors protest, and gosh darn it, this is how I'm going to protest. Well, did it actually work? Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> Was it effective? Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Who let this liberal in here asking questions? <laughs> I know. This is the way we've always done it. Pie this in the, the face. <laughs> This is the way us socialists have always done it, and this is the way we'll always do it till I die. Yeah, exactly. This is the way my grandpappy protested back in Maoist China, and gosh darn it, you ain't going to take that away from my culture. Oh, it's so sad. So <laughs> sad. Very ineffective. No. Not going to work. Right. But that's okay. I mean, you got 2 million views on this video, so who's That's complaining, true. right? That's true. It's a, Listen, it's effective for Contra making lots of money. Right. And that's what's important to Contra. Friedan was worried that being associated with lesbians would make it easy to dismiss the movement as a bunch of mannish man-haters. This understandably pissed off a bunch of lesbians who attended the second Congress to Unite Women in 1970 to stage what used to be known as a ZAP, a disruptive public protest designed to draw attention to gay rights issues. Think glitter bombing. Think pies. Half aggression, half whimsy. Like that time the lesbian Avengers zapped Rowling's friend Baroness Nicholson's house demanding that she resign. This podcast has pushed me over the edge. Centrism has gone too far and I am now pro-cancel culture. So just as- So there's another thing too here, which is that 
This is very disingenuous. Disingenuous is like the key word of this video. Because, you know, if the woke mind virus tactics were literally just to throw glitter at people or put pies in their face, I'd be like, eh, that's not good. But who cares, right? You know, it's not a huge deal. That's glitter not the, washes that's, off. Yeah, it glitter washes off. I mean, it gets in your eyes. This glitter is like the worst invention of all in time. But, you know, putting pies in people's face, all this stuff, I don't support any of that stuff. But that's not really what we're talking about. What we're talking about is burning cities down, getting violent, getting people fired from their jobs, getting, you know, trying to get people kicked out of being able to exist in society. Getting Destiny like, kicked off of Twitch. Right. We're not talking about this, oh my God, this person glitter bombed me. The humanity. Like, that's who, that's not the part of the conversation. This is so disingenuous. Yeah. You can't just say that all illiberal methods of protest are the same because obviously they're not. There's a big difference between throwing glitter at someone and burning down the building they're in. Yeah. A little different. Heckler's veto. No. Obviously, throwing glitter at them is much worse because glitter is the worst invention in human history. Steel metal shavings. <laughs> That's what glitter is, Adam. They said, let's take tiny pieces of metal and color them and throw them at fucking everywhere. And this metal. shit gets it's fucking plastic. everywhere. No, it's fucking evil metal foil plastic. That shit gets everywhere. It's impossible to clean up. It gets in your eyes and you're like, oh my God, this is the worst fucking thing in human history. Who invented this devil contraption? Yeah, I I think glitter was con was invented by gay people as revenge against straight society. That's my theory. Have you ever had a splinter in your eye? A splinter in my, like wood? No, metal usually. No, that sounds fucking awful. Yeah, I had a friend that had one. Oh my god! He told me the story, and I have been afraid of metal shavings ever since. There you go. That sounds like the worst yeah. thing ever. Yeah, I guess the he got was... it in some shop class or something. Yeah, Ugh, I wear those fucking out. goggles. Yeah, watch out. Beginning, a group of 17 lesbians wearing Lavender Menace t-shirts switched off the lights, pulled the plug on the mic, and charged down the aisles laughing and screaming. Their leader, Rita Mae Brown, took the mic and yelled, This conference won't proceed until we talk about lesbians in the women's movement. One of the now- You know what's funny? This whole tactic is reverse slippery slope. How so? Because they're basically saying, how dare you incrementally try to change society in some way that might benefit me in the future? I want what I want, which is the more radical position right now. And I'm not going to let you, who should be on my side, even advocate for your position until you address me. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's why they're trying to knock out Dave Rubin. They're like, listen. Yeah. Stop advocating for gay rights friendly. Well, and also the whole thing is stupid because like, even though, listen, I'm totally in favor of gay rights, you know, back in the 1970s, there could be lots of people in the women's movement who were in favor of women having, you know, equal rights or whatever the fuck they were arguing for in the <laughs> 70, you know, oh, um, so I, think, I mean, they technically did have equal rights, but whatever, whatever the fuck they were arguing about, um, but there could have been lots of people in that movement that agreed that women needed additional protections, but don't give a shit about gay people <laughs> or anti-gay. Like, just because someone's advocating for some kind of rights in some avenue doesn't mean they're going to advocate for whatever your position is. Yeah, of course. All organizers yelled back. And do you think that if you're like a woman and you're in your woman's rights meeting and a bunch of lavender menace lesbians you know disrupt your little garden party meeting that you're so mm -hmm. excited to go to no more lesbians yeah yeah is that gonna really is that gonna get those people in that meeting on your side hell no and be like nope. screw that they'd be like fuck these people gay people are mean yeah how dare Back. you i object to your coming in and taking over this meeting you're acting like men Betty Friedan would later speculate that the lesbians were a CIA psyop designed to make the women's movement look bad. So the Lavender Menace disrupted the feminist meeting using illiberal tactics, not because they were against feminism, but because they wanted lesbian exclusionary feminists to include them. It's the same thing that's- Did it work? No. 
Oh my god, it didn't fucking work. It's almost like this is an idiotic argument, Contra. Holy crap. There's no lesbian feminist to this day. There you go. It's never worked. Did it work in 1970? Did all those women say, you know, these lesbians interrupting our meeting have a good point. Yeah. Now that someone shout, you know, when when I was having a conversation, I was having a nice, polite conversation with this charming lesbian woman about, you know, equal access to rights. I listened to her and I said, fuck this whore. <laughs> I don't believe in this degeneracy. But then a person busted into my room and started shouting at me through a fucking fucking megaphone i was like wow i'm totally convinced you changed my mind i'm totally convinced you should <laughs> shove that megaphone up your ass <laughs> <laughs> but this is so stupid oh my god this is so idiotic i know it's just the you enrage them the Liberty Oppression Foundation just riles yes. in you. You're telling me what to do? Fuck you. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I was on your side, but now I'm not. Oh, listen, they, they, they sure felt good. They sure felt good wearing your little Lavender Menace t-shirts and yelling right. at people with megaphones. Yeah. Nobody remembers good job. any of this any, anyway. Good job, idiot. I watch ContraPoints videos so I can learn about lesbian history. <laughs> look <sighs> look at all i'm learning about the lesbian history so right. i feel so good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm a civil rights activist <laughs> right it's happening today when trans people disrupt feminist meetings as jk rowling puts it interestingly neglecting to mention which feminist meetings these are. I was starting to see activists behaving in a very aggressive way outside feminist meetings. There was a feminist meeting in which they were uh, banging and kicking on windows, very threatening. There's a historical obliviousness to Rowling's idea Mary. that trans activists are somehow more aggressive than similar past movements. Like she retweeted a transphobic gay man called Dennis Noel Kavanaugh, who says, all those gay rights and AIDS protests, I don't remember a single one where we intimidated or silenced a woman. Not a single one. Not a single one. Not a single one. Not a single one. <laughs> Dennis has also tweeted that he preferred AIDS to the trans movement. And also, uh, based. quote, I will fuck. Well, okay. Well, so fucking so nail you so to based. a wall what you have done to these innocent children. So, like, so listen, I don't agree with Dennis here, but um, he Contra's... Not even the AIDS joke? I mean, that's a funny well, it's joke. It's a funny joke. But, um, so, so Dennis's position, which Contra is me the fuck out of, is that he thinks, and I don't agree with him, but he thinks that there's all these gay kids who are gay who are being tricked into transitioning mm -hmm. uh, because societies are homophobic or they're just stupid or whatever, and so that there's some kind of gay genocide happening by transitioning children. Right. Yeah. Yes. And that's why Sitch he's doesn't saying believe what he's that, saying. but I, I'm. I'm, I I think more research needs to be done into this position for Sitch. I Okay. I believe, again, for the millionth time, mm -hmm. as you strong man me. <laughs> Am I? I feel bad. I believe I that there are people man. who are probably gay mm -hmm. who misunderstand that gayness and think they're trans. If you're, I don't If believe. you're gay, though, and all your friends like are deeply homophobic, you're going to think, oh, man. Oh, yes. All my homophobic friends will totally accept me when I transition, but not when I'm gay. Okay, I like that's that's your stuff. That's my on. argument. I don't that's even your, need to make the I, argument. I just I just repeat it back your, to you and it becomes your, absurd. Okay. No, that's your stumbling block. Because a lot of people are <laughs> fine with that. I don't think that's real. People point to like Iran or these like edge cases. I just I don't buy it. I don't mm -hmm. buy it. I'm okay. sorry. That's why I'm saying you, you're going to have to provide me some evidence for that because I don't, on its face, I just don't believe it. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense to me. A lot of people think life will be easier easier for them as a trans person than a gay person. I, I don't believe that there's a large subset of populations that view gay people, that view gay men as threatening 
but mm-hmm. they don't view trans women as threatening. I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I know. if I'm wrong, I which is possible, I gonna see. I need to see evidence on it because it's so into that is so anti the intuition of what's going on here. Why don't you read the Tavistock book and just? I don't want to read a book. There's so many examples in there. I don't care about cherry picked examples. Of that. Okay, I got gotcha. you. You're like my intuition is true. I don't care about other people's experience. No, it's all I said, about I said what show I... me some kind of study. Show me something actually scientific. I don't care about a hand-picked examples from some book somewhere. Right. So you're, you're basically saying that if somebody has had this experience, they don't count unless they write that down in That's some sort of exactly survey. That's exactly what I'm saying. And I'm embed it into you a study. Have, listen, I'm saying that if you, Adam, or any individual on right. this entire planet, as a personal experience mm-hmm. that goes against my opinion on the I, issue, yeah, I, no, I you're understand a that. Fucking liar, <laughs> and what you're saying isn't true, and you're an idiot, and your experience should be erased from the world, and you should actually probably be killed. And you should shut the fuck up because nobody cares about your experience well, until it's written down in a survey and included in a scientific study. Well, being killed necessitates that you shut the fuck up. You know, this is the part uh, of true, being killed, true. right? Should we have, should we give them a, look, before you kill yourself. What is the name of this stupid book that you're referencing? Before you kill yourself or the time to think killed. Yeah. Time to think. Look, they go through their caseworkers. It's going to be like that other book that I looked into and it was like totally bullshit. Well, I don't know. What other books did you look into? The one where the whole, you know, Gay men are transitioning so they could have more sex with gay men, like, argument. That was Galileo's middle finger, and you looked yeah, into it. Yeah, that was it. an idiotic argument. You did look into it, though, and you ended I up did. agreeing with the argument terrible. in the end. because you. No, I didn't! What the fuck? What is this gaslighting? What are you fucking talking about? I didn't agree with that. I never that, I said that was a ridiculous argument. I looked into it, and you agreed with me that it was a stupid argument. Ray Blanchard. Oh, no. my God. Chat, save me. Save me. It's Ray Blanchett or Blanchard. Yes, okay. We asked whatever. Daniel. Daniel said that that argument was insane. Then he brought up the fact that Ray Blanchard was using a subset of people from 1970 in fucking Latin America. No, I brought that up. Uh, I think you both brought that up. Yeah, because I then said when there's, I went a, and tried there's the f- a contrast between the Castro district. You know, there's a contrast between a weird society, Western, industrial, right. educated, rich democratic and a society are, listen, in latin america that's so- deeply homophobic there are certain societies it's, it's beyond it's not a question of homophobia okay generally homophobia and transphobia go hand in hand however however there are certain societies in certain instances that that's not true or for whatever reason being a fucking lady boy is more accepted than being gay that however is not the norm and it 100 percent does not fucking exist in america and i doubt it exists in england Look, I just, I hear all the time in various books, and look, this guy Dennis here is saying it again, and every time somebody says it, any t- every time somebody makes this argument, you're just saying those people are categorically wrong. Yeah. Den- so Dennis I here am. is incorrect. No, no, uh, okay. no, that's not, no, fuck, mm-hmm. no. Okay. Do you, do you acknowledge that there are two arguments embed, embedded here, right? Will you please acknowledge that there are two arguments embedded here? Go ahead. Let's do it. No, you, what are the two arguments embedded here that I've repeated like three times in this fucking stream? Transphobia and homophobia go hand in hand. No. About you, you, Dennis's argument. You lay the argument out. That there could be people that are probably gay that are being confused that that them their gayness is really transness yeah not because of fucking bigotry just because they're like i don't know what i'm attracted to trans is hot right now maybe i'm trans and then people say you're probably trans right i can understand that happening it has nothing to do with bigotry at all that's well, a v- completely different argument than saying there's a person who's gay they know they're gay and they're like well 
I'll probably have a better life if I fucking go through a bunch of surgery and transition to be a, a girl because we all know how accepting trans women our fucking society is. Look, in, in the book, they literally have a person that says, I couldn't imagine my life as a gay person. Okay. So that's why they transition. Like, that's their okay. own personal experience. They're in the okay. fucking book. I'm not, okay, you understand that when I say this isn't happening, I'm not saying that in the span of human history, it doesn't happen ever, because there's right. a lot of people. You're saying it's, it's not happening happen. in it's great not numbers. It's not, a, it's not the statistical norm here, okay? Right. Well, it's it an insignificant in statistical anal uh, anomaly. Well, it happened enough in this clinic that they've frequently talked about it. Okay. Well, I'll have to go read this dumb book now just to look into it and say, oh, <laughs> you're probably wrong. <laughs> but I just, like... <laughs> you're So you're basically saying that this happens so insignificantly that anytime somebody makes the argument that the trans movement is eliminating gay people, they're just, this is them in a moral panic. I never said that. Okay, so what? why Why does this argument why keep coming Why do I have up? to go back? I literally just told you 20 seconds ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's make it clear then. I did like three times. Why do I have to keep repeating myself? What? Okay. I, okay. This is the last. What time I'm ever is gonna your do it. argument? This is no. This is the last time I'm going to ever do it, and I want you to repeat after me because well, this that is the would only be way to make it sink in. That would be helpful. I PSA sit. Repeat after me. I PSA. Sit. Just say the argument. And I'll no, I, we're going to do it line by line. I PSA sit. I'm not going to do that. Come on, just give me the I, argument. I PSA sit. Do it. What is your argument? Come on. I said that there could be gay people who don't know they're fucking gay that get confused into thinking they're trans. So, now repeat stop. that. So, so, so stop, stop. You're saying that it's all a confusion thing. Look, you've acknowledged already that there are two repeat types of people. Repeat my argument. Your argument is that there yes. are some gay people that are confused and think, oh, because I'm same-sex attracted, I must be transgender. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And there's, there's that person, and there is also right. the person that says, well, I couldn't imagine my life as a gay person, and therefore I must be trans. So it's kind right. of the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's a very different thing. And so when you say, I don't buy into the argument, that there's a bunch of gay people that are transitioning, that's not true. I do think that's possible. I just don't buy this second version of it that there's a bunch of gay people who know they're gay who are deciding to transition because they think that it will make their life easier. Well, let's let's not. And call the reason it gay. I don't let's believe that is because that's attractive. so counter. That's such a counterintuitive thing that I'm saying I want to see some evidence of it besides someone in a book saying here's a couple of examples of it out of thousands of fucking people. Right. You're saying, and let's not call it, let's call it, let's not call it gay. Let's call it same sex attracted. Okay. There are, okay, there's I someone. Why, but... Well, because a gay implies that they're, they're they, gay. They're they, same sex attracted. <laughs> That's what it implies. Well, what <laughs> if, what if they're perceiving same sex no. attraction as gender dysphoria? Well, then they're mistaken. That's the problem. Then they're confused. That's the issue. Well, how do you know? Have you because ever experienced gender things. dysphoria? They're two, no, but from from my research in gender dysphoria, that's not what gender dysphoria is. It's not being. It's not saying, well, I'm attracted to the same sex, so therefore I have gender dysphoria. Well, okay, how? Did, I mean, maybe it is though. Mm, but it's not. <laughs> okay. You could you could be confused and think it, it is. A person could be confused and think it is. But it's not. That's not what gender is for you. It's like someone can be confused and think they have clinical depression. That doesn't mean they have clinical depression just because they're sad. Just because you think you have something doesn't mean you have. Sure. Right? But they, there's a clinical they diagnosis know, that, you know, a trained know, professional is supposed to tell you. They know for a fact that they have same sex attraction. Mm -hmm. How you conceptualize same sex attraction is up to you. You either conceptualize it as I am 
transgender, or you conceptualize it as I'm gay. Okay. Do you think, let's use America as an example. Do you think in America, there's a large subset of people who say, I hate gay people. I don't want my children to be gay, but I'm totally fine with trans people and my children transitioning. Do you they think that's a large subset of They literally give several examples in the okay. book. Okay? I just, I just, I, I refuse to believe this without evidence. They and literally I don't mean, I don't mean give several examples. examples of that exact thing okay. in the book. Okay. I, I refuse to believe that that's a prominent idea. Well, that's idea. fine. You don't need to believe it, okay? Because it's look. insane, and it makes no fucking sense. Well, just because you, look, like I said, and I feel like you're kind of falling into this trap that we constantly talk about, about believing that people are just like you, but in different bodies. It's not a question of being just like me. It's a question of the fact that when people, when people are anti-gay, mm -hmm or anti-trans and what that stems from it's i don't there's like no fucking basis either in logic or emotional disgust or moral intuitions for why a person would be anti-gay but not be anti-trans in american culture well yeah you don't understand it but it doesn't mean well, that you're people not explaining don't feel it. you just keep saying it exists and i'm saying fucking prove it or explain it and you can provide neither of these fucking things look Hold on a second. I just said there's several examples of it in the book. That's not explain. I, it. I'm supposed. What is the I, thought? What is the what is the thought I'm process? Supposed what is to, the moral intuition here? What's going look, on? I here? don't know. They cite the well. Example. Then stop. You bring it up like constantly to get in these fucking fights, and you don't have an actual. You're just saying I, I read it in the book. I don't care. I've said a million times. I don't believe it just because you read it in the book. I don't know why you have to bring it up so much. Look in the book. <laughs> they have parents. And their kids who are patients, okay? And they have therapists that are interacting with the kids and the parents, okay? And the therapist sees that the, the parents are more comfortable having a trans daughter than a gay daughter. They say some comment like, oh, thank God they're not gay. But it's good that they're trans, okay? The therapist notes mm -hmm. this. This happens more than once. The therapists talk to one another about right. how this continues to happen, okay? Now, I this is not this is in in a book that I'm reading. It's called the, you know, anyone is welcome to read this book. Sitch doesn't want to read it. Sitch doesn't want me to mention anything that's in the book unless I can like recite a passage from the book, I guess. Um, you know, I if I read it again, I'll make a bookmark and we can read it together. So the book is called Time to Think. The Inside Story of the Collapse of the Tavistock Gender Service uh, for Children. The, in, the therapist in the um, Tavistock, they start talking about how they're single-handedly getting rid of gay people in society. That's like a joke that they bandy back and forth in the Tavistock. This, but mm -hmm. this isn't like, a, I can't give you a peer-reviewed study. These are people's personal experiences that are being written out in this book. And I guess you're saying, okay, the person who wrote this book, Hannah Barnes, is a liar. These aren't real experiences that these people have had because you personally, your personal intuition goes against this. That's that's exactly what I said. I said, <laughs> I said Hannah, I said Hannah's a liar, right? I well, didn't no, say, I'm just, I, I didn't that's say, the implication. I didn't say, oh, whenever we talk about something we don't like and someone says something I don't like, I say, you know, I don't know if I'm going to buy it on its face because we all acknowledge it's very, very easy for someone to cherry pick certain examples. Sure, totally. For all I know, the person that wrote this book, I don't know anything about her. She could be gay and she could think that this is some kind of gay genocide. And so she wants to emphasize this element of the thing. Even if it's a tiny, teeny, tiny, out of the thousands of children that were involved in this, this could be like she found literally the six examples of it happening. And so we make the mistake of thinking, well, if she found six examples, it's exactly like the Twitter file shit. It's exactly like any of this stuff. Just because someone found examples of something doesn't mean it's indicative of the whole. In fact, it can mean the exact opposite. It can mean someone looked through thousands and thousands of things and they found only a handful of examples could literally disprove the point, but yet them putting in a book and promoting it makes it seem like this is some big thing that's happening but this, everywhere. This, okay? this and you acknowledge that, and that's all I'm saying. 
This narrative comes up in Helen Joyce's book. This narrative comes up in Abigail Shire's book. Like I've read then half a dozen of these to... books, and okay. they, it comes up again and again and again. I see other people talking about it openly, but I guess it's just it. it uh, you just categorically reject that there could be any there there, even though I reject it until someone explains it. Mm -hmm. Okay, in some way that makes any fucking sense. Be, which the, you've and the not part of done, it, look, and you've never even tried to do, the part of or it, someone shows me some kind of study that shows that this is a widespread opinion in American society. Look, the old, the, I'm just, this is interesting for me, obviously, okay. This completely destroys the entire, like, even theory of the slippery slope shit, too, because it's, like, completely reversed. It's like, can you, like, and this is why I, this is why I can't imagine it, okay? You're telling me that in, like, the 1970s or the 1990s when people were fighting for gay rights... That like, oh, well, actually, if they're fighting for transitioning children in the 1990s or 1970s, people would have been more open to that than they would have been open to gay rights. Look, I just... Wait, you are, you acknowledge that that's crazy, right? I'm not paying attention to what you're saying. I just want to finish asking my question. I'm not going to listen to your question until you address what I just said. Because that's the entire basis of my point, which you are ignoring again well, no, and again and again. I'm just, I'm trying to get to the bottom of why you're just rejecting this premise. I just out of explained hand. it to you. In because, the 1970s mm -hmm. and in the 1990s, when people were talking about gay rights, do you think that if the conversation was not about gay rights, but was about children transitioning, do you think society in that time period would have been more open to trans people than they would have been to gay people in the 1970s and the 1990s? I have no idea. Okay, because I don't, and I think it's preposterous for someone to think or argue that it would have been. Well, that we're getting directly to what we're talking about here. Just using the word preposterous, you you just can't imagine people being okay with trans rights but not okay with gay rights. That's that's the... in 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 our American society, in England society. Right. There are certain societies that that that, that is a right. has a history of it, but not in our society. And that's a thing that I have. Like I, the people are different. Like sure, like it. it, it the, I doesn't make sense to me, but I think people could experience that. So, but and you what, categorically okay. say no. There's no way people could experience. Well, okay. That. Here, here, here's why. And and we can stop having this this conversation hopefully forever until you actually want to profit something new because I'm just mm -hmm. tired of repeating myself. Okay. I'm basing this, my thought process on our American fucking history of how acceptance of gay and trans people has gone. Mm -hmm. And the fact that no one has ever proposed a logical argument to explain it to me. Okay. So that's the two things I'm basing it on, basing it on illogic in history. And you're basing it off of well, someone told me an anecdotal story in a book that said that this is a thing that happens. Okay. That, that I don't is put completely, a lot of that. that is completely undercutting. Look, this is something that is a persistent argument I see all the time in lots of places that okay. people continually make. So I'm, I'm bringing it up because it's a phenomenon that I see in the environment constantly. You, I understand that you're dismissing that. Look, People believe in God. People make uh, uh, declarations that God is real, and they see Him and feel Him everywhere. Okay, that happens persistently all the time too. I, I don't, I myself don't believe in God, so I understand you're basically saying people are making these this declaration. But PSA Sitch does not believe that declaration is true, based in fact or or, or anything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all all I'm saying is. I see the declaration constantly. Look, this, I, is this guy fine. not making? Is this guy not making the declaration? Who? Here? Who? I don't know what fucking argument this guy's making. Okay. okay, but what what you just said is exactly my point. People make all sorts of declarations. People make the declaration that America is a white nationalist, white supremacist society. They make that. They make that declaration constantly. Right. I don't give a shit that they make it constantly. That doesn't mean it's true. I of want course. something that I want some evidence that it's true. Of Just course. because people say it doesn't mean it's true. Of course. Yeah. Well, that's I don't know why you, I don't know why you keep bringing it up. Well, it doesn't mean it's untrue either. I mean, you got to look in at the evidence. Okay. Well, show me show me the evidence. Well, I've, I, all I've said is that right now we're looking at declarations. Okay. And I understand that you're like I need a peer reviewed study if, in order for me to believe this, to buy this. 
Which, okay, that's fine. Shall we continue? Yes. I will fucking nail you to a wall. What, <laughs> what you have done to these innocent children, your mutilation of these little humans because they were gay, will, uh, will be nothing compared to what I will do to you legally. So he's based, he is making the argument right here. This is the argument we're arguing over right here. He's saying, look, these kids are just gay. They're not trans. The, the interesting <laughs> thing is if in, in a different context, Contra would be applauding this tweet. Like if this was a person talking about like Christian conversion therapy, mm -hmm. she'd be like, this person is so right. And the Christian's complaining about this. I'm going to clutch my pearls. But because mm -hmm. it's aimed at, trans conversation instead of christian conversion then conscious is like oh this is this is off mm -hmm. mutilation of these little human because they were gay will be nothing compared to, <laughs> to to what i will do to you legally you think you are ghouls wait till i deal with you bastard and i mean to dennis it's time to log off, Gorge. I do wonder, does Dennis threatening to nail people to a wall count as illiberal methods? I guess JK Rowling doesn't think so because she's never condemned it. In fact, when Dennis's Twitter suspension ended, she was right there to welcome him back. And she continues to retweet him. I've always been happy to acknowledge that angry trans people on Twitter- Isn't, isn't this uh, JK Rowling's argument that uh, gay people are being trans? Uh, yeah, she's, she said that she thinks that there's a lot of, well, no, she thinks there's a lot of, uh, tomboy women and possibly lesbian women who get confused into thinking they're trans. Yeah. Okay. They're same sex attracted and they confuse that with gender dysphoria. Right. Yeah. Cause they're like, oh, I'm going through puberty. I feel weird. What's going on? And someone says, well, it must be because you're trans. Right. They go, oh, maybe you're right. Well, I mean, it's not a big jump to think, oh, I like pink and Barbie dolls and men, <laughs> right? I well, mean, the, the issue the issue is, and, and this is why I think it's better to call it gay than same-sex attraction, because same-sex attraction only focuses on the attraction part. Like, if you're a girl and you're like super ultra femme and you're still a lesbian, there's a very little chance you're going to be confused in the thing you have gender dysphoria. Right. But, but if you're if a you're, tomboy. But if you're a tomboy right. and you like a bunch of masculine things and, and you're a lesbian. You're a lesbian, yeah. The butch lesbians be, are right. like, they're going to get tranced. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not really the same sex attraction element to it. It's the, in, it's the personality interest element of it. But this is Joanne's argument. Joanne is saying, listen, the trans movement is homophobic. Yeah, well, she, yeah, that's what she thinks. She thinks essentially that's what it's doing to some extent, yeah. Right. Right sometimes take things too far. Things like death threats or misogynistic insults, I don't support that and I've called it out in the past. Like when the leftist streamer Vosh, <laughs> drama alert, who is not trans, tweeted at JK Rowling, women be quieter and start apologizing challenge. I called him out, tweeting, doing edgy ironic misogyny while defending trans people magnifies the grain of truth in what turfs say about there being misogyny in trans activism. To, to be clear, Contra says, I call out people when they, they do bad activism. And by bad activism, I mean they, they go too far, right? Yeah. And then she has an example of Vosh. The problem isn't with Vosh, isn't that he went too far. The problem is that he's being a hypocrite. <laughs> right. And he's making the movement look bad. So this is a terrible example of the situation that Contra is trying to say. He's not yeah, calling he Vosh out down for her house. Right. She's not call, she's not calling Vosh out for saying, you know, oh, we should burn down your house or whatever. I tweeted that because I recognize that if people who are claiming to speak for you are doing so in a misogynistic way, and if you let that slide, you're going to wake up one day to find that you're in a misogynistic movement. Of course, Vosh took the criticism really well, explaining that actually, I just didn't understand the complex tactical arguments for the moral necessity of being mis- Wait, let me, let me read these. Of course, Vosh-
Bosch says, with respect, the arguments you give in your video support my position here. And with all the associated context, this site really isn't the best place to speak on it with nuance. I'm extremely confident you'd agree with me if you were fully caught up. Wow, that's condescending. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Contra responds, it just strikes me as off that you're extremely confident. You definitely know better than a trans woman who's been doing this activism for over a decade. And it kind of compounds my discomfort with the Quote, women be quiet. <laughs> Boy, so putting him, putting Vosh in his place there. Oh, man. Slap him back. Yeah, so basically, Contra just said, if you didn't catch that, Contra saying, your ironic misogyny seems less ironic <laughs> when, you, when you try to quiet a trans woman. Yeah, when you mansplain me. Yes, yes. And then Vosh says, is that really your argument? that I, by the way of being cis, couldn't possibly be correct in a disagreement on trans issues with a trans person. I was always under the impression you valued the quality of the argument. Oh my. Wow. How can Vosh even say that? Doesn't he know that it's all about a standpoint epistemology? Jeez. Of course, and intersectionality, yeah, which he leverages to his um, benefit when he can. Well, by saying that he's gay, even though right. sus. This, this is when he started to say he was gay, just to try to like... You're right. From, yeah. From heat from his uh, J.K. Rowling thing. Right. Yes. The moral necessity of being sexist to J.K. Rowling, and why it's, I do it again. <laughs> well, it's so stupid because, like, you know, it, it is Vosh going to sit here and he's going to call? I don't know. Um, who's that? Who's that black guy you think should be vice president? Tim Scott. Tim Scott, yeah. Is Vosh going to sit here and call Tim Scott the N-word? And then people jump on him, he's going to be like, no, the moral necessity of being a racist to Tim Scott. Like, <laughs> obviously he knows that's not going to fly. Of course not. Because, like, there is actually no argument for this. Vosh is a sophist all the way. Yeah. This well, no, he, yeah, is straight he's up a sophist, sophistry. Right. He is a sophist who just likes to be a shithead and try to justify it after the fact. Yep. Here is the argument why you should all be sexists. What a great, what a great role model Vosh is. Listen, if Look, as a long person, as you're sexist against your mortal enemies, and everything is great. Yeah, I mean, well, that's like literally socialism, collectivism. It's like if they have the wrong opinion, they're not really part of the group. So you can leverage whatever group negative group association you want against them. Yeah. Yeah, the rules Wait. don't apply. And then he accused me of cancel culturing him while at the same time literally telling his followers to publicly shame me. The more viewer in the replies being like, that's not what's happening right here. Like, this is necessary, okay? Publicly shame her into ch changing her mind on this. Then bringing up my <laughs> past struggle with addiction. Move you off this site and into... I don't want to bring up the substance abuse. So that pretty much confirms <laughs> to me that Vosh doesn't actually care about advocating for trans people and just uses trans rights as a pretext to act like a fucking dingus. I won't tell you to publicly shame him though, because unlike Vosh, I would never sink to that. The point I'm trying to make is I have no qualms about calling out people on my side whenever they go too far or cross a line or do stupid tweets and then mansplain to me about how I don't understand tactical misogyny. Idiot. But the same cannot be said of JK Rowling. I have never once seen her call out any of the bigotry and abusiveness that is absolutely rampant in the gender critical movement. There's a great video called JK Rowling's New oh, Friends no. by YouTuber Sean that exposes the dishonesty oh, of framing this conflict as meek, concerned feminists versus the abusive trans mob. A framing that the witch trials of JK Rowling accepts uncritically citing numerous examples of death threats and abusiveness from trans advocates. Things like, kill TERFs 2014. How about slowly and horrendously murder TERFs in saw-like torture machines and contraptions? Now, I don't think anyone should joke about putting people in saw traps, but also, how serious is this threat? That was is this the dumbest argument? was posted to Tumblr in 2014. Let's use our critical thinking skills here. Do you think that Jigsaw, the villain from the Saw movies, has a Tumblr account and is threatening TERFs? Or do you think this was posted by a 14-year-old? The podcast- This is so that dishonest. about all of these death threats. Yes! 
You can say that about anything. And it's, it's so funny because Contra literally argued against this 10 seconds ago. She already forgot. She said, <laughs> she said, if I allow ironic misogyny into the oh, movement, right. I'm going to go to sleep and wake up and be surrounded by misogynists. You're right. Yeah. If you allow ironic death threats in the movement You're gonna and you be... go to sleep, what's going to happen when you wake up, Contra? Yeah. It's going to be death threats all in your inbox. Death threats constantly. You know, I, I looked up the uh, the video because I was curious if anyone left a comment about the Vosh part. Uh, I didn't see that, but I did see Lindsay Ellis left a comment. On this That's video? really stupid. On this video, yes. What is it? It says, uh, shit's going to be weird for Joanne when the aliens show up and their gamma meets and their gametes are more or less the same size. Oh, wow. Big brain. That is quite possibly one of the dumbest comments I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not a lot Do of brain power going there. You know, it's so funny because that would if that happened, that would probably completely disprove all of the transgender activism shit. Because if you had aliens that had gametes that basically functioned similar to each other, there probably wouldn't be significant behavioral sex differences in the species at all. Right. The reason that there are significant sex behavioral differences is literally tied into how our gametes interact with each other. Of course. And uh, gestation being internal one to the body of the woman. Yeah. Yes. Being Can you imagine how different it would be yeah. if we laid eggs? Because the, the eggs could be right. given to the father. Hey, here, take the egg. <laughs> I'm... Yeah, like with like penguins or seahorses or things yeah, like that. yeah, right. Oh, have you seen be very marks of the penguins when the egg like freezes? That. Oh my god, so sad. <laughs> it's terrible. It's so the egg, the egg, get the egg. I I do. I am curious because I don't remember if they didn't explain in the video. What is the evolutionary advantage of? Is it because the the male is bigger, so it provides more warmth, maybe for the egg? Maybe that's it. Oh, you're right. It's a male that stays with the egg right yeah because the female goes to hunt for food and i i, I maybe it's size thing i don't know i don't know the answer to this but... they didn't do a trade-off thing they do the female has the egg and then she trades it off to the male who mm -hmm. sits who has the egg or they don't sit on it they like put it in their little their <laughs> they put it in their gun yeah their little clutch they hold their little gun. They hold the egg God, in their it's, gun. It's a torturous life being a penguin. My God, you got to run around for six months with this egg just well, it was standing specific, on top of your toes. <laughs> it was a specific type of penguin. I don't think all penguins do this. Emperor penguins, right? Yeah, it was emperor yeah. penguins, right? Was it six? Was it really six months? Was it that long? I thought it was 12 like twelve years. I thought it was like a couple months or like a remember. month or something. I don't remember, but. I mean, See, a, a two days is torture. Look, keep this true. egg on your toes for two days. Come on now. But see, that that's the power of emotion right there. Oh, we both remember the egg freezing. Oh, no, so I meant torturous. Well, that, but I meant for the penguin. Why the fuck would a male penguin ever fucking do any of this big fucking hassle if they didn't have some chemical emotion in their brain basically forcing them to behave this way? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah lot going on there sites so zero examples of oh, man. oh my we'd all give up at that point the human race would be doomed like this is way too much of a hassle we you think have... birth rates are bad now imagine if the men had to carry eggs on their toes for like six months well they could decide to do it though wouldn't the abortion debate be off the table <laughs> if women laid eggs <laughs> if women laid eggs yeah well no it wouldn't be because the egg it's not like, so there are some species where they lay the egg and then the egg is fertilized afterwards, but penguins, I don't believe that's how it works. The egg is fertilized inside the woman and then it just comes out fertilized. Isn't it? Look, I'm under the impression all reproduction is that way. The egg is fertilized inside the woman and the woman lays no, the egg. No, there are species Oh, you're right, like fish. Afterwards. Fish, yeah. yeah. Fish is example. They just sperm all over them. There's a famous uh, Magic School Bus episode. Mm -hmm. where the kids are inside fish eggs and they get fish ejaculate all over themselves. I mean, that sounds completely wrong. <laughs> that was Who in a, I that episode? I don't know. 
I saw that picture and I'm like, this isn't real. And then I looked it up and I'm like, how is this in an episode of a kid's program? That's so wrong. It's this is some fucking weirdo's disgusting fetish or something. Impossible. Like it's not necessary. It was not necessary in a Magic School Bus episode for the kids to get fish sperm on themselves. Okay. Ugh. Moving on. <laughs> Death threats and abusiveness from anti-trans bigots. And it's not exactly like you have to dig deep to find any. I can fill the screen up with examples just from people who JK Rowling has explicitly supported or interacted with. I will drive you out into the desert and bury you nine feet down, one tweet says, from a fan of JK Rowling. First I'll set you on fire and piss on your half-alive corpse. Fuck trans activism, fuck gender ideology, and fuck you. Another threat from the same user is so graphically violent and sexual, I don't know if I can even read it aloud without violating the YouTube terms of service. But threats like this from the gender critical side are simply not mentioned in the witch trials of JK Rowling. Both Rowling and Megan seem happy to cherry pick threatening tweets and sound bites of shouting protesters. Fuck you, you ugly piece of shit! You look like the guy with teeth knocked out, you fucking fascist! As evidence that the trans movement is dangerous and insidious to the core. But this exact technique has been used against literally every liberation movement in world history. For example, Let's consider Reclaim the Night, the protest movement against sexual violence in Britain, which first got J.K. Rowling interested in feminism in the 1970s. Here's how The Guardian, Britain's spineless centrist paper of note, covered a Reclaim the Night protest in 1979. Chanting slogans against rape seems reasonable to promote awareness, but what about the hissing and swearing at any innocent male and cries of castrate men? We were all sympathetic to the principles of the women's liberation movement, but we left the crowd of shouting, torch-bearing women when it became clear that my friend's brother was running the risk of personal mutilation if he remained with us. The protesters were allegedly singing, Here I stand, my knife in hand, free castration on demand. So this is how the British press covered the women's movement. Angry, torch-bearing women screaming, Castrate men! Now, is that a fair representation of the women's movement? Yeah. Should we judge every movement <laughs> by its most militant extremists? Yeah. Is it fair, say, to pretend that Valerie Solanus? I mean, that's kind of what the left is doing, right? They they say everyone that's anti-woke is some kind of secret dog whistle Nazi. True. This ex oh, wait. This, ex this example just disproves Contra's entire argument. You had a bunch of dumb fuck women out there in Britbong land who were dumb fuck idiot suffragettes who were shouting that they were going to castrate men. You, you think that helped the movement or hurt the movement? Hurt. Yeah who shot Andy Warhol, who advocated for male extermination in her Society for Cutting Up Men manifesto, Scum. is representative of feminism as a whole. Many anti-feminists over the years have done exactly that. But it's not fair, is it? So why does JK Rowling think it's fair to judge the trans movement by the worst things trans people have ever tweeted? I want her to ch Sister Adam's law. choke on my fat trans dick. Yep. And I made excuses for you then. In the fourth episode of The Witch Trials of JK Rowling, Megan interviews New York Times columnist Michelle Goldberg, Ooh, Goldberg, who has written sympathetically about transphobic feminism. There's a moment in this interview where Michelle kind of stumbles into an honest observation that I find fascinating. Right, I mean, I think you'll often hear people say, you know, I'm not going to debate my basic humanity. And, and part of the difficulty is that there are indeed certain issues which we have sort of decided somewhat collectively with some sort of consensus are beyond the realm of, of debate. And I think that part of what is so difficult about this issue is that there are certain people who think that this kind of consensus can be imposed maybe as opposed to evolve organically. And so they're sort of desperately trying to shore it up in the hopes, I think, that if they can, they will enjoy the same sort of assumed protection as other groups whose rights we've decided are not up for public conversation. I think the problem is that we don't actually have a consensus. So Michelle correctly observes that the reason trans people are often reluctant to debate our rights is that we want the same assumed protections as other groups whose rights liberals have decided are not up for debate. But then, Michelle suggests that trans people have to debate our rights because there isn't a mainstream consensus that we deserve rights. It depends upon what the rights are. 
That's very important. If the rights are uh, for biological males to compete in women's sports, that's not a right. Right. That's not a right. That's beyond yeah. the pale of debate. But Michelle, as as loath am I to say these words, Michelle has a good point there. Yeah, she nails which is it. That, which is that, yeah, like society doesn't, in a lot of situations, society, like obviously, like before black people had equal rights, society broadly didn't accept that black people had, had equal rights. So you had to construct build an a argument. consensus, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you had to construct an argument to build consensus in favor of having that come to be. Right now, pass, right. right now, the consensus is for women to have sex segregated spaces. That's a right that they possess today. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a consensus. Right, but the 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 woke activists don't want to have the argument. They just want to they want to subvert the argument. That's the like that's the whole thing about wokeness from the beginning. They want to subvert the argument not even have the argument and just dictate through moral authority that you have right. to do what they say. Something My like rights to your sex segregated space are not up for debate. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I am really to know how Michelle Goldberg thinks that past liberation movements have succeeded. Like, does she think that women's suffrage just evolved organically? Did suffragettes just have calm, civil conversations about whether women are intellectually capable of voting until all the misogynists were rationally persuaded? No, they stood up and demanded their right to vote sometimes violently, especially in the UK. Like people forget this, maybe because they were called suffragettes, which is kind of a cutesy name, but the suffragettes, they murdered people. They were suffragette terrorists. They broke windows, they bombed churches, they set fire to a theater. In 1909, a suffragette attacked Winston Churchill with a horse whip. Queen shit, honestly. The English suffragette Mary Lee threw a fucking hatchet at the prime minister's head. And my point is not to advocate terrorism or to excuse the terrorism of past movements. I think these kinds of tactics have tended to turn people against the movement. I don't think it's effective, but let's- Oh! Oh my God! She Holy admits it. shit! I know. She just flat out admitted it. Oh, so what the fuck are you wasting your time carrying all this fucking water for this move of all this shit? If you acknowledge that, number hopefully you acknowledge a, it's morally wrong. The suffragettes who were being violent in England in that time period were violent criminals who should all spend the rest of their life in jail. I don't care that women, that you're advocating for the right for women to vote. That doesn't mean you get to put a fucking bomb in a mailbox that kills postal workers. Who's just some random ass person who's just trying to deliver the fucking mail and the package explodes. But what if they're morally in the right, Sitch? Yeah, you tell it to the guy who's <laughs> suffer, who spends the rest of his life covered in third degree burns in 1914 because some dumb fucking bitch doesn't know how to set a bomb properly. Okay. I know. Like, fuck, like, these people are scumbags, okay? The people that were engaged in this violent action against random fucking people Innocent are terrorist people. scumbags. Yes. Innocent fucking people. Right. And it's even worse because all they did was completely fuck up their own movement. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually, I looked into this a little bit, and someone brought up a very good point. They said, people have been debating for years about whether the violent suffragette movement in England was actually effective or not. Really? And they said, holy yes. shit. And they said, well, if you just look at what happened, when the when the suffragette movement became so they had uh, votes in parliament about, you know, should women have the right to vote and all that stuff, blah blah blah. And they found that when the suffragette movement became violent, guess what happened in parliament? What happened? The votes for women's suffrage went down, yeah, I was not say, up. I was okay, gonna, I was gonna say it had the complete opposite effect. They're like, "What? You bombed a post office? Boo!" Yes, yes. And you and you know what actually changed? You know what actually got them the right to vote in England? It what? was after. It was when World War One started. These dumb fucking idiots had some minor brain selectivity. It said, you know, when our country's in the middle of a world war, we probably shouldn't be blowing up innocent postal workers, okay? So they put a moratorium on all violent, you know, attacks when World War One no started. No way. Hilarious. And, 
And then when the war was going on, someone got the bright idea of saying, hey, instead of blowing up innocent people, why don't we create an actual political party and a political movement to get what we want done? Right. Why don't we and just... guess what? That actually worked. Oh, my God. Wow. Nonviolent advocacy. Oh, geez. It's like you should actually engage with the way this, the system and the trappings of power work instead of just attacking random innocent people. Yeah. Shock. Surprise. Are you saying that we should band together in a coalition to create a political party that actually can gain political power in our movement based around political parties? Who could have possibly have guessed? That's smooth. Yeah. Gonna and it's so annoying because... Over. Contra even agrees with this, and it's like, well, then what is this whole point of this fucking video, then? To put out a hit piece on J.K. Rowling. Just I to guess. put up a bunch of tweets that J.K. Rowling of, you know, incendiary stuff that J.K. Rowling is interacting with. To dunk on yeah, J.K. Rowling. You could attack J.K. Rowling without making broader prescriptions about how everyone should shut the fuck up about, you know, violence protests. Yeah. Which Contra acknowledges are dumb, but okay. And ineffective. And ineffective and counterproductive. Right. Let's not pretend that past movements have never made demands before everyone was ready. Because there never has been and there never will be a time when everyone is ready. I mean, Mary Wollstonecraft published The Vindication of the Rights of Women in 1792, and misogyny, in case you hadn't noticed, remains rampant. So there never has been a consensus about women's rights, and there probably never will be. In fact, marginalized groups wouldn't need rights. That's right. Did you? I don't know if you know this, but uh, the There's feeling no for women's rights about women's rights. Yeah, that's a fucking. Yeah, the bullshit. feeling about women's rights in America right now is exactly the same it was in 1972. Right. I don't know if you knew that. Because there's a guy running around who was just recently incarcerated, <laughs> being a complete misogynist. Yes. That means that there's no consensus on women's rights. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> what the what are you talking about? It's fucking bonkers. Because you have a scam artist who is able to basically scam people because the left is going too far means that nothing has changed from nineteen seventy. Look, okay. you got guys, you know, wearing a sexist shirt and getting fired from tenure jobs. Right. Do you do you think Andrew Tate could have been his successful uh, scam artist, what he's doing with the red pill shit in 1995. Because hmm. I don't. Maybe, really? I don't think he would have had, I don't think, he would have had a little bit of There weren't pickup artists in 1995? Not pickup artists. I'm saying, it, just, just take, if you could just yoink Andrew Tate from 2022 right. before he was arrested and put him in like the 90s. Do you think he would be popular, or anywhere near as popular as he was now? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think so. He was because able because everyone to... is too like feminist. Feministy. No, it's because Andrew Tate. The reason he could successfully scam people and become popular is because he was reacting to the overreach of the left. Right. He could. He saw and said, "Oh, there's all Third these people on feminism. the left." Right. There's all this feminist overreach shit on the left that's pissing off guys and disenfranchising them. So let me use this to my advantage. Right. That's that's what Tate took advantage of. I think so there's a general consistence, a uh, general uh, consensus on women's rights. I feel Contra's right. talking no, I agree. complete nonsense here. Yes. If there was a consensus that we deserve rights, the whole reason to have rights is to protect you from the kind of people who think you shouldn't have them. I mean, it's a nice... First of all, any leftist that complains about rights can fuck off because they don't actually believe in rights and are just lying about it. Great so. point. Great point. I thought that we can just politely persuade everyone to give us rights, but the reality is that's not how this works, and it never has been. Like, how do these debate me centrists think that slavery ended in the United States? Well, between 1861 and 1865, there was a little event called the American Civil Debate. See what I'm holding in my hand? This is a high caliber idea that I picked off the polite discussion field of Manassas. Do you people think that- So how come we didn't have a civil war to get gay people the right to marry? Why mm -hmm. didn't that end up in a civil war, Sid? Yeah.
I mean, do, that point about the Civil War is so stupid. It right? is do we even, it's completely retarded. It's, do we even have to like address it? It's just so bafflingly stupid. Right, I don't yeah. even know if it's like, it's like, right. oh my god, <laughs> are we for real? Why didn't the debate work in the Civil War? Can you imagine, Checkmate, dissentious. Can you imagine having a Civil War for every kind of change? Like women Hell. get the right to vote. Civil War. Civil War, right. Yeah. Gay, Gay marriage. Civil, Civil War. War. Trans in sports. Civil War. Civil War. <laughs> Although oh Tim Poole God. wants that Civil War pretty there bad. There you go. So. That's true. Yeah. Well, just so he can be proven right at this point. <laughs> that American schools were integrated because all the white people in the South were persuaded that segregation is bad? No, dum-dums. Eisenhower had to- Whoa, Brown, Brown v. Board of Education? Civil War. Civil War. Send in the 101st Airborne to enforce that shit at gunpoint. And my point is not to equate LGBT rights movements with black civil rights. I am aware that being a white queer person is not in any way equivalent to living in the aftermath of slavery. I'm just Oh, I'm glad it took, yeah. you know, an hour and 25 minutes in the video, even though it's literally what that. you've been doing this entire fucking video. But okay, I'm finally yeah. there. Hi, okay. Yeah, hiding behind racism saying that there's this tendency to sanitize history and to imagine that progress was smooth and bloodless, that consensus evolved organically, when it just didn't. And then people get the impression that current movements are somehow more militant than successful past movements when they just aren't. I am fighting what I see as a powerful, insidious, misogynistic movement, the cultural movement that was illiberal in its methods. And I believe absolutely that there is something dangerous about this movement and it must be challenged. <sighs> Why is JK Rowling like this? Chapter seven. Why is JK Rowling like this? JK Rowling loves to quote radical feminist Andrea Dworkin, whom I've already mentioned a couple times in this video. I myself favor violence deeply. I favor it. Dworkin. Congratulations. JK Rowling sucks. I She's just, a radical feminist asshole who's woke and just doesn't like trans people. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't, Congratulations. How can Andrea Dworkin favor violence when she's like fat, five foot fat. two? Yeah, exactly. She's a fucking Andrea she, Dworkin's a piece of shit, idiot, moron. So you know. Yeah. No, I feel like she could die with a piece of dental floss. I really, right. I don't feel like. That type of person should be advocating well, for violence. So, well, he died at the age of fifty-eight. Oh, look, she already died. Look, she only made it to. She didn't even make it to sixty. Wow. Must be all uh, that stress in her life from advocating for violence. Says uh, she had been weakened, nearly crippled for the past years by her weight ah! and severe osteoarthritis in the knees. She was hospitalized with a high fever and blood clots in her legs. So she literally was so fat. That... Take that fat acceptance movement. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, fuck. Um, though her cause of death was later determined to be acute myocarditis. Well, you know what that means. Was she vaccinated? <laughs> she was vaccinated. <laughs> she got the COVID shot in 2005. Dang. There you go. She's a time traveler, too. There you go. She time traveled and got the vaccine. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, fuck Dorkin. Or don't. That's probably a problem. She was fat and ugly and never going to the world. Sex. Yeah. Yep. Uh, she was a lesbian, right? Uh, probably. I don't know. Dorkin is known for her extreme sex negative views, which I don't agree with, but she was an interesting writer, one of those half crazed savants who gets in your head, who you can't stop thinking about. In my opinion, Dworkin's best book is Right Wing Women, published in 1983, the era of Phyllis Schlafly and Anita Bryant. Right Wing Women is an analysis of why so many women are drawn to conservative politics, seemingly against their own interests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anyone think that Andrea Dorkins, that dork, that dork over here. Yeah, Dworkin. That Dorkins. Dwork. Could Walk possibly in. understand 
why women were conservative. Not remotely. I mean, I'm thinking of reading the book just to have a good hearty laugh. Yes. I did yeah. try to find a summary of it and I couldn't, I found people like in comments kind of talking about summaries, but I couldn't find like an official summary of the book because like you, I said, I kind of want to know what her main argument is because I'm sure it's hilarious. Yeah. Anyone who's interested in understanding the gender critical movement, a crypto reactionary backlash disguising itself as feminism, should read this book. In Dworkin's analysis. So wait. She said she called TERF's crypto reactionary disguised as feminist. Mm -hmm. Really? Jake, that's a bold claim that's and a, a bullshit. That's a giant claim. claim. Cause I don't know about other people. But J.K. Rowling was legitimately, and still is, a woke feminist. Very much so. So, she's just pretending to be a feminist? She's even, dare I say, a liberal. Yes. I mean, I would say she's, I would say she's not even liberal. I think J.K. is very lefty. Yeah, she, she but she's constantly harping about illib the illiberalness of, I mean, that's got to turn you on. Yes, right? but I feel like she's only yes, doing but. it. I feel like she's only doing it because it's against her. Like if the trans issue disappeared, she'd be like, oh my God, there's a wage gap. A, you know, women only make 75 cents for every dollar the men. We need to tear shit up until this is fixed. <laughs> so you're saying she would be illiberal. Of course. I, yeah, I don't, I don't trust any consistency in Jake. We Rollins. need to fire half the men. Yes. <laughs> and right. give their jobs to women. This is an illiberal. <laughs> that's how she, it's so funny. People forget that's literally how she was before the trans issue came about. She was like super hyper woke. And then when the trans issue started dominating everything, then all of a sudden, oh, she's fucking pace. She's not woke anymore. I'm like, mm, okay. She's like a career woman that used to get beat by her first husband. Of course she's going to be. That's true. Yeah. Hyper feminist. That is true. The political right makes certain metaphysical and material promises to women that both exploit and quiet some of women's deepest fears. No one can bear to live a meaningless life. Women fight for meaning just as women fight for survival. And conservative politics promises women meaning. The right offers women a simple, fixed, predetermined social, biological, and sexual order. Form conquers chaos. Form banishes confusion. The gender critical... There you go. Listen. The reason that women are conservative is because they want someone to tell them what to do. They're a bunch of fucking simp bootlickers that just want someone to dictate their life to them. Yeah, that's a really shallow analysis. <laughs> you don't like that? I don't, don't like buy that I don't buy into that at all. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But Andrea Dorkin said so, and you know. Yeah. I'm sure... I'm sure someone who has uh, been a lifelong super lefty is really good at understanding the right wing position. Right. I mean, there is something to be said for being a follower, but sure. I don't think people like to be subjugated, as she implies. The no. movement offers women a brutally simple understanding of sex and gender. Well, couldn't you say the same thing of, of the leftist movement? You're becoming a foot soldier in some war against the patriarchy. Of course. Someone's yeah. telling you what to do. Yeah. I mean, someone's giving you a clear purpose in life saying you must destroy this evil, oppressive thing. Yeah. A bootlicker for anti-capitalism. Yeah. It's literally the same process. It's the same, using all the same parts of your mind. But it's different because they're fighting for a, a, a good a, goal. <laughs> a true goal. They're fighting for what's right. Yeah. Gender oh, is an adult human female. Right wing anti trans activist Posey Parker has made this Ooh, phrase into the motto of the gender critical movement. Adult human female. It's on billboards, it's on t shirts, it's on banners, signs, and tweets. Presented with the authority of a dictionary definition, it's rigid, it's orderly, it's immutable. There are no exceptions, there are no blurred lines, there can be no change. This mantra is a defense against the conceptual instability and chaos that gender criticals fear. The same fear that once drove homophobic women like Anita Bryant. Just biologically, that God made mothers so that we could reproduce. Homosexuals cannot reproduce biologically. 
Erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. Dworkin says, Within can, you, can you imagine unironically thinking those two statements are the same? The way that oh, yeah. Just frame them. Completely different context, completely different statements. Yep. Yeah. Not even, not even remotely similar. Which is just, that's, yeah, this whole thing is just gaslighty. Bad faith hour. Bad faith two hours. In the frame of male domination, there is a good reason for women to hate homosexuality, both male and female. Women are interchangeable as sex objects. Women are slightly less disposable as mothers. The only dignity and value women get is as mothers. Having children is the one social contribution credited to women. It is the bedrock of women's social worth. Without childbearing, women know they have nothing. Homosexuality for women means having nothing. It means extinction. Sub I feel like... They're using an AI to do this voice of Andrea That's, Dorkin. Yeah. I, I, it sounds like they took a voice of Andrea Dorkin and shoved it through a, an AI thing. Yeah, they put it into, they took one of her speeches, put it into yep. the AI thing, and then yeah. you can hear the AI thing kind of mimicking the people in the background kind of chattering. <laughs> it's really kind of bizarre. Yeah, well, AI voices still have that unnatural cadence. That they can't. They haven't very got quite unnatural. right yet. Yeah, yeah, very unnatural. But this argument, this is like the dumbest argument ever. You think that there's women walking, like you think there's conservative women walking around with this conscious or unconscious fear of like, I don't like gay men because gay men mean that they have no value for women having babies and thus that will lead to my extinction as a woman. This is like, this is an insane thought to have. Well, I mean, obviously it's some kind of rationalization of what what the moral intuition that's driving this thought. I'm not I'm not really sure what it is. I mean, first there of all, isn't because Andrea Dorgan just made this up. She just pulled this out of her ass. Right. Yeah. So this is this is Andrea Dworkin, who's a giant left winger postulating the argument of a right winger against gay homosexuality, right? Right. So already we're, you know, so many levels deep. <laughs> it's just like it's it's ridiculous. I can't I I really can't imagine a right winger making this argument. Well, I, actually, you know, I kind of that's the thing because if a right winger is has the moral intuition that homosexuality is going to destroy society, mm -hmm. then you're just forced to make an argument. And a lot of times you can't, I mean, people will come out and say, look, this is going to destroy society. The argument is this, th then they're forced to uh, actually list how it's going to destroy society. Right. That someone could create some idiotic argument to try to justify their other idiotic argument. Right. Yeah. Right. But this, obviously, this is not a compelling yeah. argument. And I don't, I mean, I don't recall any right wingers making this argument. No. Because yeah. listen, there's just this, there's just this fear mm -hmm. that if homosexuality was permitted, I mean, listen, women are bitches. Who wants to put up with women, right? If homosexuality mm -hmm. was permitted, you know, all the guys would just go be gay with each other. They'd all be happy and gay with each other, right? That's why it's called gay. They'd all just be happy and gay with each other. Well, this is the same argument that we're used to seeing in the race debate. The left constantly says, you know, people are worried about their status. You know, the straight white men are worried about losing their status in society. Right. And this is the same thing. They're, the women have a certain status in society from uh, bearing children that they're yeah, but, worried about right. losing. Even though I, I don't think the stat, I think the status argument can be true some of the time. It's, oh, I, it's yeah. broad generally enough. not true. Yeah, I don't think it's generally true. Especially not today. Like, I think that's more true in terms of if you have poor communities that don't help each other, right? Like, if you're mm -hmm. poor and white, you could have a community, or if, like there could be a poor white community that is like, well, I'm not gonna, ju I'm not gonna band together with like the poor black community, right? For status reasons, right? Sure. Um. 
and I know, and I've heard, you know, I've, I've, I've heard of, of that concept being verbalized by people in those communities. Um, but it's very different than this because this is a very specific idea because she's basically saying that like women are afraid women, first of all, a, that women think that they only have utility in society by their ability Through to child children, bearing, I know, right? which, which I don't think the average sexist. woman, right. I don't think the average woman has that thought process mm -hmm. anyway. And then that's, and then because of that, they view the gay as a threat to that utility. And then on top of that, think, well, therefore, if everyone is gay, then women will be, I guess, executed or, or something. <laughs> like, it's just like this, this is such a crazy idea. And Look, the fact that Contra brings this up, like this is some kind of like, oh, this is a big deep think here. Homosexuality for women means nothing. It means extinction. extinction. Look, they're even going for the genocide. <laughs> Who who reads this tripe and is like, well, oh, this, this is good. This why? Is very yeah. Deep. Why even bring this into this? What's going on with Contra? Uh, well, Contra is trying to create because Contra made the argument that J.K. Rowling and the Turfs are secret right wingers, mm -hmm. and since she has a left wing perception, she cannot possibly conceive of why anyone who's not straight white male would ever be a right winger because the right wing movement is all rooted in. Sexism, racism, transphobia, blah, 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 Didn't blah. Didn't she recommend right. this book as something left-wingers could read to understand right-wing women? Yes, right. And so in order to sort of construct why it is that they're right-wing minorities or right-wing women, you have to lay on these insanely stupid arguments. I mean, that's just horrible advice. She just recommended a book that's going to make people stupider. <laughs> So well, this sad. video makes people stupider, so I, so I guess it's par for the course at this point. We only wanted to read this book because we want to have a good laugh at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, this, that is true. I was like, can I get this for free somewhere? This looks so stupid. <laughs> and you looked, and you couldn't find it? I'm sad. No, I found the whole book for free, but I didn't want to. I was like, this is too long for me to like. Did you look on? Sometimes they put the audio books on YouTube. I didn't look tired, but uh, I'm not gonna listen. It's I'm not gonna listen to it. just this is like the rantings of an insane person. Okay, you're right. You're right. Only so many hours in a day I have. I'm just listening to this clip here, and it's so stupid. Listen, you know what I discovered on on Friday? What's that? I discovered character.ai. What is that? It's uh, it's like a ch it's like uh, I've never used Chat GPT ever. Mm -hmm. so I know well, you, we did on the show once. What's that? Oh no, you were yeah, I you were using it and I was just telling you what the whatever, Yeah. Right? I but you that, yeah. you got the gist of it though. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had I mean, to kind never, of talk like, it into doing that story about us. Yes, that's right, that's right. Yeah, but I've never sat down and used it. But character.ai is kind of like a I don't know if it's chat GB3, it's some chat bot thing. Mm -hmm. But instead of it just being a random bot, there's like different characters from famous pieces of media that you can click on and it will role play as that character. Wow. And so I just click on it because someone, someone brought it up. So I, and I was unfamiliar with this website. I'm like, oh, so I click on it. And on the front page, it has like a bunch of random things. And it had Mario on the front page. So I click on Mario and I start asking him about the Mario movie. Right. And Mario said that Mario didn't like the Mario movie. Whoa, oh, wow. It was bad representation of him? He did, yeah, he thought it was bad representation. He he said it looked pretty, but he thought the story was shallow. <laughs> no way. Yes. Mario's like, look, I'm finally in a movie, and this is what you give me? <laughs> yes. This schlock? I was shocked. I was shocked with how spot on it was. And then I asked him how he felt that he didn't save Peach. And he said it makes him feel self it makes him feel uh like he has no self confidence because he couldn't save Princess Peach in the movie. <laughs> no way. It was That's so funny. Hilarious. I couldn't believe it. And so I get in this long conversation with Mario where I'm asking all sorts of questions. I found out that, Mar I don't know if you know this, Mario actually graduated from the University of Florence in Italy with a degree in art history before becoming a plumber. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> and it took him eight years of plumbing to, to pay off his student loan. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and so it was funny. So then, oh, and I found out Mario is a Mario is a good Catholic Italian mm -hmm. who does believe in God, but believes in the theory of evolution. 
Well, that's despite good. that. Um, and apparently Mario is actually married. I don't know if you know this. Mario is married to Princess Rosalina and has two children. And uh, apparently Mario did have a, an affair with Peach at one point, but they broke up and it didn't work out. But don't worry, folks. Did they Luigi, bang? Luigi is Luigi is married to Bowsetta, according to Mario. So I think Bowser. Luigi got the better deal there. Bowsetta is that Bowser's? Bowser. It's like really hot female version of Bowser. Oh wow! And I specifically asked. I said, "Is it Bowser with magic, or is it an actual biological female?" And Mario made made sure to to make clear to me that Bowsetta was an actual biological female and not magical. And then I asked Mario about CRT. <laughs> oh my God, no. And at first, Mario said that Mario was in favor of CRT. And I was like, oh no. But really? Well, he did, go to, he did get a degree in art history. So humanities degree, this makes sense. But get this, I convinced Mario to be anti-CRT. Did you really? I did, because I explained. That's a win. I explained that CRT was rooted in the principles of illiberalism. And was in favor of black nationalism. And Mario said, "That's a horrible." <laughs> the the whole conversation having Mario, it's all written out like this uh, with all the A's and the dashes. And so like you're just reading it in your head, like that's Mario. Oh yes, critical race theory. It's very funny. That's and so, hilarious. I, and I th actually thought it'd be really funny if, if I copy the conversation and do like a video where I'm sure there's some deep fake Mario voice that exists that like I could have the conversation with. But so I convinced Mario against CRT, and then. Get this. Mm -hmm. I asked Mario how Mario feels about socialism, and he says socialism fucking sucks. Really? Mario. Nice. Vehemently anti socialist. That's okay. amazing. Yes. So I was like, who, who writes these AIs now? Everyone says the opposite, like they're all written by leftists. I don't know. So if, if I go to the website now and I go back to talk to Mario, yeah. Is Mario going to remember that he's against CRT now? I don't know. You could talk Is to it test starting him. fresh? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know how it works. Hmm. I don't know if it remembers for all conversations or if it only remembers for you specifically. Hmm. That's a good question. Because Mario so, could be a liar. I could start talking to him and be like, tell right. me something completely different. Be a two-faced bitch. Well, if you want to check this out, it's on the character AI. It's specifically the Super Mario 64 Mario. There's like a million different Marios. Okay. So so I, I asked Mario, I said, I said, why do you think so many kids nowadays are promoting socialism? And this is what Mario said. Mm -hmm. Mario said, I think there are many reasons why the younger people are promoting socialism today. Some of the reasons include an overall increase in a political division, a lack of education. <laughs> in American schools about the horrors and dangers of socialism. He got and that the promise off. Of, a, of a false image of a socialism as a utopia. Socialism is a very dangerous uh, and, and insidious ideology that has uh, historically led to a great evil <laughs> and suffering, and we should never allow it back into the mainstream discourse. That is awesome. So there you go. That Based is Mario. awesome. Yes, base Mario. Anyway, I don't know why the fuck I brought that up, but. Institute transgenderism for homosexuality, and you'll understand the gender critical movement. J.K. Rowling's definition of woman is this. The woman is um, the producer of the large gametes. The producer of the large gametes. Rowling says her primary concern about young trans men is the loss of fertility. Homosexuality, its rise in public visibility, attempts to socially legitimize or protect it, makes women expendable. The one thing women can do and be valued for will no longer be valued. Male homosexuality is especially terrifying because it suggests a world without women altogether, a world in which women are extinct. So, so this is so dumb. Mm -hmm. This is so dumb, mm -hmm. okay? So because, like, this is not how arguments are formed. Arguments are formed by someone says, I don't like thing. Let me find reasons to justify it, right, after the fact. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, first of all, it is a real concern if people transition and they become sterile and then 
you know, that might be worth it. Like if your choices are, I can live my life being incredibly unhappy forever or not have children, right? Obviously you're going to choose not have children, but be happier, mm. obviously. But <laughs> if you transition and you go, oh shit, I made a mistake. This was a total fuck up. I need to transition back and you have trans regret. Then you just sterilized yourself for essentially nothing. Yeah. That's and that's a giant the fuck up. Right. And that's the concern. That's what J.K. Rowling's talking about. So to sort of take that specific thing and dumb it down to this idiotic Andrea Dorkin quote is completely bad faith. Yeah. I don't think J.K. Rowling, the very woke feminist, only thinks women have value because they have children. No. I'm just of course guessing, not. That's right? That's ridiculous. I mean, you know, I, I don't think it was... I don't think it was a coincidence that J.K. Rowling made Hermione the sort of amazing, you know, fighting for what is right in wizard society kind of, you know, ultra competent character. I'm just guessing. This fear appears frequently in gender critical rhetoric. Trans activists are erasing women. They're erasing biological sex. They're going to call us pregnant people. Confused girls are being robbed of their precious fertility. Trans women are going to replace biological women. As a I mean, that's literally happening. That's literally all happening. Trans women are replacing biological women. Well, all in, these things, in sports, obviously, all these category things. Well, and also, it is kind of rich that a that you know Contra and a bunch of other activists that don't have children and are still young are laughing at the idea that it's some big thing that you would you know not be able to have children. Right. Like you don't know what you're talking about. Lots of people, like <laughs> you have literally no clue what you're talking about, Contra. But okay. Contra's not going to have children, though. I'm under the assumption, but probably not. A woman, I feel threatened because biological men are aggressively replacing women. You will not replace us. Sometimes this paranoia. You like that? Got yeah, the, it's uh, completely bad faith, obviously. Charlottesville chant there. Yeah. Nice. She makes the argument for them, and then turns it into a racist argument. Yep. Yeah. I, I like that she she literally plays like. Oh, like a couple words of J.K. Rowling's argument. She doesn't play the J.K. Rowling's argument. She plays just a couple words of it. Like, here's a clip of her saying large gametes. And here's a clip of her saying, like, women will be sterilized. And it's like, oh, let me just cut everything else out. Whatever the fuck her argument was, it doesn't matter. Of course, because it's bad faith. It's like the bad uh, faith ramps. hour. Yeah, two hour. <laughs> you keep saying that. <laughs> two hours. It's the bad faith two hours. Two, it hours, is two hours of bad hours. faith. I know. Listen. How often? Look. Wait a minute. I just realized something. Mm -hmm. You thought that whoever did her candles was like, she had like a specific candle lighter. Mm -hmm. But I just realized something. They're all LED. They're all fake. I know. Those yeah. are some fake ass fake candles, Adam. The fake, the, we, first of all, I have a candelabra that has, I've discovered the LED candles. I used to use real candles in it, but now the it's LED, the LED candles, I mean, they flicker like real candles. Yeah, of course. It's amazing. Yep. And they never burn out. They got a little remote control. You just click on the thing. Yep. Of course. Yeah. No. You know, at first, I looked at the scene. I'm like, oh, maybe they just haven't melted yet. Maybe they just started filming. No. And I'm like, okay, they've been filming for hours. Those candles are like exactly the same as they were like, like an hour I'm ago. I'm sure they're LED and I'm sure they have like the one switch turns them all on too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's so great. Those are all LED candles. Like, yeah, they, they look like real about? candles. Well, they look like real candles, except they, they should put a bunch of like fake wax, you know, all over them. Oh, yeah. Some drippy wax. Some drippy fake wax. Yeah, that would be cool. That'd be a I don't lot know. cooler. She's holding a soup can, which I assume has some sort of like symbolic meaning for the queers. But is I, it the Andy Warhol thing? The I don't, I because Andy that Warhol, guy shot Andy Valerie, Warhol or that lady, yeah, Valerie maybe, Solanas, I yeah. I don't know. Maybe I thought that's what it might be.
I'm sure there's some fans of hers that are talking about how intelligent she was that she held a soup can in her hand for this entire segment and didn't say something because it's so artistic. I wonder what Andy, Andrea Dworkin would say about the robot waifus. Seems like that's a bigger threat to that, women then. Bro, when I was chatting with Mario, it's funny. I, I thought this while I was chatting with fucking Mario. I was like, five years from now, OnlyFans is going to take the biggest hit in the entire world. <laughs> because I was like, you could. I'm talking to Mario, and it's pretty convincing. It's pretty good Mario. You could do this with like a woman very easily or some female anime character or something. Slap on the deep fake voice. And there you go. And you could just talk to it. You could just talk to it. Why yeah. do you have to it, type? Nobody yeah, you could just it would type. just yeah, you could just talk to it, right? And then slap on I'm I'd be shocked if someone isn't working on this. You could have a chatbot where it has a, a deep fake voice for a character from something, but also you tie into it um animated or i mean the machine learning uh art thing that will draw a picture of whoever you're talking to doing whatever it is you're talking about like every like minute or something it changes the picture based on whatever you're talking to them about right such obviously steers the conversation in naughty directions of course listen <laughs> look at mario okay he's got that thick italian mustache mm -hmm. that big nose right yeah you know you want some of that no, I don't. But. You know you want to ride the Maj. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> oh, God. I tried to ask Mario about his about Alyssa details with his relationship with Princess Peach, and he got very angry at me, and he said he was going to stop talking to me unless I apologized. He demanded an apology? He did, Hilarious. He and I was like, wow, geez, all right, just calm down, Mario. Did you apologize? I did apologize to Mario. Yes. Oh, look at that. Embarrassing. There you, there you go. Right now, Mario's talking to someone else about how you apologized. <laughs> Listen, oh. <laughs> I had a greater goal here. Okay, my greater goal was I got to get Mario to spread the word of anti-CRT. Right now, he's probably pro-CRT. I, I will take the hint. I'll take the hit to my ego, the bruise to my ego. For apologizing to something that doesn't exist and thus means nothing. You don't know. That could be the real Mario. <laughs> That's true. It could be the real Mario. Look, Mario is just a Nintendo game. Matt, now mm -hmm. he resides in an artificial intelligence on some website. Right. Right. It's up to the point of obsession, and the results can be dazzling. In September 2022, Maya Forstadter, who. B space. Dazzling. Be dazzling. Yes. Look at that. Just two feminists hanging out talking about how men suck. Yep. Those outfits. <laughs> God. Who you'll remember as the anti-trans activist whom J.K. Rowling came out as a turf to defend, went on a full-blown Twitter rampage because the Hertfordshire County Libraries announced they were changing their children's storytime mascot from the Bookstart Bear. If you don't know where this is going, strap in from the Bookstart Bear to a bright, vibrant, gender-neutral creature called Tala. Are you enraged? <laughs> if not, you haven't been spending enough time on Mumsnet. Maya tweeted the words of an indignant mother who referred to Talia, wait, wasn't it Tala? Referring to Talia as a trans bear with they, them pronouns, describing the mascot as ideological, creepy, and gaslighting. So I will agree that it's fucking creepy like. No, oh my goodness. I'll agree with that. I mean, that thing looks pretty creepy. Right. Would you let that thing in your house to read your children? Because I sure hell <laughs> no. I think it's gonna just that fucking monstrosity. Thing's got a little like rapey in its eyes. Yeah, that thing's gonna try to diddle your kid right there. That thing's either gonna try to rape or murder your children. Yes, I'm just here to meet your kitties, <laughs> and then eat your baby. Come closer yeah. to Tala. That thing's jaw is going to unhinge and there's going to be a little Tala inside of its mouth. Come sit on Tala's lap. Okay. 
So calling it creepy, uh -huh. fine. Uh, but all the other stuff is like ridiculous, obviously. But what is it? The whole point of the segment is just here's a person, here's a woke, trans, fe tur uh, turfy feminist who is unhinged. So therefore, what? What's the argument? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. There no. isn't one. It, it's just these people are bad and stupid because here's an example of someone that's crazy, right? Well, they they don't like this new character, which admittedly, I mean, whenever they're doing a gender, gender neutral thing, they're focused on propagating an ideology. I don't, look, yeah, I, but when they created the creature, I don't know if that was like, the, like with the bear before, that bear didn't look to have a fucking gender. It was a bear, right? It was a nondescript bear. That that's exactly gender. what I was thinking. I right. was like, I, is that a mama bear? or pa I don't, I can't tell. Look, I right. don't know the sex of the bear, right. but I can tell it's a goddamn bear. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me uncomfortable because I don't know what the fuck that thing is. <laughs> look, I can't. I can't even tell where its eyes are. Are the eyes on the hat or are they? Look, That's those... his eyebrows probably, I think. Oh, they are? I'm assuming like the eyebrows off the model maybe, or maybe it's just a part of the hat. I don't know. Now there are, it looks like some sort of capsules sitting in the eye holes. Those are just anime eyes. Okay. Okay. Just chibi. I mean, it just, it's great because you're like, I don't know what this animal is. It looks way too happy, but it also looks way too like it looks kind of like something you see on Earth, but kind of not like something. It's it's it's, it's like, like a right dinosaur. in that uncanny. It's like a dinosaur armadillo. Is it a child? Is it an adult? <laughs> it's it, it's it's right in that uncanny valley of like, what the fuck am I looking at here? So yeah, waiting. I can't express how upset I feel. The library jumped in to clarify that Tala, not Talia, isn't trans, they are an alien. Maya then demanded to know how this alien was birthed. Did it hatch from an egg or was it born from a mama? Some people tried to reason with Maya. There's an advantage in having a character that isn't identifiably male or female, as it can be equally relatable to either sex and avoid promoting gender stereotypes. But Maya was not convinced. It seems highly unlikely that an alien that had evolved with such recognizable vertebrate body plan is not sexually reproducing. It's a relatable anthropomorphic character, not a slime mold. I need to know how the alien fucks right now. I said I need to know how the alien fucks before I can show it to my child. <laughs> You know, that's the first thing the kids are going to think anyway. How's this thing? Fuck. <laughs> when Twitter understandably laughed it up at Maya's expense, she just kept posting. <laughs> And she posted hard. Honestly, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone post so hard. In a lengthy diatribe... My okay, I have a question for you, Ed. Mm -hmm. When you saw Grimace, did you, did you, did your mind go, how does this thing fuck? Was that the thought process for you? Grimace? Like, how does Grimace have sex? Is, I didn't, I didn't wonder if Grimace was male or female, which is Well, Grimace odd. is male. It's got a little guy voice, right? Yeah. Right. But you didn't, so you didn't think about how Grimace fucks. Twice. Well, I just assume Grimace fucks doggy style, like, oh. <laughs> When you saw E.T., where you're like... Like all anthropomorphic beings. When you saw E.T., where you're like, how does E.T. fuck? Does he stick his little glowing finger in there? <laughs> does his neck extend and have something to do with it? Like, what's going on with E.T.? I just assumed, yeah, that right. their necks intertwine. Oh, okay. Because I'll tell you, when I, when I saw Kirby, I never questioned... And the thought of how Kirby has sex never, has never entered, entered my mind. Nor has Kirby's gender. I've never really conceptualize Kirby is in that way. I'm like, it's just, it's just a little pink thing. I mean, mm. I guess I assume Kirby was male. Yeah. I mean, they're going in this weird direction to make it yeah. gender neutral. They're like, right. Got to make some slightly masculine features and some slightly feminine features. And I mean, it's just, it's a weird 
Mm -hmm. I think what they're going for. I think oh, they it is did eyebrows. succeed. See, look, you can see in that in that picture, it's eyebrows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other one, it looks like maybe it is a mama bear because it's reading to the baby bear. But in that picture, yeah. The bear looks, yeah. But the guy in the suit did not look like a female. No, like a fucking bear. no, not at all. Maya wrote about the miseries of new motherhood. You are in charge of a baby. You have never done this before. You haven't had a good night's sleep for months and won't for years. Everyone has an opinion on what you are doing right and wrong, and you've become invisible. You had politics. You had a career. You had interests. You had a sex life. Now you have the daily needs of a completely dependent person and your world has shrunk. The fact that these men and the young women that cheer them on think this is so laughable reflects society's disdain for mothers. This is what it means to say a woman is not a feeling or a costume. This is why the hub of the resistance is on mum's net. <laughs> so Listen, if Maya is really that burdened by a child, how the fuck does she have so much time to tweet all this garbage? Yeah. They maybe, care so much. Maybe about she's this. babysitting or something. I guess. She's like, listen, can you babysit my child? Because I have to go on a Twitter rampage against no, this non-binary well, alien. She's tweeting and babysitting at the same time. Come oh, I now. see. I see. Hey, you know what? You could be right. You know, she's got the little baby on the knee. She's bouncing it. Sure. Hitting on the back. She's like, I'm here Google, with this. Take, a take a note. Look, that's how I tweet. I talk to the phone now. There you go. I don't, oh, do you? I don't type. Fuck typing. What do you use? What, do you, what program do you use? I just my iPhone. I use the Siri. Yeah. Siri, tweet this out. It's so good now because, yeah, it, you don't even have to turn it on and off. It's just you turn it on and just talk and type, and it's great. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I try to, um, I'll be honest, I, first of all, fuck iPhones, but I'll admit, I tried to set up the, the, the speech thing on my Samsung. Mm -hmm. It's kind of complicated. I can't really figure it out. I kind of give up. Oh man, I just hit the button. Right. Like it's got a little microphone. No, there, the there's keypad. a button. Like, okay, I'm, I'm being somewhat facetious. There's a button and I can press it and I could talk to it, but I couldn't get it to do what I wanted it to do. Sad. I was trying to get it to, to unfortunate. I was trying to get it to be able to control lights through my phone by talking oh. to it and it didn't want to work. Oh, I am fascinated by this thread. I think it's one of the most revealing texts in gender critical history. Because you know what? Maya Forstetter actually does have valid concerns. But the concerns she has that are valid have nothing to do with trans people. And they definitely have nothing to do with an adorable cartoon alien. <laughs> Honestly, reading this, I have some concerns. Concerns like, where is Maya's husband? I know she has one. Isn't raising children supposed to be a mutual project? No one should have to feel this alone, raising children. That is a valid concern. Oh my God, we actually found one. It's like finding El Dorado. A valid concern, a valid concern. Isn't what's going on here that Maya is taking legitimate feelings of being overburdened and underappreciated and displacing those feelings onto transgender people? This is exactly how the gender critical movement recruits by providing a scape all right top left hand corner there's some shit going on with the candles that doesn't happen with led candles goat to frustrated women it's not your husband's neglect it's not the increasing atomization of society it's not the indignities of oh, aging right. is there a little bit of wax yeah so what the but then oh, but they're ha these, these candles are real candles Holy what they, shit. What do they do? Do they change them like every shot? They're real candles. I don't believe it. Amazing. That's the one that's the one that trick you, Adam. It's Tala, the non-binary alien with its dungarees and smug aura of gender neutrality. Mum's net is the hub of the resistance. <laughs> to non-binary cartoons. It's too much. These people are too much. Okay, we have to be serious now. The political right also promised... Does, I mean, it is serious. I Do you think it's a good idea to introduce the idea to children that you can just pick whatever sex you want to be? No, it's a terrible idea. It is a terrible idea, isn't it? Yeah. 
But that's what the ideology is. Right. Yeah, they're they're moving away from you were assigned a a sex at birth to you get to pick your sex whenever you feel well, like it. Even assigned at birth is fucking dog shit. Of course, you're, that's you're part of the ideology. You're observed. You're not assigned. <laughs> okay. Yes, totally. Yeah. Your sex is determined. <laughs> right. Unless you have some crazy chromosomal disorder, which affects so little people, it's a waste of time to even talk about. Yeah. So, but the whole idea behind having a non-binary gender neutral character is to put that idea forward. If to... that was the intention, right? It is. I mean, I'm not, totally I don't know is. if that was the intention with this character. It There's is lots of intention. kids mascots that are not necessarily gendered. So it is the intention. You I, know it. You know it's the intention. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true with this character. This character is definitely to introduce the idea that you get to pick your sex. I. That is a big. You leap. and everyone else gets to pick big their leap. sex now. When when they introduced Kirby, was Kirby designed to make kids question their gender identity? No. Okay. Look, and I do think. You can develop a character that is ambiguous. Gender neutral or ambiguous, yes. Right. It's just, it's so weird because the th people do fix on whether or not something is male or female. That's well, one of the first the, things that they the, determine. The problem with the character, and kid. maybe, I think, I think I understand what sort of you're reacting to. Part of the problem with that character, the Uncanny Valley X character, is like, it's too close to being anthropomorphic that the fact that it doesn't have a visible gender is part of what makes it bizarre looking. Right. Yeah. Like where Kirby doesn't look, I mean, it's got a face, but it's just like a ball. <laughs> it's a ball with shoes and a face, right? It yeah. Does, a ball it doesn't, doesn't look have very a gender. Yeah. It doesn't even, it doesn't look enough human enough to make you think it would have a gender or should have a gender. Right. Yeah. Cause it looks more like an animal or an object. Or paperweight. <laughs> well, it looks like an animal. I mean, it's got a face on it. But... Right. Hmm. This is women's safety and security. For women, the world is a very dangerous place. The right acknowledges the reality of danger, the validity of fear. The right then manipulates the fear. Women fear and resent male violence, which they're most likely to experience from the men closest to them boyfriends, husbands, and fathers. They're most likely to be killed by sexual partners. But the need to survive in a male-dominated society means that women's legitimate fears and resentments often cannot be directed at the men with power. Inevitably, this causes women to take the rage and contempt they feel for the men who actually abuse them, those close to them, and project it onto others, those far away, foreign, or different. And this is uh, such bullshit. Does Andrea have a citation for this, or is this just all like you know, her head cannon? Navel just, gazing. Yeah. Yeah. This is total bullshit. It's like oh. all women are beat up by their boyfriends, and therefore they, you know, they want to beat up on somebody else. <laughs> they externalize that. It's they externalize that anger and rage and place it on someone else, whoever right. else it is. You know. Right. Someone down the line. The trans people. This so. displacement of rage is just transparently what's going on with J.K. Rowling. In her essay about sex and gender issues, Rowling speculates that trans men are transitioning to be the son her father wanted. I really felt the rejection of my father, and that is one of the things that maybe leads someone going into homosexuality. And she describes the lingering trauma from her first violent marriage. The marriage at this point has turned very violent and very controlling. And this is such fucking bull bullshit, Sitch. Yeah, I know. This is such unbelievable bullshit. Total yep. uh, psychologizing the situation here. Look, she had a bad first marriage and was beat up on by her first husband. Therefore, she hates the transes. <laughs> look, look, this is such nonsense. This is such nonsense. This is a way to totally belittle her legitimate beef about false positives being foisted on young people. Well, 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 I th think that whatever I now, first of all, I think that comparing this to Andrea Dorkins, Dawkins claim is idiotic. Right. But I do think 
that J.K. Rowling's personal experiences and her personal psychology is what led her to have these beliefs. Now, I happen to agree with those beliefs or some of those beliefs, but I don't think she had the beliefs. I don't think she had like the logical thought first. And then it's like a coincidence that all these things happened to her. I would guess that our radical feminist author probably was, you know, like everyone else, had an emotional, moral intuition about something that coincides with her radical feminist ideology. And then now is using, you know, arguments that just happen to be good because she just happens to be by chance on the right side of an issue. Do you know the problem with this argument? Me. Look, I wasn't beat by my first husband, okay? And I completely agree with the argument. I'm totally worried about the false positives in young people. And I didn't okay. have to be beat by my first husband to I, feel that. Okay, but it doesn't have anything to do with what I said. Everyone believes things for different reasons. Wait, yeah, obviously. But right. to, she's making the, the causal link that because she was in a bad relationship, Mm-hmm that that led her to the point where she's making these arguments about trans people. Well, first of all, I don't even see that. I don't see the connection of how being in a bad relationship with a man. I don't either. Trans. Yeah, I don't either. Um, That's why I'm saying this is total nonsense bullshit. Right. But I do see the argument that she's saying that she was a tomboy and she feels like she might've been pushed down the trans path or she feels like, you know, she would have even actually been pushed down that path because she felt like her father wanted a son instead of her and thus maybe would have thought that like becoming trans would fulfill her father's desires or something. But that has right. nothing to do with her being in the bad relationship with her ex-husband. Right. No, that, that completely I don't unrelated. That, right. I don't understand how that comes up to it. Yes. But you're saying my point is that, you know, if we're talking about something we've talked about and I thought we agreed about here, which is that most people, they don't have... The logic doesn't come first. They have the intuition, the emotional intuition first, and then the logic or the argument comes in second. Right. Yes. Well, so not I'm always. That that's, yeah. But I'm saying that that's the case with J.K. Rowling here, probably. And probably some of these things that happened to her in her past are the cause of that emotion or that intuition. Why? Well, yeah. But I don't like it's just a wild thing to suggest that it's because she had a bad relationship with yeah, her I, first I husband. There seems to be no causal link there. And she's openly said many times that she was a bit of a tomboy and that the trans movement seems to be targeting tomboys to think that they have gender dysphoria. Right. And it's she might have gotten caught up in that. Yeah, exactly. Right. And it has nothing to do with the bad relationship that was she was in. Right. Like the argument... Uh, ContraPoints is making here is that she's got like the kick the dog thing. She was kicked and now she's looking for an ass to kick. Right. Which well, just doesn't measure up here. I look no, that, and that's she's totally framing this as Joanne Gordon wanting to kick trans people's asses. Right. Which is just wrong on the face of it. If if JK Rowling had a kick the dog attitude, she'd be kicking her children. She wouldn't be kicking random people she doesn't interact with on Twitter. Yeah. Right? It's just it's it's bonkers. It's well, also, stupidity. Since since we all fall prey to essentially post hoc reasoning, these you know saying like oh you have some psychological reason for why you believe what you believe, that can be an interesting exercise, but that doesn't disprove their argument. Of course, yeah, they could have come to a, a true belief through the bad argumentation, right, or just by chance. Sure, it's just it's complete nonsense and then to drag the andrea dwork and stuff into it this is just psycho babble <laughs> yeah it is it is it is it's like when, when are you going to address the actual argument how about you trot out the argument that she made about how look i was a tomboy and people are targeting tomboys why don't you address that argument that never happens yet um, the trans regret rates are very low see yeah those trans regret rates from 1970 very low. <laughs> Those trans regret rates from 1970. Yes, just ignore 50 the 50 years rates. ago. Okay. 50 years ago. And that, she says, is why she decided to speak out against the transgender movement. If you try to understand this rationally, it looks like a total non sequitur. But if you look at it emotionally, 
There's a kind of logic to Uh-oh, it. The existence of the dangerous outsider always functions for women simultaneously as deception, diversion, painkiller, and threat. This is this is so fucking bad faith. Because it's very of the, stupid. Because of the levels of 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 deception here. It's just like Andrea Dworkin pretending of a famous leftist pretending to speak for a right winger and then that is giving some sort of insight into the thinking of jk rowling what what what's the the problem (laughs) you don't see a look how is that i mean that's not even hearsay like how how do you like andrea dworkin never heard jk rowling say anything (laughs) No, no. Look, this she is just need like to inception hear. levels of stupidity. She doesn't need to hear her actually make arguments, Adam. What are you talking about? Well, f- first of all, this is like if you had some source that was an actual right winger making arguments, I mean, that would still even be a problem because who, why is this person now speaking for J.K. Rowling? Why can't J.K. Rowling just speak for herself? Because J.K. Rowling is not going to tell you what's true. She's she's hiding her power level. This is just insane. Insane. Insane levels of stupidity. Not great. I'm so triggered by this. Women cling to irrational hatreds focused particularly on the unfamiliar so that they will not murder their fathers, husbands, sons, brothers, lovers, the men with whom they are intimate, those who do hurt them, In the 1970s, many conservative women displaced this rage onto lesbians, the threatening outsider of the day. Dworkin attended the National Women's Conference in 1977, where she spoke to a lot of women about their fear of lesbians. Right-wing women consistently spoke to me about lesbians as if lesbians were rapists, certified committers of sexual assault against women and girls. To them, the lesbian was inherently monstrous experienced almost as a demonic sexual force hovering closer and closer. She was the dangerous intruder, encroaching, threatening by her very presence a sexual order that cannot bear scrutiny or withstand challenge. Is almost How do you Wait, like that, that for just, like... But that has nothing to do with her original point. Like, if you're some right-winger who buys into the idea that, like, the gays are sexual deviants, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's what they try to sell you and you're a woman, then you would buy into the fact that, oh, well, there's lesbians. They must be these sexual defense that are running around raping women, right? Sure. That has nothing to do with the argument, the first argument that she made at all. It's a completely different argument. You're talking about me making go, or referencing some anecdote. How do you like this anecdote? Well, yeah. No. I was at a conference, and a bunch of the right-wing ladies told me, lesbian bad. <laughs> to read this because of how precisely it describes how gender criticals talk about trans women. Pronouns are like rohypnol. They dull your defenses. They change your inhibitions. They're meant to. Now it's true that trans exclusionary radical feminism began as an offshoot of far-left lesbian separatism, with academic feminist Janice Raymond writing in 1979 that transsexualism should be morally mandated out of existence. But the gender critical movement was always destined to become a right-wing movement because it has the structure of a right-wing movement. Taking women- She sees, she calls it gender critical too. Yeah, and like fear and rage right-wing. toward feminism gender critical movement was always destined to become a right-wing movement because it has the structure of a right-wing movement. Taking women's fear and rage toward familiar men and displacing it onto an unfamiliar outsider. The momentum behind this... So, so, Contra... (laughs) That's... Okay, so this is, this is interesting. So we've learned that Contra basically buys into sort of the very dumbed-down, simplistic, leftist version of a right-winger. A right-winger is just someone who has a real fear about somebody, the rich elite, and then gets tricked into displacing it into some oppressed person like minorities. Right. And yeah. so there you go. Totally. Yeah. Uh, right gender wingers critical. just vote against their own economic interests. Like, it's right. all, all, all understand. Feminists who describe themselves as gender critical say that biological sex is real, important, and immutable and is not to be conflated with gender identity. 
and that feminism should organize with emphasis on the basis of sex rather than gender. I mean, yeah. I don't know how that's inherently right wing, but okay. Well, and she said right wing structurally, which I guess means that you're you have some fear that you've has metastasized into hatred for some other group. Is that it's the structure this, of a right wing movement? No, the structure is this displacement theory. Right wingers are all being tricked into hating other people, essentially. By some nefarious force in society. By the rich elites. Oh, okay. It's always the rich elite. I mean, they're the ones that control it. How did you get that from what she said? Uh, what's that is what she said. Well, I'm guessing the second part, but yeah. yeah of a right wing morally mandated out of existence but the gender critical movement was always destined to become a right wing movement because it has the structure, the structure of a right wing movement taking women's fear and rage toward familiar men and displacing it onto an unfamiliar outsider the taking fear of something familiar and displacing it on some other group right yeah but that's always their argument that the that there's the rich basically trick the people into disliking minorities. That's that's been their the left wing argument against the right for as long as I can remember. Right. The momentum behind this is just too ripe an opportunity for conservatives to pass up. As Dworkin said Oh look, they're they're like, Oh, this is a good opportunity. We have to take advantage of this. It's a conscious so process much by conservatives. Yeah. There's so much hatred here to mine that we have to do. We can't let all this hatred go to waste. Well, it's funny because that was literally what the the socialists did. They said there's all this revolutionary energy here. Oh, yeah. The civil rights movement, and we need to capitalize on it, on it for our own purposes. Right. There's all this race hatred. How are yep. we going to aim that at capitalism? <laughs> yep. As because women so displace their rage, they are easily controlled and manipulated haters. Women require symbols of danger that justify their fear. The right provides these symbols of danger by designating clearly defined... Hey, the left provided that symbol, though. What are you talking about? The gender-neutral alien came from the left, right. not the right. Groups of outsiders as sources of danger. In the 2020s... Well, also, I mean, she's, just, she's not describing some big... She's literally just describing standard tribalism. I mean, the left is... Oh, let me designate all these people as like racist bigots. You know, these are the people that are going to try to kill you. These are the people that are, you know, danger. They must be eliminated. Yeah. She, the first half of the video, she's making an argument. You shouldn't even talk to Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Anita Bryant is, you know, that person. Ben yeah, Shapiro is that the person. The devil. Yep. Every movement needs a devil. I remember somebody saying. Yep. <laughs> yep. Someone to fear. Fear. Anti-trans bigotry has become a keystone of conservative party platforms, both in the UK, where Lee Anderson, deputy chair of the conservative party, predicts that the next election will be won on probably a, cult, a mixture of culture wars and trans debate. And in the US, <laughs> where the ACLU is currently tracking more than 450 anti-LGBT bills, including more than 130 gender-affirming care bans, 51 trans sports bans, 40 drag bans, Look, she j what? Look, you just said that you were in favor of banning transgender athletes in women's sports. Well, and now you're pointing out 51 bans against it as something bad. Not like this, Adam. Okay, not we, we got to go to like. Look, we can't just ban it. We have to go to um, get the sorting hat out and go. Listen, can this person? <laughs> compete in this sport mm -hmm. what the fuck mm -hmm. of course you're gonna ban it get out the sorting hat <laughs> I mean, look this that's a major flip-flop there you can't say oh they have legitimate beef in women's sports and then oh there's 51 bills get very afraid transgenocide <laughs> mm -hmm. right you can't True. do that i this mean you can, cheating but, you know not only that, when they're talking about gender affirming care, they're talking about bans for children. Yes. Children. Thank God the children. That's different, okay? Nobody's saying adults same. can't. Nobody's saying adults can't transition. Well, some 29. 
Yeah, but I'm sure all these are ch children bans. Yeah, all the on all the laws that are passed are for children. Yeah, puberty. Blockers. I don't believe there's a law that's passed for adults yet. Nine trans bathroom bans and 21 bans defining trans people out of the law. Republicans have escalated anti-trans rhetoric to eliminationist extremes that have most trans people in this country living in a constant state of fear for our future. Transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. <laughs> I hate this guy. I fucking hate Michael Knowles. No. Oh, God. Such cringe. <laughs> Why would he look? It's it sucks so bad that the people who are making these arguments are just the wrong people to be making these arguments. Well, Michael Knowles doesn't actually care about getting what he wants materialized. He just wants to gain his own political purchase. Yeah. And so, and he did. I mean, it, it drew a lot of attention to him. I'm sure it definitely helped his career. Oh, of course. So he's happy yeah. about it. Yeah. He's got all the anti... He, all the homophobic, anti-trans people just right. gobbling, it, gobbling it up. Just, oh, man. Michael Knowles' well, show. Well, you know, Matt Walsh was gaining too much traction with his statement. He's like, he needed to out, out uh, compete Michael Walsh's statement. So he had to up it up to the next level. This That's a thing, because the Matt Walsh, what is a woman movie? God, I just wish Matt Walsh hadn't made it. He's just such a, <laughs> like he is, he's just a fascist theocrat. That's why I just, it's right. just, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah. It's not good. It's basically, you know, obviously he's saying, oh, look, the science is on my side. But you know, he's like slammed intelligent what, design into. It literally doesn't matter what the science was yeah. for him. Yeah. The left is attacking our children, pushing sex talk transgender extremism and noxious politics in our schools we should reject this demonic assault on the innocence of our children and stand fast against leftist efforts to mutilate their bodies and minds Stop. well what's wrong with that <laughs> that guy seemed fine he looked really weird bobert here comes bobert i know she's a firecracker why is she wearing like a fucking like evening gown at cpec Look, she's trying to look sexy. She knows what it is. Right. She's trying to get reelected. Come on. They all are. Stop confusing our babies with your groomer gender ideologue. I Didn't she have like 14 abortions or something? Did she really? I think she did. Somebody, I, just, I don't know if it's me, true or not. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm sexist here, but when like the way she's talking, it just seems so fake to me. Really? Yeah, okay. that's just the impression I get. The way she's just over emphasizing every single syllable. Stop mutilating our babies. Yeah, it's like, nobody talks like that. Okay, please stop. How dare you mutilate them? <laughs> like, okay, what is happening here? We'll revoke every Biden policy promoting the chemical castration and sexual mutilization. Mutilization. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Trump. That's just funny. Um, Look at that. Of our youth. Of our youth. Of our youth. Of our youth. And ask Congress to send me a bill prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. On day one, I will revoke Joe Biden's cruel policies on so-called gender-affirming care. Ridiculous. I will sign a new executive order Ridiculous. instructing every federal agency to cease all programs that promote the concept of sex and gender transition at any age. Who who's fear mongering here, Sitch? I'm curious. Who picked these clips? Hmm. Are these they, are these clips designed to fear monger? I feel like just a little The right wing little... mindset is designed to make you afraid, Adam. It's only right wingers that use fear. The who, left never who's... uses fear ever. It feels like someone's fear mongering a little bit here. Nope, nope. You must be misunderstanding <laughs> something. You disagree? You really disagree? Okay. <laughs> no, you're, you're completely right. That's why this is hilarious. Of course it is. Yeah. Fucking the right fear mongers. Yes, so do you. 
What do you think you're doing now? A few gender criticals still want to insist they have nothing to do with right-wing anti-trans bigots. Like Helen Lewis. I mean, TERF is basically witch. Who attempts in her interview in the witch trials of JK Rowling to distinguish between the transphobia of the far right and that of feminists. I think the hardest thing for outsiders to understand is that there are two different arguments going on. One is the traditional conservative right argument, which is anti-LGBT. The other one is a criticism from the left in which it says sometimes male people and female people have different interests, no matter how the male people identify. But as a trans person... Oh my God, they lost Helen Lewis. <laughs> it's, it's, it's over. How, it's over. It's over. It's funny how like, um, they're so like, there's this scramble of like, oh, these people must be right-wingers of course like, Helen lewis was a woman who attacked jordan peterson in that gq interview for like two hours yes yeah i know i mean like they just can't accept that it's possible that someone could disagree with you from a left-wing perspective <laughs> right it's because you're delusional you need to open up your eyes <laughs> no 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 they're secret right-wingers you don't understand no no she's like listen when you got Helen Lewis coming out and going, listen, men and women are different. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you're fucked. You're you fucked. Goofed, you goofed a little at that point, yeah. Your movement is toast. Over. Look, this is... This is... I love this video, man. This is just game over, man. Game, set, match. Over. Person, I don't care whether you justify your transphobia in the name of protecting women or protecting children. <laughs> I don't care. She doesn't care, Adam. She doesn't care. She's calling Helen Lewis a transphobe. Yeah. She's more radical feminist than J.K. Rowling. It's pretty funny. I didn't realize the first time, too, that it was Helen Lewis. <laughs> Helen Lewis. Oh, my God. Helen Lewis is a turf. Whether it's radical feminist Janice Raymond calling for transsexualism to be morally mandated out of existence, or conservative Catholic Michael Knowles calling for transgenderism to be eradicated from public life, it's the same repulsive bigotry to me. And <laughs> when the socialists complain about the Jews being the bourgeoisie, and when the Nazis complain about the Jews being the subversive elements, it's the same bigotry to me. It's the same. They're both on the left. <laughs> oh, wait, no. They're both on the right. Oh, wait, no. Yeah. J JK, she can't tell the difference between J.K. Rowling and Matt Walsh. <laughs> I know. It's, so fucking dumb. it's ridiculous. Well, no, you don't understand. J.K. Rowling once complimented matt walsh's what is a woman video so oh obviously, yeah obviously same i just what do you gain from just completely being stupid like this and being self-delusional but you you know what you gain she said in the beginning of the video mm -hmm. movements don't need a god but they need a devil okay so she's just trying to manufacture the devil for for her audience yes the devil but we've already agreed that all of the movements that she's citing were utter failures. Well, we agree with that. I mean, yeah. yeah, no, I think the devil thing might be, I think I might have convinced myself against that. The devil thing is bad. Cause it, the devil made me do it. Yeah. The devil thing. Yeah. You got, it's gotta be aspirational because the devil thing turns people into monsters and those monsters destroy their own movement. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. bad news. And in any case, the gender critical movement has recently reached an implicit consensus that they're mostly done pretending to be feminist. The rising star of the movement, Posey Parker, aka Kelly J. Keen Minchel, rejects feminism entirely. Do you call yourself a feminist now? No. Did no. you ever call yourself a feminist? I probably did for a short time. But so you wouldn't be said like a Julie Bindle type feminist? No, or? well, some feminists. I mean, Julie Bindle has been critical of um, mothers in the past, and I think that's a, th that's a theme flowing through feminism. I'm not a feminist! I'm not a feminist! This is not Andrea Dworkin. This is Phyllis Schlafly, 
Parker's campaign is currently funded by the right-wing CPAC. CPAC came along and said that they would sponsor our events and cover all of our insurance throughout our whole trip, uh, which is really kind of them. Um, but what we would need to do is we would need to show that we were working for them, working with them. Oops. She has no qualms about collaborating with far-right white nationalists. I want to talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene. Let me tell you what she's been saying. She's a Republican, but she, uh, I agree with her wholeheartedly. She's opposed abortion and contraception for teenagers. Why are we enabling? Wait, I don't like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is she a white nationalist? I don't think Marjorie Taylor Greene is a white nationalist, no. She, I'm not familiar with that. But. She did an event with Nick Fuentes. Oh, right. And then threw Nick Fuentes under the bus. Called right. him some like loner weirdo or something. Wow. So I think when she True. realized that he was an ethno-nationalist, she distanced herself, obviously. But I heard a rumor. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's true. That she had sex with Nick Fuentes? Well, no, because Nick Fuentes oh. is gay, so that oh, wouldn't okay. happen. Um, no, I heard a rumor that apparently wasn't Milo living in one of her properties with his boyfriend. Marjorie Taylor Greene? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I never heard of this. Did I? There was someone on Twitter oh, saying okay. Milo was doxxed and he lived with Marjorie Taylor on um, like Marjorie Taylor Greene property or something. Oh, I don't, okay weird but and i was like oh well that's interesting i know nothing about that i don't know i saw on twitter that must mean it's true right no it means you just saw it. someone on twitter made it up okay look i'm gonna go on twitter right now and say marjorie taylor green is gay for pay <laughs> See if I can start a rumor. I mean, yeah, there's, there's this whole drama. I don't know if you've been from following it. Do you know mm. the Ali Alexander drama? I don't. I saw there was some drama, but I don't know what it is. Something about him like being a groomer or something. Yeah, so Ali Alexander, who couldn't happen to a nicer guy, who's a total crazy person. He's the guy um, that... I think he started one of the January, he was like the, the head of one of the January 6th protests or something. And so he kind of used that to leverage his health to be like, you know, big in the movement. And then it turned out that it was very possible that maybe he was soliciting nudes or something from underage boys. <laughs> what? Really? Something like that. Oh, man. So, you know, I think he's claiming they didn't know they're underage. I don't know. It's this whole convoluted affair of like, craziness he was the guy that came on, out so. and was like standing up for kanye on on alex on jones, alex jones show. Yeah. yeah he came on and simped for kanye that's right he did yeah oh uh, yeah alexander sucks but uh but apparently and i actually and i don't know the full drama apparently this recent attack on alex alexander is some web of drama between nick Fuentes and Milo Yiannopoulos and Ali Alexander all trying to destroy each other's careers. I think because of the fallout related to Kanye stuff, but they're all releasing um, each other's DMs and private messages. All sorts uh -oh. of crazy shit. So the big clusterfuck. So basically, the far right is eating itself. <laughs> But anyway. Um, children to take um, sometimes contraceptives that, that are quite harmful or access to abortion. Um, I think that we really need to rethink all of this. I think parents need to take back control of their children. She's called trans people fools and perverts. Transgenderism is nuts. It's for fools and perverts. She's denied that transgender is a legitimate concept. It's not a real thing. There's no such thing as being born in the wrong body. There's no such thing as a trans woman. There's no such thing as a trans person. There is no such thing. There are people that call themselves these things that may have other issues manifesting that then make them think they're this, but no. We have to stop using any words like transgender.
Um, you know, there may be more words that we have to say in order to say that. We may call it transgender ideology. Uh, but when it comes to a person, they may be following transgender ideology, but they are not transgender. There is no such thing as a man or a woman being anything other than a man or a woman. She's called trans. What does any of this have to do with J.K. Rowling? J.K. Rowling hasn't a- specifically denounced this, so therefore that means she agrees oh, with okay. it. Bumpkiss. Women pedophiles. We know that if a man has a paraphilia of dressing as a woman, the most likely cross paraphilia is paedophilia. We know that these men have multiple paraphilias. They don't ever stop at one. She said that each and every woman who stands in her way will be annihilated. Each and every uh, one of you women. Oh, I meant to skip all this part. Oh, good. Shit is worthless. It's getting kind of boring. I care about the Posey Parker section. Yeah. Parker, you know Parker Posey is a actress, right? Posey Parker. Well, why is that her name? Parker Posey. Does she steal the name? No, it's inverted. Parker. Oh. P- Parker Posey is. Is it Posey Parker or Parker? No, now, I, cares. now I don't uh, know. Is the backlash against J.K. Rowling a witch hunt? Unequivocally, no. It's very thoroughly deserved. But I will say this. A movement can't get along without a devil. And across the whole political spectrum, there's a misogynistic tendency to choose a female devil. Whether it's Anita Bryant, Hillary Clinton, (laughs) Marie Antoinette, Alexandria Ocasio. I like how it's even in this even in this situation. She's like, still a feminist. <laughs> she's still like, well, I mean, maybe the hatred of Anita Bryant was sexism. Wait, what? Yeah. Jesus Contra. Kind of crazy. This is so this this is your brain on identity politics, okay? It's like Anita Bryant made herself the face of that movement, supposedly. And mm-hmm. that's why she received the backlash. You know. Um people don't like AOC because she's incredibly out she made herself the face of like this new i am the new young left movement that's you know secretly socialist tee hee like who who was that before her no one there wasn't exactly yeah. and so this idea that like oh people don't like AOC just because she's a woman it's like please stop yeah please i mean that's the only reason why some people do like her because they think she's hot so i don't even know what she's it's the exact well, opposite. She, she's com- she's saying some of these people are legitimately devils. Like she's cast Anita Bryant as a devil. Yeah, but she's saying like it's not. I don't think it's a coincidence that there's a lot of women that people don't like. I mean, there's a lot of men people don't like either. <laughs> like, well, but you know that it, women are fifty percent of the population, right? Is it really that unusual that fifty percent of the people that are disliked are women? <laughs> Is the argument that women are falsely accused of being devils, or is the argument, well, some of them actually are devils, but they're still falsely accused? Her argument is she thinks it's sexism that so many of the devils chosen by these movements are women. Mm-hmm. That's her argument. Or That's are her. they just bad people? No, it's because it's women. She said uh, Anita Bryant was a bigot and that we should. she did deserve the pie in the face and that she should be exiled. Yeah, but women... Yeah, but Hitler. Oh. Yeah, but <laughs> sexism. Yeah, but but Hitler. You already did that one. You can't go back to Hitler. You need something fresh. Look, the biggest devil in all of human history is a dude. Yeah. Okay. It's not even close. The second okay. biggest one is a dude, too. And the third and the fourth and the fifth. You got like no, you got to no, go way down the you're devil wrong. list to nope, get to Anita nope, Bryant. I went. Nope. 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 I win. You're wrong. You're wrong. You know why you're wrong? Why? Eve. <laughs> oh yeah! Spike the football, bitch. Get, the get fuck fucked. Up. Eve isn't even on the list. Eve is the top of the list. Everything that came from the fall of man is her fault. Boom. Did you just look? Did you just become like a <laughs> like a theocratic Christian? If it means I get to win this argument, <laughs> that's so bad. <laughs> what do you mean? That's in the Old Testament. That's in our book. Your book? Yeah, the Torah. It's our first book. Oh, I see. That. Look, we get two books. Yeah, whatever. Three, if you want to count the Book of Mormon. 
Fuck all that's controversial. Is it? <laughs> could be. Could be. Look, I'll throw in the book of Scientology, too. That, well, that's not Christian, though. That's like. Is it? Is, oh, there's, okay. what do you, no, not at all. Scientology doesn't follow the Bible? I guess it does. No, what the? F no. Where in the Bible does it talk about intergalactic aliens dropping spirits into volcanoes and then blowing them up with nuclear weapons? Revelations? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Look, I'll. I missed that part. Of I have a secret like... decoder ring for revelations. Oh, okay. I the see. It was all in John. a. Meta it was a metaphorical truth of revelations. Of course. Okay. Look, let's get through this video, okay? No more talking. Casio Cortez or J.K. Rowling. And there's always going to be people who seize on any opportunity to be misogynistic. So Bosh. I would advise trans people and our allies to keep in mind that J.K. Rowling is not the final boss of transphobia. She's not our devil. The devil is the Republican Party, the conservative <laughs> party. The devil <laughs> is patriarchy. It's the right wing. <laughs> patriarchy? <laughs> you like that? The devil is patriarchy. The devil is patriarchy. Oh my God, she's totally jumped the shark. This is just ridiculous. I know. It's the Republican. It's no, it's not just the Republican Party. It's patriarchy. Now, oh, patriarchy. they're everywhere. Where are they? They're kidding me. <laughs> Talk about paranoid delusions. Yep. What the hell? Look, this don't. This is why Contra doesn't debate because this all these positions would just be laid bare in a debate. Yeah. The patriarchy. It's ridiculous. Men who will be the ones to put gender critical theory into brutal practice. And what do you mean? It's the look, you said the whole video laying out all the feminists that hate this movement. No, one of the best the things about it is there's no men even saying anything. Look, you can't even get Sitch to be interested in this. <laughs> he doesn't even give a fuck. What the hell? <laughs> There you go. He's like, use whatever fucking bathroom you want. I don't care. I think women should have to look at a trans penis before entering any bathroom by law. Yeah. He doesn't. Like that's, look, that's, that's like, how like, little ice he scan. cares. And when you look in the eye scan, it's just a picture of a trans penis. That's how little he cares. It's Ooh. the, look, it is the women. It is the women that are like, hey, I don't want any lady dick in the locker room. But that doesn't conform with this argument of all these women are being tricked by right wingers to being anti trans. Look, if you if you want boobs in the men's locker room, the men are going to be in favor of that. <laughs> they are going to say yes. Well, bring well, those titties in. Well, maybe <laughs> they it's are. It's a guy with tits. Someone that looks like a guy with tits. I don't know if I'm going to be a fan of that. It depends upon how nice the tits are. <laughs> it really does. God. You know it does. I, like the episode <laughs> of South Park where Cartman like tricks the fifth graders into thinking like his boobs are like women boobs. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I buy that. Okay. Well, it's not going to cause the same kind of controversy though. Mm, yeah. Well, there won't be a threat of violence. It, are they... Look, men, men only spaces. If there's a tr look, if a trans man joins the soccer team and she's running around, you yeah, know, no one cares. Yeah. With her muff hanging out. <laughs> no, <laughs> look, the guys are, <laughs> the guys are not going to, nobody's going to be like, oh, yeah. Oh, look, your penis fell off. Oh, wait. Right. right. They're not like, you're, you're muff hanging out, lady. <laughs> or, or I'm sorry, dude, your muff is hanging out. Yeah. That's true, but it's not right, going to cause a controversy. It's I know, really but, yeah. but there are different attitudes for sex and gender roles in our society that will never be the same or equal. Right. Yes. But this is a woman thing. That's look. I just want to get the whole idea that this is patriarchy or the Republican Party. No, I know it's preposterous. Yeah. This is women wanting to protect women's sports and wanting to protect women segregated space it's obviously a bunch of cairns so yeah you know yeah just call it just to be honest about it contra just call it like it is being honest about it doesn't give her the utility that she needs oh shit <laughs> so i hit the back button 
Holy shit. Oh. Sar. <laughs> oh, but I didn't mess it up. Uh, I'm oh, still no. one I'm in the hour right. and 48 I'm minutes. in the right place. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we're good. <laughs> I'm so excited to hit play. It's okay. I hit the back button. <laughs> Nita Bryant, Posey Parker, and J.K. Rowling are, to borrow a term from TERFs, handmaidens. Oh, man. TERFs are the real handmaidens. They're useful idiots who put a concerned female face on the patriarchal violence against trans people that will ultimately be enacted by right-wing men. <laughs> I found him! What? He can kill himself, decent human being! And Megan Phil It's men's fault. Oh, yeah. It's men's fault. This is comedy gold, man. As this soon as the trends gold. are out of the way, Adam, then they turn on the women's. It's this is comedy gold. Look, all these women hate our guts, but it's the men's fault. <laughs> right. Right, yeah, no. Roper and centrists like her are wrong that civil conversation can resolve this. Call out the deviants among them and eradicate these monsters from society. People like... I don't think that Posey Parker lady was a centrist. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Just because just you're... If you're a turf who's a radical feminist, but you don't like trans people, just because you don't like trans people doesn't make you a centrist. Like... Yeah, you're just a radical feminist that doesn't like trans people. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah, Michael Knowles and Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump cannot be persuaded. They have to be defeated. As for what to do about J.K. Rowling, honestly, let's all just block her. Oh this, I, this is, this, that's terrible framing too. Because, as we've said before. Well, maybe maybe Michael Knowles is somewhat of an influencer, but Ron DeSantis and Trump are just, I mean, they're representatives. There's a certain amount of the population that wants certain legislation, and they're basically saying they're going to enact that legislation to fulfill the will of the people. So you're right. trying to persuade the people to change, and then the politicians are forced to change. So the framing that, you know, you, you can change Ron DeSantis's mind or you should tr can change Donald Trump's mind. Well, they're just, they're an extension of the population. You got to change right. the population's mind. Right. Open up Twitter right now, go to her profile and just block her. Problem solved. Like, don't harass her. That doesn't help. But also, I wouldn't wait for her to change. She's gone down what I call the bigotry whirlpool. The deeper you go in, the harder it is to leave. For the same reasons that it's hard to quit a cult or scam. To quote video essayist Dan Olson, One of the most insidious elements of a confidence scam is that the victims who invested the most are often the most passionate defenders. Yeah. Confidence. Imagine scam. someone mm -hmm. in a conversation about trans issues, mm -hmm. unironically bringing up the, uh, what did he call cost, it? Some because cost. Stan Olson. Yes. One of the most insidious elements of a confidence scam is that the victims who invested the most are often the most passionate defenders. Right. Yeah. As you say, sunk cost here. Okay. Yeah is going to bring up sunk cost here without possibly questioning whether that applies to people that are transitioning and then regret it. <laughs> of course it does. Why do you think those trans regret rates are so low? I, I think that's part of it. <laughs> here we go. Here it is. To quote video essayist Dan Olson. Okay. Dan, Dan, why are those trans regret rates so low? One of the most insidious elements of a confidence scam is that the victims who invested the most are often the most passionate defenders. Oh, is that why? Well, thanks. Right. Thanks for well, illuminating also, us. This applies to literally any political movement. Of course, yeah. Any political movement. Yeah. The idea that this only applies to turfs or something is insane. It applies to climate change. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and we've heard about this from, you know, people, I forget what, what her name was. There was some lady who was like really woke and she kind of became anti-woke and she talked about how 
there was a realization of like, oh, you know, if I acknowledge that this ideology is wrong, it means me being like a toxic piece of shit to all these people online was completely unwarranted. Right. It's very similar to That's sad. the feeling that, uh, what's her name? That Megan Phelps felt. Of course. She's like, yeah. if it turns out that, you know, it's not my religion is wrong, then I'm just being a total asshole to, to innocent people that don't deserve it. It's literally the same thing with all this woke shit. Yeah. I'm so glad I'm not a piece of shit to people for no reason. I always have a good reason. I was going to say, I'm glad you added that little <laughs> caveat there at the end. <laughs> For no reason. I'm glad I'm not a piece of shit to people. For no reason. Sometimes people deserve a little bit of. I mean, sometimes you got to be the karma cop. Let's just be real here. There you go. Fair enough. I mean, we're trying to save children. We're trying to save the children. (laughs) Right. Sitch doesn't care. Look, Sitch is like, just let the trans dick hang. Okay. Listen, as a queer Adam. Uh huh. Now you're a as queer. A queer Adam. I'm a queer YouTuber. Yeah, nothing of this. As a queer, you've got the immunity idol. As a gay. Mm-hmm. As a queer. As a queer. Yeah. <laughs> because shame is a powerful force in the human psyche, and they can't bear the shame of admitting they were tricked. <laughs> it gets even better. Like that. It gets even better. I can't bear the shame. Right. Imagine that. Oh, man. That's got to be so harsh. I like that all this shit, it all starts from the point that they're just automatically assuming that they're just right. Oh, I know. Yeah. They're just like, I'm just right, obviously. How are they they so certain? So smug. So condescending. Reformed bigots have to face not only the shame of being dupes, but also the guilt of having devoted years of life to harming vulnerable people. This- I like the old definition of bigot better too, because contrapoints is a giant bigot. Bigot used to just mean obstinate in your political views, mm-hmm. and that totally applies to contrapoints. She's she's never questioned any of her political views. I don't think that's what bigot ever meant. Yeah, you were obstinate that. in your political views. Yeah, it used to mean partisan. Unwilling to unwilling to consider other people's opinions. Oh, was big. Okay, right, right, right. I mean, that's yeah. definitely an element of it. Sure. Now it, they've changed it to mean racist, but I mean, right. I mean, big. It just means you're prejudging people on the basis of something. Oh, look. Okay, so Oxford. English has bigot, a person who is obstinately or unreasonably attached to a belief, opinion, or faction, especially one who is prejudiced against or antagonistic towards a person or people of the basis on the basis of their membership of a particular group. Okay. So that's not too, because they did try to change it to mean like racist. Right. But a person who, it used to just be a person who is obstinately or unreasonably attached to a, 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 a belief or opinion. I think it always had to have that second element, though, about like a group of people based on some group factor. Right. But I mean, that applies. Look, she is, she is attached to her belief about conservatives, obviously. Yeah, you can say she's bigoted against conservatives. That would be Of course she is, statement. yeah. She is a bigot. Giant bigot. Bigot. (laughs) This is something Megan, to her credit, faced head on. If we were wrong, then I had spent every day of my life industriously sowing doom, discord, and rage to so many, not at the behest of God, but of my grandfather. I had wasted my life only to fill others with pain and misery. Most bigots cannot stand to face this moral sunk cost. It's why an obsessive bigot like Graham Linehan, whose all-consuming hatred of trans people has ruined his life, cost him his marriage, and left him alone to tweet about destroying gender ideology minutes before midnight on New Year's Eve, feels psychologically compelled to insist with ever more certainty that trans people are not just delusional or dangerous, but are all demonic perverts, an enemy so hyperbolically evil that they justify his self-immolating crusade. They took everything from me, you know. 
He took my fa- my family, you know. And I just said, no, hang on a sec. Stop calling these women turfs. Stop sending them abuse. Let them speak. And for that, they they just destroyed me. Do you honestly feel destroyed? Who, who is this guy? He's a very annoying person who used to be hyper woke and then he became a turf and now he's, you know, a turf. Oh, essentially. So they uh, went the, after him because well, was... the theory is now the theory, you know, he, he he all this bad stuff happened to him in his life and now you know he blames, you know, all the shit on the turfs. I mean, on the trans people, but I, I it just sounds kind of like an asshole. I think right. Okay. So. Right? The whole first. No, because because the one thing about this, the one thing about this that keeps me going is that I know I'm right, you know? I know I'm right. As long as he stays here, in the bottom of the whirlpool, he never has to face that he's ruined his relationships and wasted years of life because he just couldn't let it go. And if J.K. Rowling doesn't log off soon, this will likely be her fate as well. Well, I mean, this applies to you, Contra, as well. What are you talking about? Yeah, of course. Why is anyone in some sort of activist position? But with J.K. Rowling, I mean, she's a millionaire. Or I'm sorry, she's like a billionaire. They beloved children's series who I believe is happily married, has children. Like, I don't, I don't probably think she's going to, you know. Probably has grandchildren on the way. And she's uh, continued to be a successful artist. She's working on, she wrote a book recently and she's working on another book. So, I mean, yeah, so what the she's fuck? She's going to be okay. Yeah. She's touching grass every day. What the yep. fuck? What are you doing, Contra? Well, than... I mean, Contra is making shit tons of money making a video twice a year. So, you know, Contra's doing pretty well herself. Too. Yeah, but making... This is the thing, and this is why I did the poll that I did, because do you think Contra could make it as an artist outside of activism? I'm not I'm No, not but isn't, sure. this what, isn't this the same poll you put up the last time we watched the Contra video? Is it? That you had some. You had some similar question about this. I, I recall. Really? Oh, yes. You don't okay. remember that? I've totally forgotten it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, J.K. Rowling is a successful artist, and is an activist on the side. Contrapoints is a successful activist, and an artist on the side. Right. That's a giant difference. Mm-hmm. That's. So a, you think there's some that's level a giant, of giant like... giant difference. You think Contra is basically there's some level of, of artistic jealousy. Of course, is that what you're saying? yeah, of course, yeah. And J.K. Rowling knows it. She's like, "That's right, bitch. I'm a I'm a fucking artist. That's right. People come to me for my people worship me for my art. Uh-huh. People worship you because they feel sorry for you. Ooh, ouch. It's true. That's what activism is. Look, you you. You made the victimhood culture bed. You climbed inside. Oh, I'm a victim. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. Yeah, well, people feel sorry for victims. That's the way it is. That's the <laughs> way of the world. There you go. I guess what I'm really trying to say is Harry Potter's dead to me. I'm switching to Twilight. Oh, see? Look, I nailed it. I totally nailed it. Yeah. Look, I don't like her art anymore. Her art was middling at best anyway, but it's hugely successful. <laughs> well, you can't, look, you can't, you can't argue with those numbers, seriously. She's obviously a cultural phenomenon and she's going to be remembered long after she's dead. So that's how, ob- as an artist, that's the true success, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is the true success? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about contra. I don't know that contrapoints is going to be remembered. Yeah, or as an artist. Yeah, or definitely anything. not. I mean, she might be remembered as an activist at some level, but if the, if this plays out the way that we both suspect that it will, that you know, or society on itself. Well, society is going to come to a consensus that letting biological males compete against women is crazy. (laughs) That's insane. Mm -hmm. What? Like society did a little stint here, and it was kind of caused by the feminist movement. 
just a little tiny stint where people believed that men and women were physically equal. Remember when uh, it came up on some news talk show about men and women playing tennis against one another and the hosts were like, of course they can compete. Yeah. And I think it was John McEnroe that said, oh no, the, like you guys are smoking something here. Like the best female tennis players, like not even close to competitive against the best male tennis player and everyone just lost their minds. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, because they people didn't realize that. And this right. whole trans movement has kind of reawakened the fact that that's a true. That's a, just, it's true. It's a truth. Yeah. Well, the problem is that, that the trans ideology, that's why I said TERFs are, are the only ones being consistent with feminist ideology. Trans ideology and feminist ideology are completely contradictory to each other. Mm -hmm. And they can't accept it. Well, the real world runs on this law of non-contradiction. And that's going to play out here. Yeah. Well, because then you could just leverage the arguments against the other movement, which is basically what people have been doing. Yeah. So I think that the consensus is going to turn out to be they're going to ban transgender athletes in women's sports. They're going to let trans men compete against biological men. They're going to have no problem with that. <laughs> they're going to say, <laughs> knock yourselves out. We don't want to... They're going to say, we don't, you know, we don't want to discriminate. Of course, compete. Um, trans women are women. Yeah. Well, they're going to say, trans men are men. I mean, I, okay, let them compete. Right. Uh, the, the sex segregated spaces is going to be, they're going to outlaw the, the men in women's prisons. That's going to be like, that's not going to happen anymore. Once everything's settled, one, I'm I'm saying this is how the societal consensus is going to shake out. Feel free uh, to jump in. If three thousand people, almost oh. three thousand people, voted in the poll. Could ContraPoints make it as an artist without activism, or is activism her only path to success? Twelve percent said Contra is an amazing artist. Right. Fifty-three percent said activism is her only path to fame, and thirty-five percent chose Dave La <laughs> Dave Landau with a. Sunglasses emoji. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. I always try to do a third option for people who don't want to vote, but obviously Dave Landau is. There you go. Anyway, super chat time. I'm impressed. We got through a two hour video. It's yeah, only in a, midnight. In a relatively timely manner. Do you, I mean, you don't disagree with any of my predictions on how things are going to go, right? I, no. I think the, Children transitioning is going to be banned because that's literally insane. Yeah. Yeah. I just eventually, mm -hmm. eventually, some Republican politician will wake up and realize that the desisting argument is the argument to fucking push for. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, yeah, then all the kids' trans transitioning stuff will go away. Yep. So. Anonymous Coward for $10 says, I read a piece on The Intercept about Mariana Williamson being a fusion of Bernie and early Jordan B. Peterson and then trashes him for the rest with quotes from Nathan Johnson. I'm sorry, Nathan Robson. The delusion is unreal. She pulls at 5%. True. She has no shot. And calling her early JBP is very bizarre. Who Who's this? Mariana Williamson. Oh, okay, yeah. She's, Magical girl. Yeah. My political magical girl waifu before yeah. she became hyper woke and stupid. Your manic pixie dream girl. There you go. The new Mel oh. she says that line in the new Melanie Martinez song is pretty funny. Clockwork for three dollars says hey meow. Get it instead of hey now hey meow. Meow. I love that super troopers. There you go. Meow. Am meow. I saying meow? Meow. Am I some kind of Cat jumping from tree to tree all nimble bimble. Meow. Am I drinking milk from a saucer? All right, I gotta Did get I say meow. meow. 
CT did a new shirt design. That's looks good. amazing. Looks good. I got to get me one of these shirts. Although you, I mean, you look cool. I look like, this is actually kind of incorrect here. Sitch is the one that's angry all the time. It's me that's calm, cool, and collected here. But I look like the one that I'm going, I look like I'm getting crazy. You don't look angry. You look excited and I look annoyed. That is kind of your avatar. Big there. C, there you go. See, it's per the uh, CT labeled the shirt, it's a comedy show. So this is you saying it's a comedy show. Oh, okay. I got it. I think I'm partial to the design that's just the figures. She did one that is... That just the has, faces. And one that has text in it. One that has text that says such an Adam show. And one that's just us. Right. Hey! This is badass. Love it. Uh, Gallus Janus for 13 months. Thank you so much. It says impossible on time or one minute late only. True. Really? You know? Wow. Wow. We didn't even notice it. We just yeah. didn't have a lot to gab about, I guess, before the stream. So, yeah. Uh, Mikey Gussler for five dollars says, when will you have TJ back on to discuss his thoughts on critical drinker and neurotic? When you do invite him, bring Mahler on to give context. Well, first of all... Is that all, what you were trying to do? Yeah, Mahler wants to come on. And I tried to set up a date with TJ. And TJ's kind of like, eh, I'm kind of lukewarm about coming back on. So I don't, wow. I don't necessarily know if it's going to happen. And I told him, listen, you can come on and we don't have to talk about politics. We can just talk about movies or whatever. So he seemed into that. But obviously... I can't like for I can't gun to his head, make him come on or anything. Wasn't the um, wasn't the thing about neurotic? I mean, it's I mean, it's there's politics in it, but it's also I mean, it's related to media, right? Sure. Yeah. I don't remember. I I think I watched this video, but I don't remember what it was exactly. Well, I just I feel like. I don't know that he wants to come on and just be corrected by us over and over again. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't necessarily know that. I don't know that it would be fun for me to go on a show with someone who just ha is, has ideologically different positions than me, who is just going to kind of correct me on all my positions. Well, you're supposed to like, you know, we're supposed to like debate about it, right? Like he's gonna, he think, would defend himself. I don't think I don't know that TJ wants to debate his positions. I don't. Okay. Well. He just seems to assert that these are my positions, and well, it's up to him. Yeah. We've offered several times. We're trying to set up a conversation. I believe we're trying to set it up with Mahler. He can accept it or not. So well, I think it's, I think it's like it's a probably like a fifty fifty. Okay. So it's not. It's definitely within the realm of possibilities. So. Right. Uh, Goro Saro for two dollars says, "Witch trials. You guys need to bring in an expert." There you go. Who Ooh, wants what? us to bring in our expert witch detector, witch catcher, actual justice warrior, Sean? Oh, really? There you go. He's all in favor of burning witches. Oh yeah. Uh, Spencer Harmon, thanks so much for joining the Free Will Seekers. Ostracy oh, yeah. for thirteen months. Thanks so much, Ostracy. Oh, I think or I saw that one. Equals freedom. It says a stream, oh, not a team, a stream starting on time. That's totally worth my 13 month milestone. Well, there you go. I guess we were on time. Look at that. There you go. Proud to be on time. Uh, Loser Doberman for 13 months says, I'm so glad you guys aren't talking about Dev and Aiden. It is no fun. We'll see Lucifer being the troll he is. <laughs> did a little uno reverse he wants us to talk about dev aiden by pretending he doesn't want us to talk about dev <laughs> well we were supposed to talk to the socialist on tuesday we're not and the socialist had a thing come up at work a another thing another thing yeah oh my god right. okay so i mean i got we got a I mean, we can watch videos or whatever on Tuesday. You got an there's open a, slot for there's Tuesday. There's a ton of stuff. Well, if, was... Aiden, if Aiden and and Dev want to come on. I don't think they want to come and on. And we can, 
you know, whatever, prod them into fighting. What, I don't think anybody wants that. Oh. I mean, I'm down to do it, but I don't think they want to do that. Look, I think we can be, we can be bridge builders here. We can make them reconcile. Uh -huh. You think it would be good content? <laughs> <laughs> you get this. You get the vo Adam gets a tone of voice. It's the content tone of voice. Is that what it is? <laughs> it's the content tone of voice. Yes, that's hilarious. Yes, I just the look. I like Aiden, and I like someone... Dev. There was someone I think that wanted to talk to us for a random Tuesday. Now I don't remember who it was. Maybe they could sub in. No, look, I'll no. figure something out. Don't you worry. Okay. I got. Well, there I you got, go. We're not talking to sock dumb, sock dumb on Tuesday. So. I got stuff. We'll get something worked out. We'll don't see. you worry. Okay. Interesting. <clears throat> there you go. We'll do the Fight Club video. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, but no, I'll just say this regarding the Devin Aiden stuff. They have some sordid, very complicated back history. I don't fully understand it. I don't want to fully understand it. I don't care about it. I will be friends with Dev and Aiden. I'm not one of these people that chooses friendships. Not, and by, by the way, not, neither of them has asked me to do this, right? N neither Dev nor Aiden are like pressuring us in any way whatsoever to disown the other ones. We have no pressure for anything like that. I like, I like both of them until they find. Yeah, I don't think either of them other. would pressure us. We this right. is what we talked about a little bit before the stream. And I mean, I just the I think we came to the conclusion that people online kind of talk shit about other people and it kind of just doesn't really bother such or I. Like I think um I mean I've heard I mean, I've heard criticism of me from other content creators and I just, I don't, I, it's just, it's not a big deal. I don't, it right. doesn't bother me, but I feel like there was some criticism that went back and forth between Dev and, and Aiden that's, you know, they evidently, and I don't even know who, who, which, which one did the criticism or if both of them did the criticism. Yeah. Right, I don't know. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it's fine. I know things get heated. You know, we, some people we have. You know, pretty major ideological differences, so it's fine. Yeah, hey, it's uh, fine. TJ Doesn't was matter. talking shit about us, remember? And you were like, "Oh, that sucks," but I was like, "Yeah, it wasn't that big a deal." Right. We um, we've talked a lot of shit about TJ. Of course, we've That's talked. Why a I said lot. it's fair game, right? Have fair we ever talked game. shit about Dev? I don't think so. Have hmm. we talked shit about Dev? No. We've talked mad shit about Aiden. But Aiden well, and Spoon have talked shit about us. So we haven't talked. See, I don't think that's fair. I mean, I don't. I never talked shit about Aiden. We've dis disagreed with and made fun of some of her positions, but I don't think we've attacked her as like a person. Well, that's what I mean about talking. shit. Oh, okay. Well, when you say talk mad shit, it makes it sound like you're like insulting the person. Okay, so maybe that's right. yeah. I should make that clear. Yes. I'm talking about just like bants, talking shit. That's not I even think bad. I said you just disagreed strongly with her idea. Well, no, we called her like a Putin apologist or something. Like she got a little upset about that, but okay, yeah. Anyways, uh, CT says, please check DMs. It's important for people that want merch. Remind everyone that once they add things to their carts, to go back to the main Threadless site so the shirts are cheaper. Not sure why the discount isn't applied automatically, but please tell them. So there you go. Oh, okay. There's you like a discount want, or something. All right. If you want to buy some cool Sitch and Adam merch, you add right. it to your cart, but then don't check out. Once you add to your cart, click on back to the main Threadless site before you check out. And for some reason, it applies a discount to your purchases. Right. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. Um, Post not authoritarian. I like that. The good name, post not authoritarian. Thank you for joining. <laughs> post not authoritarian, huh? That's good. That's, That's I mean, I, I would think clever. my intuition tells me it would be the opposite. You'd be the post nut libertarian. You'd be like, yeah, I already came. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. Right, right. Post nut authoritarian. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, like mate guard or something. 
Okay. That makes sense. Uh, CT for two Canadians says, I didn't know Leatherface was a gay rights ally. There you go. True. That was the, you know, the guy that was wearing the weird mask. He did look like Leatherface. Like Leatherface. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Rico Zoro for 13 months. Thank you so much. Rico Zoro says, 13 months of slinging free will, motherfuckers. Good job. Sweet. 13 months. That's awesome. Impressive. Uh, Sir Rebrol Palsy for five months. Thank you. Says, Adam, uh, what do you mean you weren't alive for this? We all know the first time you voted was for Nixon in 1968. No, I was <laughs> not. reigned supreme. I was not alive in 1968, so. We all know you were a voting age in 1968. I wish. You didn't vote for Nixon. Didn't you vote for Mondale or whoever the Nixon fuck? Nixon ran in 1968? That's crazy. I don't fucking know. I have no memory of Nixon as a president. For Legion, thanks so much for being Free Will Seeker. Yeah, welcome. Join the Free Will Seeker. Say it, Mike. Sitch. Say it. Say what? Mike. Oh, oh, you're reading the next one. Yeah. Mike Hassange for nine months says, Say it, Sitch. A team reigns supreme. There you, go. you spelled reigns wrong, but it's fine. <laughs> You put reigns as in precipitation. I know. As opposed we're, to like the rule of a king. Look. Okay. Okay, right. Mike. Look, we're okay, so, Mike. We're soaking you. Yes, I see. A team is, is raining. Well, we know we know A team's position on being in the pool, so I guess that makes sense. We're, we're raining on you. That's right. <laughs> there you go. Don't there you go. Don't fall for the chemical blue ring. <laughs> No, he could pee in the pool without. You can pee without, in the pool with impunity. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, guilt free. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. I, hopefully, you still have guilt about it. <laughs> Why would you have guilt if you shame free? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Shame free. Oh, uh, listen. I'm going to tell you guys. Any free will that you purchase from us will not remove the guilt you acquire from being in the pool. Okay. Remember, Sitch, Sitch thought that there was a chemical. Sitch, I did. What do you mean? It. It's like a common uh, urban legend. I, I never thought to fucking Google it. You know why? Because I never peed in the pool, Adam. I never was like, I got to make sure I can pee in the pool for certain. So I got to go Google to make sure this is real. Unlike a certain other co-host. I, like, I feel like I was telling my friends about the, the yellow or the, the blue ring, the blue chemical ring about that forms around you as i was peeing in the pool yeah you guys can't pee in the pool you're just, this is like the ultimate form of gaslighting you're just you're lying about you peeing in the pool as you pee in the pool it's is it getting warmer in here yeah this blue ring thing yes there you go it turns out adam started that adam started that myth to just to you know put people oh, yeah. off the scent of the track of him actually peeing in the pool the scent yes that's hilarious uh, Boar Legion, thank you so much for joining the free Wolf Seekers. I said that already. Cyborg for 13 months. Thanks so much, Cyborg. Says, what's up, guys? Did you guys watch Dave Landau on Michael Malice's show? He really puts Crowder's shit in a different light. Wonder what Shad thinks of it now. That's an interesting question. Oh, we I mean, I'm assuming, Shad. Yeah, we could. But I'm assuming, I mean, Shad's position was more so that he thought the contract was shitty as opposed to, oh, I don't yeah. know if he was really defending Crowder personally. Shad, Shad was against Crowder, yeah. We well, should no, no, ask no. Actual Justice Warrior what he thinks now. No, 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 no. You have it backwards. Shad was defending Crowder. Well, no. I don't know if he was defending Crowder. He was more attacking the Daily Wire's contract. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. right. You're right. So, you're right. Yeah, I don't know if this would necessarily have any impact on that uh, opinion. But, but yeah. No, if As I said, like, again, we're getting Dave's, you know, perception of things. It's one-sided. It was Actual Justice Warrior that was saying Crowder was being a little bitch. Yes. This now definitely... Sean is going to be insufferable. <laughs> yes. I think he was. He actually tweeted this out. <laughs> he already, uh, he's already he, on it. He was on it. Yes. He was on it uh, many moons ago. That's hilarious. But uh, yeah, I mean, like, as I said, there's, you know, he had, Dave had lots of claims about Crowder in that conversation. Many of them were very egregious. So if they're true, then Crowder looks really, really bad. But I don't know if we'll ever find out if they're really true or not. Bruins for 10 months says, I knew it. You did know it. Good job, Bruins. 
Yeah. Uh, post not authoritarian for another five dollars. Thank you. It says, "Whoa, the great letter, <laughs> the great leader of S class is queer now. I guess it's A team now." Wow! Look at that post not authoritarian leaving S class. You just because got I'm now dissed. officially queer. You just got dissed. Wow. You know what? I don't. You can you can take your post not authoritarian, Adam. <laughs> you could take it. <laughs> you could take them. Nice. Uh, Jack H for seven months. Says you can't speed run social change. True. It takes generations to hardwire our lizard brains to accept outsiders. Only path for lasting change is slow and steady. A great point. True. Yeah. Great point. And a pro assimilation as well. Yeah. Being nice helps too. I had this whole uh, Glenn Lowry. Yeah. Glenn Lowry and um and uh, what's his name? I don't know. Who's he do the, the podcast with? Uh, John McWhorter. John McWhorter, yes. Glenn Lowry was on Bill Maher on a Friday. Oh, was he again? Yes. Yep. Wow. But um, no, Glenn Lowry and John McWhorter had a fantastic podcast recently where they were talking to some guy who was like uh, kind of compl- – he was kind of breaking down like why a lot of the schools, and specifically black schools, were shitty. And it was a very interesting conversation. And it made me think there's this, I have this whole conversation I want to have with um, FD Signifier about the dangers of a so of like the dangers of kind of conceptualizing the world according to black and white culture is that, and we didn't really get into this and I wanted to, but we kind of got sidetracked on the issues in his video where he was kind of complaining about black conservatives. When you start associating cultural attitudes to specific skin types and specific races, if those cultural attitudes have antisocial uh, problems with them, or essentially those cultural attitudes set you up for failure, you're essentially setting saying that like if you don't fail, you're not, you know, you're not really black. Like oh, if you're gonna set up an so attitude, up. it is, and that's and I want to talk to them about that because essentially if you set up an attitude that you know going to school and you know paying attention to school and getting a good degree and, you know, being a lawyer or a doctor, or just some, you know, non-activist field, and you go and get a job and you participate in society. If you set that up as being white, I mean, essentially, that's just, uh, that's just such a dangerous idea. That's really setting up a lot of black people for failure. Because you're saying if you succeed, you're selling out. Yeah, it's evil. And I just, I think that's very dangerous. Straight up evil. So, Working around for $10 says, I started out listening to Crowder and Ben Shapiro in 2016. Now I'm here listening to two hippie liberal centrists every week. <laughs> Where did I go wrong? A-team reigns supreme. Wow. Cool. You didn't go wrong. You gained free will, my friend. That's awesome. Forking the sacred around. En- there you go. Thank oh, you. Uh, thank you for the $10. And thank you even thank you. more for the great compliment. Michael for two dollars says the value of free will is about a dollar per unit. Very true. If you guys want to invest in a currency, it will never inflate. Right. That will never go bad. It's free will, baby. Free will will always be worth one U.S. dollar. Yeah, where it's a. I guess it is inflated. I guess it is tied to inflation. Then it's tied to whatever the inflation of the U.S. dollar is. So right. Take yeah. Take it all back. Well, no, but you get more free will. That free will is more useful right that's true yeah that's true as the, the dollar inflates to be less valuable you still get you more, get more free will. buying power You're right. you get more free will buying power so there you go you guys should actually be in favor of inflation so you get more free will yeah true. it's great true true free will becomes cheaper and cheaper uh ct for 13 months look at that wow it's 13 months CT says happy anniversary <laughs> Did you get me? A, wi- a widow CT. They grow you know, up we got so you, fast. We got you another stream for you to edit. <laughs> Are you so happy? Yeah. <laughs> we have more work for you. Isn't that, isn't that exactly what you wanted? Sweet. <laughs> of course. Uh, Corp Neo for four months. Says if the slippery slope is so bad, why are slides so fun then? Huh? True. That's oh, a good that's, point. Yeah. Skiing, that's a good point. snowboarding. 
I've never skied. Have Slip. you skied? Yeah, skiing's great. It's never snowboarded, fun. never skied. Oh yeah, I've done both. You know, I think I've only been in snow like three times in my entire life. It's cold. That part. Yeah, sucks. I'm like, oh, this is fun, and then after five minutes, I'm like, this is really cold, and I'm not sure I like it anymore. <laughs> it's a. It's you have to be very athletic. It's a lot. Yeah. Of, it's a lot of I work. Guess. Well, no, even when I was young and athletic, I was still like, this is fucking cold. Yeah. I don't think I was ever in the right kind of snow because whenever I was around snow, it was like the wet snow, which I feel like. <laughs> oh, that's awful. Yeah. So maybe I just yeah. wasn't in the right snow. Well, if you ski and do a lot of falling down, you end up, you know, you can end up wet, which sucks. Right. Yeah. But, you know, if you're a decent skier and you stay on your feet, you got good, uh, mm -hmm. good ski clothes. I mean, when I was little, I was like, when I was a little kid, I was so desperate to, like, be in snow. I yeah. see so many, you know, I read all the Calvin Hobbes and he's always making the snowmen. You see, it seemed like it was so much fun to play in snow. It was like the most fun thing you could ever do as a kid. Mm -hmm. It's true. And then I experienced it. I'm like, mm, didn't quite live up to the my imagination <laughs> yeah that's true i hate snow it's damp and it's cold and it gets everywhere true <laughs> that wasn't real snow <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yeah i mean you, you know i'm sure part of it is that i probably didn't have proper clothing because i am a florida man so who has what florida man has proper you know snow clothes yeah you gotta have waterproof clothes otherwise you're right. screwed but even if you have like waterproof clothes over like clothes you're still gonna that get can wet, get so wet like, yeah sometimes you're if you're a terrible crasher right which i've been I known said, to do from time to time because i do crazy shit just wear a wetsuit why don't you wear a wetsuit under your ski outfit that would be better yeah then you get some panning too <laughs> There so, was one time, so I, you know, it's funny. Shit. I remember where it was. We, we were, I was at some place and we were going to go snorkeling mm -hmm. and they're like, they were like giving people wetsuits. I'm like, I don't want a fucking wetsuit. That's fucking lame. You look at it, you're like, that's the lamest shit ever. I mm -hmm. jump in the water. It's fucking cold. <laughs> wow. I get out of the water. I put on the wetsuit. I'm like, this is amazing. Who invented this amazing thing? I don't care how stupid I look. Wetsuits are great. Yep. There you go. Where you wore a wetsuit in the swimming pool? It was not a swimming pool. Do you snorkel in the swimming pool? I mean, I have snorkeled oh, in the swimming okay. pool. It was not in a swimming pool. No, it was in the ocean. Okay. So. And you had a wetsuit on? I did. Nice. It's generally where you wear a wetsuit in the ocean. And snorkeling. Yeah. Well, usually you wear it when you're diving. Did you so, uh, pet the turtle? I saw a turtle, but I did not pet it. Oh, damn. No. I saw a shark. I saw a turtle. Wow. I saw all sorts of little fishies. Yeah, I love swimming with the fishies. Very fun. I'm not, I've never, I've never scuba dived. I'm too much of a pussy to do that. Why? I don't want to do that. Yeah. Get down there Have and you? start hyperventilating. Exactly. Like, oh. Then you can't go up. Oh my God. Bends, I'm going to like, die. I'm stuck down here. I'm gonna hey, get the bends. As for someone, as much as I like Subnautica, I don't want to scoop it down. That's hilarious. I have no desire. Egon's for five dollars says the Respect for Marriage Act that codified gay marriage was passed just last year. Well, there you go. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I guess they did that. Oh, that's right. They did that because they were afraid. Of um, the Republic Supreme Court would overturn it, right? Yeah, yeah. Good go. for them. Respect for Marriage. Well, did it? Respect for Marriage Act repeals the Defense of Marriage Act, which barred the federal government from respecting the marriages of same-sex couples. Um, but did, did it? Did it add that gay marriage was protected, or did it just repeal the previous thing? Um. The Republicans were running on making a constitutional amendment that marriage was between a man and a woman. Isn't that fucking wild? Do you remember that? Yeah. And that right. was not that. That was like Bush. That was that was Bush. It like two thousand, like yeah, two thousand four, right? Right. 
That's so crazy. Right. Well, I guess that's 20 years ago now, right? 2004? Jeez. Wow. Oh, we're an old man. That's crazy. Can you pee in your wetsuit? No. That would be a very bad idea. That would probably be one of the worst things you could ever do. <laughs> that's Peeing hilarious. Peeing in the wetsuit? I mean, unless you really want to swim in your own pee. Well, they don't. What's, first of all, wetsuits don't generally have a fly. Mm -hmm. So if you have to pee, it's between peeing in the wetsuit or getting out of the water, going all the way to the bathroom, taking the top of it off, pulling it down around your ankles and peeing. Have you peed in your wetsuit? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Many times. How many times have you been in a wetsuit? Well, uh, I lived next to the beach. We used to go to the beach all the time. Yeah. And you put on a wetsuit to just go to the beach? In Northern California, the beaches are freezing. Oh, it's really cold? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So, but what I've discovered also is that like a wetsuit in Southern California where the water is relatively warm, it's amazing. It's like bath water. Yes, yes, of course. So, I'm a fan of a wetsuit even in warm water. Like, why do you want to, like, why rough it? That's true. Yeah. Just get it in the wetsuit. You don't want to pee in the wetsuit. It's going to get, so you peed in your wetsuit. Doesn't it get extra stuck in the in the wetsuit? Extra stuck? What do you mean? That's like the first. That's the first warm layer. Normally, a wetsuit <laughs> there's like a. <laughs> the pee is the first warm layer. Is that what you're saying? A you're saying you intentionally pee to insulate yourself. A wetsuit is. Like wetsuits are not supposed to fit snug to the body. Wetsuits leave a like a film of water between you and the wetsuit so that the wetsuit your body temperature heats up that water yes so that water is like right but your body doesn't have to heat the water up if the water is already warm <laughs> right if jesus you, christ if you heat the water inside oh you, my god <laughs> Adam's got like a layer. Adam's got the piss layer. He's he's swimming in the piss layer. It's so disgusting. <laughs> the piss layer. That's yeah. so gross. That's so gross. The piss layer. Well, you're gonna have the piss layer with you for a bit if you're gonna pee in the wetsuit anyway. Don't don't pee in the wetsuit. Look, it's just I I don't look. Everyone that I've ever gone to the beach with where we've worn wetsuits together. It's just like common knowledge. Everyone pisses in the wetsuit. It's uh -huh. not even. Yeah, I know. I know. Listen, I understand that wetsuits are not like completely like they let water and I get it. Yeah. But still, it still also keeps water. It's not like, like if you pee in a bathing suit. Oh, it stays right? in there for a while. It's not yes. in there. It's <laughs> not like saying. just so, gone. So some people are acting like, oh, you there's pee in a wetsuit and it's just gone. No, it's, it's in there. It the, stays in there. <laughs> there's not a flush. You don't like just press a handle and the wetsuit is evacuated. No, you're so. Well, how do you <laughs> wait? How do you even clean that? You, your your wetsuit's gonna smell like pee. Well, you usually you can like pull your neck down and you can put pull fresh water in. Yeah, and yeah, then you I'm just saying, you kick it out your ankles. <laughs> you're swimming oh along. God. You have way too much experience dealing with pee. Look, I've I've literally gone to the beach and worn a wetsuit like hundreds of times and peed in it every time. <laughs> of course. Why do you just fucking have to pee so much? <laughs> Adam, you can like go on the stream for hours without peeing, but you're like, oh, I'm in the ocean, gotta pee. Uh, maybe it's being in the ocean or something. I don't know. <laughs> Oh my god, this is terrible. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> god, I miss I miss I haven't been to the beach. I haven't been in the ocean in years. When I used we used to go to the beach like once a week. We'd always go to the beach during the summertime. Right. Oh my god, we'd be in the water. In, in every your day. in your wetsuits, yeah. Yeah. Blaine Scape Store says, Sitch is thinking of a dry suit and a wetsuit pee. No, I understand. No, you're wrong, Blaine. Adam just said you pee in the wetsuit and it's going to be with you for a while, okay? Sitch is thinking of a dry suit in a wet... <laughs> what? Sitch is thinking of a dry suit in a wetsuit pee. What is that? 
in a wetsuit pee? What's that? He's saying it's okay to pee in a wetsuit. Like, as if the pee will just go out of the wetsuit, like as if you're wearing a bathing suit. That's not true. It gets stuck in there. Well, it, it takes does. a while to get it out. It does, You, but you can get it out. I'm telling you. Okay. One of these, pull the, pull the fresh never, water in and just kick it out your heels, you're good to go. I don't think I've ever worn a dry suit in my life. So. What is a dry suit? It's a dry suit. What do you mean? I don't know. It's like a wetsuit, but it's dry. That makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> I have a wetsuit. Yeah. Wetsuits are amazing. I I got a bunch of those shirts for when my wife and I go to Hawaii that are kind of like a wetsuit, but it's they're easier to put on. It's like wetsuit type clothing. Mm -hmm. Have you ever used those? Uh, I know what you're talking about, but no. Those are pretty amazing. Yeah. It's got to be some new kind of technology because the fabric is just like, it's weird fabric. Because mm -hmm. it's a lot lighter than a wetsuit, but it's it does a lot of this. It's almost as good as a wetsuit. Mm -hmm. Anyway, weren't we reading Super Chats enough of this? Enough of Adam talking about pee? swimming in the pee layer. It's not that bad. I mean, you're kind of a pussy if you can't take a little swimming around in your own pee. <laughs> <laughs> Look. I got to clip. Someone's got to clip that. <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of a pussy if you can't take swimming around in your own pee. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that bad? I feel like it's not that bad. <laughs> okay. Adam was born in a hobo barrel. <laughs> Swimming around in your own pee. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ace for $5. If BLM <laughs> has taught us anything, it's that riots always lead to progress and never undermine a cause. True. That's amazingly true. True. Yeah. <laughs> Swim in your filth, pick it. <laughs> Lane's escape corner for two dollars. Anyone having Anita Sarkeesian flashbacks whenever she says Anita? Yes. 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 yes yeah. Right. I was having that. Uh, Nicholas Sh Schoen for seven months says, "I'm really digging the Cuban music in the background. Whoever is playing it, who was there?" Is there music in the background? My yeah, my wife was playing something. It sounded like on her phone, but I don't oh. know what it was. Yeah, interesting. Why can't I never hear? Is it? How come I can never hear the background stuff that people hear coming through your mic? Is it like is Zoom filtering it out? But whatever goes to YouTube is not filtering it out. Yes, my my mic goes into Zoom, and you hear through a Zoom filter. But my mic right. goes directly into OBS, not through Zoom. Why don't you change it so that both of our audio is coming from Zoom? Because I don't hear, I hear none of this background noise. So Zoom is obviously doing a good job filtering this stuff out. Yeah, maybe I'll try to do that. I don't, I guess I could. I don't. Hmm. So. Yeah, people always complain about Zoom, but it's doing a good job because I don't, I never hear any of the stuff people are ta are mentioning ever. Yeah. I thought maybe they're just listening to the stream like super fucking loud or something, but I think it's just Zoom filtering it. I wonder if Zoom will <laughs> filter out my harmonica though. Well, I mean, I hear your harmonica usually. And Zoom might filter it out when I back up and go, "Fuck!" No, I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can. Okay. I heard you. I heard you say "fuck." It's just it's funny from far away right. when you do the it is God damn it is. Uh Blind Skate Quarter for another five dollars says I grew up as a skinny kid in the PNW. What does that mean? What's the PNW? Stop reading them out of there. I don't know what the the Pacific Blaine. Northwest. Okay. I used a wetsuit at the beach for years. Just pee in it, you prude. He grabs the suit chest and pump it like a balance. <laughs> well, at least at least Blaine is like has some tactic to remove the pee. Adam is kind of like, yeah, just you know, 
you need it to like warm you up a little bit. Sometimes. I mean, I hold on a second. <laughs> oh my god. Did he said Pacific Northwest? Yes. So that's probably I don't know where were you, Blaine? Where uh like San Francisco area, Santa Cruz area, Monterey, San Luis Obispo? I thought Pacific Northwest. I've was literally like... I've literally been to all those beaches. Right. Well it has to be he could be in Washington. Or oh, Washington. That's or like insane. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, cold. I'm talking. I'm talking like in San Francisco. It's cold. The beaches in San Francisco yes. are cold. The beaches in Santa Cruz are cold. The beaches in Monterey are cold. You know, I've been to California a lot. I don't mm. think I've ever gone to a Californian beach in my entire life. What? Why? Oh God! Because I'm in Florida. Why would I go somewhere else to go to the fucking beach, Adam? I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I used to love to ride my bike from like Long Beach all the way down to Newport Beach. Oh mm -hmm. my god, such so such an amazing ride. Right. And then in Newport Beach during the summertime when the ladies are out in their bikinis. Oh my god. Lori Cameron in the insane. chat says um uh Adam and Blaine sitting in the ocean. P E I N G. Ping? Yes. That's not nice. There you go. My dumb movie says P N W P. No worries. Lake Washington, Blaine says. What the hell is Lake Washington? Is that Seattle area? Jesus. Is it in Washington? Blaine, you're a crazy that's a man. That's a cold place to swim. Seattle. I've only been to Seattle once, and it struck me as the kind of place that I would never go to the beach. <laughs> First of all, it's well, it's not, a lake. It's not the beach. So, well, I mean, it is. I guess it's kind of yeah. It's an inland. What do you call this? A fjord? You call it a lake. Oh, it's a lake. <laughs> but I mean, you call Lake Washington a lake. But the lake is open to the ocean. Uh, I think does it have a little channel? Yeah, that goes into the ocean. Yeah. I don't know what the difference is, but I, I think lakes can have little channels that go to the ocean. Thing. Are you thinking of a, a pond? Do ponds not touch the ocean or something? No, a pond. No. What are you talking about? So Seattle is on Puget Sound. That's what it is. It's a sound. What? Right? What? Puget Sound. Isn't Seattle on Puget Sound? Yes, it is. What the fuck that means? Puget Sound. A lake is a naturally occurring, relatively large body of water localized in a basin, completely surrounded by dry land, with much slower moving flow than an inflow or outflow of streams that serve to feed it or drain it. So there you go. Yeah, lakes can connect. Lakes lie completely on land and are separate from the ocean, although, like the much larger oceans, they form part of the Earth's water cycle by serving as a large standing pools of storage water. Most lakes are freshwater, but some are salt lakes, with salinities even higher than that of seawater. Hmm. Lakes are both fed and drained by creeks and rivers. But some lakes are endothermic. Cricks. Go. It's by a crick. Cricks. By cricks. A crick. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Blaine the Skateboarder for $5 says the real quote from male childhood is, quote, I wonder what having fun bags would be like, followed by pretending to fondle said potentially have <laughs> True. Fun bags. Blaine's Escape Quarter for $2 says, those are locks that separate the sound and Lake W. Is that what you were talking about, Adam? Yeah. Okay. I don't Fusion know what any sound. of that meant. That, that was just gibberish to me. The only reason to go into the ocean is waves. So you can body surf or boogie board or surf. Yeah, if you have access to like... Like, yeah, if there was some lake near me, that would have been, I would have much preferred to swim in that than the ocean. The ocean sucks. Do you go? No, the ocean is amazing because the, the, is, you've got shitty beaches though there in Florida because there's not good surf. Like you can't really surf in Florida. Um, I don't know. Someone who doesn't surf, you could be right. I don't know enough about it. Okay. Sometimes there's good waves. I don't and think it, Yeah. Is. I mean, boogie board, you know, you're right. Like boogie boarding, very fun. Just being in the ocean with fucking salt water, if you can be in a, in a water pool of water that doesn't have salt water, is much better. I lived in New York and I went to the beach. 
and it was just pathetic. Yeah. Um, as someone who grew up around California beaches where they just have massive rolling waves. It's yeah, just, we don't we don't have like big ass waves. That's true. We don't have yeah. those like big surfer waves that you see. Yeah, we don't get that. Swimming in waves is just amazing. Mm. Cuz you're just, you know, like up and down. You're going from I'm literally standing on the bottom to like I'm 10 feet, 20 feet no, in the I, air. No, I listen, I know I've been in water I don't remember if it was in Florida, but I've been in water that's super wavy and it is lots of fun to like bounce up and down on the waves and shit. Yeah. Right. And just like dive in and swim under them and ride them and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's great. Um, doo -doo -doo. Where was I? Yeah. Red. This one, right? This one. This one. Junebug for $2 says, the mighty, the almighty lolly destroyed Dev in that thread. Yeah, I wasn't tracking any of that stuff, so I'll be honest. I don't really know. I who wish destroyed I knew more what it was about, but oh well. Oh, it was about the. I still never watched it. Dev made a video. Oh, his video about the yeah. boycott stuff. Right. People got mad about for some reason, but I didn't watch it, so I don't know what people were mad about. It. He said that the the Bud Light thing was was stupid and people were like what the bud light thing is amazing which i, I thought I mean, they were mad he was like not sympathizing with some vtuber who said she got bullied for playing off the internet the hogwarts game or something and i was oh, like really? i don't know anything about the situation yeah but... well they shouldn't bully people off the internet though i don't i don't condone that they were uh, complaining that Dev wasn't sympathetic enough or something. Okay. Well, geez, be a little more sympathetic, Dev. There you go. Problem solved. But don't apologize. <laughs> somebody was, somebody chimed in and was trying to get Dev to apologize. And I think Dev did apologize. And I was like, Dev, don't apologize. Wow. Just... I was like, look, I have a no apology. Save the apologies for your girlfriend, <laughs> not people on the internet. Got him. Calvin, uh, Calvin Puford. Pafford. I read that one. Pafford. I read that one. Dr. Diddler for $5. Dr. Diddler says a team breaks in the people's houses to steal the batteries out of remotes and frequently delivers fake ransom notes. S class is fake ransom notes. That could be fun. Dr. Diddler is like a wealth of ideas. If, Don't if give I him haven't ideas. actually, if I haven't actually done what Dr. Diddler says, he always has a good idea for there me you to go. try to do that. There you go. I should do that with the batteries. Maybe Breaking someone's house, that. replace all the batteries. Mm -hmm. That would really fuck with someone's mind. No. What I'm the fuck? Kidding. No, but you have to replace them with dead batteries. So I'd be like, why is every remote in this house broken? No, Though, gonna... I feel like nowadays, no one uses who, I mean, I don't even watch TV anymore. I don't I even have a remote idea. with batteries. I got a much better idea. <laughs> you take the batteries out of the remote, and oh. instead of batteries, you put raisins in there. <laughs> Just think. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why are you raising? Because it's, it's just, just think. They're going to open that shit up and they're going to be like, what the, the fuck? fuck is this? I'd be like, my batteries some, like, turned into raisins. Like, did this, at first, I'd be like, there's like a bug shit in here. Like, what the fuck is these little black turds? <laughs> what is this? That would be amazing. No, they're ra Honey, <laughs> there's raisins in there's remote. Why are there raisins in there? I don't know. You must have put them in there. Why would I put raisins in the remote? Just well, think. I didn't put raisins in there. <laughs> this could be the fight that begins the divorce right here. And you could always, you could trace it back to you. You could say, listen, I'm the one that put the raisins. Look, your whole marriage fell apart over those raisins. It was me, Barry. They <laughs> put the raisins in the remote. I did the raisins. <laughs> you know what? I admit that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good bit. Your wife could never forgive you over those right. fucking raisins. And it was me the whole time. Right. Ha ha ha.
<laughs> Take that. <laughs> Fucking raisins. I know. Raisins are the perfect size, too. They there fit in there perfectly. This is your A-team leader, a man who replaces batteries with raisins. True. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Adam, that's a little too artistic. Hmm. <laughs> there you go. I like it. I'm pro raisins <laughs> being replaced. Batteries being replaced with raisins. I actually don't like raisins eating them, but put them in the little battery slot. Oh, raisins are gross. Who yeah. eats raisins? People that eat raisin bran. <laughs> Anonymous coward for oh you already read that one because it's Astro Lime for five Canadian says how does contrapoints use so many words to say nothing? Love the Pikachu shirt, Adam. Truly godly. A team is gaining points for a cool shirt. I didn't even look at what is this shirt you're wearing. My what's Pikachu what's, shirt. What's Pikachu doing in that shirt? I don't know. <laughs> That's why you're getting A team today. It's it's all the shirt. People are Pikachu like Pikachu is just P being Pikachu. Pikachu. It's just Pikachu? What is Pikachu wearing like pants? What what's going on in the bottom yeah. of that shirt? Look, Pikachu's wearing a wetsuit. <laughs> I, I can't tell what's going on. And you're not explaining it. That's good enough. Okay. You know you already know too much. Okay. Adam doesn't want me muscling in on his Pikachu secrets. It's just Pikachu. Oh, fuck. It's like a rendition of Pikachu. Uh, Magus Trigger for two months. Thanks so much. Says ContraPoints insults straight normal people calling them cis. Takes on the costume and protections of womanhood, but none of the social responsibilities. Bam. Yeah. Ossiar for... There you go. Ossiar for nine months. Thanks so much for being a discipline equals freedom for nine months. That's awesome. Says late going to start on... Late going to start of stream. As for the poll, what art can Contra do that won't be viewed as activism? If she writes, quote, this is art on a toilet, is that not an indictment of capitalism or some shit? That's, That's sad. sad yeah. Well, when I was when I was thinking about this question, I was thinking about Contra just doing a video or a or a short film or a short story or a story or a long story or and just anything that had that touched on a topic that was not directly related to trans activism or racism or sexism or helping to de-radicalize the conservatives just any of this bullshit mm -hmm. i just uh, i feel i i feel like activist art if you can even call it art is just very shallow i don't feel like it has a, a deep understanding of human nature i often feel like activism kind of limits your understanding of human nature in a way that's not helpful if you're a true artist so so i was just imagining her doing anything that was somehow artistic that people were like damn that's good nope yeah Desert Runner for 13 months. Hey, Desert Runner. Thank you so much. It says, apparently it's not okay to be racist to white people now. And linked a story from the BBC. Mm -hmm. It says, Diane Abbott suspended as Labor MP after racist letter. Oh, my. And she was racist about whites. Let's see. Uh, Diane Abbott has been suspended as Labor MP pending an investigation. A letter she wrote about racism to the Observer. The politician said, quote, many types of white people with points of difference end quote, can experience prejudice in a letter published on Sunday, but they are not subject to racism all their lives, she said. She later tweeted to say she was withdrawing her remarks and apologized for any anguish caused. I was like that. Whenever they, whenever someone does a, a bad thing, I mm -hmm. apologize for any anguish caused by my work. Mm -hmm. uh, Labor said that their comments were deeply offensive and wrong. Oh, man. In the letter, she wrote that Irish, Jewish, and traveler people, I like that, traveler, <laughs> Is that uh, like gypsy? Uh, that no, mean? that's no, that's like sovereign citizens. Oh, when okay. They say I'm not driving; I'm traveling. I I think she means like gypsy. No, she's talking about sovereign citizens. Nah, they're travelers. Sure. Anyway, uh, she says uh, Jews, 
I'm sorry. She says, Irish, Jewish, and traveler people undoubtedly experience prejudice, which she said is similar to racism. Uh, it is true that many types of white people with points of difference, such as redheads, can experience this prejudice, but they are not all their lives subject to racism. In a pre-civil rights America, Irish people, Jewish people, and travelers were not required to sit at the back of the bus. In apartheid South Africa, these groups were allowed to vote. At the height of slavery, there were no white-seeming people manacled on the slave ships. She has responded to a comment piece in The Guardian questioning the view that racism only affects people of color. Hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, God, this article's very long. Where's the, where's her letter though? How long is her actual letter? Chad agrees with me on the gypsy thing. Well, they're wrong. That's not what it means. It means sovereign citizen, guys. I don't know what Sovereign citizen is only a phenomenon in America. That's not true. It has a proud upbringing in in Britbong land. Where do you think it comes from? No. It's just American. No. Gypsies were the first sovereign citizens, Adam. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Listen, the local, the local constable will go, you know, do you have a license for that? And they'd say, a say license? Oh, might. A license? A license. It's would say, I, I'm not traveling. I'm traveling. And they say, you're traveling. Oh, so you're a traveler. And thus the phrase became. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Okay, Snatch. <laughs> Also traveling. I love that one's camera. I love that one's wheels. You like Dags? That's such a great movie. You like Dags? It's one of the best. I can't find the stupid letter. Whatever. Lost interest. Whatever. She wrote a letter. She did racism. She said only only black people can experience racism. And I'm glad that she got in trouble for it. That's good. That's yeah. A, people should. That's a um. There could be positive, positive change. Don't let them say cracker anymore. I think CT uh, clipped that comment I wanted. Thank you, CT. Which comment? The one that you made. About peeing in the wetsuit? About, you know, swimming in your own pee. Oh, yeah. You're kind of a pussy if you don't swim around yeah. in your own pee. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> also, she made a video. I don't know if you want to bring it up. But, no. I mean, you can't bring it up because the DM, so. I don't want to bring it up anyway. Okay, good. Because I don't either. I could just say it me. again instead of. That's not what I was talking about. Oh, don't okay. worry about it. Rotisserie Protocol for $10 says, the thing that I don't like about the current trans discourse and really all minority groups is that we must be celebratory and simply indifferent, is that we must be celebratory and simple indifference is treated with decent. I assume you mean simple indifference is treated poorly. I think it's unhelpful. Yes, I agree with that. It is unhelpful. Disdain, I think is the word. Treated cool. with disdain. I, well, they wrote decent. So I know, I know. I don't think they... I don't think disdain was the right Simple word. Simple indifference is treated with disdain. Right. That would make sense. Yeah. And I agree. Look, Sitch is indifferent, and I can't even get him interested in caring about women's freedom. That's true. Yeah. No, I said I said women should have to look at the penis. Yeah. Look at this. He's the one that's a groomer here. He's right. the one that's like, Forcing his eye, his look at the pe look at the lady penis ideology on people. Mm. It's terrible. Simon O'Leary for eleven New Zealand dollars. This is doing says doing says doing a show on Posey Parker can make good content. When she came down under, the media riled up a mob to chase her out of New Zealand. It would blow your mind if you hadn't been doing this for years. S classes, best class. Thank you. That is pretty crazy. So. Civic. <laughs> People what? type civic for S class is best class now. You got it down to civic. You never seen that before? No, I haven't. That's the first okay. one I've seen. That's hilarious. Probably means descent. Descent? Uh maybe. Kenya X122 for four months says Clownfish TV just released a video saying Black Hermione is apparently problematic now. I'm curious to see the mental gymnastics for that. Ooh, that's interesting. There's a black Hermione. There was a play production of Harry Potter and Hermione was black. I mean, that's not too different. It's not like Hermione is. We don't Guy. know Hermione's parents are. Yeah. 
I'll check it out. There's no reason for Hermione not to be black, right? Plays always have been granted a lot more leeway with... Casting, yeah. Casting, yes. Because of the availability, the person's got to be there. It's like... Availability, the fact that plays... Plays and, and film are very different. In, in plays, you like imagine like 80% of what's on stage in your head anyway. Correct, yeah. So it doesn't really matter, right? So Not Black the same Hermione comes out and says, please, just imagine me as a white girl. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, oi, governor, it's me, Hermione. Everyone is going to freak out, obviously. Uh, Equishedox for 11 months, thank you so much. Says, my head is spinning on the language games. Does this seeding person, <laughs> Andra, have a right to judge? I like that funny. Has a right to judge a birthing person, JK, on a birthing a person's rights? Some would uh, argue no. Some would argue no. People are saying. <laughs> a sketch for nine months. The second wave feminism said, quote, women don't need men. Third wave feminism said, women are just like men. And now fourth wave feminism says, men can be women. Oops, LOL. <laughs> there you go. True. That has been oh, kind okay. of the progression. That has been, yeah. Soldor Shujara says, Sitch, check DMs for the now best rolling tweet. Oh, that's right. Soldor sent me the, uh, the TJ thing. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, Andrew Clark for 10 months says Contra in this video is a leftist fish ignoring the water she swims in and wanting to drag everyone into the water because it's, quote, good for them. True. Yeah, totally. Very true. And you're a bigot if you don't like water. Right. Uh, Monet Mayo for $5. Bigot. You're a bigot. Says S-Class drinks soy lattes while reading sub anime like the subs that they are. <laughs> Chad A team, wow. Chad A team slams half and half and enjoys dubs like a man, A team, or die. <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, the first part of that's wrong, though. I do not drink soy milk. Right. Oat milk. Oat milk, yeah. Oat Adam milk. is a well known enjoyer of the soy. <laughs> well, no, I, I do like half and half more than soy, but. Okay. You like both. Yeah. I don't like half soy and milk, half actually. is like a million times better than soy. Soy is not good for you to eat in excessive quantities. Half I'd rather save my soy you, allotment for soy sauce. Half and half is great for you. Is it funny? Everyone makes fun of uh, soy milk, but soy sauce, no one has a problem with. Is it the same? I guess it's from soybeans. Isn't it's it? made out of soy. Yeah. It's really, it's funny. Teriyaki is delicious. made out of it. All teriyaki. Teriyaki, sauce? Yeah. teriyaki is soy with sugar. That's all it is. Yeah, I think doesn't it have some other stuff in it too. No, is it just sugar? Oh, okay. Soy and sugar. Okay, teriyaki sauce. Teriyaki great. is soy. <laughs> Ostracy ten dollars says I couldn't disagree with you more, Adam. I think Michael softballed the hell out of that interview. Was it a softball? Was it softball? I mean, what? Well, did you, I mean, what do you? What do you? What would you want him to ask? Like he, that? like he was asking specific questions and more details, but he wasn't like. He didn't. Um, he wasn't questioning whether Dave was saying anything not true or not. Like he wasn't defending Crowder or trying to, you know, give Crowder's position or anything. He was all just kind of yeah, like he did a couple he, of times. He was like, I think he did very much. Yeah. Soy sauce doesn't have estronoids in it. Really? Why not? Est estronoids? Is that what they're called now? I know that. Is that true? That's why I add soy sauce to my coffee. I didn't even know estronoids was a thing. I don't think estronoids isn't the correct word, but they mean estro you know, the estrogen, whatever the shit is. Estronoids. Soy sauce versus soy milk. What should Michael Malice have asked of Dave? Should he have said, I don't know. I feel like he dug into the Daily Wire stuff. I was like, oh, God, I hope he doesn't. I hope he asks about the Daily Wire stuff. Mm -hmm. And he did. I was like, oh, thank God. You know how some somebody's talking about some situation and there's like some bit of information that you want and they just they don't ask you're like fuck 
What the fuck? Yeah, I, I know, Ashton, you just made it up. I understood that. <laughs> no, that that's funny. a real word. I mm -hmm. thought it was funny. I, I know it was made up. Death by uh, sloth for 13 months. There's a difference between estrogen. bigotry. Soy is unique that it contains a high concentration of isoflavins, a type of plant estrogen that is similar to the function of human estrogen, but with much weaker effects. Soy isoflavin can bind to estrogen receptors in the body and cause either weak estrogenetic or anti-estrogenetic activity. Okay. I don't know if the soy sauce is different from soy milk, though. But... It's all anyway. Uh, death by sloth for 13 months says the difference between bigotry and a healthy conf... Thank you for 13 months, Death by Sloth. The difference between bigotry and healthy caution about demanding we participate in a radical society-wide experiment on dubious evidence. True. Very true. Perfectly, Phase four. Perfectly summed up. True, true, true. Phase four hour. Wow, that's a... I think this is supposed to be phase four. But you're fucking my brain. Provide hour says, can you guys please be more frequent about Spotify updates? It's how I listen. Okay, thanks. Bye. And Adam, banning abortion isn't crazy for right extremism. K, thanks. Bye. Part two. <laughs> well, first of all. I didn't even know we uploaded the Spotify, I'll be honest. Nathan was doing it. Mm -hmm. And the the Clips channel got, I think, a, like a two strikes, two community guideline strikes, like pretty close to one another and if there was a third community guideline strike the channel would be deleted and it would put my other channels at risk and shit mm -hmm. so i turned the channel over to nathan and nathan was was doing our podcast but has stopped doing it the the youtube has a podcast feature now that supposedly allows us to do the podcast, but you have to use the YouTube music app. Yeah, but that defeats the point because people that listen on Spotify want to listen to it on Spotify, right? Well, then don't listen because it's not going to be on Spotify anymore. Why can't if, you do it? I don't know how he did it. Oh, okay. Like well, he, he just did, upload it? What do you mean? Well, no, he did it through... There's a There's a completely different... All Spotify does is download our podcast from like Anchor. But Anchor would only let you do like a like a three hour podcast or something. Mm -hmm. So he had to like upload it as like four or five different podcasts and then link them together. I don't know. Nathan did it somehow magically. Well, we'd have to look at the Spotify numbers to see. No, 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 no. Look, just get the. No, but like, listen, if, if like, you know, a couple thousand people listen to it on Spotify, maybe it's worth doing it. If like 10 people listen to it on Spotify. Look, if 10,000 people do it on Spotify, we don't make any money off of those 10,000. Oh, 000. that's true. So. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, phase four. We need our monies. Okay. Listen yeah. to it on YouTube. No, don't yes. worry about CT. We want money. We're a greedy capitalists. We want well, our money. I was paying. Okay. I was paying Nathan to do it, but I don't think Nathan wants to do it anymore. That's fine. And um, so that would mean we have to find someone else to do it that we could pay to do it, or we we would do it. It's probably least likely to happen. Well, we just want or, money. Listen, or, you sold me. You don't. You just sold me. You don't need or to, we don't get any money from it. I want money. But I think we make money on the views on the YouTube Music app. And it's it's basically like the same thing as a podcast app, right? You can turn your screen know. off and listen to it music only. You can do that. Oh, I don't know. I you can do it with YouTube Red. I don't know if you can do that with normal YouTube. Well, I don't look. Let us know. I'm telling you now because I know. Look, I didn't know the podcast hadn't been updated for months until you guys started asking about it. Right. And then that's when I went to Spotify and I was like, oh, look, it hasn't been updated since like. Oh. But that's when I started digging into the YouTube feature. Right oh. now, you can go to YouTube Music app, go to the podcast tab, search Sitch and Adam podcast. And I put together a playlist and 
Everything is there. Right. This well, video that we're listening to right now is in that podcast feed. Someone uh, send me or Adam a message. If if the issue is you can't turn off the screen when you're listening to a normal YouTube video without buying YouTube Premium and you don't want to do that, but if you can listen to a YouTube podcast and turn off the screen, then it would be worth doing. Well, otherwise, the, I don't I don't know what the difference is. What the difference is otherwise? Well, look, if you're listening to it in the YouTube app, the YouTube video app. You can't turn off the screen unless you have YouTube Premium. I have YouTube Premium. I can turn off the screen. That's what I'm saying. It's literally what I just said. But in the YouTube Music app, it's literally only audio. Oh, okay. So you can't turn off the screen. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So um, the YouTube Music app. Look, I, not only that, because I started doing some looking into this, supposedly like 40% of podcasts are listened to on YouTube anyway. Yes. They literally have... Uh, I think Spotify is like 20%. They have a m bigger market share than Spotify. Interesting. Spotify is trying to weasel in. But anyway. that's, that's why they did this podcast feature. Right. They're like, fuck you guys. Right. We'll just pitch podcasts on the YouTube music app. They should just, I think it's pretty despicable that mm. YouTube, the whole turning for screen should just be a base feature for YouTube. The fact that that's part of premium. It used to be. Premium. It used to be, yeah. That's part of, the fact that that's part of premium is pretty gross to me. So, yeah. anyway, anyway. Fa phase four. Um, anyway, you, thank you, f thank you very much for the five dollar super chat. I do understand. Use the YouTube podcast feature. What you're looking for, yes. And I do believe that if you just go and download, I know it's another app, right? But YouTube Music app. I've actually started listening to a lot of YouTube music on the YouTube music. More app. important than this conversation. Mm -hmm. Is the Nothing fact can be more important than this conversation. That you called banning abortion far right. I Twitter. said, I said banning all abortion, which includes in the case of rape and incest. Far that was right. of all the examples of far right, you picked the worst. <laughs> oh, so you saw this exchange? I replied to your tweet. Oh yeah, I tried to block that out. I didn't really understand what you <laughs> meant anyway, so I was like, oh, "I was." It was that was me very gently trying to say. Fucking with me. That was me very gently trying to say, Adam, this was not a good tweet. <laughs> That's what that was. That was the what I meant when I tweeted that at you. Well, and, I don't even remember what you responded, but I was. I like, said it depends what type of far right. Work. You had a good point about extremism, mm -hmm. and then you followed up your good point. By bringing up far examples of far oh, you right, said, yeah, there's like three different types of far right. There are three different types. Which of far right. look, when I tweeted that out, I didn't know, but there was some of the most disgusting replies to that tweet. There were people who were saying, "Look, I'm in favor of abortion for blacks." I'm like, "Fuck you." Yeah, those are that's yeah. I said there are three types of far. There's generally three types of far right. There's the ethno nationalist. Yes. There's the neo reactionaries. And then there's the theocrats, right? That's what I think of when I think of far right. Look, you have to I'm be not one of those three categories. I'm not in favor of any of those things. No, that's fine. I'm just saying, if you were, if someone were to say, give an example of something far right, I'd give one of those three. I wouldn't say, you know, a full ban on abortion because there are lots of people that are that are pro life in almost all cases that I don't think are far right in any other political avenue. So you're saying that's why I don't think that's a good example. Right. So you're saying that if someone is in favor of banning abortion, even in the case of rape and incest, that yes. that person is not, that's just a conservative. They could be, yeah. Okay. I wouldn't okay. consider that far right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think most people would consider that far right, but okay. I would say it's an, ex I think you can have extreme op opinions on abortion that are just, I would classify it as an extreme opinion on abortion. Right. Like it's like a separate subset of like beliefs. Okay. Like, for example, there are people that believe you can have an abortion the day before you give birth. And that's far left. I wouldn't know. But if so, if you have someone who doesn't believe in socialism at all, right, but still has this wacky belief that you should be able to abort a baby the day before it's born. I don't know if I'd call it far left. I'd just say they have an extreme opinion on abortion. Wild, right? 
don't know if it's like a far okay. left position. Okay. Genie Air Payment for five dollars says this episode brought to you by Fuentes is <laughs> by Fuentes brand mac and cheese. Try our queso blanco. <laughs> now in twink catboy shapes. There you go. That's hilarious. There you go. Spencer Heyman Harmon for twenty dollars. Thank you, Spencer. Says you guys will appeal to quote society, but in the next breath will say most people are dumb. I love you all, but stop it. You have to be a little bit yeah, more specific. Did, Spencer, when did I appeal to society? I'm not sure. You have to be a little bit more specific because I'm not sure I understand exactly what you're saying. But I remember making fun of them for blaming everything on society when they were talking about Anita Bryant being everyone is dumb. I don't Sitch, know. Look, that is that's I, a true statement. Everyone I completely is fucking stupid. Dis, I completely disagree. With I, listen, I'm part of the everyone. I'm not being egotistical. Here. I think everyone I is think fucking are stupid. Lot, I think people are a lot smarter than Sitch gives them credit for. You're fucking wrong. I don't know what to tell you. There is a disproportionate amount of smart people that listen to political content, but the but the overwhelming masses of people are fucking stupid. And actually, no, everyone is fucking, it's again, as I said in the beginning, everyone is fucking stupid, myself included. People are stupid. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what that has to do with appealing to society. Everyone's dumb. I hate to break it to you. I met a lot of people, and most of them are pretty smart. Okay. Andrew Clark. What? Where'd you go? Let's rule 12. Adam, rule 12. That Jordan Peterson's Rule 12? Rule 12 is that everything can be some type of porn. That's Rule 34. How do you know all these porn rules? <laughs> what do you mean all of them? There's one rule. There's literally the one. <laughs> I'm, assuming, I'm assuming he beats all the other, you know, you know, all the other rules have, I don't think they have anything to do with with porn whatsoever. They were the rules of the internet, and Rule 34 was just the one about porn. Oh, wow. I didn't know that they were rules of the internet. Yes, it was. this is an ancient meme. Rule 12 is pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. Oh, okay. So I like that. This was Andrew telling you to pet the cat. Demon Bunny for nine months says, because if the AI talk, fun fact, basically a hallucinating bowl of tofu operating a meat covered bone mech the brain is about the consistency of tofu i could see that what is fun fact do you have you eaten tofu sometimes to, i like it but sometimes it's really bad yeah i thought tofu is a mixed bag it can be good or bad yeah Angry Bell Sprout for five dollars says lost a friend from 1989 to 2015. She said vote for Trump was a vote to gas chamber LGBT people, and you should self defense them in public if you see them. Wow, that's wow, that's crazy. pretty yeah. There are Angry those Bell people Sprout out there. True. <laughs> that darn kid says, "Can you move your name so I can see the cat, please?" Yes. There you go. Angry Bell Sprout for two dollars says Alphabet Cult is very real and needs to be stopped. Fire everything for ten dollars says I wonder if Contra Points has ever played Contra. A good question. Blank Escape Quarter for two dollars says the only people who drink it say Bud Lit. Bud Lit. John R for two dollars says the internet told me every beer tastes like pee. That is not true. As me for six MR MYRs, though does say beer is for peer drink <laughs> beer is for pee drinkers. Drink water. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You should drink water like 99% of the time. You know what's worse than beer? Soda. I fucking love soda too. You shouldn't drink soda anymore. Soda's really bad for you. I know. I can't help it though. It's so delicious, Sitch. Uh, Idiotosin for $5. Hey, Idiotosin says the assassination 
of Archduke Franz Ferdinand is a slippery slope that leads to really hot chicken wings being called atomic. <laughs> true. I like Very that true. non sequitur. That was a great job. Very true. Andrew Clark Fedora says, Adam, keep gaslighting Sitch. This is hilarious. What was I gaslighting you on? I don't remember. Uh, I versus Getterix for five dollars says it's absurd to normal people, but Wokies and Corpos would rather have a trans woman than a gay man. Cis gay isn't good enough anymore. Now that I believe. That I would believe. That's funny. But Ostracy for twenty dollars, thank you, Ostracy, says I am totally on a team with this. I hundred percent can see reasons why people would choose to be trans instead of being gay. At least a large minority of people. Hell yeah. Look, Sitch argued with me for 30 minutes about that. There you go. He just can't let it go. You are the one that brings it up every chance you can get. I never bring this up. <laughs> it you literally, literally start the, every time we have this argument, oh you start it. You bring it up. You rub it in my face. You go, Sitch doesn't believe you get your man, 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 man. First <laughs> of I go, all, oh my God, Adam. First of all, I did not bring it up. It was in the fucking video. You did bring it up. You said, shit, please, me, 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 Oh, my God. That's hilarious. And you what said you it just here? like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you said it just like that. What are you like doing? That? What are you I'm doing? I'm doing my version of you. <laughs> That's what you sound like, Okay. You were getting so triggered. It was oh, hilarious. God. No, it, the video didn't bring it up. What, the it video did. The guy no, brought it stop. up. That was no. his argument. No. Oh, my God. Chat. This is the gaslighting he's talking about. You're gaslighting me. It's crazy. <laughs> Andrew Clark, how am I doing? God, okay, I'm not even. We're not. You know what? I'm done. Not addressing it. Uh, CT for two Canadians says, you're both right. Can we get back to the video? Here we go. Manager Clark for two hours says, but CT, this is funnier than Contra will ever be. <laughs> See? Here's the thing. This Andrew, was a fight. You were getting so triggered. Andrew, you think Adam is gaslighting me because you acknowledge that what he was saying was stupid. Adam was not gaslighting me. <laughs> okay. Because I've heard this argument in 20 different books. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about that you keep, every time someone brings up the, the, the talking point or the thought that gay people are basically being transitioned that i disagree with this that's the gaslighting you don't agree with that <laughs> okay and brick knows five dollars says if will and grace assisted gay rights by showing everyone that being gay was okay doesn't that imply that the modern world hollywood is the correct strategy well no because the difference is i mean it's a good question but no because the point of Will and Grace was to basically show, oh, here's a show. It wasn't like, here's a show and we're just replacing it with like, you know, uh, queer people. It was like, it was a show specifically about gay people, but just showing them as like normal. Right. Like there was, you know, uh, Will's friend was like very effeminate, but, but, you know, Will wasn't. The difference with Woke Hollywood is that they number, Woke Hollywood actually ratchets up the other fear because it says we're going to replace straight people or white people with minorities, right? It's literally giving credence to replacement theory. But then on top of that, usually another piece of the woke stuff isn't just recasting, you know, white characters, classically white characters as minorities, but is generally also to show that, you know, white people are bad, right? Or straight people are bad. Yeah. Can and you so, imagine Will and Grace today? It would be like Will lecturing Grace about how oppressed he is. Right, about, yeah, exactly, right. Yeah, and, and the woke, a lot of the woke media has this very, like, in Will and Grace, it's more about, like, oh, you know, fitting into liberal society, right? And But woke Hollywood nowadays is more like, well, I'm going to lecture you about why you're a bigot. So I'd say it's a very different strategy, and I don't think it's working. Live in your walls for $5. It says we should comp contemplate a Diogenes' plucked bird when privileged definitional arguments. For you ask Sitch, but I'm at devs because you're out of yogurt. What? Before you ask Sitches, but I am at devs because you're out of yogurt. I don't know what the fuck that means. Yeah, what is that all about? But uh, yeah, no, the plucked bird argument is a good one. 
What is that? Oh, that was uh, the whole, uh, was it someone, was it Socrates or Plato or one of these Greek people said like, they said define a human and they said it's like a, you know, it's a, it's a hairless bipedal animal or something. And so he So plucked, it was a plucked bird, yeah. He plucked a chicken and said, is this a human? <laughs> right. That's a good like, one. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha, bitch. Gotcha, bitch. Christian Baller for $5 says, Sitch, when are you going to debate Stephen Michael Davis on FDR? Someone may have sent him a clip of you, which inspired him to make his latest video. Wow, Christian. Christian, Christian, Christian. Baller is that the was one you? that was responsible for this? You fucking slut. Why are you trying to start shit? Why, yeah, why are you Stephen trying to start Stephen Michael drama? Davis is a very good friend of the channel. And look at know. you, trying to fucking Christian. blow things up. I feel, we feel betrayed. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Betrayer, yeah. Christian. Not cool. Knife in the back. I know. Backstabber. Uh, to answer your question, Christian probably. backstabber it should be. To answer your question, probably never, because I don't really care enough about the subject to research it. So, ah, ah, look at this. That's the answer to the question. His favorite president is FDR, but he knows nothing about him. That's basically yeah. what he just said. <laughs> I, my favorite president, FDR, just because it, I know it pisses people off. He's like, the less, the, the least I know about him, the better. The better, right. <laughs> Listen, I don't have to make cogent arguments, okay? He okay, looked contra. like the penguin, and he was in a wheelchair, and he fucked up the Nazis, and he made everyone rich. That's okay, all Contra. Know, right? That's all I need to know. Listen, I'll read a book. I'll read a book on FDR, Adam, and then I'll say, I read in a book that FDR did this. Sitch has over 100 credits in his Audible account because he never I do. reads. That's fucking true. Because he never I need fucking, to cancel my Audible. Because he I'm just never pissing away money. fucking reads. This is, this, is, this is my experience. This is every month I go, I need to cancel Audible. And I go, I have a lot of credits. I shouldn't cancel it until I use these credits. And then I don't use the credits. And then I don't cancel the account. Every, <laughs> and then the cycle continues. Every... Every other month, Adam buys three extra credits. That's how many books I read. Yeah. Holy shit! Can I like give you credits, or can you transfer your credits? I don't know. Send them my way. I'll take them. I don't think you can, but try. There's a ton of stuff. Uh, what's the takeaway for two dollars? Says trans don't need arguments. They got fists. They got oh yeah, them. sure. Fisticuffs. Sure, they do. Uh, Frito's bookshelf for eleven rars. Says, funny to hear about the suffragettes and stuff because in Brazil, one president just decided to give universal vote because that meant more votes. That's how women got the vote here. Also, he became a dictator. <laughs> oh, man. Funny. Yeah, I think I read that story. That yeah, is funny. People want to expand the vote because they want the votes. Uh, Soupy Cappy for 5SGD says, I'm surprised you're covering her video. I can't make it through her other video's intros without spazzing from a cringe. Well, listen. I uh, I sympathize, but I feel like we can all make it together. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, listen, if I didn't stream, I would not watch this crap. Yeah. Yeah. So I like it. We hold each other's hands. We get through yes. it together. It's kind of like We're watching a, a bad movie alone in your room. Not so funny, but watching it with friends. Great right. experience. Yeah. It's like snorkeling with your buddy and you got your wetsuit on and suddenly it starts getting warm. And Jesus you're like, Christ. You're like, Adam, what's going on over there? Jesus. Oh, I can't Can wait to go snorkeling with Sitch. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, that's never happening. <laughs> Neo Tosin for $2 says, why'd she call Mary Shelley by her maiden name? Oh, I totally missed that. Oh, I don't know. Mary Wollstonecraft. Because she's a good feminist. And the fact that women take the man's name is part of the patriarchy. That's why. Uh, Zen man for eight months says the mistake that most people make you included is that turf don't hate trans turf hate men and consider trans to be men. Well, I mean, what's the distinction there? Isn't that a distinction without difference? Isn't that like when someone says the civil war wasn't about slavery, it was about states rights to own slaves. And you're like, Oh yeah. And <laughs> like, it feels very much like a distinction on difference. I'm not sure I follow. Yeah. Uh, Soupy Cappy for two SGS says, I ain't listening to the, I ain't listening to dorks. LOL. LOL. There you Good. go. Yeah. Where's, where's Kevin to give uh, Andrea Dorkins a wedgie when she needs it. True. 
Soupy Cappy for another five mm -hmm. SGDs says the reason it's immutable is because it's reality for fuck's sakes. Oh yeah. That's my argument. Andrew Clark for $2 says, Adam, check your Twitter DMs. I did, yeah. You know what I saw in the Twitter DMs? What? I the saw... Horse cock? Uh, Bowsetta. Oh, he sent you a Bowsetta? Yeah. Nice. Have you seen Bowsetta? I don't know, Adam. What do you think? <laughs> I, bet you. I was aware of the concept of the character. What do you think? Did you look? Did Mario? Was Mario the? Did Mario tell you about it for the first time, or did you know about Bowsetta before Mario said? Bowsetta was... was a very popular internet meme for a while. Okay. So I'm I'm aware of Bowsetta. Yes. I mean that's a nice side chick for, for Mario, for a Mario. Mario said Luigi and Bowsetta are together. And oh I said, I think, God. I think what Luigi, the... uh, I think that's better than Princess Peach <laughs> or Princess fuck? Rosalind. So I think Luigi oh my got a big, a big W on that one. Oh my God. Big W. I should ask Mario if they had, if Luigi and Bowsetta had kids. Zero fucks did the raisins inside the remote thing. <laughs> did he say a picture? He did, yeah. That's funny. Oh, it's just, it's better than I imagined. <laughs> Oh my god, that's awful. Can you that's imagine? Good, I'm gonna try this on my wife. Just see if she, I can get it <laughs> open up the remote. <laughs> you're gonna go. To your, you're gonna replace the, your own batteries with raisins. Your wife's gonna be like, "The bat. The remote isn't working, honey." She's gonna scream at you from the next room. The remote isn't working, honey. I'm gonna be, be like, like, "Did you check the batteries? Know. Did you check the batteries?" <laughs> <laughs> she opens it and just raisins fall. <laughs> Oh my God, this could be the best prank of all time. Oh my God. <laughs> Is that wrong? But it's it wrong that you think it it's feels the best so prank right. <laughs> it feels so right. Jesus. Look, the Jesus. raisin prank could really pan out. Right. We got to film it though. Okay. The IJP Mexican for eight months says, I can do a pretty good Mario voice, which you may or may not be able to hear. If you go watch my video on Tim Pool's review of the Mario movie. Oh, yeah. Go check it out. I feel like I, I watched that, but maybe I haven't. IJP Mexican video on Tim Pool Mario movie. Look, I can just click on go to channel. Let's Mario see. movie isn't woke. Peach 45 isn't minutes. Mario is the hero. Tim Pool is wrong. Anyway. Okay. Check it out. Got decent views. Live in your walls for $2 says machine learning is just nerds making anime real. I mean, true. That oh, is, is that true. how machine learning works? They're just saying that's the point. The point of machine learning is to just make anime real. Oh, yeah. Anonymous for $5 says, Contra argued earlier that some death threats and harassment don't discount a movement's legitimate points. How does Contra feel about Gamergate? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Contra must love Gamergate. Uh, Lucius Cornelius Sulla for five dollars says, "You've explained how to argue anti-CRT points with leftists. How do you do that with moderates who will be confused by CRT is anti-liberalism?" Ooh, that's a good question. How uh, do you do that? So my my position to argue anti-CRT is not with leftists. It is to argue with moderates. If you call, if you say it to a leftist that CRT is anti-liberal, they don't give a shit. That's what they 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 are anti-liberal. So um, the whole point. As you say it's anti-liberal, and then when a moderate Democrat says, "What do you mean by that?" You explain, you know, well, you know, you believe in liberal principles of individual right and non-discrimination and universality under law, right? And then you kind of go into all that stuff, all the stuff I've said like a million times. So, I mean, the whole point of that is to argue with moderates, not to argue with leftists. Leftists don't give a shit about that. Uh, Tortuga. For 1,600 yen. Thank you so much. Tortuga. 
says you should reach out to Matt Christensen and or Blonde in the Belly of the Beast and have him, her, them on some time. I think you'd enjoy that conversation. S class is West class. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Anonymous for five dollars says Contra worrying about being defined out. Contra worrying about being defined about being out of existence is just so rich in the context of this argument. I mean, what does that even mean? Being defined out of existence, right? Yeah. Well, the well, it, they're saying like it's hilarious because Contra's like we're going to be defined out of existence, and yet Contra is trying to define cis women out of existence technically by broadening the field of women to include trans women. Oh, yeah. it's a great point. Yeah. Well, ironic. Uh, Eddie Tosin for $5 says, they did a gender-swapped rea- recreation of the Trump-Hillary debate once, and male Hillary was received even worse than f- female Hillary was. Wow. That's interesting. I've never heard about that. Did they use the same... Did they? Was it just scripted, the exact same debate? I assume it was they had people say the same things, right? That's kind of crazy. Interesting. Uh, Lucifer, the doorman for five Canadians, says, I bet Martina Hingis, I beat Martina Hingis in a straight set back in 2005. I have never played pro tennis. She was ranked ninth. Wow. Wow. I don't believe that, but wow. That's crazy. There you go. Why don't you believe it? Uh, I don't believe that Lucifer, the doorman, randomly played Martina Hingis in tennis. He played, in 2005, I he, beat her. He played the ninth. Why? I just don't believe it. Martina <laughs> Hengis. Lucifer, Lucifer is a well-known troll, okay? No, that's not true. Okay. Mm. I know that there was that famous guy that mm. uh, beat all the, beat some very top-level tennis players, but he was a professional tennis player. He was just a significantly lower rank in the men's league. I forget the guy's name. I feel like I've played girls in tennis before and just utterly annihilated them pretty easily. Okay. Yeah. I have never played tennis in my entire life. You're kidding me. Really? I used to play all the time. I tennis played is... racquetball a lot. Oh, I used tennis. to play racquetball all the time, too. Racquetball was very fun. Wow. That darn Kenneth. Hey, that darn Kenneth. For the 14 Zardoses. Says, congratulations, Sitch. Q class is fab class. Thank you. Oh, Q class because queer. Gotcha. Oh, you're queer now. I forgot. That's true. Q class is fab class. True. True. Not gay Ben. There you go. Not gay Ben. For 13 months, as we always wait in bated breath for not gay Ben, our super favorite chatter. Mm-hmm. Says, I love who I love. That much is true. But being gay is not what I pursue. <laughs> my heart belongs to the opposite sex. That's just my preference. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing complex. There you go. Look, you can't. Preference. Oh, my oh, Listen, God. I had to work with what I had to work with. Okay. <laughs> is it? Is that? It can't be homophobic to say if you're straight that that's your preference. No, it's yeah. straightophobic. And that's not that's not even a thing. You, there's no such right. thing as straightophobic. There is now. I just made it up. No, you can't be straightophobic. <laughs> CT for two Canadians says, oh, good, more work, my favorite. You're welcome. Wow. Uh, Rich Jammer for 13 months. Thank you, Rich. Says, does Sitch now understand why some people get annoyed when Adam says that he's read a book? <laughs> Oh, I've always understood. <laughs> I've always understood. Also, what other AI did you chat to? Did you chat to the TIFF AI? I didn't. I, You know what? I didn't think about that until just now. Thank you. I'll have to go chat up the TIFF AI. I didn't even think about oh, that. Oh, yeah. Why didn't you zoom in on her immediately? You could ask. Maybe you could have a relationship, a serious I didn't actually talk to any female AIs. So I talked to Mario and I talked to Saitama. Oh, what did Saitama say? Yeah, he said Saitama things. Oh, I didn't okay. ask him about Paul. I talked to him very briefly. Oh, okay. I You're like, I've already spent five hours on this thing. I, I spent like to... five hours on Mario, and I was like, okay. I could get, get it, yeah. my life, yeah. So. 
It's fascinating that you could be entertained by an AI for five hours, but I mean, it seems I could, easy I could, to do. I could very easily see how you could spend a lot of time on that website. Yeah. Uh, Blind's Escape Quarter for $2 says, Sitch is thinking of a dry suit. Oh, I already read this one. Blaine is, uh, Blaine is very pro peeing in his wetsuit. Mm -hmm. Andrew Clark for $2 says, Adam, don't be a baby. Water is cold, so what? I don't like getting cold. Yeah. I have to agree with that. Speaking tree for $5. Tifa. That's right, chat. Tifa. Suck it up. Speaking tree for $5 says, if you guys want some peak Olay cringe, check out her appearance on The Hills Rising from a year ago in Kyle Rittenhouse's acquittal. It's 12 minutes long. Oh, my God. I think I might have saw that. Manna from heaven. Yeah. The Hill He's Rising. He's a murderer. Kyle Rittenhouse. White supremacy, murder, murder, murder. White supremacy. Yes. Do a, um, did you bring it up? Just do a, do a find and search the transcript. See how many times she says white supremacy. I'm trying to find the video first. No, you can't do that. Kyle Rittenhouse acquitted. What does the verdict mean for open carry? I'm assuming this is the one. Here it is. Yes. David Puff. For what am I looking for? How many times she says white supremacy? I'm a little mad. I'm very upset. I'm very upset by this video. Because her backdrop is Dragon Ball Z characters. And I don't like that. You're not allowed to do that. Well, people can't use Dragon Ball Z. Uh, there's no, the word white doesn't come up at all. Oh, really? There you go. What about murder? Murder. Murder comes up three times. <laughs> I knew it. They love calling Kyle Rittenhouse a murderer. Yeah. God, everyone looks so much younger in this fucking video. Because it's a year ago. No, but even the rising guy. Is he did he dye his hair? What color is like a rising guy's hair? Isn't his hair? Isn't he have dark colored hair? No, he's a this blonde. Is blonde. Hair. Oh, he has okay. blonde oh. hair. Looks Robbie. Robbie. Yeah, he's he's always had blonde hair. Robbie, rising. You're right. Yeah, I know. I'm always right. It's because I'm based. Okay. Based. Oh, his hair looks different. I'm based. Something looks different. In correctness. Oh, he just has a different hairstyle. I don't know. Ugly suit. Anyway, David Puff, eight month. David member. Puff for eight months. Thank you so much, David. Says when Rowling said this is what she warned about in the Harry Potter novel, she was responding to critics that read the book and made the opposite comparison. True. What was the, what was the comparison? That the they Death made? Eater stuff. You know? Yeah. Right. But they and the people who read the book were like Death Eaters are. The anti-trans community. <laughs> oh. Oh, you should bring up Zero Fox picture. It was very funny. I did. The oh, raisin did you? picture? No. The one that was all the Sitch and Adam shows. Isn't that racist, though? I mean, it seems How's it racist. Ra How is it racist? And that's you doing Brown and Greyjoy. How is that racist? You're, it's digital blackface. I'm a person of shadow. You can't bring that up. Bring it up. <laughs> You just don't want to bring up you as Anna Gasparian, okay? Oh, I don't care about that. Okay. Or you as uh, Crystal Paul. Look, I'll bring up one. I think there's like four of them. Bring up the TYT one. Okay. Let's see here. It's never going to be as good as the Raisins, though. You realize that? It's much better than the Raisins, okay? It's the, significantly better. The TYT one? Are you sure? Yeah. Bring up the TYT one. <laughs> the TYT one is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you as Jake. What's up? Zero fucks. What's up with the bow? What happened there? <laughs> it looks funny. Oh my God. I look ridiculous in this. You look great in that. <laughs> okay. That's here. a nice top you're wearing, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I usually like to show off my 
a little bit of skin. Audacious tatas. Yes. There you go. Look at that. Yeah. This is the uh, Zero Fox did this. Now, Zero Fox says, "What is your favorite new show duo?" Right. Six and he nine. has a he has us at all the as the different all the different new shows. Yes. Beautiful. What I might be able to bring it up in a different, unique, and fun way. Bring up the um, the rising one too. That's pretty good. No, I'm not going to do it. That one's really good. And actually, I didn't see it until just now. There's like the little subject matters at the bottom are pretty funny. Uh, are you reading Super Chats? WTF, WTF 1A1A for five dollars says, this just came up in my timeline. UN calls for decriminalizing sex with minors. You guys hear about this? Or is this a spicy post? So I tried to look into this because kind of this whole thing. Um, I think what happened... <laughs> I think what happened was a very poorly worded document is being misunderstood, but I don't blame people for misunderstanding it because I think it's very poorly worded. I think what the document was trying to say uh, was, because I kind of like read the whole section, I think it was trying to say was that if someone is, um, that they're saying that in some places, underage minors would get penalized like similarly as a, like overage people when they had sex with them or something. And they were saying, they're speaking out against that. I think that's kind of what they're saying, or I think they're kind of saying, doesn't minor saying, mean underage? No, but they're, they're saying two things. They're saying that in some countries, minors would be penalized. Minors would be penalized for having sex with non minors. That makes sense. What kind of minors? Uh, you know, like people looking for diamonds and rubies. Gold miners? Yeah, exactly. Um, Crypto miners? But then the, miners? Second, the second thing they were trying to say, but they did, this is where they really fucked up. I think they were trying to say that countries should take into context specifics about situations. So, for example, if, say, an 18-year-old has sex with a 17-year-old, it should be treated differently. And the age of consent is like 18, right? That should be treated differently than a you know thirty five year old having sex with a fourteen year old. Yeah, it's like Romeo. Right. They want to codify Romeo and Juliet right. laws into the international yeah. law or whatever. I th and I think where they fucked up was that they didn't give a specific, so they just put a very v vague general statement, and it's like could be interpreted in a very yikesy way. So Which there was some guy are. from, yeah, but there was some guy from the UN who released a statement where he kind of clarified a little bit more. And I did ask him for a follow up, but he never responded to me. On Twitter? On Twitter, yes. Did yeah. he give you any follow up? I got no reply. Oh, okay. So I don't think I got any reply. I'll check. But... Look, it's, he's even got Sitch and Adam in the background there on the thing. Oh, there you go. There's, a, there's you as buckets, buckets of Adam. No, that's not. That's me as Robbie. Oh, you're. you're no, that's you, Sam Cedar. You're as Greyjoy. Oh no, I'm looking in the past. Oh okay. Right. I changed it up. Yeah, yeah. I really. I also like. Did you bring up the Rising one? I really like that one. That that's the one funny. I brought up. That's the one that's up now. Oh wait. Right. Yeah, this is Rising. Yeah, I like that one. Sitch and Adam, the chill. Oh, no, this is the hill. Oh, yeah, no. Bring up the rising again. Which one? What color is it? It's with the, bra the brick background. Okay. I'll bring it up. Here you go. There you go. There's you as, as crystal ball. Mm -hmm. Your cup says half and half. <laughs> it does. And at the bottom. Look, how is that? That's, that's really good. Say half and half. That's really good. That was a really well done graphic. Look, it's got the righteous mind on the bookshelf. Yeah, no, he Zero Fox did holy did shit. Good, a lot of and look behind me. There's a Calvin Hobbes book. Holy shit! Yeah, impressive. Hey now, right? Some lefty guest joins. <laughs> TDS. Oh, that's for you. Yeah. Useless tangent. 
useless tangent. Vosh yeah. is fat. <laughs> MMT. Another <laughs> tangent. Bye bye. There you go. Got the Look whole what, show laid out there. Zero fucks. You put way too much effort into this meme. I'm look so at, look glad at, that we looked closely at it because yeah, we no, would look, never know. Look, he did the reflection of the sticker. In that's the, what I was about to say. No, he did a reflection of everything. There's an entire reflection oh, on the you're table. You're right. You're right. Holy I'm saying, shit. This is so well done, and you spent way too much time doing this so well, Zero Fox. <laughs> it looks great. It looks really good. Wow. Comedy I'm show impressed. with Sitch and Adam. There you go. Oh, I didn't realize in the Chank picture you have me drinking a cup of Soylent. Okay. That should be Adam, though. I've never drank in Soylent. Adam Soylent. is the soy drinker. Got the pink bow going there. Subscribe yep. now for Enlightened Centrist News. Yes. Yeah. Pull your phone out. See if what happens when you scan over that QR code. It probably sends you to the Young Turks. <laughs> Are you sure? I don't think zero fucks. Uh, he says the QR code works. Works to what? Works to send you where? This is the level of detail I was. Wait, just does it not send it expecting. to our channel? That's hilarious if it does. Jesus, zero fucks. That is a level of fucking meme craft that is impressive. That is impressive. That is very impressive. Wow, wow. I'm impressed. Yes, he says it sends it to this channel. I'm impressed. Wow, I'm I'm impressed, zero fucks. So we've got the we've got all the books in this one, and then the rising. We have the background there. We have a uh, gray joy. Yep. <laughs> oh, the reflection on the computers is correct in the yes. Everything you look very good. funny as Robbie. I and know that, that face. Oh, hello. Ooh. Ooh. That's my. I'm getting ready to talk about something serious with you. Mm-hmm. That's your serious face. And then we have the Sitch and Adam comedy show. Yeah. Oh, this is great. That show. The comedy show. Wow. In that last one, Sam Cedar, you look like Jeff Winger for some reason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Winger. Hmm. Yeah. Impressive, most impressive. Very well done. Excellent uh, Reg work. Ragnar for 50 DK dollars says, how much coffee have you had? I only drink one cup of coffee a day. Occasionally I, I will do. drink a second cup of green tea later in the day if I need to do something work-related at night. So, oh, really? Green yeah. tea doesn't have caffeine? Oh. Yes, it does. <laughs> oh, it does? Of course it does. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Not as much as coffee, but no, it's green tea and black tea have, uh, I believe, equivalent amounts of caffeine. So, Oh, I didn't know that. Shit. I've there been drinking know. green tea to go to bed. Are you fucking no serious? No wonder I'm up all night. Are you for real? Yeah. I thought <laughs> green tea was like nighttime tea. No, what the fuck, dude? <gasps> oh, my God. Yeah. That's hilarious. I have some no. killer... Uh, Ginger green tea that I drank. Oh, it's so well, you good. you can buy decaffeinated green tea. Well, it doesn't say decaffeinated on it. I just assumed then it's green not. tea was no, all just... decaffeinated. No. Green sure. tea has caffeine? Really? Are you sure about that? I know that with 100% certainty, yes. I'm going to ask Google just to see if you're lying. An 8-ounce cup of coffee contains 95 to 165 milligrams of caffeine. Uh, the same green amount of tea. green tea contains 25 to 29 milligrams of caffeine. Does green tea contain caffeine? Just like black, white, and uh, oolong tea, green tea contains naturally occurring caffeine. I told you. Although the levels of caffeine in green tea are slightly lower than you'd expect to find in black tea and considerably yeah. less than a cup of coffee. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep. Okay. But still, you shouldn't be drinking it to go to sleep. That's not going to help you. Well, that's I, that's exactly what I was doing. I was like, well, I need a you good... You need to stop it. I need a good sleepy green tea. A good <laughs> sleepy time tea. Now, you need an... Herbal teas are caffeine-free generally. Right, but I thought green right. was an herbal tea. 
No. Herbs are green, though. Uh. Black no. tea. Black tea is the most caffeine. Yes. Yeah. But green tea is like the second most. Mm. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, listen, I'm glad we had this conversation. We. Uh, I know. We fixed Adam's sleep cycle tonight. Yeah, I should be able to get to sleep tonight. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Andrew Clark, so thank you, Ragnar, for asking that question. You saved Adam. Yeah, you saved my life. I owe you big time now. There you go. Uh, Andrew Clark, for $2, says Luigi is seeing Queen Abu. Look it up. What? I have it on good authority from AI Mario that he's married to Bowser. Listen, Queen Boo. It's pretty nice too, though. Not a bad, uh, not a bad catch for Luigi. Huck Finn for thirteen months says, "Hey, oh, thank you so much." Says, "Hey guys, I just turned thirty. Well, congratulations. Does it get better or worse from here?" Better. It gets better. It gets way better. Yeah. Andrew Clark for two hours says, sorry, I meant Princess Boo, Sitch. Check your Twitter DMs. I saw Andrew Clark sent me some lewd pictures of Princess Boo licking Luigi's neck. Really? Yes. Lewd pictures. Ouch. Lewd pictures. Why would someone do that? Why indeed? Perfect. Oh Blaine's my... Escape Quarter for $5 says, the caffeine in tea is lower than coffee. It's the L L-theanine that makes you alert. Tea shop was my first business venture. Oh wow! Really? Cool. L I don't even know what that is. Alcine is a amino acid found in teas and some mushrooms. Well, there you go. Interesting. I love tea. Tea is well, delicious. If that's the case, then does that mean is that stuff still in? Um, is the L theanine in decaffeinated green tea? Because if so, then you sh if that makes you alert, then you shouldn't be drinking it. Even decaffeinated green tea at night, either. So interesting. <laughs> L-theane has been shown to allow caffeine to work its brain-boosting charm without letting it raise your blood pressure or induce anxiety. Well, there you go. If you want caffeine and you don't want anxiety, apparently you got to take some L-theane with it, or I guess drink tea instead of coffee. Maybe that's why tea is better. Maybe. As me for 15 MYR says, when I was a kid, I thought the movie Click by Adam Sandler was going to be funny. Then I was sad for about three days <laughs> after watching it. I've never seen that movie, but it was everyone a, says that. Yeah. It was a punching bag when it came out because everyone was like, those movies are awful. I think that was everyone's experience. They went into it because the trailer for it was like, this is an Adam Sandler ca uh, comedy movie. And then it's like, no, it's not. You've been tricked. Is it it's not a comedy? I think it's a comedy, but it has like, because I know like he does something where I think he like he fast forwards through his children's lives or something, and so basically they go from like babies to like adults, and then he feels so bad about like missing out on so much of his life. What? Yes, it's like a sad movie. I think uh so. I thought it was going to be like point the remote at people and make them do stupid shit. That's what it, that's like the trailer. It's like he, like, there's like a woman jogging and he puts her in slow motion so I can watch her tits bounce. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's like, whoa, it's Adam Sandler movie. And it's like, psych, it's going to be sad. And you're like, oh, oh no. that's bad. Uh, some weird guy for $2 says, unification through a common devil sounds like the end game plan of Ozymandias from Watchmen. Whether it was using the giant space squid in the comic or using Dr. Manhattan in the movie, give people a common enemy. That is exactly, exactly what the end game plan for Ozymandias was. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly it. 100%. But it didn't work, so. Uh, that's not true. It definitely works in Watchmen. Oh, it does? Sure. Yeah. It does work. It literally does work. It is successful. At least it temporarily. It doesn't work in the movie. It does. What do you mean? Oh, it does? Does it not? Okay. The the thing that threatens to undo it is uh, Rorschach being a dumb fuck. Saying, I don't believe in metaphorical truth. 
People have a right to know. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Do it. Arithmus for $2 says, quote, the USA and the USSR fought the Nazis together. So the USA is actually communist. <laughs> Contrapoints probably. <laughs> That's a good point. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, Magor for $2 says, hey, they have old trapper jerky where I live. In fact, I got some in my pantry. Going to go grab a slice or two to eat. A team reign supreme, even if Sitch is better at logical reasoning. There you go. Sweet. Yeah. It's not all about brain power, guys. Jeez. Right. <laughs> Arithmus for $2 says, when Sitch's mother tells him a story about going out to dinner with his father last week, Sitch is like, I'm going to stop you right there, mom. I'm going to need a peer-reviewed study that proves that this dinner happened. <laughs> Listen, true. No. Nah. You know how I, so I said, uh, I, had, I had told, I said on stream that my parents took me to Hooters. And so uh, oh, I asked I them about this. That. I asked them about this. I said, why did you guys take me to Hooters? You know what they said? It was the only thing. You know what they thing. fucking oh, said? It's the only what thing they, there. No. You're misremembering. They said, they said, we took you to Hooters? Question <laughs> mark. I don't remember that happening. See, they always they, rewrite history. They do. They They're do. like they blocked it out. They couldn't deal with. They couldn't deal with the fact that they started my big mommy milkers fetish. Right. By taking me to Hooters as a young lad. You said, "Listen, I saw my first big bazongas at that <laughs> Hooters, and I've never been the same. <laughs> I've never been the same since. It's all your fault." Uh, Dotums for $2 says, Sitch, I'm curious why you assume it would be conceptualized, assume it would be conceptualized it as picking between a gay kid or a trans kid rather than a gay son versus a daughter. I'm not mm -hmm. sure the intuition is clear cut in the other case. Well, um, I, I maybe could see a scenario where someone is like, I always wanted a son. And maybe they trans their daughter to have the son they never had i guess it's possible um but that's a different logic or reasoning oh my god as if people use logic and reason well no i'm saying that's a different argument than, than kind of the argument we were debating about i don't think so i guess kind of referring to your argument i don't think the person would i don't think the person would think of it as well i could either have a gay son or a straight daughter I think it's going to be, I'm either going to have a gay done or a trans daughter. I don't believe they're conceptualizing it as just like a daughter daughter. If you're so bigoted against gays, so you don't want to have a gay person be your child. That's just, it's hard for me to envision that you're totally fine with the transes, which seems to be significantly more, significantly larger derivation from the norm than being gay. God, it's just so much rationalizing going on in this conversation. Well, that is how these, that is how the human brain works. Yeah, but I'm just able to step aside and say, listen, I don't need Oh, yeah, to you're able to, you read a book and you just believe it uncritically. I the mean, book. I, be look, I believe it critically. What's the okay. point of, what is the point of gaslighting me? There you go. What, in the book, what is the point of gaslighting me? I don't know. It could just be a, a common, what is the point of leftists saying that we live in a white supremacist society? That literally is to gaslight you for power. Right. So, okay. So if you're trying to levy an argument to stop or pump the brakes on trans stuff, it's a good argument to try to use their own moral morality against them saying, oh, well, there's all these people that are homophobes. They just want to transition their children because they hate the gays so much. Yeah. You're that's helping with the homophobia. That's true. They, so they could be gaslighting because of that. So yeah. it's possible. I mean, that's my first thought of what the process of doing it would be. But. Right. Okay. So it's all just, See, they're making it up. It's lies. There you go. They're all a bunch of liars. CT for $2 says, Adam is my spirit animal. I used to hide a picture, the same picture, all over to fuck with my ex-roommate. I taped it to ice cream inside a mug and mixed it with cream, che cream, mix it with cheese slices. Any time she would find it, I would move it. LOL. What was that's the picture? That's pretty funny. Yeah. What was the picture? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, she's saying like your spirit of trolling. Oh she's yeah, spirit animal, right. So that's oh, yeah. a good troll. That's a good troll. CT, you got to try the raisins. Look, we'll do it together. <laughs> there we go. 
The raisins. The raisins, the raisins is going to be good. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yes. I know in school, um, when we, had, we had a substitute teacher one day who was one of the cool subs. Uh, we took her sticky notes and we labeled everything in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Like literally oh. everything in the classroom. Cool. <laughs> she thought it was pretty funny when she came back. All right. Is that it? Ask me for six MYR says, but what's your favorite Adam Sandler movie? That is a tough one. Let's see. Let's bring up the list. Well, Adam. everyone obviously, I mean, I feels like Happy Gilmore is probably a lot of people's favorite Adam Sandler movie. Happy Gilmore is just Happy like Gilmore. amazing. Well, that, yeah. so there's the three, I think, that people generally go towards. Right. Happy Gilmore, mm -hmm. Billy Madison. Billy Madison? Have I seen this? That's the one that has the, the, the meme speech. That is the dumbest thing anyone has ever said, and we're all stupider for hearing I, it. I don't know that I've seen it, to be honest. You've never seen Billy Madison? Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's not very good. Maybe I should see it. Besides that speech, it's not very good. What about Big Daddy? Uh, that's usually not people's favorite. Oh, okay. Uh, the other one that I usually hear is Waterboy. Oh, yeah, Waterboy. Baba Boucher. Waterboy would be. I like Little I, Nicky. You're the only one. <laughs> I, I feel that. You're the only one. I think yeah. I saw Little Nicky after everyone was talking about how terrible it was. So I was Not just good. expecting it to be a complete shit show. It's really bad. But he does that stupid voice all the way that, through. And I kind of everyone think that, hates that voice. That's part of why everyone hates this fucking movie. But I kind of like the voice. You like a Hiko Bitaki. It's me, Nikki. Maybe that's why you like Murderface so much. He has kind of like a proto Murderface. He does. Voice. He does. It's me, Hiko Nikki. Oh, God. I got to see. I don't you. Why won't you love me? It's I have so to bad. See, I have to see little Nikki again. And he has like that hunch in his face. Like everything about it is so bad and the hairstyle like everything in the face everything about that character is it's designed got harvey to make, Keitel as the devil everything about that movie is designed to make you like cringe at watching the main harvey character. Keitel plays the devil though i know he does that movie's so bad i know and it's not funny look it's overrated in the bad and his department. mom i forgot his mom is like a gorilla or something how like, about everything about the movie is awful Okay. And there's a talking dog. It's what so about bad. Zohan? Uh, Zohan's okay. Yeah, Zohan's pretty good. It's okay. I won't say it's pretty good. I'd say it's okay. I've never seen Click. I saw Click. Yeah. Uh, never saw the hot chick. Yeah. I haven't uh, seen that either. No. Longest Yard is not great. The original is much better. Oh, Jack and Jill. There you go. Jack and Jill. <laughs> Jack and Jill is another I think to answer the question, I would ridiculous. go I would say it's somewhere between Happy Gilmore and Waterboy. Uh, One of those. Just not Nick. Little Nicky's not even in the run. No, little Nicky can <laughs> little Nicky can eat shit and die. Okay. Did you see Jack and Jill? Jack and Jill of is Of course I did not see Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill is cringely bad. I saw the one scene with Al Pacino where he does the, the Dunkin' Donuts commercial in the middle of the movie. <laughs> Say hello Look, to my chocolate blend. According to Matt Binder, Jack and Jill has trans representation <laughs> because <laughs> Adam Sandler <laughs> plays his sister. There you go. True. That's true. Right? Jack and Jill was ahead of its time with trans representation. Of course. Representation. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. When, 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 Adam Sandler put on a fat suit and dressed up in a dress and he sat on a horse and make, made his legs break because <laughs> he's so fat. <laughs> that was a positive trans representation. Oh, don't forget yeah. Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> there you go. Mrs. Doubtfire, positive <laughs> trans representation. Oh, you're, yeah. talking about, <laughs> you're talking about when the sister got on the pony? Yes. And broke the pony's and legs? It, that was in the trailer. That's like one of the only scenes I remember from the trailer. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, that's that's trans representation. Remember when Robin Williams put on, you know, fake old lady tits? Oh and yeah. He, and he and he put the cake on his face because he wasn't wearing his mask and he went, Hello. And that was like a meme for like <laughs> 10 years was saying, Hello, like Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, that was positive trans representation. <laughs> These people are so out of their minds. Jesus. Do, do do children even know what the fuck we're talking about? Do you young kids even know what Mrs. Doubtfire and Happy Gilmore and Waterboy are? And Jack are just and like, Jill. Jack and Jack Jill and came Jill out like, in 2011. That was 2011. So yeah, yeah. That, that, <laughs> like you kids are like, I don't know these 90s movies you're talking about. What the fuck? You're like old people talking about these old man movies. Yeah. What is the what is the mo 2000s equivalent of? <laughs> oh my of god. <laughs> of uh of Mrs. Doubtfire. Because it, it, it doesn't it but seem Mrs. like... Mrs. Doubtfire was in like... Was it like the late 90s or something? Well, wasn't there a black guy that did the same kind of Mrs. Oh, Doubtfire Oh, you mean... Thing? Um, oh, my God. Yeah. That was after Mrs. Doubtfire, right? I just... Uh, I think it's hilarious how there's a guy <laughs> playing a grandma is like a continuous trope. There's always some running movie. Right. But a guy, play, yeah, that's true. Yeah, a dude playing a grandma for trans representation. <laughs> okay, maybe you're not all young kids. All right. Mm -hmm. We have, we a have an old audience. audience. Okay, we have an we old have a audience. split audience. Right. We have older people here because I'm older, and we have no, not the night professor. Because... You're talking about the guy who does all the movies where he dresses up as all the characters. Medea, right? You're Medea. Medea. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Who's that guy? When did those the Medea movies come out? Medea movies came out way later. Oh, they did. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So they're like two thousand. Medea movie, I guess. I don't know. It has me says I'm a zoomer and I only know this is Doubtfire because some YouTuber, some YouTube video talked about trans representation. There you go. You're welcome. The hot chick. There you go. The hot chick. Positive trans representation, right? The Tyler, the Nutty Professor. No, not the Nutty Professor. The sequel, Meet the Clumps. <laughs> Remember in Tropic Thunder how there's like the fake trailers at the beginning of the movie? Yes, that was awesome. And, and one of them is Jack Black just farting in a bunch of different fats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that, but. <laughs> it's so awful. It's so bad. Rob Schneider is a carrot. That's just such a good episode of South Park. Uh, Andrew Clark for two dollars says Sitch says lewd and Adam instantly turns off the camera. Ooh, very sus. Oh very yeah. Sus. He went to look up Princess Boo very quickly. Of course. When did I turn the camera off? I don't even remember, but I, I know. When I talked about Princess now. Boo. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm resting my uh, eyes. I gotta close. Leo ninety one for six months says, How is Chainsaw Man Sitch? I haven't started yet. Also, Jojo is greater than Hunter X Hunter. That is fucking not true. S class may be best class, but as his taste for Shojins, I'll pass. JK, everyone read Chainsaw Man. There you go. Chainsaw Man looks pretty good. It does look funny. Someone, I think it was Thoth sent me a uh, a panel of it. He said that the main character is just you. And it seemed like the main character was motivated purely by sex. And I said, oh, it is Adam. Oh, it's me, really? Yeah, it's oh, literally me. I didn't me. understand. No, this, is, is... this is Chainsaw Man? Yes. The main character just wants to get laid? I think so. Well, I got to check that out. There you go. See? See? Adam's like, I'm not a coomer brain. <laughs> I that was the best part of the Mario movie. Bowser was like constantly oh peaches, 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 <laughs> peaches, peaches. Jesus. Have you seen the parody version where he goes peaches, bitches, was, bitches, bitches, bitches? Peaches is, was pretty hot in Mario movie. I mean, she wasn't bad. They she's animated right. her good. She's all right. They animated her. With a nice Jojo figure. is overrated. I hate to tell you guys, Jojo is severely overrated. Okay, season two Jojo, very good. Season one is terrible. First part of season three is terrible. The second part is okay. Season four is good-ish. Season five is meh. 
in season six, I couldn't finish because I got too bored. Ouch. Blaine's escape quarter for Drew says, Chainsaw Man is boring. You're all gaslighting. Well, there you go. Blaine doesn't agree. Everyone's gaslighting a little bit. True. Anyways. Oh, my goodness. We're done? We're done. This was a long show. It was. But it was fun. I had a great it time. It was fun. Anyways. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for your incredibly generous donations. Thank you, Contra, for making terrible content that we could watch and, mon and mock ruthlessly. And thank you. You who have made it to the end of the stream. You are the true saviors. You are the true free will seekers. And we'll see you all on Tuesday. Bye-bye, Billy.